<laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the secret word tonight is spoon. S-P-O-O-N. Really? You bet your life. <laughs> More than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers of America present Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life, the comedy quiz series produced and transcribed from Hollywood. And here he is, the one, the only... I thought he was all washed up. Oh, that's me. <laughs> well, here I am again with $4,500 for one of our couples. We invited some school teachers to the program tonight, and just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected Mrs. Marion Helber. Her partner is a schoolboy, Mr. Melvin Leon Hunt. Folks, meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, welcome for the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common word, something you use every day. Miss uh, Marion Helber. Huh? That's right, Mrs. Mrs. Oh, Mrs. Oh, yes. Yeah. Mrs. Marion Helber and uh, Mr. Leon Hunt. That's right. Mrs. Uh, Helber, where, where are you from? I was born in Waterloo, Iowa. Where? In Waterloo, Iowa. Oh, I used to play mm -hmm. in Waterloo. Did you? They have a bridge there connecting the two That's different right, parts of the do. town. Yeah. And they quarrel about the east and west side of the river? I just quarreled the about the bridge. I didn't quarrel about it. <laughs> when they froze to death once. That's right. Very cold place. I don't blame you for leaving Waterloo. It's a lovely town, and the DeSoto Plymouth dealer in that town is mm -hmm. really a fine fellow. I mm -hmm. know him very well. They all find He people. lives on the bridge. You know? <laughs> Now, Mrs. Hel your mother's Helber, are you mother's little Helber? Oh, no, it's Helber, B. Oh, oh, I see. I don't see very well. You'll have to forgive me. Eh? <laughs> now, I realize it's gauche to ask a woman a raise, so I'll, I'll be subtle about it. Uh, uh, how old are you? <laughs> well, I'll just be just as tall. I'm 61. Well, you don't look it. Thank you. I thought you were about I 48. Thank you. Now, Melvin Leon Hunt, huh? Uh, how old are you? I guess uh, you'd be around 45, wouldn't you? Eleven. <laughs> eleven? Well, you don't look a day over 30. Uh, are are you sure you're eleven? Eleven and three quarters. That's, that's better. When I ask a question around here, I want the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Except during election year. <laughs> now, you're a school teacher, huh, Mrs. Uh, Helba? I am. Uh -huh. what, what grade are you in? Four. Really? Why, Melvin's only 11 and three quarters, and look where he is. <laughs> Melvin, where are you? B7. B7? Mm -hmm. Sounds like a vitamin. <laughs> How long have you been teaching school? I'm on my 41st year. Really? That's right. You said you must be sick of apples by this time. Huh? <laughs> what about you, Melvin? Have you got a girlfriend? Well... <laughs> now, quit beating around the bush, Melvin. Uh, what's her name? Cheryl. That's a pretty name. How does she spell it? Don't ask me. <laughs> now, who do you want me to ask? Mrs. Helper? <laughs> Can you describe this girl since you don't know how to spell her name? What does she look like? Well, she's um, kind of tall and skinny, and she's got a... <laughs> she's blonde. How much taller than you is she? Uh, a foot? No. Do you contemplate matrimony with this charmer? What do you mean? <laughs> do, you, do you ultimately plan on being betrothed? No. Now, why did I say that time? Uh, a dictionary round? <laughs> Do you have any hobbies, uh, uh, Melvin? Well, I have stamp collecting and I like archaeology. Well, what is that? What's archaeology? Well, studying ancient ruins. <laughs> you're, you're not being personal now, are you? No. <laughs> Insinuating is what you mean, no. <laughs> Mrs. Helba, what is insinuating me? <laughs> well, I've enjoyed this little chat, and Melvin, you're, you're a fine boy, and we expect great things of you someday, but not in school. <laughs> now, you're gonna, in just one minute, you're going to play your bet your life for a chance at the $4,500 question. Right now, I'd like everyone to listen to this. 
America's most spectacular new car. That's what everybody is saying about the new 160 horsepower DeSoto Fire Dome 8. Tomorrow, get acquainted with all of DeSoto's great features. That mighty 160 horsepower Fire Dome V8 engine and full power steering. With power steering, you can actually turn the wheels with one finger, even when the car is at a standstill. Why, parking is as easy as dialing a phone. But DeSoto brings you not just power steering, but full power steering. That means easier, safer driving for you on all kinds of roads, under all conditions, all the time. Not just some of the time. And listen to this. DeSoto's full power steering requires not the usual five and one half, but only three and one half revolutions of the steering wheel to turn the wheels from one extreme to the other. Think of how much faster and easier it is to turn corners and to park. Remember all these DeSoto advantages before you buy any car that claims to offer you power steering. Only the DeSoto type of power steering is full power steering. So stop in at your DeSoto Plymouth dealers tomorrow and get the feel of the spectacular new DeSoto Fire Dome 8. Also see and drive the DeSoto Power Master 6, available in custom and deluxe models. And remember, all dealers who sell DeSoto also sell Plymouth, the low-priced car most like high-priced cars. So no matter what price range you may have in mind, you'll find the car you want at a DeSoto Plymouth dealer's. All right, now let's see how you work together as a team. George, explain the rules, sir. You bet as much of your $20 as you want on each of four we, questions. We call him Fire Dome. <laughs> Fire Dome Fenneman. You bet as much of your $20 as you want on each of four questions, and the couple that earns the most money gets a chance at the $4,500 DeSoto Plymouth question later in the show. Yeah, here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. You selected mountains and lakes of the world. Now, here's your first question. How much of the 20 will you risk? 19. 19. 19. Where is Fujiyama? Japan. Japan. Japan is right. You're on your way. You have $39. Now, remember, you're going for $4,500 tonight. How much of the $39 are you going to try? 38. 38. All right. In what country is Lake Louise? Canada. Canada is right. <laughs> you now have $77. 76. All right. Uh, where is Mount Popa Catapetl? <laughs> Popa Catapetl. Mexico. Mexico is right. <laughs> now you climb to $153. And they say school teachers are underpaid. <laughs> All right, it's your last chance to beat the other couples. How much of the swag are you going to go for? 150. 150. 152. Come on. 152. 52. Where is Mauna Loa? Hawaiian Island. Hawaiian Island is right. Look at that. And you wind up with $305. Thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Groucho, we have a housewife and a bus driver for you now. They volunteer just before we went on the air. Mr. Uh, Irving Maddox and Mrs. Uh, May St. Ange meet Groucho Marx. Welcome to your Bet Your Life. Say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common word, something you use every day. Mrs. May St. Ange and Mr. Maddox, right? Right. Mr. Maddox, where, where, are, you, where are you from? Uh, Lexington, Missouri. Isn't that where the... Uh, Minutemen fought the British? <laughs> no. You're pretty safe in saying that, eh? Yes. And Mrs. St. Ange. It sounds like a frozen drink. Oh, no. I'll just call you May. That's your first name, isn't they it? They call me Grandma May because I have 15 grandchildren. And all the children in the neighborhood call me Grandma May. They so didn't call me Grandma May. Okay. Uh, where are you from, Grandma? Superior, Wisconsin. And we have the largest ore docks in the world there. And we you also have the largest what? Ore docks. They ship ore to and take it down the lake. Oh, ore docks. Oh. Ore docks. <laughs> <laughs> and then we have a new pipeline I there, too. I thought you were talking about cattle. Huh? <laughs> no. Well, how is your ore docks, Grandma? <laughs> oh, they're just fine. We ship more tonnage there than any other port in the world. Well, I, I'm delighted. We have you... a new pipeline there, too. You have, huh? But that one. makes the city smell. We don't Yeah, yes, it's... <laughs> it's bringing in the money, but we really don't like that no. smell. But... 
It you smells can't help too it. rich. When uh, the money comes, you can't help it. It smells so rich. This is a walking phonograph needle. <laughs> How long? I'm afraid to ask her another question. Well, I'll talk to it you. It may take about 20 minutes the next question. How long have you been living in California, May? Oh, we're only tourists. I only what, tourists? We're just touring. We're tourists. all tourists in California. <laughs> it's so cold at home that we come out here to get the warm weather. Well, does, doesn't the yard docks keep you warm in the winter? Oh, no. They even close up in the winter. It freezes up there. It true? gets as low, cold as 40 below and it costs so much to heat that... We can almost live out here for what it just keep to keep us warm up there. The <laughs> 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 house and let other people freeze it then. That's, oh. a, that's a good idea. Huh? <laughs> and I love it out here. And what, uh, Mrs. St. Ange, that's, that's a curious name. Where, where did you get her? My husband. <laughs> <laughs> He's nice, too. Is, is your husband a saint? Oh, no. He likes to take a drink and he just snaps. <laughs> He's got beautiful white hair, though. Oh, a lot of white hair. He chews snuff, did you say? Mm -hmm. How did you meet Mr. This, uh, snuff chewer? Well, I was running this old... Oh, he's not a snuff chewer. Just once in a while. You know. Just no, during I was, the day, huh? I was running an old lady's home, and he came there to paint. Uh, just a moment. <laughs> the walls and scenes, you know. You were running an old lady's home? Uh-huh, and he came there to paint. And he came there to paint? Mm-hmm. There were men in this place, too? Yes, I had six men. Because you have to have a man around the house to keep the old ladies contented, you know? They cook for them and they spoil them. And... You know, you have to have a man around the house to be happy. How old were these men? They were over 80. <laughs> but some of them were pretty peppy. <laughs> Did you have a good ball club there? You no, know, oh no, I'm not even this ball clubs. I used to play now cards. Why did you have these men there for? I don't understand. Well, they used to run errands for the ladies. They used to, they go used to, to run the... errands. Oh yeah, sure. Some of them could run. This is the only place the where they ever walked errands. Uh, well, it's been very interesting talking to you two, especially you, Mr. Maddox. <laughs> what chance does a man have? They're just nice to have around the house. And yes, they are. <laughs> they are. They're nice to have around the house. May, if you really want to see the country, get yourself a new DeSoto Fire Dome Aid. My sister-in-law up in British Columbia has a new DeSoto and it's a wonderful. <laughs> now you're going to play your bet your life. You beat our other couples, and you'll get a chance at the four thousand five hundred dollar question. <laughs> the school teacher and the schoolboy won three hundred five dollars, and the secret word is spoon. All right, here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. You selected locations of United States cities beginning with forts and saints as your category. Here's your first question. How much will you bet? You have $20. Bet $19. $19. $19. Or $19.80. Let's bet it all. $19.80. $19.80. All right. And what state is the city of St. Paul? Oh, Minnesota. Minnesota is right. Yes, I <laughs> Well, you're on your way. You have $39.80. Remember, you're going for four thousand five hundred dollars tonight. How much of the thirty-nine dollars? <laughs> How much of the thirty-nine eight zero are you going to bet this time? Thirty-nine. Now leave thirty-nine. All right. And what state is the city of Fort Wayne? Indiana. 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 Uh -huh. You now have seventy-eight dollars and eighty cents. How much of this are you going to bet? Seventy-eight. Seventy-eight. In what state is the city of St. Joseph? This city was Missouri. The... Missouri is right. <laughs> You now have one hundred and fifty-six dollars and eighty cents. How much are you gonna bet? One hundred fifty-six. Okay. One hundred and fifty-six. In what state is the city of Fort Worth? Oh, Texas. Texas is right. <laughs> real good. A real shot. You wind up with three hundred and twelve dollars and eighty cents. Thanks and good luck from the Desoto Plymouth dealer. <laughs> We uh, have an engaged couple for you now, Groucho. Uh, they're very special guests. I think after you've talked to them for a while, you'll find out why I invited them to be on the show tonight. So let's meet them. Miss Rose Aranda and Sergeant Joseph Rodriguez meet Groucho Marx. Welcome to the Soda Plymouth dealer. Say the secret word and you'll win $100. It's a common word, something you use every day. Pretty cute couple, huh? 
Let's see, you're engaged and you're uh, very special, eh? Well, I don't know about Joe, but Rose, obviously, you're not the last Rose of summer. <laughs> you look real special. Sergeant Joseph Rodriguez, huh? That's right. Where are you from, Joe? San Bernardino. How old are you? Uh, I'm 23. 23, eh? You're kind of my looking to be a tough army sergeant. Uh, where are you stationed? In the ORC headquarters in San Bernardino. What is that? Is that, uh, Oxor? What does ORC stand for? No, that's the Organized Reserve Corps School there in San Bernardino. Oh, you're in the reserve, eh? No, uh, I'm uh, on the administrative staff. I do a little stencil cutting, typing, topographical map work. So oh, well, pretty cushy job you got there, Joe. Where are you working, uh, Rose? Anywhere? I'm a key punch operator at Norton Air Force Base. How did you meet the sergeant here? Well, he belonged to the YMCA and his wife. Why extend an invitation uh, to our club? Well, why did his wife extend an invitation? Uh, well, they were going on a snow party. Well, we what's were... a snow party? Is that where nobody shows up? <laughs> you know, the guy says, snow party, nobody shows up. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, you go to Boggan and you have lots of fun in the snow. Oh. Well, what kind of club did you belong to? Oh, it was a social club. It had no name or purpose. No purpose, eh? <laughs> I bet by now every girl in that club is married to some member of the YMCA. <laughs> Rose, how did you feel about uh, Joe after the first date? I was a little nervous. On the way back, we stopped at a coffee shop, and uh, we ordered some coffee, and I poured about ten spoons of sugar in my cup of coffee. <laughs> hey! <laughs> You said spoon, that's the sacred word, so you and uh, your boyfriend over here each uh, win $50. Thank you. Now, what did you say? You poured, uh, what, ten spoons full of uh, sugar in your... Cup of coffee, yes. Why did you... Uh, well, I was did so you nervous. have a lump in your throat? Or, uh... <laughs> no, I was so nervous, I just kept pouring it on. Joe, was that true? She was pouring it on? <laughs> pouring the sugar in a cup of coffee. Oh, yes. I see. Joe, uh, after you're married, who's going to be the boss? Well, I believe in every family there should be a first sergeant to run the company. <laughs> you may be the first sergeant, but the company commander is going to be a rose. <laughs> and in a pretty nice base, too. <laughs> now, Joe, uh, Fenneman says you two are special guests. Uh, why is that? Is it because you're an army sergeant? No, I don't believe so. There's nothing special about an army sergeant unless you happen to be a private. George Fanneman, come in here. You told me there was something special about this couple. What is it? Uh, obviously, they're not going to tell me. Well, Groucho, Sergeant Rodriguez has been awarded the nation's highest military decoration, the Congressional Medal of Honor. Yeah. Well, I don't have to tell you, Sergeant, how honored we are to have you here with us tonight. And Groucho, the uh, Army Major, the... But I will tell you, we are honored to have you here. <laughs> Thank you. The you Arm... keep out of this, <laughs> <friend of mine. laughs> The Army Major, Groucho, that uh, first told me about Joe, uh, gave me this citation which explains exactly what he did. Uh... Would you like to hear this? <laughs> Sergeant Joseph C. Rodriguez, then Private First Class, was participating in an attack against a fanatical hostile force occupying well-fortified positions on rugged commanding terrain near Munyiri, Korea, on the 21st of May, 1951, when his squad's advance was halted by a withering barrage of automatic weapons from five emplacements together with grenades, which the enemy rolled down the hill toward the advancing troops. Fully aware of the odds against him, Sergeant Rodriguez leaped to his feet, dashed 60 yards up the fire-swept slope, and after lobbing grenades into the first foxhole, ran around the left flank, Silence an automatic weapon with two grenades and continued his whirlwind assault to the top of the peak, wiping out two more foxholes and then, reaching the right flank, he tossed grenades into the remaining emplacement, destroying the gun and annihilating its crew. As a result of his incredible display of valor, the defense of the opposition was broken, the enemy routed, and the strategic stronghold secured. Well, give me that again. <laughs> I give him a good kick. He 
If you don't win any money here tonight, it won't be my fault, Sergeant. <laughs> well, Joe, that's the most amazing thing I ever heard of. You're just the new Sergeant York, aren't you? There's just one thing I'd like to know. When you were running through all that lead, uh, what were you thinking about? Well, I wasn't thinking. I was just mad, I guess. You wiped out a whole army just because you got mad? <laughs> Joe, if I said anything tonight uh, here that you read... <laughs> If I said anything that you resent, I was just being facetious. <laughs> what are your plans for the future, Joe? Well, we... I hope to make a career in the Army. Well, I'm sure glad you're on our side. <laughs> and, Rose, take good care of this fellow, and my advice is don't ever make him mad. <laughs> He's liable to wipe out Los Angeles. Well, you're a fine couple, and I'm sure you're going to have many happy and handsome and bright and brave children. All right, now let's play your bet your life. Joe, that's one game you have already played, and we're certainly happy that you won. This will probably seem pretty tame after that, but here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. You have to run your $20 and no more than our other couples, and you'll get a chance at the DeSoto Plymouth $4,500 question. I can't tell you how much you have to win, but Mr. Fenneman is going to remind our listeners. The housewife and the bus driver lead with $312.80. Here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. You selected all-time favorites as your category. Here's your first question. How much will you bet? Decide on one answer between you. Talk up. 19. 19. 1980. All right. Here's your first question for 1980. Give me the title of this song. Play, Jerry. <laughs> To a good start, you have $39.80. You gave me a heart failure. I thought you were going <laughs> to blow that. Don't ever do that again, will oh. you? Answer it quicker, will you? I can't stand this suspense. <laughs> Remember, you're going for $4,000. I'm, I'm trying not to be uh, partial here, but... Uh, Remember, you're going for $4,500 tonight. Now, let's see if you can identify this one. How much are you going to bet? How much are you going to bet? You have $39.80. Yep. You see, if I say instead of Phantom, we can cut his salary. <laughs> All right, here we go. Play it, Jerry. Start. That's right. Answer him right away, huh? We're really climbing. You have $79.30. Here's your third question. How much of the $79.30 you're going to try? $79.20. $79.20. Black magic is right. <laughs> you have now climbed to $158.50. Here's your last chance to beat the other couple. How much of the $158.50 uh, are you going to play? Last chance. Last chance. Shoot the words. Shoot the words. Shoot the words. Are you more scared now than you are going over you the top? Bet. <laughs> <laughs> well... Here we go. Play it, Jerry. E for two. E for two is hot. Right. <laughs> and here's the news. You wind up with $317, and that means that you, too, get the chance at the DeSoto Plymouth by $4,500. We try to be impartial on the show, but I, I must say that I was a little prejudiced. <laughs> Ever hear somebody say, well, all my car needs is a lubrication job. I suppose I can have that done almost anywhere. Well, it's true. You can get a lubrication job almost anywhere. But to get it done right, take it to a DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Here's where you get thorough lubrication to factory specifications. Yet it costs you no more than ordinary lubrication. Imagine, during the life of your car, 
about 19 grades and kinds of lubricants are used in approximately 54 vital points. Isn't it wise, then, to have experts who know your car do a complete lubrication job, eliminating all guesswork, and thus giving your car added miles of protection? Tomorrow, stop in and tell your DeSoto Plymouth dealer you want a complete lubrication job. See him for any type of service your car may need. His price is reasonable, his service is prompt, and you'll get courteous treatment, too. Just look for the familiar sign of better service, the friendly sign of a DeSoto Plymouth dealer. And here's the sergeant and his fiancée, Groucho, the winning couple, all set for the DeSoto Plymouth $4,500 question. All right, well, I, I can't help you with this, Joe. Um, you're on your own now. You're out in the middle of no man's land. Here we go for $4,500. I'll give you 15 seconds to decide on a single answer between you. Think carefully and please no help in the audience. And I, I give you this admonition. If you don't know the answer, take a stab at it and guess something anyhow. During World War II, Hitler and Mussolini had numerous meetings in a historic pass through the Alps. For $4,500, what is the name of this mountain pass that connects Italy and Austria? Now talk it over. <laughs> What's the answer you kids have decided upon? I, 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 I can come out with his Birch's Garden, but that's a place where they were at. I'm sorry. The correct answer is, uh, is Brenner Pass. Oh, no. So that means the big question next week will be worth $5,000. Well, you lost the big money, but they did pretty well in the quiz. How much did they win, Joe? They did $317 in the quiz. And the secret word? Yeah, I had the secret word, too. That gives them a total Ooh. of uh, $417. Uh, $17. Well, it's not. That's a good, nice word. <laughs> Congratulations. And thanks to both of you and to all of our contestants on the show tonight. Thank Tune in again next Wednesday night at the same time for the Groucho Marx Show, when the big question will be worth $5,000. And don't miss Groucho's television show, also presented by the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America. And remember, all dealers who sell DeSoto also sell Plymouth. Two great cars, both products of the Chrysler Corporation. And when you drive in, tell them Groucho sent you. Good night, folks, and remember, see the DeSoto fire don't make tomorrow. Folks, here's a reminder from the National Safety Council. Road signs are signs of life. Be sure you heed them. You Bet Your Life, transcribed from Hollywood, is produced by John Goodell, directed by Robert Dwan and Bernie Smith, music by Jerry Fielding. This is George Fenneman signing off for the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the secret word tonight is door. D double O R. Oh, Fenneman can spell. <laughs> really? You bet you're alive. The more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers of America present Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life, the comedy quiz series produced and transcribed from Hollywood. And here he is, the one, the only... Groucho! You can do better than that. Oh, that's me! <laughs> Thank you.
Well, here I am again with $5,000 tonight. Groucho, just before we went on the air, we selected a housewife and a man with an interesting background from our audience. And here they are, Mrs. Maxine Brown and Mr. Salvador Vara. Come in and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, welcome for the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers. Say the secret word and you'll divide $100. It's a common word, something you find around the house. Uh, let's see, uh, Mrs. Maxine Brown and Mr. Salvador Vara. Mrs. Uh, Brown, uh, where are you from? I'm from Dungan Hill, Staten Island. Dungan Hills, huh? <laughs> Someone out there from Nova Scotia, right? <laughs> Probably a salmon. <laughs> <laughs> How long have you been out here, Mrs. Brown? Fourteen years. Hmm, that's an odd name, isn't it, Mrs. Brown? Yeah? <laughs> Salvador Vara? Yeah. Hello, I'm Vara. Happy, happy to meet you, you Mr. Vara. <laughs> Uh, what did you say your name was? Salvador Vara. You have a very charming accent. Uh, where, is, where is your home, Salvador? In Pasadena. <laughs> South Pasadena, I presume. Eh? <laughs> Were you born near the Rose Bowl in Pasadena? No, Mr. Mark, I was born in San Sebastian in Spain. Where? San Sebastian in Spain. Oh, well, that's not far from the Rose Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> that's where the 50 cent seats are. <laughs> And I know. Salvador, are you, uh, are you married? No, I'm not married. You, you know, uh, how old are you? I will be 40 years of age the next October 12th. October 12th, eh? That's Columbus Day, huh? Columbus Day, oh. correct. How is it you're not married? Don't you care for the girls? Why, yes, I just love women. <laughs> <laughs> I see, and you want to keep on loving them, is that it? <laughs> It is not that, isn't it? I've never uh, found my correct one, like uh, many troubles we have, men, you know, to find the correct one. Hmm. Well, how are things around the Casbah? <laughs> <laughs> or around any bar while we're at it. <laughs> well, do you have any activities besides uh, housewifing, Mrs. B? Oh, yes. I'm very active in PTA. I'm a den mother. I have two boys. And mainly, I'm a Beta Toastmistress member. What do you do, bait toast for fishing? <laughs> no, Mr. Marks, it's a club to uh, improve women so that they can speech and go out and make public speeches, and improve their uh, poise, and give them a, a... Well, how many poise do you have, too? Huh? I have two <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, what are some of the activities of your outfit? Well, we furnish speakers mainly for charitable organizations. We do a lot of good in this way. We have one member who gave 150 speeches for the Red Cross last year. We furnish speakers for any organization that asks us. Beta never says no. Well, that's a nice thing to know. <laughs> Would you be interested in an elderly hypochondriac? <laughs> Well, uh, Thamidor, let's find out some more about you, huh? <laughs> now, Mr. Fenneman says you have an interesting background. Just, just what have you done? Outside of Pasadena, I mean. <laughs> and Glendale. Well, well, I have been a uh, mail career pilot in Mexico City. Mail pilot? Mail pilot, yeah. Oh. Flying from Mexico City to Tampico, Mexico. Mm -hmm. I have been a uh, uh, pearl, pearl diver. Pearl diver? in the Gulf of California and La Paz. And I have been a bullfighter, professional bullfighter for six years. And Is that so? Well, bully for you. <laughs> How many bulls have you met in your career? Well, I uh, will say there's close to 200 bulls. 200 bulls? Yeah, 200 bulls. You must be the envy of every cow in Mexico. <laughs> Well, I'd like to go on talking to you two, but the time is running out. I have to be in Chicago in July. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, just one minute. You're going to play your bet your life. You bet your, for a chance at $5,000. Right now, I want you to pay close attention to this. Friends, you don't know what you're missing if you haven't had a ride in the new, the spectacular DeSoto Fire Dome 8. From its beautiful and functional new air vent hood, way back to its shiny new tail light. DeSoto is really the talk of the nation. When you get behind the wheel and feel the smooth power and instant acceleration from that 160-horsepower Firedome V8 engine, 
you'll know the real meaning of power. And if you're like most people, if you're tired of struggling with that wheel as you squeeze into tight parking spaces, then you'll get a real thrill out of DeSoto's full power steering. That's right, full power steering. Not partial, but full power steering that takes all the effort out of turning the wheels. Whether you want to back into a parking space using just one finger, or whether you're out on the open road, DeSoto's full power steering always responds the same. Always makes your driving easier and safer. So don't put off this great experience any longer. Go into your DeSoto Plymouth dealers tomorrow and take a ride in the mighty 160-horsepower DeSoto Fire Dome 8. Also see and drive the DeSoto Power Master 6, available in custom and deluxe models. And remember, all dealers who sell DeSoto also sell Plymouth, the low-priced car most like high-priced cars. So no matter what price range you may have in mind, you'll find the car you want at your DeSoto Plymouth dealers. All right, now uh, let's see how you work together as a team. Uh, George, uh, would you explain the rules to Mr. and Mrs. Bullfighter? <laughs> All right, you bet as much of your $20 as you want on each of four questions. Well. And the couple that earns the most money Blow. Gets a chance at the $5,000 DeSoto Plymouth question later on in the show. All right, here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. You selected, what's the number? The following are associated with familiar titles and phrases. Now, uh, how much are you going to bet? 1950 All right, let's see if you can name the numbers. How many thieves opposed Alabama? 40. 40 is right. <laughs> And you have $39.50. Remember, you're going for $5,000 tonight. How much of your $39.50 you going to risk? $39. $39. $39. 39 How many horsemen of the apocalypse? Four. Four is correct. <laughs> you now have $78.50. Here's your third question. How much of the money are you going to bet? $78. $78. $78. <laughs> How many blackbirds baked in a pie? Four and twenty. Four and twenty. <laughs> really climbing, you have one hundred fifty-six dollars and fifty cents. Mrs. Mrs. Brown is no schmo. Is <laughs> <laughs> your last chance to beat the other couples? You're going to bet how much? One hundred fifty-six. One hundred and fifty-six. Fifty. Fifty. One hundred and fifty-six. All of it. All of it. All of it. One hundred and fifty-six. Fifty. Okay. How many fiddlers did old King Cole call for? Three. Three is right. <laughs> And you wind up with $313. Thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. We have a waiter and a woman with an unusual occupation for you now, Groucho. They were chosen just before we went on the air, and here they are. Mrs. Mary Frances Starr and Mr. Woodrow Patrick meet Groucho Marx. Welcome to You Bet Your Life. Say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common word, something you find around the house. Uh, Mrs. Mary Frances Starr. That's, That's you, right. I presume, huh? And uh, Woodrow Patrick. Mr. Patrick, you're uh, a waiter, huh? Yes, sir. And Mary Frances Starr, uh, uh, where are you from, Mary? Texas. Texas, huh? Partner, when you say that, smile. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see, who, who are you again? Uh, uh, I'm the waiter. Oh, well, you're the, oh, the waiter. Well, if you're hanging around for a tip, you're wasting your time. With me. <laughs> you say uh, you work at where? Uh, Moose on Frank in Hollywood, the oldest restaurant in Hollywood. Mm -hmm. I know your place has been there for many years. How does your menu compare with the one they had 30 years ago? Well, they're say, uh, serving the same food they did 30 years ago. <laughs> well, remind me not to order eggs in your place. <laughs> What are some of the specials you feature at uh, your place? Well, we feature uh, sour broughton and goulash and uh, especially flannel cakes. Flannel cakes? Uh, what yes, kind of a monstrosity are flannel cakes? Well, are they long flannel cakes? <laughs> no, they're like uh, crepe Suzettes without uh. the Suzette. Ah, <laughs> oh, that's Suzette. She wouldn't be caught dead wearing flannels. <laughs> Now, uh, Mary Francis, uh, Mr. Fenneman says you have an unusual occupation. Just, just what do you do? 
Well, I'm a fight manager, a prize fight manager. Well, and how many fighters do you manage? I approximately have around 32 in my stable at this time. That's pretty impressive, 32 fighters. Have you ever managed any top fighters? Yes, I uh, managed uh, I, um, one of the top middleweights, my husband, Roman Starr. I managed him. Well, naturally, you were mine. <laughs> <laughs> any housewife can make that claim. <laughs> Did you manage your husband's entire ring career? No, Groucho. I managed him for five years and then sold him for $7,500. <laughs> You're a very shrewd manager. <laughs> After five years of marriage, that's a good price for a husband. <laughs> I thought so. <clears throat> you better explain this. Uh... Well, I sold his contract. Well, after you sold your husband, did you ever see you, you saw him again after that? Huh? Well, a year later, I bought him back for uh, $500. <laughs> you said you'd appreciate it a lot in one year. <laughs> what happened then? Well, uh, I got him back in shape. Uh, he had gotten beaten up quite a bit, and uh, I got him back in shape, and I sold him then for $2,750. <laughs> this is like a grocery store, her husband. <laughs> well, Mary, you've got the right idea. Buy low and sell high. <laughs> now, you're going to play your bet your life. Beat our other couples, and you'll get a chance at the $5,000 question. I can't tell you how much you have to win, but George is going to remind our listeners. The housewife and Mr. Salvador Vara won $313, and the secret word is door. Here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. You selected people associated with birds and animals from our list of 20 categories. Uh, this is category number 13. Now, here's your first question. How much of the $20 are you going to bet? Mm, I think 1950 What kind of an animal do you associate with Mrs. O'Leary? Uh, cow. A cow is right. Walk through this start, you have $39.50 That would have been a cinch for the bullfighter Remember, you're going for $5,000 tonight Now, how much of the $39.50 are you going to try? Oh. $39 Okay All right What kind of a bird do you associate with Edgar Allan Poe? The raven The raven is right <laughs> You now have $78.50 And here's your third question How much of this money are you going to try? $78 Okay. I'll take right. a chance. What kind of an animal do you associate with old Mother Hubbard? A dog. A dog is right. <laughs> you don't go right. You don't You've now know. climbed to one hundred fifty six dollars and fifty cents. And here's your last chance to beat the other couples. How much are you gonna bet? One hundred and fifty six. Okay. All right. What kind of an animal do you associate with Goldilocks? Wolf. Ooh. I mean a bear. Bear. I'm sorry. Now what do you decide on? Bear. A bear, bear. is right. <laughs> Put it down. <laughs> Thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealer. And you wind up with three hundred twelve dollars and fifty cents. <laughs> Groucho, we have a grandmother and a young bride chosen from our audience, Mrs. Charlene Lamb and Mrs. Jane Kerr. Meet Groucho Marx. Well, howdy doody. Hello. Welcome to the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers. Say the secret word and you'll win $100. It's a common word, something you'll find around the house. Mrs. Charlene Lamb and Mrs. Uh, Jane Kerr. One of you is a grandmother, eh? Now, don't tell me. Let me guess which is which. Charlene, how old are you? Eighteen. Eighteen. I'm still not sure. Mrs. Kerr, well, what's your age? Seventy. Seventy. Well, I'll bet my bottom dollar you're the grandmother. Huh? Great grandmother. Well, I'll bet the top dollar then. Huh? <laughs> where are you from, Charlene? New Orleans, Louisiana. Louis New Orleans, eh? Yes. Now, where are you from, uh, Jane? Do you mind if I call you Jane? Where are you from? Ohio. High in the middle, round at both ends. <laughs> Now, I'm not concerned with your shape. I want to know where you're from. Huh? <laughs> Jane, you're certainly a youthful 70. How come you're so hale and hearty at your age? I don't drink. I don't smoke. But I belong to a long levity family. My grandfather lived to be a good old age. But he drank and he smoked. <laughs> what age did tobacco and alcohol catch up with him? 
107. <laughs> Shows you what bad habits will do to a man. <laughs> Why don't you drink a smoke, Jane? Never cared for it. That's an excellent reason. Now, Charlene, you're the young bride, I presume. How long have you been married? Uh, five months, 12 days, and one hour. <laughs> what time do you go through Lompoc? <laughs> how, how old is your husband? He's uh, 20 and 8 months old. Oh, you've only been married uh, five months, and you know uh, his exact age already, huh? Yes, sir. Charlene, you've been reading his insurance policy. Right? <laughs> what does your husband do? He's a stock clerk. Well, that sounds like an important job. Do you suppose he could give me a tip on the market? Oh, no. He's a stock clerk at Ralph's grocery store. <laughs> he can still give me a tip on the market. <laughs> All he has to do is let me know when the manager isn't looking. <laughs> How did you meet your husband? Well, Dick and I, we lived in the same neighborhood. Is that his name, Dick? Night. Yes, Dick. Why didn't you call him Dickie? Dickie. <laughs> and uh, we lived right around the corner from each other. We went to the same grammar school and church and junior high, but he never noticed me until May 26, 1948. And it, it, was, <laughs> it, it was the day of our A9T at, at uh, Bancroft. The day of your what? A9 senior tea at Bancroft when we graduate. And May 26th, uh, I went shopping up at Ralph's with my mother, you know, and he was working there then. Uh, did you know he was working there then? Oh, I had an idea he was. And I was all dressed up in heels, and so he finally noticed me. And then uh, I kept going in there a couple times a week, and I wore my gym blouse with my name on it, you know, and he got yeah. to know my name. Yeah, but it pays to advertise. <laughs> did you have the phone number on the back of the little blouse? No. And then June 19th, 1948, as the day after we graduated, mm -hmm. he called about 6 o'clock and wanted to know if he could come over, and I asked my mother, and she said yes. So not a minute after I hung up, he was at the door. See, all he had to do was jump over the back fence. Wait a minute, you said door. That's the secret door, yeah. <laughs> you said door, that's the secret word, and you and Grandma are over here are each $50 richer. <laughs> Oh, God. <laughs> well, I don't understand this. He phoned you and you opened the door and he was standing out there? See, he just he had, had a jump portable over, phone. Huh? He just had to jump over the back fence. <laughs> Run across the street. And he was there. Oh, and when was this? This was June 19, 1948. And then on uh, June 22nd, Tuesday, he You mean called... he stayed three days? <laughs> <laughs> no. What happened to the grocery store while this was going on? <laughs> have to go up as much then. <laughs> oh. And then he called and he wanted to know if I'd go out, so my mother said yes, so he picked me up about four o'clock. Well, why did you have to go out when you were spending so much time together in the grocery store? <laughs> oh, well. And <laughs> I see. <laughs> and then we, um... Now, when did you finally get serious with this uh, fellow? Uh, August 29th. 1948. At 20 minutes past 11, you said. <laughs> what did he do? What did he say? Um, he kissed what me happened? in front of the house. What's that? He kissed me in front of the house. He kissed you in front of the house? Fine place to kiss a pretty girl. <laughs> is that all there is to it? No, then he turned around and ran across the street and stumbled over the back fence. <laughs> you couldn't have given him much of a kiss. <laughs> If that kiss had packed any wallop at all, he'd have walked right through the fence. <laughs> well, after he fled from you, is that when you started going steady? No. Uh, we didn't go steady till October 5th, 1948. <laughs> the only calendar I ever saw with high heels. <laughs> you say October 5th, uh, 5th, 1948, you started going steady, huh? Yes. You don't remember what time this was, huh? Eight o'clock. <laughs> well, I, I remember that fateful day. It was a Thursday, wasn't it? Tuesday. Tuesday. <laughs> well, what happened on this Black Tuesday? <laughs> How did you know you were going steady? Was he reeling back from this kiss? No. <laughs> he gave me a track shoe to wear around my neck. <laughs> Gave you his track shoes to wear around his, your neck? Just one. Was his foot in it, or had he removed it? <laughs> no. It, it was his little gold track shoe on a chain that he got for being on the track team. 
What did your husband do on the track team? He was the best pole baller at Hollywood High School. <laughs> He was, huh? Yeah. He should have been. He got plenty of practice jumping that fence. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Cara, what do you think of a couple as young as Charlene and her husband getting married these days? I think it's all right if the children had responsibilities at 12 and 14. I believe in the young marriages. But I believe that if men would marry when they're 27 and women were between 23 and 25, they have good common sense and there'd be less divorces. <laughs> Now, how did you arrive at that figure of 27 for, as the ideal age for matrimony? Well, I've known many people that married at that age, and they were very happy for years and years and years. Well, I think you sneaked out of that question pretty well. <laughs> Could you give uh, Charlene here any uh, specific advice about matrimony? You seem to be an authority on the subject. Stop. Think. Save your angry words, my dear. <laughs> That's good advice If you stop and think You can come up with A lot better insults <laughs> Well I've kidded you both But you mustn't take me seriously Because right now I'm going to give you a chance To make some real money When I say real money I'm not fooling tonight Now you're going to play You bet your life You beat our other couples And you'll get a chance At the $5,000 question can't tell you how much you have to win, but George is going to remind our listeners. The housewife and Salvador Vara still lead with $313. All right, here we go. Let's see how high you can build your $20. You selected drinking songs as your category. Here's your first question. How much of the 20 are you going to bet? How much you bet? How much? 1975. 19? 19. 19. All right. Give me the title of this uh, drinking song. Play, Jerry. What is it? Sweet Adeline is right. Sweet Adeline is right. Now I have $39. All right, now you've got $39. How much are you going to try this time? Remember, you're going for $5,000 tonight. I mean, $38.99. $38.99. Okay. Is that all right with you, Grandma? Oh, it's all right with me. Oh, there's nothing. <laughs> 3899. Play it, Jerry. Talk up, kids. Talk it over. I know I can I do know it and I can't tell you. La 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 the key that dime. Oh, the chine or something. Oh. Oh, oh I, I, I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. I'm sorry, too. There's a tavern in the town. Oh, golly, yeah. Yeah. It was so easy, you just stumbled right over. <laughs> I know. Well, they don't have... give up now. You still have a cent left. Oh, dear. All right, you're going to bet the whole thing? Oh, well, talk it over now. I don't want to... Oh. <laughs> All right, everything, huh? Play it, Jerry. She can sing her, but she doesn't remember that. She doesn't care. She's happy singing. I know it. Well, it's the Whippin' Poof song. Yeah. Rudy Valley's been singing it for 30 years. They're broke, Groucho. They're, They're broke. Once. Nobody leaves here broke. Give me yeah. that card. We're going to give you a chance to win $25. <laughs> what color is an orange? Yellow. Now talk it over. What color is an orange? Joking. What is it? <laughs> orange? Oh, this is right. Uh, I know. Well, Rachel, this right. couple went broke. You are fine. So that means that Salvador Vara and his partner, the housewife, with $313 in just one minute, get the chance of the DeSoto Plymouth $5,000 question. <laughs> Here's a good tip for all of us car owners to keep in mind as we look forward to another busy season of summer driving. Make safe driving a habit. Check your car. Check accidents. Tomorrow is the first day of Vehicle Maintenance Month, and there's no better place to take your car for a safety inspection 
than a DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Here, highly skilled mechanics trained in factory methods will see to it that your car gets a complete safety checkup. Brakes, headlights, wheels, tires, steering, windshield wipers, glass, horn, muffler, and exhaust. They'll see that everything is done to make your car safe and sound for the thousands of happy miles of driving ahead of you. And you'll be pleasantly surprised when you find out how little this costs. Remember, make safe driving a habit. Check your car. Check accidents. Drive in where you'll see the familiar sign of better service. The friendly sign of a DeSoto Plymouth dealer. And here's Salvador Vara and his partner, the housewife, all set for the DeSoto Plymouth $5,000 question, Groucho. Well, uh, Salvador, you're a bullfighter, but you're now on the horns of the dilemma. Here we go for $5,000. I'll give you 15 seconds to decide on a single answer between you. Think carefully and please no help from the customers. You ready? Paul Bunyan, the legendary character of American folklore, had a huge blue ox for a pet. And together they performed tremendous feats of strength. For $5,000, tell me the name of Paul Bunyan's ox. What is the answer you two have decided upon? Blue boy, Mr. Sister. No, I'm, I'm sorry. The, uh, the correct answer is babe. So that means the big question next week will be worth $5,500. Well, you lost the big money, but how much did they win in the quiz, George? Uh, $313 in the quiz. Well, that's not too bad. Congratulations and thanks Thank to both of you much. and to all of our contestants yeah, on the show you, tonight. <laughs> Be sure to tune in again next Wednesday night at the same time for the Groucho Marx Show when the big question will be worth $5,500. And don't miss Groucho's television show, also presented by the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America. And remember, all dealers who sell DeSoto also sell Plymouth. Two great cars, both products of the Chrysler Corporation. And when you drive in, tell them Groucho sent you. Good night, folks, and remember... See the Soto Fire Dome tomorrow. Folks, here's a reminder from the National Safety Council. Make safe driving a habit. Check your car. Check accidents. You Bet Your Life, transcribed from Hollywood, is produced by John Goodell. Directed by Robert Dwan and Bernie Smith. Music by Jerry Fielding. This is George Fenneman signing off for the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast. Ladies and gentlemen... The secret word tonight is clock. C-L-O-C-K. Really? You bet your life. <laughs> More than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America present Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life, the comedy quiz series produced and transcribed from Hollywood. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight, for the very first time on You Bet Your Life, we're going to tell you about what we think is the most beautiful car ever built, the distinguished 1953 DeSoto. This magnificent new DeSoto is now on display at your DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Be sure and listen later in the show for news of the beautiful 1953 DeSoto. And here he is, Hawks the down. one, the only... Oh! Nice fella, knew him well. Oh, that's me!
Well, here I am again with $1,000 for one of our couples. If any of them say the secret word, the duck here will come down and pay him 100 bucks. We invited some firemen to the show tonight, and just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected uh, Mr. Robert Reeder. His partner is a woman with an unusual occupation, Mrs. Greta Magnuson Grossman. Folks, would you please come in and meet Groucho Marx? Well, welcome, welcome. Welcome to your bet your life. Say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common word, something you see every day. Miss uh, Greta, Mrs. Greta Grossman, huh? That's right. And Mr. Reeder, you're a fireman, huh? Yes, sir. Where are you from, the Smoky Mountains? Uh, Dallas, Texas. Dallas, Texas, huh? Greta Magnuson, huh? Grossman. That's right. Where, where are you from? Uh, Helsing Boys, Sweden. Uh, could you talk a little louder? I don't think they can. Helsing Boys, Sweden. Oh, well, that means nothing to me. Where is uh, That's Hel- opposite Helsing, uh, Denmark. Oh, now I know exactly where it is. I'm sure you do. What Hamlet was, was born, uh, uh, came Hamlet? from there. Yeah. Oh, that's mm-hmm. where Hamlet came from. Yeah. I thought Hamlets came from piglets. <laughs> well, that kind, yes. But the famous one, I mean. Oh, the famous. Hamlet, you mean to be or not to be? That is the question. You said it. <laughs> well, not originally. Shakespeare said it. <laughs> Greta, I take it uh, you're from Sweden, huh? Yes, I uh, am. Are you married? Yes, I am. You have any little uh, smorgasbord at home? Uh, no, only the ones we eat. <laughs> now, uh, Smokey Stover, let's talk to you. Uh, are, are you married? Uh, yes, I am. Some fireman. You burned your own bridges behind you. <laughs> How long have you been a fireman? Uh, about three and a half months. Oh, you're just a rookie, huh? Yes, sir. Do they let you fight the fires yet, or do they just let you play with matches? No, they... <laughs> They uh, let us fight fires, and uh, when we're not fighting fires, we'll, we go out on fire prevention once a week. Now, do you learn how to be able to rush to a fire in a hurry? Uh, yes, you job? do. You uh, have to uh, jump out of bed in a sound sleep, put on your clothes, and uh, you get on the fire truck, and your siren going, you're out of there in about 30 seconds. You get out of the firehouse in 30 seconds? About huh? 30 seconds. You mean that's if somebody sets fire to the firehouse? <laughs> well, you usually have a long ring, and then you know it's a fire. Uh-huh. Now, Greta, let's get back to you. Fenneman says you have an unusual occupation. What is it? I'm an industrial designer. I design furniture and lamps, fixtures, and uh, pottery, and mm. uh, textiles, and houses. Mm-hmm. Well, you've got a good job. Anytime you get tired, you just take out your pencil and draw up a chair. I do, all the time. Now, what kind of furniture do you design? I design modern furniture, and uh, I, I sketch them and do the full-scale drawings ready for production. That's very nice. Now, uh, how about you, Smokey? Do you find all this talk about furniture pretty dull? I think it's very interesting. Oh, I forgot you're a fireman. Chop, chop, huh? <laughs> Which furniture do you find easier to smash, the modern or the conventional? Well, neither one. Um, actually, our job is to... Uh, protect all the furniture in a house during a fire. You mean you just carry that big axe around to open a can of beer? Well, especially for a minute. Well, I'd like to continue talking to you two, but now it's time for you to win some money. In just one minute, you're going to play your bet your life for a chance at the $1,000 question. Folks, this is a big night on your bet your life. Tonight, we're introducing for the first time the distinguished new 1953 DeSoto. As a DeSoto owner from a way back, I can honestly say this 1953 DeSoto is the most beautiful car I've ever seen. Don't you think so, George? Indeed it is, Groucho. Friends, I'd like you to try and picture the stunning new DeSoto. Close your eyes and imagine a sparkling new grill, gracefully leading to the beautiful and practical air vent hood. Now look down the hood until you come to DeSoto's huge new one-piece curved windshield with its tremendous area of distortion-free vision. Now come to the rear and see the truly dramatic sweep of the wide one-piece curving rear window. Look at the beautifully luxurious lines of its longer swept-back fenders and lower, wider deck lid. On the inside, the distinguished 1953 DeSoto is a magnificent blend of fashionable nylon upholstery and glamorous trim. But to fully appreciate it, you must see it. It is available in two great series, the mighty 160-horsepower Fire Dome V8 and the brilliant Powermaster 6. Folks, this distinguished new 1953 DeSoto is now on display at your DeSoto Plymouth dealers. So go see him tomorrow. 
And when you do, tell them Groucho sent you. All right, now let's see how you work together as a team. Here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. You selected foreign cities located on rivers. Is that right? That's Here's right. your first question. How much will you bet? And talk right up. Uh, $19. Yeah, do, you do you think that's all right? Right. It's okay for me. Okay. 19 All right. The Russian city of Stalingrad is located on what river? Volga. That's right. The Volga. Well, off for a good start, you have $39. How much have they got? $39. $39. Remember, you're going for $1,000 tonight. Now, how much of this sum will you bet this time? 38 Okay. All right. And what river is the city of Vienna located? Oh, Dono. Danube. 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 That's right. The Blue Danube. You now have $77. And here's your third question. How much of the 77 are you going to try? Uh, 76 Okay. The Chinese city of Nanking is on what river? Uh, Yangtze. The Yangtze is right. You've now climbed to one hundred fifty-three dollars. Is your last chance to beat the other couples? How much of the one hundred and fifty-three you're going to risk? All of it. All of it. Uh, <laughs> on uh, on what river do you find the the city of Cairo, Egypt? The Nile. The Nile is right. <laughs> With $306. Put it there, kid. You're a very oh, bright cop, huh? Thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Well, Groucho, just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected a junior high school girl, Miss Leslie Ann Green. Her partner is a businessman, Mr. R.P. Knoll. And here they are, folks. Please come in and meet Groucho Marx. Well, welcome. Welcome, kids, for the to you bet your life. Say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common word, something you see every day. A businessman and a schoolgirl, eh? Now, let's see. Uh, Leslie Ann Green, is that you? You had the schoolgirl complexion, so I guess you're the schoolgirl, huh? Real peaches and cream, isn't she? Yeah? And Mr. Noel, I, I, I don't mean to say you haven't got a schoolgirl complexion. Well, thank you. Sir. Only it's more like peaches and yogurt. <laughs> How old are you, Leslie? Thirteen. Thirteen, huh? Mm-hmm. Well, what is your age, Mr. Noel? Fifty-two. Fifty-two, huh? What's your first name, Mr. Noel? Raleigh. Really? No, Raleigh. <laughs> <laughs> you realize, of course, that we can be sued by Abbott and Costello. <laughs> How do you spell it? R-O-L-Y. Oh, Rolly. <laughs> Can you pronounce it Raleigh? Yes, sir. I'll just call you Roly Poly, huh? <laughs> Where are you from, Raleigh? Uh, Sedalia, Missouri. Really? No, Raleigh. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's your uh, what's your hometown, uh, Leslie? Well, I was I was born right here. <laughs> Funny, I didn't notice it. I... <laughs> A lot of strange things go on around this show. <laughs> what sort of work do you do, Roly? Uh, I'm a senior partner in the uh, firm of Noel Beckendorf and Company. Is that so? Well, congratulations. I must say I never heard of it. Uh, well, that's uh, not what, surprising. What kind of a racket are you running? We don't run a racket, uh, Groucho. Uh, we're a firm of insurance managers, in which we uh, set up insurance programs, manage company facilities, uh, uh, operate production agencies, operate a brokerage department, and carry on high-level conferences with various business executives about their insurance programs and otherwise. Do they understand what you're talking about? I always hope so. <laughs> I never understand what an insurance man talks about. The minute they start with, well, the 20-year endowment means that in the 13th year, you get $338. If you haven't died in the meantime, unless you have fire and theft and collision. <laughs> By this time, my eyes are glazed or I'm tired asleep. <laughs> now, let's get back to you. Uh, what school do you attend, Raleigh? Uh, Nolly. Uh, Leslie, huh? Yeah? Emerson Junior High. Emerson Junior High. Why did they call it Emerson? Was it named after Benjamin Franklin? No, Ralph Waldo Emerson. Has anything unusual uh, happened to you at school, such as getting there on time? <laughs> well, uh, one time in school, there were some boys in the class, and they were making some funny noises with their mouth, and so... Well, like what? Well, they were, <laughs> they were going like this. And so they taught me how to do it, and so 
One time. <laughs> I think you do it very well. Then. Would you give us a little more of that, uh, Leslie? <laughs> How do you do it? I like to learn. <laughs> so the teacher. Let me see you. How do you do that? Huh? <laughs> try it, now. I'll try it. You make quite the insurance business. <laughs> I believe I can master that, Groucho. There's a fortune in this if you can get it done. <laughs> Let's all do it together, huh? Yeah. Okay, one, two, three. <laughs> Is this going to be mystifying on radio, huh? <laughs> oh, that's very good. You say me learn. You spent your time well in there. <laughs> you have much to do with the boys in school? Well, no, because the teacher keeps her eye on us pretty much, and so we don't have too much to do with them. See, that's unfortunate. Huh? <laughs> How about on the way to school? Well, the boys have their buses, and then the girls have theirs. Why is it necessary to put the boys in one bus and the girls in another bus? What well, a ridiculous question. <laughs> <laughs> The girls, the boys start showing off in front of the girls and they start fighting and it makes the bus driver nervous. Well, why should the bus driver be nervous? Doesn't he carry a revolver? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Noll, will you try that noise once more? <laughs> Let's see you do it. I'm getting better. Say, you could go to high school with <laughs> Now, Leslie, since you're here, maybe you can reassure some of the people of my generation who are a little doubtful about today's teenagers. What's your opinion of today's youngsters? Oh, they have nothing to worry about. <laughs> a guarded statement, have I ever heard of <laughs> How do you spend your evenings, for example? Oh, we uh, have about two hours of homework and then watch TV. And I don't need to worry, eh? <laughs> Is my program popular with the uh, intelligent, charming, younger set? Well, I guess so, because all the boys go around wiggling their eyebrows like this, the way you do. <laughs> well, now, that, now I know why they have boy buses and girl buses. <laughs> Well, you're a, you're a lovely couple, and uh, I'd like to see you win a reasonable sum of money here tonight. You beat our other couples, and you'll get a chance at the $1,000 question. I can't tell you how much you have to win, but uh, Mr. Fenneman is going to remind our listeners. Greta Grossman and the fireman won $306, and the secret word is clock. Here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. You selected initials of familiar organizations. Is that right? And you talk it over before you give me any answers on any of these questions. Here's your first question. How much would you bet? Nineteen. Nineteen dollars. All right. What do the initials C-I-O stand for? Uh, Talk it over. Uh, uh, C-I-O. <laughs> Take a stab if you don't know. I don't know. Well, time's up. Can I get the cameraman to give me the answer to this one? <laughs> Congress of Industrial Organizations. Oh, good. You now have one dollar. All right. Remember, you don't get discouraged now. Remember, you're going for a thousand dollars tonight. How much of this buck are you going to bet this time? Oh. We might as well bet. Okay. It all. all right. What do the initials WCTU stand for? Women's Christian Temperance Union. Women's Christian Temperance Union. That's right. That's right. Now you got your buck. Here's your third question. How much of the two bucks are you going to go for? You might all as well it. shoot the word. Yeah. All right. All, what do, all of it. What do the initials FCC stand for? FCC, Federal Communications Commission. That's right, right. Federal Communications Is your last chance to beat the other couples. You have $4. How much are you going to bet? $4. All right. What do the initials AMA stand for? American Medical Association. That's right. That's right. <laughs> I'm sorry, nobody leaves here with eight bucks. I'm going to give you one more question to bring it up to $25. And please, no coaching. Are you ready? Around what holiday do you receive Christmas cards? Christmas. Christmas is right! <laughs> Thanks and good luck to the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Oh, Welcome, youngs. Oh, yeah. No, no, wait a minute. <laughs> 
Groucho, we have... Welcome, young sister. <laughs> we have an engaged couple for you now, Groucho. Yeah, well, you lucky fellow, you. Uh, <laughs> Miss Genevieve, Genevieve Capri and Mr. Donald W. Armstrong, come in and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, youngsters, for the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common word, something you see every day. Let's see now. Uh, Genevieve, uh, Genevieve, uh, how do you pronounce that? Capri. Capri, that's a very pretty name. And Donald Armstrong, huh? That's a pretty name, too, isn't it? Uh, I don't want you to feel bad. I think that's a lovely name. <laughs> Where are you from, Don? I'm a native. You're a native? Well, you should have a ring in your nose. <laughs> How do you like uh, living in California? I think it has everything. Well, not quite. We haven't got King Farouk. <laughs> Where are you from, uh, Genevieve? Oh, Genevieve, sweet Genevieve. I'm from Williamstown, about 15 Where? miles. Williamstown, New Jersey. It's Williamstown? about 15 miles. Spell it. W-I-L-L-I-A-M-S-T-O-W-N. Now pronounce it. Williamstown. What happened to the L's? You knocked the L's out of that what? word. <laughs> Can't you say Williamstown? Try it. William Williamstown. <laughs> no wonder she moves. She can't pronounce it. <laughs> Williamstown. Is that why you left Williamstown? Where do you live now? Uh... Glendale. Glendale. You said you lived in some weird places, haven't you, Jenny? <laughs> why did you come to California from Philadelphia? You want to... <laughs> I did. You want to be with a pennant winner? <laughs> No, I, I didn't really come exactly uh, straight from uh, Philadelphia to well, Glendale. I you went, can, you know. Yes. Uh, well, I took, uh, went uh, bike. I went to New York, and then I went to Africa. I went to uh, Siam, and Bangkok, and, and Calcutta. Well, you see what happens when somebody talks to the motorman? <laughs> Motorman gets distracted, forgets to make a left turn in the right place. Before you know it, you're in Bangkok. Well, let's have it. Why did you come to Glendale by way of Calcutta? Was the bridge out in Kansas City? <laughs> My bridge was out once in Kansas City. Luckily, I knew a local dentist there, and he fixed it. <laughs> My foster father has been collecting animals all over the world, and I used to go with him. This sounds like a fascinating business. Did he collect monkeys? Yes. Oh. <laughs> Rascally monkey business. <laughs> Don, what is your age? Twenty-three. Twenty-three. Mm -hmm. And how old are you, Jen? Uh, Genevieve? Twenty-seven. Well, you're not only attractive, but you're also honest, aren't you? <laughs> Most unusual. Did, uh, where did you meet Genevieve, uh, Don? I met her in New Orleans. At the in New Le Orleans? Yes. <laughs> You said you get around, Jenny. I met her at the Ringling Brothers Circus. Uh, both of us had gone Were you on exhibition there, Jenny? <laughs> no. Heavens, no. He met you at a circus? Yes. How come? We what had were you both doing gone there? to the circus to meet uh, Dr. Henderson, the circus doctor. We both have a common interest in animals, and through the book that he had written, we decided to meet him. What sort of work are you doing now, Genevieve? I collect wild animals, bring them to America. You're not Frank Buck, are you? <laughs> no, exactly. They do know me as uh, Jungle Jenny in the animal world. It doesn't seem possible that a wisp of a girl like you collecting animals, why, even I'm not afraid of you. By the way, what kind of animals do you collect? White mice? <laughs> I collect wild elephants, leopards, um, monkeys, Pythons, boa constrictors. You take one step Lepid. near and I'll scream. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us about this wild animal collecting. Uh, how do you go about it? Oh, I go to the foreign countries and uh, contact native people there. Have you had any close calls in animal hunting? I know I've oh, had many yes. close calls in my hunting career. <laughs> there was, that was time some years ago. <laughs> Could you tell us about one? Uh, one big lie. Oh, well, this isn't a lie. I well, have the scars to show the time when I was attacked by the Black Panther. Oh, let's see. Oh, boy, you really did get clawed, didn't you? Yeah. Did you capture the panther? Did you? No, this animal was on board a ship, and the native people thought it was a tame one, but instead of being a tame one, they were letting out a black, ferocious one. So I ran to the cage and tried to rectify the error, and the animal's head and claw got caught by my force of the 
uh, door down on the animal. And in doing so, it made him stronger than me, and he got his whole body out of the cage, and he turned like lightning and leaped for my throat. And, unf and I was just fortunate to have this board that I picked up that broke his leap at my throat, and he just knocked me down. And I thought, of course, he was going to continue running. Instead, he turned right back at me again, and I shoved my arm in his mouth, and then was when I thought that was it. And I thought, well, maybe if I relax, I would save my life, but if not, why, what's the difference? I was going to die anyway. And just then I did, as I did relax, the animal leaped away from me. Well, what, what was he doing while all this was going on? <laughs> he was reading that book by the doctor. <laughs> Probably smoking a big cigar on the side of the tent or something. <laughs> Have you ever caught a cheetah? No. No? No. We caught a cheetah in a poker game last night. <laughs> <Saturday. laughs> Plugged into a jelly. <laughs> Don, apparently you've got a fiancé who's lived dangerously. How about you? What sort of work do you do? I sell water. <laughs> I imagine it's soft water, isn't it? It's a special kind of You say of you water. sell water? What kind of water? A special kind. Well, it better be. What kind of water? I sell sparkless drinking water, artesian well water. In the jungle? No, right here in Los Angeles, bottled by the Sparkless Drinking Water Corporation. So you're around selling this sparkless water, and she's got her head in a leopard's mouth. <laughs> well, you're a nice couple, and I wish you lots of luck in your marriage, and also in the jungle. Now you're going to play your bet your life. Run your 20 bucks and the more than our other couples, and you'll get a chance at a $1,000 question. I can't tell you how much you have to win, but George is going to remind our listeners. Greta Grossman and the firemen still lead with $306. Here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. You selected sciences ending in ology as your category. Here's your first question. How much will you bet? 1975. Ah. Oh. <laughs> what is the science called that deals with both beneficial and harmful microbes? Biology. What do you say? Oh. All right, time's Biology. up. I'm sorry. Well, it's bacteriology. Oh. I thought it was Should have known that from the doctor's book. You now have uh, 25 cents. You've got 25 cents. Remember, you're going for $1,000 tonight, and don't get discouraged. Yeah, how much of your 25 cents you're going to bet this time? <laughs> 24. 24, all right. What is the science called that deals with the nerves and the nervous system? Oh, all the ideologies I know. <laughs> Why did you pick this is category, Is that kinesiology? Jenny? No, I'm sorry. This is neurology. Now you're down to one cent. Here's your third question. How much of the cent are you going to bet? Oh. Well, you're always on the scent in the jungle, aren't you? Yeah. Now you're on the scent here. What is the science called that deals with the life history of plants and animals? Biology. Biology is right. <laughs> How much have they got, gentlemen? Well, they wind up with uh, two cents. And this only the third question. Oh. How much have they got? Well, they have two cents. Well, keep your two cents out of this. <laughs> is your last chance to beat the other couples? How much will you bet? How much? Two cents. All right. What is the science called that deals with the skin? Oh, Take a stab if you don't know. Guess. Well, it's dermatology. They went broke, Groucho. Well, then nobody goes broke here. I'll give you one more question. Get this right and you'll get $25. Are you ready? From what animal do we get mink coats? Minks is right. Well, we just picked the wrong one. Well, Groucho, this couple lost all their money, so that means that Greta Grossman and the firemen with three hundred and six dollars in just one minute get the chance at the DeSoto Plymouth one thousand dollar question. Thanks. Thanks and good luck to the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Right now, I'd like you to meet an attractive young lady with some news about a distinguished beauty. This is Arlene Francis, and I want to tell you about what I think is the most beautiful new car ever designed. The distinguished, entirely new 1953 DeSoto, now on display at your DeSoto Plymouth dealers. The 1953 DeSoto is really magnificent, beautiful from its huge, one-piece curved windshield to the truly dramatic sweep of its wide, curving rear window. 
Wait till you see the new DeSoto styling with its longer swept back fenders and lower wider deck lid. It's beautiful. Inside, the new 1953 DeSoto is a masterpiece, rich and luxurious. They've taken handsome nylon upholstery and set it off with glamorous, harmonizing trim. Yes, distinguished is the word for the new 1953 DeSoto. The distinguished 1953 DeSoto is available in two great series, the mighty 160-horsepower Fire Dome V8 and the brilliant DeSoto Power Master 6. See them tomorrow. Here's Greta Grossman and the firemen, all set for the DeSoto Plymouth $1,000 question, Groucho. Right in here. All right, here's a chance for you to uh, win enough money to uh, get yourself a whole smorgasbord for the firehouse. <laughs> this is for a thousand dollars. I'll give you fifteen seconds to decide on a single answer between you. Think carefully, and please no help in the audience. You ready? One of the biggest news stories of 1937 contained cons, uh, one of the biggest news stories of 1937 concerned the sinking of an American gunboat by the Japanese. The Yangtze River incident threatened to plunge us into war. For a thousand dollars, what was the name of this ill-fated gunboat? <laughs> All right, what's the answer you two have decided upon? We wish we would know. Well, I'm, I'm sorry. The correct answer is the panai. So that uh, P A N A Y. So that means the big question next week will be worth one thousand five hundred dollars. Why do you lost the big money? But how much did they win the quiz, George? Uh, Three hundred and six dollars in the well, quiz. That's not too bad. Congratulations and thanks to both of you and to all of our contestants on the show tonight. Thank you. Be sure to tune in again next week at the same time for the Groucho Marx Show, when the big question will be worth $1,500. And don't miss Groucho's television show, also presented by the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America, now displaying the most beautiful car ever built, the distinguished 1953 DeSoto. See the beautiful new DeSoto tomorrow. And remember, all dealers who sell DeSoto also sell Plymouth, two great cars, both products of the Chrysler Corporation. And when you drive in, tell them Groucho sent you. Good night, folks. And remember, see the 1953 DeSoto. <laughs> folks, here's a reminder from the National Safety Council. Condition your car for winter conditions. You Bet Your Life, transcribed from Hollywood, is produced by John Goodell. Directed by Robert Dwan and Bernie Smith. Music by Jerry Fielding. This is George Fenneman signing off for the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast. Ladies and gentlemen, the secret word tonight is smile. S-M-I-L-E. Really? You bet your life! The more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers of America present Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life. The comedy quiz series produced and transcribed from Hollywood. Folks, it's another big night on You Bet Your Life. Later in this program, we're going to bring you exciting news about the new 1953 Plymouth, the first truly balanced car in the low-priced field. And now, here he is, the one, the only... You know who that is? That's me!
This is the way you have to smile on television. <laughs> It's like Fenneman. It just occurred to me. Eh? <laughs> well, here I am again with $1,500 for one of our couples. Groucho, just before we went on the air... You're I... just the same now as you did a minute ago. <laughs> Groucho, just before we went on the air... Aren't you sick of saying that? <laughs> our studio audience selected a fellow by the name of Mr. Uh, John Martin, who works for an employment bureau, and uh, his partner is a housewife, Mrs. Morris Collins. <laughs> Folks, come on in to meet Groucho Marx, please. Well, how do you do? How do you do? Welcome. <laughs> welcome, welcome to you bet your wife, uh, bet your life. Uh, say the secret word and you'll divide a hundred dollars. It's a common word, something you always have with you. Mrs. Collins and uh, John Martin. Eh? Mrs. Collins, uh, are you related to Tom? <laughs> no. <laughs> Must be pretty sick of that joke, huh? <laughs> Where are you from, uh, Mrs. Collins? Quincy, Massachusetts. And uh, what is your hometown, Mr. Martin? Well, I'm a native Angelino. I was born in the Green Meadows District. Green Meadows? Out by the oil wells. Oh. <laughs> Were you born near a sump pump? I don't know what a sump pump is, really. It's something you have in the cellar, I think, that floods usually, and you have to send for the plumber. Uh, what is your first name, Mrs. Collins? Aida, but I, I... prefer Ada. You prefer Ada? Yes. Ada from Decatur? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I think I like Aida better. It's, it's a very pretty name, you know. Where, where'd you get that name? Well, well, how'd you get that name? My father was a lover of operas, and he named me after his favorite opera, Aida. Oh, well, you should be happy he wasn't crazy about the Barbara Seville. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> What's your husband's name? Um, Maurice, but I prefer Morris. Uh-huh. Well, does, <coughs> does he know that you prefer Morris? <laughs> I call him Morris. Well, how did you two get together? Well, was we... he in a Maurice chair? And uh... no, I really met him in the cellar of my home. Now you're talking. <laughs> <laughs> he was helping the plumber install the steam heat in my mother's home. Oh, and you started warming up to each other right away. <laughs> well, did you marry the steam fitter immediately, or did you wait a little while? I waited a while. Uh -huh. well, that's all right, as long as you had a good fire going in the furnace. <laughs> how, long, how long did you wait? Six months? Sixteen years. Sixteen years? Yes. I didn't know you could bank a furnace <laughs> that long. <laughs> Now, what, what is it you do? I, I forget, uh, Mr. Martin. I'm a uh, personnel counselor at Mutual Employers Association. Oh, well, that sounds pretty involved. What kind of an outfit is that? Tell us something about it. Well, it's an association of employers to secure uh, personnel for medium and size, medium and uh, small size firms. Could you help me find a secretary? <laughs> no, I, uh, uh, I couldn't. Um... You mean you've spoken to a few of my former secretaries? <laughs> it's no, a I mean, lie. Every word of it. I mean that you'd have to uh, become a member of the association. So, well, let's say I was a member. How do you proceed in getting me a secretary? Well, the secretary would come into the office and be greeted by our receptionist. And uh, What does the receptionist look like? She's a uh, beautiful redhead. Well, let's uh, skip the secretary and just send me the receptionist. <laughs> I'd like to go on talking to you, but in just one minute, you're going to play your bet your life for a chance at the $1,500 question. Uh, now, before we proceed, I have a note here I'd like to read. It says, there are many fighting men in Korea and in the hospitals in the Far East who will be forgotten this Christmas because they have no family or folks back home. Here's how you can play Santa Claus with these boys. Mail a Christmas present or send a donation to give a lift with a gift in care of the Los Angeles Junior Chamber of Commerce. They'll fly your gift over to Korea. I think this is a great idea. Let's all do it right away. It isn't too late. Send it in care of the Los Angeles Junior Chamber of Commerce. All right, now, let's see how you work together as a team. Fenneman, would you mind explaining the rules to these uh, young couple? All right. You bet as much of your $20 as you want on each of four questions, and the couple that earns the most money gets a chance at the $1,500 DeSoto Plymouth question later on in the show. Here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. Out of our list of 20 categories, you selected number two. 
Characters from plays by William Shakespeare. Here's your first question. How much will you bet? Will 17 mm. do? No, oh, I think that'll be... Uh, $17. The Montagues and the Capulets have a feud in what Shakespearean play? Romeo and Juliet. Romeo and Juliet is right. Off to a good start, you have $37. Now, how much of your 17 $37 dollars you're going to try for on this one? 34 35 Anything you like. 35 will do. <laughs> Thirty-five dollars. Othello's wife was smothered to death. What was her name? Oh, uh, yeah. Othello's wife. Desdemona. Desdemona, you got in right on the bell. <laughs> you now have seventy-two dollars. And I'm very happy about that because I knew you had it on the tip of your tongue. You just couldn't get it out. <laughs> Let's see your tongue. <laughs> Part of it is still hanging on there. <laughs> now, here's your third question. How much of the $72 are you going to risk this time? Let's try, um... $72. Come on. 70. Time's a-wasting. $70. $70. What was the name of the husband and the taming of the shrew? I can't think of that one. No, I'm sorry. It's Petruchio. Yeah. You now have two dollars. <laughs> <laughs> well, you still have a chance to beat the other couples. How much of the two dollars are you going to bet? Oh, uh, bet it all. Bet, bet it all. all. All right. Puck, Oberon, and Titania are characters from what play? Midsummer Night's Dream. That's right. Midsummer Night's Dream. Well, they wound up with four dollars, Groucho. You're not through yet. Nobody leaves here with four dollars. I'll give you one more question for twenty-one dollars, which will give you a total of twenty-five. Are you ready? What animal do you associate with Buffalo Bill? <laughs> Buffalo. The Bill is right. Buffalo Bill. <laughs> Thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. And now, Groucho, here's our next contestant, Mr. Uh, uh, Plymouth. Oh, that is uh, Peters. Uh, say, Fenneman, wait till you see her. Who? The new 53 Plymouth. Tomorrow's the day, you know. And boy, that car's going to make history. Why, it's... Yes, yes. But, Mr. Peters, the question... No question about it. The new 53 Plymouth is a new kind of low price car. Nothing else like it on the road. Looks different. Rides different. It's built different. And the Plymouth engine stepped up to 100 horsepower. Oh, really, Mr. Peters, we're trying right now. No I... good trying now. you got to wait till tomorrow. But then, oh, baby, wait till you see the sensational new... Mr. Peters, suppose we just walk over... No, the... don't walk. Run to your DeSoto Plymouth dealers tomorrow. Bring your wife, your kids, your fountain pen. Fountain pen? Sure. Once you meet the new Plymouth, it's easy as pie to enter the big $25,000 contest. Why, they're giving away six new 53 Plymouths and hundreds of cash prizes. Get your entry blank from your DeSoto Plymouth dealer, but make sure it's mailed before next Monday midnight. Mr. Peters, are you a contestant on You Bet Your Life, or aren't you? A contestant? Heck no. Just want to tell the world about the important new 53 Plymouth. Well, thanks for the use of your mic, Mr. Fenneman. Don't forget, everybody, meet the new Plymouth tomorrow. Groucho, we invited some lady cab drivers to the program tonight, and just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected Miss Jean Fleurichamp. Her partner is an unusual schoolboy, Mr. Walter Plummer. Folks, would you please come in and meet Groucho Marx? Welcome, youngsters, to You Bet Your Life. Say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common word, something you always have with you. Uh, Miss Jean uh, Fleurichamp, is that That's the way right. you pronounce it? Right. Fleurichamp? And Mr. Walter Plummer, eh? Jean, uh, you're a cab driver? Yes, I am. Yellow? Um, <laughs> no. No? No. <laughs> now, what color is your cab? Well, it's yellow, but I'm a very brave person, really. Oh. <laughs> I know it isn't polite to ask a woman a race, so uh, how old are you, uh, were you when you started driving a cab? I was 23. I see. And how long have you been driving? <laughs> well, Grazio, we don't... Um, we don't count the years of experience in uh, years. We count it in mileage. Really? You don't look as though you'd gone over 5,000 miles. <laughs> Unless, of course, you're using retreads. I don't know. <laughs> How old are you, uh, Jean? I'm 31. 31. Well, you don't look it, huh? How old are you, Mr. Plummer? 13. 13, huh? Where do you live? 
Claremont. Hmm, Claremont. Where is Claremont? Oh, about five miles north of Pomona. Where's Pomona? <laughs> oh, well, that's where they have the county fair each year, the Los Angeles County Fair. Hmm. It's pretty well known for that. It is, huh? Were you on exhibition then? <laughs> now then, uh, precisely where is Claremont? Four miles north of Pomona. <laughs> you just said it was five miles. <laughs> Apparently, Claremont is a fast little place. You know? <laughs> the present rate is going a mile a minute. <laughs> what sort of work does your father do, uh, Walter? He's an electrician out at Kaiser's Steel Mill. And your last name is Plummer? Mm-hmm. And your father's electrician? Is yes. your father a plumber, too, or is he just an electrician? No, well, he's a plumber, too. Mm-hmm. Oh, I see. Well, after all, some plumbers are electricians. So. <laughs> Last time I got a bill from a plumber, I said he got a shock. <laughs> well, that's no hokum, either, huh? Well, let's talk about your work, uh, Jean. Isn't it unusual for a woman to be driving a yellow? No. You think women are more skillful drivers than men? Yes, I think they're more courteous, and um, yes, I think they're you know, they're better drivers. Mm-hmm. Why do you say that? Well, because I'm a woman. <laughs> <laughs> I guess they are more skillful at that. They have to be to get a car in the garage sideways. <laughs> Now, Mr. Plummer, what do the kids call you by, by the way? They don't uh, call you Mr. Plummer, do they? I've got a sort of nicknames. They mostly call me Terry, but they call me Turpentine Terry, Terry and the Pirates, and Turkey Terry, and all kinds of names. Turkey Terry? That's just around Thanksgiving they call you. <laughs> why do they call you uh, Turpentine Terry? Don't ask me. Well, I'll ask you. Why do they call, uh, <laughs> why do they call him Turpentine Terry? Why? Well, that's a good answer, too. Now, where does the Terry come from? I thought your middle name was Walter. Well, my middle name is Terrence, and it's taken from that. Oh, I see. Well, I'll call you what the other kids call you, Titantine Terry. Eh? Is that all right with you? Now, do you have any hobbies, uh, Terry? Oh, I like to play football and baseball and basketball, and I collect stamps. And... Mm-hmm. Well, you sound like a typical red-blooded American boy. Do you have any other hobbies? Oh, I like to cook. What was that? I like to cook. I think this red-blooded American boy is going to pot. (laughs) What do you mean you like to cook? Uh, Are you a good cook? Mm, Well, I try. What makes you think you can cook? Well, I won two blue ribbons out at the fair this year for cakes. Oh, that's what you were doing at the fair? (laughs) What kind of cakes? Hot cakes? (laughs) No, one was... um, Sponge cake, and one was um, chocolate angel food cake. Well, my congratulations, Terry. What is your ambition? Would you like to be a chef someday? Well, I'd like to be a, a chef in a big hotel like the Waldorf Astoria or something like that, or a chef on television or something like that. Just think, someday the Waldorf will feature on his menu. Veal cutlet a la Tapentine Terry. <laughs> Well, it's time to stop talking and start winning some money. You're going to play your bet your life for a chance at the $1,500 question. Terry, if you win all that money, you'll feel just like I do since I got my new DeSoto. I got it last week and I'm crazy about it. I really am. Now, you just beat our other couples. That's all you have to do. Our first couple won $4. The secret word is smile. Here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. You selected first and middle names of famous women. I'll give you the initials, and you tell me what they stand for. Here's your first question. How much will you bet? Now, talk it over between you. Seventeen. Good enough? Mm-hmm. $17? M.B. Eddy was the founder of the Christian Science Church. What do the initials stand for? Mary Baker. That's right. Mary Baker. <laughs> You're off to a good start. You have $37. Remember, you're going for $1,500 tonight. Now, how much of your $37 will you bet on your second question? Thirty-six. Okay. Thirty-six. Can't hear you. Thirty-six. Thirty-six. Okay. C.J. Bond was a famous songwriter. What do the initials stand for? Um, Carrie Jacob. That's right. Carrie Jacob. 
You've now climbed to $73. Here's your third question. How much of the 73 will you try? 70. H.E. Stowe, S-T-O-W-E, wrote a famous book. What, what do the initials stand for? Talk it over. Mm. No, I well, think I am. I'm sorry. It's it's an easy one, but you you just never heard us. It's Harriet Beecher. Oh. Harriet, Harriet Beecher Stowe. You now right. have uh, three dollars. You, you now have three dollars, so don't be discouraged. Just still have a chance to beat the other couples. How much are you going to bet? Three. We made it. Okay. okay. E. B. Browning was a fam famous poetess. What do the initials stand for? Elizabeth Barrett. Elizabeth ba Barrett is right. And, and you wind up with six dollars. <laughs> I'll give you one more question. Get this right, and we'll bring the total up to twenty-five. Are you, are you ready? Yes. Who was, was buried in Grant's tomb? Oh, Grant. <laughs> Mrs. Grant is right. Groucho, just before we went on the air, we selected Mrs. Christina Kelly and Mrs. Amelia Craig uh, for reasons which I'm sure you'll discover when you meet these ladies. So, ladies, would you, would you come out and meet Groucho Marx? Welcome, girls, with the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers. <laughs> Say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common word, something you always have with you. M Mrs. Christina Kelly and, and Mrs. Amelia Craig. Is that right? Yes, sir. Fenneman sounded a little mysterious when he introduced you. Apparently, I'm supposed to find out something surprising about you to... Uh... Well, I'll get it Maybe if I have to you. sweat it out of you, huh? <laughs> now, Kelly, where were you on the night of June 12, 1922? <laughs> I don't remember. You don't, eh? Well, I can understand that. I don't even know where I was last night. <laughs> How old are you, Kelly? Sixty-three years old. You expect me to believe that? Where are you from, Kelly? I was born in Denmark. You were born in Denmark with a name like Kelly? <laughs> you get twenty years for that one. <laughs> Something's just certainly rotten in Denmark. <laughs> I'd better try and break down the other one, I think. <laughs> Craig, that's a Scotch name. How old are you? Sixty-three. You're both sixty-three, eh? Yes. You got together on your stories, eh? <laughs> well, you can't argue with me. I wasn't born yesterday either, you know. A couple of Eastern mobsters, if I ever saw one. Watch your racket, kids. Now, come clean now. Are you one of the extortion mob that's charging a buck and a half for a haircut? <laughs> Where are you from? <laughs> I'm from Denmark. I think I'm beginning to ca catch on. You are Schwesters? Yes, sisters. Your sisters, huh? We are oh. twins. Twins, huh? <laughs> well, it's impossible. You don't look anything alike. <laughs> Kelly, let me see you wiggle out of that one. <laughs> Go ahead and remember everything you say may be held against you. Well, we are not identical twins, I but see. we are fraternal twins. Fraternal twins? Yes. Eh? What fraternity do you belong to? <laughs> we don't have to be uh, brothers because we are fraternities. They also, also come in sisters. We have got the same parents, and we are born at the same time. I, I see. Well, what are you girls doing in Los Angeles? Are you having a vacation out here? No, we are living here and working. Oh, well, what are you? A couple of bookies? Uh, <laughs> what sort of work do you, do you do? Uh, well, I'm a professional cook. Oh. Uh, at present, I'm cooking for Mr. and Mrs. Earl C. Anthony. Oh. Tell us about some of the dishes uh, that you uh, put together. Well, uh, the Anthony's, they like my famous uh, Danish uh, hamburgers. Uh, you know, I, I uh, make them just like uh, a New Yorker cut. And, uh, uh, you never so exhibited I, a cake at the Pomona Fair, have you? Uh, no, I've never been in, in Pomona yet. yet. Oh. I'm sorry to say I would like it. Well, uh, what else do you make besides this hamburger? Uh, well, then I make a, a famous dish you call for pie with, with nothing in it. A, uh, a pie with nothing in it, huh? Yes. Must take a lot of crust to make a pie like that. I'll say it does. <laughs> well, what is this pie exactly? Uh, 
well, I make an ordinary papaya crust, and then I I, um, uh, I roll it out very thin and put it's just... It's like strudel, huh? That's right. And then I put in uh, just a very thin layer of uh, orange marmalade. Mm-hmm. And that, that's well, send me one sometime, will you? I sure will, Mr. Okay. Martin. Do you have any other hobbies besides uh, gangsterism? Uh, <laughs> uh, cooking pies with nothing in it? Well, uh, I knit. You knit? Yes. Uh, what I'll, do you knit? You knit what? Um, oh, I've been knitting for yeah. Red Cross. Uh, what, what do you do? You, you knit strudels and uh, things like that? Yes. Uh, she knits. Uh, huh? Sweaters. What? Sweaters? I've been uh, knitting some... Uh, uh, 450 to 500 uh, sweaters and and socks and and uh, helmets and everything. But it's all this in the war time. In the war time. Why, why do you do? Why do you? Why do you do all, all this knitting for the boys in the armed forces? Uh, yes. Well, that's wonderful. That's a mar- marvelous achievement. You say he made a lot of people happy. Now tell me, little apple strudel, what can I do to make, make you happy? Well, if you think you're thinking of kissing me, you better not try. <laughs> well, when the 63-year-olds start turning me down, I'm all washed up. Right? <laughs> I'm turning my body in the first thing in the morning. Right? <laughs> Well, it's been a very happy experience talking to you two, two, two good girls, and I wish you lots of luck in the quizzes, because right now you have a ch- chance to win a lot of money. You run your 20 bucks into more than other couples, and you'll get a chance to sit the $1,500 question. I can't okay. tell you how much you have to win, but Mr. Fenneman is going to remind our listeners. Our second couple, the lady cab driver and the schoolboy, are ahead with $6. Here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. You selected nursery rhymes and fairy tale ca- characters. Here's your first question. Now, how much will you bet? Fifteen. Eighteen. Eighteen? Okay. Eighteen dollars. You ready? Mm. Who bumped off Cock Robin with a bow and arrow? What? Uh, Robin. Uh, what? Talk it over. Robin. Uh, Robin. Who bumped off Cock Robin with a bow and an arrow? Who killed him? I'm sorry, it was the sparrow. Oh, the sparrow. Oh, gee. You now have two dollars. All right, now don't be discouraged. You're going for fifteen hundred dollars tonight, and that's the big prize. How much are you going to bet on your second question? All of it. Okay. All of it. Two dollars. Two dollars. What was the name of the kid who could have his wishes granted by a big stooge, merely by rubbing a lamp? Aladdin. Aladdin is right. Don't get discouraged. Well, you're climbing again. You have four dollars. Here's your third question. How much of the four dollars will you try? Four. Yeah. Four. Four dollars. What was the name of the kid who hit on the? What was the name of the kid who hit the sack with one sock on and one shoe on? With one sock and one shoe on. My son John. That's right. Did a little dumpling, my son John. <laughs> You now have $80. Went to bed with the stockings on. One, one shoe off and one shoe on. Did a little, little dumpling, my son, yeah. <laughs> I know that, too. All right, now, now you have $8. And here's your last chance to be, be the other couples. How much would you bet? All of it. All of it. All of it. What fairy tale character parlayed a few prolific bean seeds into a fortune? You mean Jack bean. and the Beanstalk. Jack and the Beanstalk is right. <laughs> Well, you wind up with $16, and that means that you sisters get the chance of the DeSoto Plymouth $1,500 question in just one minute. And now here's a pretty girl with some news about a beautiful car. Hello, I'm Wendy Barry. And I'm really excited about the new 1953 DeSoto that's now at your DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Honestly, it's the most beautiful car I've ever seen. You'll notice right away the wonderful styling of this distinguished 1953 DeSoto. The way the wide, one-piece rear window curves around the back. And the really dramatic lines of the long, swept-back fenders and the lower, wider deck lid. 
Inside, too, this new DeSoto is just beautiful. They've taken rich, fashionable nylon and combined it with the gorgeous trim. Of course, there's DeSoto's full-power steering, too, which means that I can turn the steering wheel with just one finger. Honestly, I think this is the most beautiful, the finest car ever built. The distinguished 1953 DeSoto is available in two great series, the mighty 160-horsepower Fire Dome V8 and the brilliant DeSoto Power Master 6. Tomorrow, see the distinguished 1953 DeSoto at your DeSoto to Plymouth dealers. And now, Groucho, here are the Danish twin sisters, all set for the DeSoto Plymouth $1,500 question. All right. Well, well, girls, here's your chance to clean clean up now. Of course, you'd like to split this between you, but you're all in one family. Do you split the money? If you... Sure, we do. do. All, all right. right. Here we go for $1,500. I'll give you 15 seconds to decide on a single answer between you. Think carefully. And please, no help in the audience. Are you ready? Yes. In 1660, a former tinker was imprisoned at Bedford, England, for unlawful preaching. During the 12 years of his incarceration, he wrote an unforgettable book, Pilgrim's Progress. For $1,500, what was his name? Talk about it. Girls, what is the answer you two have decided upon? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Nothing? No. Don't anyone want to guess? No, I... I'm sorry. The correct answer is uh, John Unbunyan. And, and, uh, Groucho, you know we neglected something? They only made $16 in the quiz, so we can't let them go. Oh, away well, I'll, I'll give you one more question to bring the quiz up to 25. Are you ready? <laughs> what do you mix with water to get soap suds? Lime. What? Lie. Lie. <laughs> That's a lie. It's soap, but, but it's soap sounds <laughs> anyhow. So that means that the big question next week will be worth we, we $2,000. Well, they lost the big money, but you won $25 in the quiz. And th- thanks and good luck and congratulations to both of you and to all of our contestants on the show tonight. Thank you. Be sure to tune in again next Wednesday night at this same time for the Groucho Marx Show, when the big question will be worth $2,000. And don't miss Groucho's television show, also presented by the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America. And remember that the dealers who sell the distinguished 1953 DeSoto also sell the brilliant new Plymouth, the first truly balanced car in the low-priced field. DeSoto Plymouth. Two great new cars. Both products of the Chrysler Corporation. And when you drive in, tell them Groucho sent you. Good night, folks, and remember... See the 1953... DeSoto! Folks, here's a reminder from the National Safety Council. Ease up when there's a freeze up. You bet your life. Transcribed from Hollywood is produced by John Goodell. Directed by Robert Dwan and Bernie Smith. Music by Jerry Fielding. This is George Fenneman signing off for the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast. Ladies and gentlemen, 
The secret word tonight is door. D-O-O-R. Really? You bet your life. It's Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life. The comedy quiz series produced and transcribed from Hollywood and brought to you by the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers. The dealers who bring you America's most talked about new car. The distinguished 1953 DeSoto and the exciting new Plymouth. See them both at your DeSoto Plymouth dealers. And here he is, the one, the only... Charming fellow. Oh, that's me. Well, here I am again with $2,000 for one of our couples. Groucho, we invited some drum majorettes to the program tonight. And just before we went on the air, our studio audience here selected Miss Marilyn Watson. Her partner, Mr. Joe Fox, was uh, chosen for sort of obvious reasons. I think you'll see when he comes out here. Folks, would you meet Groucho Marx? Right here, Marilyn. Right in there. Yeah. Well, welcome. Welcome for the DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common word. Something... <laughs> <laughs> Is there a mirror in front of me? <laughs> it's something that you find around the house. Is that any kind of a cue, uh, Marilyn? Well, it limits the cue. It, yes, it does. <laughs> it, it constricts it considerably. Now, yes, Mr. Joe does. Fox, eh? The, this is ridiculous. Nobody looks that much like me. Eh? <laughs> Let's take a good look at him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, looks awfully crooked, this guy. Eh? <laughs> he looks like me, all right. Where are you from, you great big beautiful hunk of man? <laughs> Chicago, the... Uh... South side of Chicago, Hyde Park to be specific. Somebody out there from Galesburg. <laughs> Joe, I'm curious. How long ago did you first notice that you closely resembled a certain gay, handsome lover whose name I can't remember? <laughs> well, frankly, the, uh, the resemblance never did occur to me. Uh, about two and a half years ago, it was called to my attention. A couple of young boys walked up and... Somebody threw rocks at you? <laughs> no, they looked up and... Uh, I imagine equal to the amazement you presented tonight and said, Hello, Groucho. Uh, I guess they didn't expect to see him walking about at, at, Alive, at large in public. I see. <laughs> <laughs> they thought I'd be carried around? Is that <laughs> what sort of work do you do, Joe? Well, I'm employed by the Los Angeles County Parks and Recreation Department. Uh, I'm on a civil defense assignment working with the uh, Civil Defense Warden Service. Are you, are you married? Yes, I am. You are, huh? mm-hmm. Do your friends kid you about your looks? Yes, quite frequently. They do, huh? The, what, do, uh, what do they say? Well, the biggest problem is when people or youngsters walk up to me and say, uh, are you Groucho? And most of the time I say no because uh, I don't want to be dishonest, but sometimes just to, just to be different, I say yes. Mm-hmm. Well, that presents a problem because they ask me to say something funny and I can't. <laughs> I frequently have that same problem. <laughs> I'll get back to this face pirate in a minute. I'd like to talk to you for a minute, Marilyn. Thank you. What is, what is it you do? Well, I'm a drum majorette. A drum majorette? Yes. Well, that's pretty limited work, isn't it? Uh, how often do you march? On the well, 4th of July? No, I march every time the Los Angeles Rams play their home games here in the Coliseum. I twirl I when see. they're here. <laughs> I'm not on the team. <laughs> In that case, <laughs> judging from the recent scores, you might be. Eh? <laughs> well, how do you go about twirling a baton? Is it anything like twirling a mustache? <laughs> Not having never twirled a mustache, I don't know, but... Well, the, uh, <laughs> the offer is still open. You know. <laughs> I've often wondered about you girls. Have you ever hit anybody with that baton? Well, I've hit myself quite a bit, but it happened that last season one of the girls' batons went wild and hit a football player who was sitting on the bench. The player went wild or the baton? <laughs> the baton went wild, but oh, he was kind of did, mad. Did he get hurt? Well, no, and besides, he's on the other team, so it didn't matter. <laughs> well, I guess that's a secret play the coach uses only in emergencies, huh? <laughs> now, Mr. Fox, you sly old fox, could you get interested in uh, Marilyn here? Well, Mr. Marks, aren't you forgetting I'm a happily married man? Answer my question. Could you get in? On advice of counsel, I better not say more. 
You see, you can't judge a book by its cover. He didn't pass the acid test. Joe, I'm ashamed of you. You turn in your face tonight, you're through. I don't want you masquerading around with my face anymore, if that's your attitude. Well, it's been an experience talking to you two, and I hope you win a reasonable amount of money here tonight. Because in just one minute, you're going to play your bet your life for a chance at the $2,000 question. Right now, I want you to pay close attention to a very lovely lady. Here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. You selected largest cities and states. These figures were taken from the 1950 statistics compiled by the Bureau of Census. Here's your first question. How much will you bet? About $12. $12. $12. $12. $12. $12. $12. $12. $12. $12. $12. $12. $12. $12. $12. $12. $12. $12. $12. $12. $12. $12. $12. $12. $12. $12. $12. $12. $12. $12. $12. $12. $12. $
beat the ribbons out of me, the ribbons. Uh -huh. Did he knock this you out? This ear was out like that. Nobody ever knocked me out. No. Nobody ever knocked you out? No, sir. For five rounds, I didn't make an error. Mm -hmm. So I said to my trainer, I'm getting murdered out there. What, what am I doing? It's wrong. He says, well, you're talking to this guy. He said, what you're saying? Hey, this guy's a deacon in the church. That's I true. Says, he was the deacon. I says, why don't you tell me that five rounds ago? <laughs> so he says he didn't know it five rounds ago. <laughs> I went out for the next round. I got with about 50 punches before I even got close to him. I said, listen, deacon, the good Lord never told you to kill anybody. <laughs> So he kind of had thought he had a convert. I hit him a left hook and a right hand, and he hit the deck himself. <laughs> I had him down five rounds, but I didn't want a round of the fight. Well, you did pretty well, because he was one of the greatest fighters of his era. Well, I'd like to continue talking to you two, but I'm getting punchy. Now you're going to have a chance to win a lot of money. You beat our other couples, and you'll get a chance at the $2,000 question. Our first couple, the drum majorette and Mr. Fox, have $22.00. And the secret word is door. Here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. Now, these are all descriptive words about articles of women's apparel. I'll give you the word, and you tell me what article of clothing I'm referring to. Now, here's your first question. How much will you bet? Now, talk it over. It's all right. You know what it's all about. Go ahead. 1750, did you say? All right. What do you associate with the word cardigan? Cardigan is a little jacket, over jacket. Yeah. That's right. Well, it's a sweater, but that's close enough. On your way, you have thirty-seven dollars and fifty cents. Remember, you're going for two thousand dollars tonight. How much of your thirty-seven dollars and fifty cents will you try on this one? Thirty-five. Thirty-five. What do you associate with the word dolman? D o l m a n. Dolman is a coat. A dolman sleeve in a coat. Sleeve is right. Please. You're really climbing. You have seventy-two dollars and fifty cents. And here's your third question. How much of the seventy-two fifty will you try? Seventy. Go ahead. Seventy. What do you associate with the word Peter Pan? Peter Pan is a collar. Collar is right. You now have $142.50. And it's your last chance to be the other couples. How much will you bet? Shoot the wig. All of it. All of it? All right. What article of clothing do you associate with the word Valero? Valero is this little brown jacket. Right? That's right. It's a jacket. It's right. <laughs> Job, right? And you'll wind up with $285. Thanks and good Thank luck you. from the DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Groucho, we have a grandmother and a man with an interesting hobby for you now. Mrs. Alma Bell Davis and Mr. Mike Elwood, please come in and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome for the DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Say the secret word and you'll divide $100. It's a common word, something you'll find around the house. Mrs. Alma Bell Davis, you're a grandmother? Yes. Seventy-four. Mm -hmm. Seventy-four. You know what Bulwa said? It is not by the gray of the hair that one knows the age of the heart. We try to add a little culture now and then to the program. <laughs> Very few quiz shows give you that kind of stuff. <laughs> now, what shall I call you, Mrs. Davis? Call me Grandma. I'll be delighted to. Now, where are you from, uh, Granny? Sem Seminole, South Carolina. Oh, South Carolina, mm -hmm. eh? And uh, how long have you been away from Carolina? Oh, I've been away a long time. I stayed there until I was 29. Mm -hmm. And then you migrated to California? Well, I went up north to, Cal to Tennessee first. <laughs> Wait till Keefe finds out that Tennessee is up north, huh? <laughs> How many children and grandchildren do you have? Uh... I have three children, ten grandchildren, and nine great-grandchildren. Well, you have uh, quite a large family, don't you, Grandma? Tell me, do you live uh, all alone now, or do you live with uh, one of your children or grandchildren? No, I live with my, f I live with my friend, Sadie Ingham, my girlfriend, Sadie Ingham. <laughs> I think that's a very smart idea. Since you're 74 years old, you should be with someone who can sort of keep an eye on you. Well, she's 92, so she doesn't... <laughs> Your girlfriend is 92? So is mine. Let's shake on it, Granny. I wonder if it could be the same girl. 
Sadie Ingram, huh? Well, she may be using a different name with me. <laughs> Have you and Sadie ever encountered any exciting moments around the house, like finding a burglar? Well, we didn't find a burglar, but we came to the house one night morning at 2 o'clock. Wait a minute. <laughs> Was this recently? Uh... Oh, not too long ago. What were you and Sadie doing out at 2 o'clock in the morning? Oh, it takes us a long time to go from different places home. <laughs> one night we uh, got home. And well, you, did you stagger when you came home? Or? No, we didn't do that, but the door was locked and we couldn't get it open. <laughs> You said door, and that's the secret word. So you and your boyfriend over here are going to split $100. Ooh, that's Beat it, Doc. <laughs> but what happened there? So we couldn't get in, and I uh, went and got a box out of the garage, put it under the window, and I couldn't get in. Sadie helped me. I got halfway in. Which half did you get in, Jerry? <laughs> So we caught, so the neighbor came over and helped us to get in. She's real cute, isn't she? <laughs> what do you mean, the neighbor? How old was the neighbor? Seventy-eight. <laughs> and she was shoving you and Sadie in through this window? Sure. And then how did the neighbor get back in? Oh, the neighbor, he got the door open. Oh, this was a male. <laughs> oh, I thought this was a woman, this neighbor. No, man. A man, huh? Sure. What was his name? Every once in a while, we have to call on a man. <laughs> well, they're a handy thing to have around when there's a window stuck. <laughs> Mr. Mike Elwood, eh? I can't call you Mike. I barely know you. May I call you Michael? Well, uh, no. Uh, I'm known as Mike, but my name is really Julius. <laughs> That's pretty baffling, isn't it? What sort of work do you do, Julius? I own uh, Lords and Elwood. Uh, that's a spirit shop. A spirit shop? What do you do? You sell only to ghost riders in the skies? No. What do you mean a spirit shop? No, we sell... Uh, you don't mean a booze emporium, do you? Well, not exactly. We, uh, we sell unusual uh, liqueurs, rare wines, old brandies. In other words, you peddle bathtub gin, is that it? <laughs> I uh, don't believe you would call um, wine that sells at $182.50 a gallon bathtub gin, would you? No, I'd call it highway robbery. <laughs> uh, Julius, uh, Fenneman says you have an interesting hobby. What is it? Well, I belong to a club called the Wine and Food Society. It's an organization for gourmets. What is the purpose of this club? Well, the purpose of the club is to stimulate an interest in food. And what is a gourmet? A gourmet is really a... He's a pig. Well, uh, there's a much better definition. A gourmet is a glutton with a tuxedo on. <laughs> well, how do you go about uh, stimulating an interest in food? Well, we have uh, uh, eight dinners a year, and we try to make each one perfect. You have only eight dinners a year? That's right. Well, those between-meal snacks are ruining your figure, Julius. <laughs> Grandma, do you have any hobbies like uh, cooking fancy dishes? Or no. do you spend your life stuck in a window? No, my hobby is catching gophers. <laughs> well, you told me you were single, Grandma. <laughs> Grandma, you didn't fool me for a minute. I knew the minute you came up here that your hobby was catching gophers. <laughs> The minute you came here, I said to myself, now, if I ever saw a woman whose hobby is catching gophers, this is it. How do you go about catching these gophers? And, and, and how is it your hobby? Well, I have a shopping bag, and I have three, had three gopher traps, but now I've only got two. And What happened to the other one? Somebody stole it. And I opened up the runway, put the trap in. I first go to the, when I see where there's been a, Gopher. I go and ask the rap on the door and ask the neighbor if I can catch the gopher, and they say yes. You mean you make a house to house canvas of this? <laughs> you go to a strange person's house, knock on the door, and say, Have you got any gophers? No, I know all these people. Oh. 
Well, suppose the gopher doesn't go for the trap. How do you catch it? Well, I get a nice, tender, delicious carrot, holler it out, and put the poison put poison in. Well, that sounds very appetizing, Grandma. <laughs> Mike, do you suppose you could get uh, Grandma into your gourmet society? <laughs> she sounds like she could whip up some nice little dishes. I'm, uh... Roast gopher with a baked carrot on top. <laughs> Topped off with some rare old 1823 rat poison. I'm... Now, how about it? Does Grandma get into your club, Mike? Uh, I'm afraid the membership is full. Well, I'm not surprised the way they eat, but can't you get into the club? <laughs> Well, uh, when will there be an opening? When one of the members dies. <laughs> really? Well, Grandma can arrange for that, can't you? <laughs> can't you, Grandma? <laughs> <laughs> well, this has been a most interesting conversation and, and quite educational. And I wish I could continue it, but I just had a poison carrot and I don't feel so good. <laughs> However, now's your chance to win a lot of money. You run your $20 into more than our other couples, and you get a chance at the $2,000 question. I can't tell you how much you have to win, but George is going to remind our listeners. The sewing teacher and the prize fighter are ahead with $285. Here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. From our list of 20 categories, you selected number five, the animal kingdom. Here's your first question. How much will you bet? Now talk it over and talk out loud. 1950? Mm-hmm. 1950. 1950. What is the name of the black and white bear that comes from China and Tibet? Kola. I'm sorry, it's a panda. P A N D A. Gee, you now have 50 cents. You should have known that, Mike. I'm sure you've eaten one at one of your dinners. <laughs> Now you're down to 50 cents. Well, you're going for $2,000 tonight, so don't worry about it. Now, how much are you going to bet on your second question? 40. 40 cents? 40 cents. What is the name of the long-necked animal used widely as a beast of burden in Peru? Its wool is used extensively for clothing. Llama? Llama is right. You now have 90 cents. How much of this vast sum are you going to jeopardize this time? Huh? Mm-hmm. All of it? All of it. All right. What is the name of the little animal whose facial markings resemble a mask? It always washes its food before eating. A possum. Raccoon. Raccoon is right. I think they're about the same, aren't they? Aren't they the same, a possum and raccoon? Well, they're blood brothers. We'll give you that anyhow. Huh? <laughs> you now have We're one... very generous with these things, particularly when they're only 90 cents. All right, here's your last chance to be the other couple. How much of the 180 are you going to bet? A dollar eighty, I mean. Shoot the work. <laughs> Holding. All right, uh, Granny. What is the large and stupid beast that lives in Asia and Africa? It has a single sharp horn. The rhinoceros. Rhinoceros is right. And you wind up with three dollars and sixty cents. Well, we're going to give you one more question. You get this right, and we'll bring your winnings up to twenty-five dollars. All right, here we go. What was the population of Outer Mongolia in 1923? Oh, no, that's the wrong question. <laughs> Even I couldn't have answered that. All right, we don't want to make it too easy, though. Are you ready? How many rings are there in a three-ring circus? Go ahead. How many, Em? You answer. <laughs> Three. Three rings is right. Put it there. You people wound up with $3.60, and that means that the sewing teacher and the prize fighter with $285. In just one minute, get the chance of the DeSoto Plymouth $2,000 question. Time out now for some friends who want to know what's new. What's new? The 53 Plymouth. It's new. The low-priced meal has a brand new star. The truly balanced Plymouth, a new kind of car. Boy, things are sure buzzing at DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Ever since the new 53 Plymouth came along last week, folks have been streaming in to see this new kind of car. They're talking about Plymouth's new beauty, inside and out. 
New styling from the wheels up. Wonderful new ride that gives you almost gyroscopic stability on even the roughest roads. It's a whole new concept of car design. True Balance. Come in and meet the new Plymouth. See for yourself how True Balance gives it a lower, racier look. And Control Tower Visibility. A new one-piece curved windshield and wider, deeper windows all around. More room, too, for passengers and luggage. It's the car to see for 53. The new Plymouth. First truly balanced car in the low-priced field. The low-priced field has a brand new star. The truly balanced women, a new kind of car. And now here's the sewing teacher and the prize fighter all set for the DeSoto Plymouth $2,000 question, Groucho. Here we go for $2,000. I'll give you 15 seconds to decide on a single answer between you. Think carefully and please no help from the audience. Here it is. One of the great storytellers of all time was born in Scotland and spent the last years of his life in the South Seas. Today he lies buried on a mountain peak in Samoa. For $2,000, what is the name of this immortal novelist? Okay, what is the answer you two have decided upon? Bobby Burns. No, no, I'm sorry. The correct answer is Robert Louis Stevenson. Oh. Well, that means the big question next week will be worth $2,500. Well, you lost the big money, but uh, how much did they win in the quiz, George? Uh, $285 in the well, quiz. Well, that's not too bad. Congratulations, and thanks Thank to you. both of you and to all of our contestants on the show tonight. Thank you, Ben. Be sure to tune in again next Wednesday night at the same time for the Groucho Marx Show, when the big question will be worth $2,500. And don't miss Groucho's television show, also presented by the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America. And remember that the dealers who sell the distinguished 1953 DeSoto also sell the brilliant new Plymouth, the first truly balanced car in the low-priced field. DeSoto, Plymouth, two great new cars. Both products of the Chrysler Corporation. And when you drive in, tell them Groucho sent you. Good night, folks, and remember, see the 1953 DeSoto. <laughs> folks, here's a reminder from the National Safety Council. Don't surprise the other driver. Use hand signals. You Bet Your Life, transcribed from Hollywood, is produced by John Goodell. Directed by Robert Dwan and Bernie Smith. Music by Jerry Fielding. This is George Fenneman signing off for the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast. Ladies and gentlemen, the secret word tonight is paper. P-A-P-E-R. Really? You bet your life. It's Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life, the comedy quiz series produced and transcribed from Hollywood and brought to you by the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers. The dealers who bring you America's most talked about new car, the distinguished 1953 DeSoto, and the exciting new Plymouth. See them both at your DeSoto Plymouth dealers. And now, here he is, the one, the only... Is that boy still hanging around? Oh, that's me! Well, here I am again with $2,500 for one of our couples. 
We have a young married couple for you now, Groucho. They volunteered from our studio audience just before we went on the air. Mr. and Mrs. John Robert Sweeney, come on in and meet Groucho Marx. Well, welcome, youngsters, for the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers. Say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common word, something you see every day. Mr. and Mrs. Robert Sweeney, eh? John, You're... John Robert Sweeney? Oh, well, that's even better, huh? Mrs. Sweeney, what, what is your front name? Helen. Helen, now, that's a nice name. I won't ask you how old you are, but uh, how old do you tell your husband you are? Twenty-eight. Twenty-eight? Eight. Oh, that's a very nice age. What is your hometown, uh, Helen? Glasgow. Glasgow? Oh, well, we had a girl from Glasgow not long ago. We sang uh, I Belong to Glasgow. <laughs> she and I. Would you, li- would you like to sing it with me? I usually do that with anybody that's... I heard that's you cut. sing it. <laughs> What's that? I heard you sing it before. You heard me sing it. Well, I see. <laughs> well, uh, don't tell me about it. Tell it to Sweeney here, will you? <laughs> what is your hometown, Mr. Sweeney? Gurok, Scotland. Sounds like the last two cups of water going down the drain. Gurok, 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 Gurok. Where is Gurok? Uh, Gurok's uh, on the Firth of Clyde in Scotland. Oh, you were born on the 4th of Clyde, huh? That's a well, close it. I was born on the 4th of August, eh? <laughs> well, you're both from Scotland, huh? Do you know uh, this Scots song? Uh, I'm 94 this morning, I am 94 today. And I'm not so young as I used to be, and I'm getting old and gray. But my heart is young, and I'm fond of fun, and it's very plain to see. And I'm getting married on Thursday noon, I'm 94 today. Of course, down in the village. Of course, down in the village, it will be a big surprise. The people think it's all a joke and the minister's telling lies. But we will have the laugh on them as sure as I'm alive. For there's going to be a christening yet before I'm 95. I... <laughs> Well, Will Five taught me that song in London many years ago. He was a great uh, Scott comedian. You remember him? Yes. I think he was better than Lord. Of course, a lot of people don't know about Five. How long have you two been uh, been hitched? Six years. Six years. eh? You look very happy. eh? We are. How did you meet this Highland lassie? uh... (laughs) Fight the fourth. Uh, Well, uh, I was I was organizing a a badminton club in our church. Badminton uh, club where? In the chat. Did you put up this morning? <laughs> and during during the evening, I had to collect a small subscription. Aye. Well, after I'd collected the subscription, <laughs> Helen came along and accused me of shortchanging her for nine pence. Helen, she accused you of shortchanging her for nine pence? I thought they didn't wear pence in Scotland. Huh? <laughs> Not only wore the kilts over there. Not playing badminton. Well, what is the courtship like in Scotland? Uh, where did uh, Johnny take you for excitement? Uh, well, Helen? the war was on at the time, so there wasn't very much we could do. There was a blackout. <laughs> in the evenings. <laughs> no, I guess there's not much a young couple can do in a blackout. Uh. <laughs> You can tell that to Sweeney, too, you know. <laughs> what sort of work do you do, John? I'm a draftsman with the Fluor Corporation. You're a draftsman with the flu? The Fluor, F-L-U-O-R, Corporation. Oh. What, are, what, are, what do they do? They're contractors to the oil refinery in industry. Oh. Do you so. know any good Scots jokes, uh, Helen? No, I haven't got much of a sense of humor. <laughs> Neither have I, but I still like to tell Scott's jokes. <laughs> Helen, did you hear the one about the Scotsman uh, who had himself tattooed so he wouldn't have to buy his family a television set? <laughs> how do you how do you like that? <laughs> it's funny. That's funny. Mm-hmm. You like that one, huh? Well, I agree. You said you don't have a very good sense of humor. <laughs> What about you, uh, John? Do you know any good Scots jokes? 
Yes, I know a few. But tell us one, will you? Uh, well, have you heard those, this, the one about the Scotsman who was travelling by train down to England? And uh, the conductor came along for his fare. He said, that'll be five shillings. The Scotsman said, I'll give you three and six. The conductor says, five shillings is the price. The Scotsman says, it's not worth any more than three and six. He said, I'll give you three and six. So the conductor, he lost his temper at this. And he seized the Scotsman's grip and hurled it out the window. Took the suitcase and yeah. th threw it out the window? So at uh, this Scotsman, he burst into tears. He said, first of all, you try to do me out of one and six, and then to crown it all, you throw my young son out the window. <laughs> John, do they have many more jokes like that back in Scotland? Yeah, they have lots and lots of them. Well, you take the high road, and I'll take the low road, and I'll be in Scotland Yard before the year. <laughs> well, it's been real pleasant talking to you two kids, and I th think you're going to have a wonderful life together, and a lot of wonderful children, if they're anything like you two. Of course, you're a real nice couple. Anybody says you're not a nice couple, I'll scotch those rumors. <laughs> Now, just one minute, you're going to play your bet your life for a chance at the $2,500 question. Right now, here's a beautiful girl with something important on her mind. Now, let's see how you work together as a team. Fetterman, would you mind explaining the rules? All right. <clears throat> you bet as much of your $20 as you want on each of four questions, and the couple that earns the most money gets a chance at the $2,500 question later on in the show. Is that uh, pretty clear? All right. Now, let's see how high I can build you $20. You selected famous ships. Here's your first question. How much would it have been? 1997. 1997. <laughs> what was the name of the ship that battled the Monitor? The Merrimack. The Merrimack is right. You're off to a fine start. You have $39.97. Remember, you're going for $2,500 tonight. Now, how much of this sum will you bet this time? I'll leave two cents. You're going to leave two cents, so you want to bet $39.95. Columbus set sail for America with three famous ships. Two of them were the Nina and the Pinta. What was the name of the third ship? I think it was the Santa Maria. Well, I guess we'll have to try the Santa Maria. Santa Maria is right, huh? Oh. Uh, You're really on your way. You have $79.92. You gave me a heart failure that time. <laughs> I had it too. Here's your third question. Now, how much of this $79.92? Keep one. One cent. They're going to keep one cent, huh? In 1912, a liner making her maiden voyage struck an iceberg and sank. What was the name of this ship? Titanic. Oh, yeah. Titanic is right. You now have $159.83. It's your last chance to be the other couples. How much of this sum are you going to bet? All of it. All of it. One of the causes of the Spanish-American War was the blowing up of a United States battleship in Havana Harbor. What was the name of this ship? Talk it over. I don't know. Oh. No idea. Oh, I'm sorry. Jeez. I wish I could help you. <laughs> I'm sure everybody in the audience knows it. The battleship Maine. It started the spanish American. Oh. Groucho, they went broke. Well, we can't have that. Nobody leaves here broke. I'm going to give you one more question for $25. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. What do you brew in a teapot? <laughs> tea. tea is right. <laughs> Thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Groucho, I'd like you to meet Mrs. Natalie Spofford. She was chosen from our audience just before we went on the air. Her partner is Mr. Rudolph Florentino. Folks, come on in and meet Groucho Marx. Well, welcome to You Bet Your Life. Say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common word, something you see every day. Mrs. Uh, Spofford, huh? Yes. Natalie Spofford, huh? Yeah. I presume you're, you're the housewife? Yes, I'm a housewife. I'm married. But I'm not exactly a housewife. Well, my brother Harper was married, too, and he isn't exactly a housewife. <laughs> What's your excuse, Natalie? I'm a forelady in you're, a laundry. You're a forelady? You say you work in a laundry? Well, how is it you're not in Washington? 
I understand they've been promised a big cleanup back there. <laughs> what laundry do you work for, Natalie? The California Hollywood Beverly Hills Incorporated City Dye Works, too. Would you object if we squeezed in a word occasionally about the Sotos now and then? <laughs> I think it would go well. Yes, it would. Now, Mr. Rudolph Florentino, huh? Say, that's a very euphonious name. I might even say it's a... It's about the euphonious name I've come across in a long time. <laughs> Where are you from, uh, Rodolfo? I'm from sunny Sicily in Castellamare in the island. I came to this country when I was five years of age. Where did you come to? Yeah. Well, I came to from New York Sicily? City from Sicily, in the island of Sicily in Castellamare de Gordo. Oh. How long did you live in New York, uh, Rodolfo? Well, I left New York City when I was a young age of 23. Then I decided to go to the Argentine to become an Argentine gaucho. Well, seems like a waste of time and money. I became a groucho, and I certainly didn't have to go to Argentina. <laughs> Although I may before this program is over. <laughs> Who is this groucho you're talking about? Gaucho of the Argentine is the equivalent of the American cowboy. Of course, he's more romantic, vigorous, a great herdsman and horseman, and a great musician and a great lover at all times. <laughs> Until what age would you say he's a great lover? Oh, at the right age of 80, an Argentine gaucho from the Argentine Pampas is a great lover at 80, a great horseman, and a great musician because he loves music and romance. Not only that, at 80, he's also a great liar. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Give me none of that 80 stuff. By the way, what influenced your decision to leave New York and become a groucho? After Gaucho, who's he? Well, I wanted to follow in the footsteps of the greatest lover in the history of Hollywood, Rudolph Valentino. I want to become like him, so I became an Argentine Gaucho. Oh. I thought you reminded me of some old-time movie star. However, I was thinking of Rin Tin Tin. I really... <laughs> what made you pattern your life after Valentino? After witnessing Valentino in 1921 in The Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse, I saw Valentino play the part of the gaucho. Mm -hmm. He done the Argentine tango. Mm -hmm. Right then and then, I want to become a gaucho. And what did I do? I went to South America, to Rosario, to become an Argentine gaucho. And, and uh, did you uh, succeed? Of course I did. I became Rudolph Valentino's double in The Son of the Sheik. Oh, is that so? Imagine Mr. Groucho. With one look of Rudolph Valentino in the cinema, women built shrines to his memory. It lasted them a lifetime. They won their husbands to become like Valentino. Can't be done. It's not easy. <laughs> I've been trying it all day. It just doesn't work. That's all. <laughs> well, now I'd like to go on talking to you two, but now it's time to play You Bet Your Life. You beat our other couples, and you'll get a chance at the $2,500 question. Our first couple lost all their money. And a secret word is paper. Here we go. Let's see how, uh, how high you can build your $20. Out of our list of 20 categories, you selected number 10. Words from names. Here's your first question. How much will you bet? 18. All right, 18. Okay, 18. All right. A type or style of beard was taken from portraits by a famous Flemish painter. What is this type of beard called? A Van Dyke. Van Dyke is right. <laughs> On your way, you have $38. Let me go in for $2,500 tonight. How much of the 38 are you going to risk? Six. 36. 36. 36. 36. 36, all right. The expression that means the way the rules should be played comes from an English authority on cards, chess, and backgammon. What is this expression? You know, in a card game, when there's a discussion, an argument. Oh, Hoyle? According to Hoyle. Hoyle. According to Hoyle is right. <laughs> You now have $74. Had to give them a little help because they didn't know quite what I was referring to. Here you got $74. Here's your third question. How much did you bet? 72. Two. Two. 72. Bacteria in mm -hmm. milk is destroyed by raising the temperature or boiling it. This process was named for the French scientist who developed it. What is it called? Louis Pasteur. Pasteurization is right. <laughs> Pasteur Bazoo. You now have $146. And here's your last chance to beat the other couples. How much will you bet? 146? Yes. 146. The voice, all right. A long dagger-shaped knife was named for its designer, an American frontiersman. What is this knife called? 
Repeat. A long, dagger-shaped knife was named for its designer, an American frontiersman. What is this knife called? Jackknife. Uh, uh, no, I'm... I'm, 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 I'm sorry, no. It's a Still Bowie knife. Oh, Bowie. Bowie. James Bowie. Well, these people went broke, Groucho. They do, eh? Yeah. I'll give you this one question, get it right, and we'll bring you winnings up to $25. Are you ready? What color are the blue bells of Scotland? Blue. Blue is right. <laughs> Thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Well, Groucho, just before we went on the air, our um, studio audience selected a you building want... wrecker, a Mr. Maurice Wolfson. His partner is Mrs. Marie Clark Miller. So, folks, would you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx? Welcome. Welcome for the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common word, something you see every day. Mr. Maurice Wolfson, you're, you're from a wrecking company? Yes, sir. Where are you from, uh, Maurice? I was born in the Twin Cities. Oh. And Marie Clark Miller, huh? That's, uh, where, where are you from, Marie? Well, I was born in Utah, but I came here from Des Moines, Iowa. Well, that's unavoidable, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> How did you meet your husband, uh, Mrs. Miller? Oh, well, uh, I was a young actress, and uh, he was a druggist, and... Say no more. I know the whole sordid story. <laughs> you got a bad review, so you went into his drugstore to buy a gallon of cabalic acid. <laughs> and just then, a minister fell through the ceiling. <laughs> and you got married. Is that pretty close? Oh, no, it wasn't that way at all. It wasn't? No. I was stranded in a little southwest town, and, uh... I had to stay at a little dreary old hotel, and one Sunday night I was pretty blue when I heard some uh, some men, young men singing, Nearer My God to Thee. It made me feel awful, and I said to the proprietor, I said, for goodness sakes, who is that singing? Who has that awful bass voice? And uh, uh, he said, why, that's Henry Miller and his gang. And well, his gang? <laughs> a pretty rough description of a group singing near my god to these. <laughs> well, anyway, I... Uh... These didn't sound like juvenile delinquents to me. <laughs> I met him later, and, well, I sort of fell in love with the voice, and I didn't go back to New York. Well, how long before you nailed him? Oh, oh, it was quite some time what, before huh? he got me. Hmm. Oh. Well, thanks for the correction. Huh? <laughs> Who do you work for, Maurice? The Cleveland Wrecking Company. Are you a termite? No, not yet. We what wreck... kind, of, kind, of, kind of work does the Cleveland Wrecking Company Well, we do? wreck buildings of all kinds, you such do, as huh? frame buildings, apartment buildings, industrial buildings, from coast to coast. Mm -hmm. Well, how do you go about wrecking a building? Do you throw a big party New Year's Eve or something? <laughs> <laughs> uh, how we go about wrecking a building? Yeah, that's, that's what I asked you. Well... What do you do first? Well, we start at the top and... Come down to the... It's just building in reverse. They start at the roof and come down. Of course, if it's a frame building, we strip it. Well, that could be fun, depending, of course, on the shape of the frame. <laughs> Marie, I think it's time we talk to you. Uh, now, you were introduced as a club woman. What is that exactly? Are you a girl bat boy? Or what clubs do you belong to? Well, uh, no, I belong to the National League of American Pen Women. What is that, a pig pen? No, it's a, it's a group of women uh, who are interested in writing and uh, a, a lot of the arts, and they have chapters and branches in uh, most all of the important cities of the United States. Mm -hmm. well, let me get this straight. This club is for writers. Uh, what kind of writing do you do, uh, Marie? Well, I write uh, dramas when at plays and verse, poetry, what is have you. Is your poetry any good? Well, I have uh, two books published. One is Holidays in Verse, and the other is Christmas Blooms. Could you give us a sample of your poetry, Marie? We're always trying to add a little culture around here. Not too much, just a smidgen, you know. Well, this is a See little... See what the reaction is to this, huh? This is just a little tiny one. Well, um... give us a small quatrain, and <laughs> we'll go on from there. Okay. When the windows rattle and chandeliers sway in the middle of night, I wish it were day. Now look here, old earth, stop shaking your head. I'm too old now to be rocked in bed. <laughs> you 
Marie, that was, that, that was pretty good. I like that. What was it about? <laughs> no, really, I don't know what it was about. Well, that was about the big earthquake last summer. That was? Mm-hmm. Oh. Say, that earthquake did a lot more damage than I thought, didn't it? <laughs> Well, that was real good, Marie. You impressed me with that. Now, now, now we're going to... Enough of this chatter. We're going to get down to the basics of, which is money. You're going to have a chance here to run your 20 bucks and more than our other couples, and you'll get a chance at the $2,500 question. I can't tell you how much you have to win, but George is going to remind our listeners. Our second couple lost all their money, too, so these people have a clear field. Here we go. Let's see how high you can bet your $20. You selected famous poems. Here's your first question. How much of the 20 will you bet? Whatever you desire. Fifteen. Fifteen. All right. Who wrote The Raven? Edgar Allan Poe. Edgar Allan Poe is right. You now have $35. Let me go in for $2,500 tonight. How much of your $35 will you bet on your second question? You're the boss. Come on, you house wrecker. Get going here, will you? Uh, 30? Whatever you desire. 30? He's the, he's the most polite uh, home wrecker I've ever met. <laughs> the poem Trees is also famous as a song. Who wrote the poem? Yes, uh, I was a lady. No. Mm-hmm. It's a man. I know him. Uh, um... Talk it over. Uh, I know, but I can't put my finger on it. I, I'm sorry. It's Joyce Kilmer. Of course, I know. I know. That's a shame. You now have five dollars. Well, you mustn't get discouraged. You still have five dollars. Here's your third question. How much will you bet? Bet it all. Three. Yes. Oh, no. Bet it five. All. all right. We'll bet it all. Who wrote, Oh, Captain, My Captain? Well, I didn't ha- I didn't hear the bet. Uh, they bet five dollars. Oh, the whole bet? The whole bet. I presume you bet five dollars, didn't you? Yes. Captain, My Captain. <laughs> I know that. I know the poem. Oh, I know Captain My it? Captain. It wasn't it wasn't Longfellow, was it? No. It was oh my, where's my mind? Did you look in your bag, Marie? No, I should. Edgar. Oh, no. Well, that about winds you two up. Well, the answer to that was uh, Walt Whitman, and these people lost all their money, Groucho. Now we can't let you leave here without any money. We're gonna give you one more question for twenty five dollars. Nobody leaves here broke. Get this right, and you bring your winnings up to I 25. And no coaching, please. It's a tough one. Who was buried in Grant's tomb? Oh, I think it was we Grant. know Grant, don't we? General Grant. Yes, they knew it right away. Yeah? <laughs> well, Groucho, all of our couples tonight lost all their money. <laughs> <laughs> What this means is that all three couples will be back in just one minute to get a chance at the $2,500 DeSoto Plymouth question. Right now, here's one of our beautiful friends with some news about the beautiful new DeSoto. All right, here we go with three couples tied for the chance at the $2,500 DeSoto Plymouth question, Groucho. Each couple will decide on a single answer... And write it down on one of their cards that we've given them. And if all three couples get it right, we'll split the money among them. Okay? Are you ready? Fifteen seconds, right? Right. From 1907 until 1916, an eccentric monk exerted powerful influence over the court of the Tsar of Russia. His power was ended when he was assassinated by a group of nobles. For $2,500, by what name do we know this man? (laughs) Write it down. All three of them got Rasputin, so they split the money between them. Well, wonderful. Congratulations. They each won $833.33. Isn't that right? Yes, plus nothing in the quiz. Plus nothing in the quiz. <laughs> and congratulations from the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast. You bet your life. Be sure.
sure to tune in again next Wednesday night at the same time for the Groucho Marx Show, when the big question will be worth $1,000. And don't miss Groucho's television show, also presented by the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America. And remember that the dealers who sell the distinguished 1953 DeSoto also sell the brilliant new Plymouth, the first truly balanced car in the low-priced field. DeSoto, Plymouth, two great new cars, both products of the Chrysler Corporation. And when you drive in, tell them Groucho sent you. Good night, folks, and remember, see the 1953... Soto. Folks, here's a reminder from the National Safety Council. A minute for safety beats a month for repairs. You bet your life. Transcribed from Hollywood is produced by John Goodell. Directed by Robert Dwan and Bernie Smith. Music by Jerry Fielding. This is George Fenneman signing off for the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast. Ladies and gentlemen, the secret word tonight is fire. F-I-R-E. Really? You bet your life. It's Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life, the comedy quiz series produced and transcribed from Hollywood and brought to you by the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers. The dealers who bring you America's most talked about new car, the distinguished 1953 DeSoto, and the exciting new Plymouth. See them both at your DeSoto Plymouth dealers. And now, here he is, the one, the only... That's me, Captain Spaulding. For Captain Spaulding, the African explorer, did someone call me Schnorrer? Hooray, hooray, hooray. He went into the jungle where all the monkeys throw nuts. If I stay here, I'll go nuts. Hooray, hooray, hooray. Now, <laughs> well, that's a sample. If you want the whole thing, you can buy it on the deck of record. <laughs> Well, here I am again with $1,000 for one of our couples. Groucho, we, um, we have a man with an unusual um, occupation and a French war bride for you tonight. Mr. Frank Lubin and Mrs. Blanche Fansler, come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome. Welcome for the DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Say the secret word and you'll divide $100. It's a common word, something you find in the kitchen. Mr. Mr. Frank Lubin and Mrs. Blanche Fansler. Mm -hmm. Mr. Lubin, you're, you're pretty tall. How tall are you? Uh, six foot six in a fraction. Oh. How, how long have you had this fracture? <laughs> <laughs> are, you, are you married? Yes, I am. Uh, any children? We have two. You have two what? <laughs> we have two children. Oh, well, you certainly got them in a hurry. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Mrs. Blanche Fansler, are you the French war bride? I am. We've, uh, we've had a number of uh, French war brides on the show, Blanche. Uh, how long have you been married? I've been married uh, 32 years. Oh, then you're a World One bride, is that right? Right. Mm -hmm. Where did you meet this doughboy? Oh, I went to Colomb to see a baseball game. Not to see the baseball, I went to look at the Americans. <laughs> and I had a girlfriend and she said, there's a tall one looking at you all the time. And he had a box of candy in his hands. He finally came to me. I could speak very little English, but after five minutes, he said, will you marry me? I said, yes, of course. He gave me the candy. I got it. And I thought I'd never hear from him, like most of them. But 
Two weeks later, coming out of my office, I saw him with his suitcase. He was coming to get married. <laughs> Blanche, what was in this candy? <laughs> Chocolate. Sure this wasn't taffy, huh? Not taffy, no. Mm-hmm. Now, Mr. Lubin, uh, what sort of work do you do? Well, I'm a grip. What is a grip? Would you mind telling us? Well, a grip does a variety of jobs in the uh, motion picture industry, and, uh, for instance, in the last show I was working on, Daryl Zanuck's uh, famous production, The Snows of Kilimanjaro, mm-hmm. I said... We also go- advertised the Sotos in this show. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I set the gobos uh, in front of the lights and the scrims and the kookalorises and make the moving shots for the camera. You set the kookalorises in front of the gobo? <laughs> No, the kookalorus is in front of the lamps. And, and did that melt the snows of Kilimanjaro? Huh? <laughs> no. Well, there's, there's nothing worse than a grip who's lost his grip. Huh? <laughs> do you have any hobbies? Uh? Yes, I do. Just just uh, uh, what, for example? Basketball. Well, how? I mean, as a coach, a spectator, or a district attorney? Well, not as a coach <laughs> or a player, uh, as a coach or a spectator, but as a player. Aren't you a little uh, old to be playing basketball, uh, Frank? uh, How old are you? Uh, I have to admit to 42. How do you manage to keep up with the kids? Isn't basketball pretty fast? Well, the kids uh, run and uh, use their legs, but I use my experience and play with my head. (laughs) You find that's an improvement over a basketball? After a fast dribble down the court, you must have quite a headache. (laughs) How long have you been playing basketball? Over 25 years. Well, that's remarkable. How do you account for the fact that you can still play a kid's game? Well, I don't drink or I don't smoke and uh, don't delve into excesses. I thoroughly believe in clean living. Well, it may be clean, but I wouldn't call it living. (laughs) Well, I'd like to continue talking to you two, but now it's time for you to win some money. Just one minute, you're going to play your bet your life for a chance at the $1,000 question. George? George, I'm going to do something different. Now, since this is a quiz show, I'm going to ask you a question. Why is the new 1953 DeSoto the most beautiful car ever built? Well, that's easy, Groucho, because this beautiful new DeSoto is an entirely new car. The ideal blend of smart styling and fine engineering. It's longer, lower, and lovelier, with new chrome trim adding an extra touch of smartness. Inside, too, the new DeSoto is beautiful in every way. There's a smart new instrument panel, richly grained in handsome bleached walnut gray or dark, lovely, natural walnut brown. The trim is in a variety of upholstery fabrics that are color harmonized with each other and with exterior colors. Then there's a new magnificent door panel and new chrome molding which adds so much to interior beauty. From any angle, you'll agree that the beautiful new DeSoto is an exciting car, distinguished and dramatic. A car I know you'll be proud to own and drive. George is right, folks. This beautiful new DeSoto is the car of the year. See you tomorrow, won't you? This beautiful 1953 DeSoto is now on display at your DeSoto Plymouth dealers in two great series, the mighty DeSoto Fire Dome V8 and the brilliant DeSoto Powermaster 6. Stop in tomorrow and see the distinguished 1953 DeSoto. And remember, all dealers who sell DeSoto also sell Plymouth, the first truly balanced car in the low-priced field. Here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. From our list of 20 categories, you selected number 14, Cards and Dice Terms. Here's your first question. How much will you bet? Over the penny. Hmm? As you like. Over the penny. (laughs) All right. Here's your first question. You are going to bet $19.99. In dice, if you throw a natural, what number would come up? Seven or eleven. Seven or eleven. Well, you're off to a great start. You have $39.99. How much of this $39.99 are you going to play? Over the penny. Okay, Over the penny. 
Okay. In cards, in what game do you try to avoid taking the queen of spades? It can count 13 points against you. I think it's hard. I don't know. You go ahead. Hearts. Hearts is right. Huh? <laughs> now they have 79.97. All but one penny. Okay. In cards, in what game is the method of scoring called pegging? No, you said they wouldn't understand. <laughs> Cribbage. That's right. With corned beef, it's very good. <laughs> You're really up there now. You have $159.93. I had it last night. Corned beef and cribbage. Now, how much <laughs> you got to bet? <laughs> bet it all. The coup de grace, huh? Coup de grace. Coup de grace. Huh? Grace. All right. Well, keep off the grass. Coup de grace. <laughs> in poker, what do you call five cards in sequence of the same suit? Straight flush. Straight flush is right. Huh? <laughs> And you'll wind up with a grand total of $319.86. Thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers. Groucho, we invited some women who work for a packing concern to the program tonight. And just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected Mrs. Helen Belair. Her partner is Mr. Percival Vivian. Folks, would you please come in and meet Groucho Marx? Welcome, welcome to your Bet Your Life. Say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common word, something you find in the kitchen. Mrs. Helen Belair, you're from a packing house? Yes, I am. Swift Packing. Where are you from, uh, Helen? From Providence, Rhode Island, from the Kaliskowski Homestead. You're, you're married, I take it. Yes, eh? I am. Mm-hmm. Well, don't be so mournful about it, Helen. Eh? <laughs> Many people are in that condition. Eh? <laughs> Mr. Percival, uh, Pice- Pericle Vivian, eh? Percival was right. You got it the first time. Mm-hmm. How old are you, Mr. Vivian? In my early 60s. Mm-hmm. When somebody says he's in the early 60s, that means he'll be 70 next Friday. Huh? <laughs> now, precisely, uh, what age are you? 62, and that's the truth. Well, that's virtually 60. Huh? I'm exactly 42, and that's a lie. Huh? <laughs> Where are you from, Mr. Vivian? Camberwell Green, London. Oh, from Blighty, eh? That's right. Mm-hmm. How long since you left there? Oh, about 40 years. Well, let's get back to the packing house, uh, Helen. Uh, what do they pack at this place? Well, mostly a little of everything, I should say. Sliced meats. And turkeys. Don't look at me. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> well, bologna. Don't sausage. look at me. <laughs> <laughs> what else? Well, chickens, steaks, franks. You're welcome. <laughs> well, let's say you're packing a cow now. Do you just cut off the steaks and throw everything else away? Or? No, they or don't. How do you pack a cow? Well, they don't throw anything away. They don't? No, they use everything. Everything? Yes. Corks, the hide, pig's feet. Pig's feet on a cow? <laughs> We're getting some strange animals nowadays. <laughs> this crossbreeding is doing wonderful things. You, know. you say they use every part of the cow? Yes. How about the moo? Do you use that? Well, no, but I guess if they could, they would. <laughs> You're pretty happy in that joint, aren't you? Aren't you? <laughs> What's your job at this, uh, at this place? This... I'm a Frank Skinner. <laughs> I thought you said your name was Helen Belair. It is. Well, what do you do at this place, huh? I'm a Frank Skinner. Frank Skinner? Oh, I used to know him very, very well. He used to play second fiddle with Jerry Fielding. No, it's Frank, but we call them Franks. You call them Franks? Yes. You call them what? Franks. You're welcome. (laughs) Why don't you get a job with a finance company? You could make a fortune skinning the customers. No, I like skinning Franks. But <laughs> well, you're certainly Frankfurt are happy. Do <laughs> you have a dog at home? Well, it pays good money. It does? It's uh, by the yard? Well, no. We're supposed to pack so many boxes. A day, huh? That's right. And if you pack more than that? Well, I get more money. Uh-huh. What sort of work do you do, uh, Mr. Vivian? I'm a manager of the Bard Theatre. 
Well, I've been barred from any a theater. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what do you do there? Well, I direct plays for him, and I'm there at nine o'clock in the morning, the usual routine. See that your scenery and your carpenter and your electricians are on the job, sort of an overseer to watch somebody else work. She's familiar with frankfurters, and you're familiar with ham, huh? That's right. <laughs> We're really in the meat industry here tonight. <laughs> How did you happen to become a theater manager? Were you in show business, or were you just crazy about popcorn? No, I've been in show business ever since I was five years old. Is that so? I came to this country with Sir Philip Ben Greet, and I started my own Shakespearean company. And on Broadway, I think I have the, the longest title... I should say, run of a repertoire of Shakespeare in the history of Shakespeare. Is that so? Mm -hmm. Did you ever play Juliet? No. I played Juliet one time. You did? I didn't know her husband was backstage. <laughs> <laughs> I had one of the longest runs of any actor on Broadway. <laughs> I ran all the way from Times Square to the Bronx Park. <laughs> <laughs> Who do you think is the greatest living Shakespearean actor? Laurence Olivier. You do, huh? Yes, sir. Now, what about me, Percy? Don't you consider me living? I'm not exactly a stranger to the bard, you know. Mm -hmm. All the world's a stage and all the men and women merely players. They have their exits and their entrances. And one man in his time plays many parts. What's sharper than a serpent's tooth is a thankless child. Mm. What is that from, Percy? That is from Abs, uh, the first part. You started from As You Like It, as Jake was, but... Uh... And I realized you didn't like it, so I switched into something else. <laughs> well, why didn't you finish it? Well, I didn't want to embarrass you to be truthful about it. Oh, that's too How bad. did I do, Percy, old boy? Pretty well, pretty well. But I thought uh, you started that heavy, you know, because it's Shakespeare, you've got to do it heavy. Mm. Well, I put on a little weight lately. Yeah? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> That is noble in the mind of some of the slings. Well, it's been interesting talking to you. Uh -huh. And I hope you win a reasonable amount of money here tonight. Because right now you're going to play your bet your life for a crack at the $1,000 question. Run your $20 into the more than our other couples, and you'll get a chance at the big money. Can't tell you how much you have to win, but George is going to remind our listeners. The French war bride and her partner won $319.86, and the secret word is fire. Here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. You selected standard romantic ballads as your category. These romantic songs have remained popular through the years. Let's see if you remember them. <laughs> All right, here's your first question. How much would you bet? Up to you. Okay. Lady said eight. I said ten. Now, what are we going to No, do? eighteen. Eighteen? Oh, eighteen. Eighteen dollars? Eighteen dollars. Okay, what is the name of this ballad? Play it, Jerry. Sweet and lovely. Sweet and lovely. Sweet and lovely is right. Let him play it. I'm not sure I'm going to forget it. <laughs> you now have thirty-eight dollars. Yeah. Now thirty-eight dollars? Remember you're going for a thousand dollars a night? How much of this vast sum will you risk this time? Thirty. Okay. Thirty dollar? Thirty dollar. All right, give me the title of this song. Play, Mr. Fielding. Cocktails. Cocktails for two is right. Mm -hmm. And you now have $68. Oh. You now have $68. How much will you bet on this one? You pretty near blew that last one. <laughs> How much? Go ahead. 65 65 65 Play, Mr. Fielding. Give me something to remember you by. You now written have... Written by Arthur Schwartz and Howard Dietz. Let me get these names in, because oh, sure. they happen to be friends of mine. Oh, sorry. 
Uh, you have three dollars now. You mm -hmm. have three dollars, and I'm sorry, you only have three dollars, and it's your last chance to beat the other couple, but don't be discouraged. How much are you going to bet? Three dollars. All right, give me the title of this song. Play it, Jerry. <laughs> I wouldn't know. Well. I wish I could help you, but I can't. It's a small hotel. Well, you were flighting with it, but you didn't have it. You've lost all your money. Well, yes, nobody sir. leaves here flat broke. So I'm going to give you one more question. Think hard now, and please no help in the audience. If you win this, you'll spend $25. In what state is Omaha, Nebraska? Nebraska. <laughs> Nebraska is right. You win twenty-five dollars. Now, before we proceed, I have a note here to remind me of something, Fenneman. You don't mind, do you? No, go right ahead. There's a piece about me in the current issue of Quick magazine. That's the issue of Quick that's on the stands now. So I trust, as soon as the show is over, you'll all rush out and buy a copy of this. We asked for some young people, uh, young people who were in our audience you tonight. You asked for some young yes, people? Yes, unattached. Are married? No, I, I didn't ask for myself. I was asking for you. Oh, uh, now you're talking. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, we asked for these young, unattached people who are... And were you successful in getting any? Yes, they, they, they are unattached now, and they're not averse to getting married sometime I'll in the see, future. And, and we have them backstage here. Miss Beth Jelm and Mr. Wayne Swift, come in and meet Groucho Marx. Right oh. And here I shot all my ammunition with Shakespeare. <laughs> well, welcome, welcome. For the DeSoto Plymouth dealers, and for me too. Say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common word, something you will find in the kitchen. Beth uh, Jelm, huh? Yes. And what kind of a name is that, Beth? That's Swedish. Oh, you're Svenska, huh? <laughs> Born here, I presume. Right? Yes, in Los Angeles. Well, you're a very good advertisement for <laughs> Los Angeles. Local product. Can't understand why they insist on bragging about oranges out here. <laughs> uh, products like this hanging around. <laughs> Wayne Swift, that's you? That's right. Boy, you're going to be ignored tonight, huh? <laughs> what kind of a name is that? It's English. It goes back, I understand, from my grandmother to Jonathan Swift. Even back past that, I imagine. Hmm, really? Are you connected with the Swift Packing Company? I wish I was. <laughs> Have you ever skinned a Frankfurter? Not yet. Have you skinned anybody out of anything? Eh? I've tried. <laughs> Wayne, you're, you're unattached, is that correct? That's right. What kind of a girl do you have in mind, Wayne? Uh, perhaps I can help you look. Well, she ought to be a little above average in height. I imagine she should be fair complected. She should be blonde, I imagine. <laughs> oh, like to do the things I like to do. Be intelligent. Well, it may not be easy to find a girl who's both intelligent and wants to do the things you want to do. <laughs> That's a large size order there, Wayne. <laughs> Beth, what sort of work do you do? Well, I'm a junior at UCLA right now. Mm -hmm. UCLA, they have quite a football team this they year. They sure do. What are you studying? Well, I'm studying to be a school teacher. Sure, I had to be out 40 years ago. <laughs> I couldn't wait a while. What made you decide to become a teacher? Well, I was going to be a dentist, and sort of a long grind before you become a dentist, so I decided to switch. Is, is this a joke? Uh, <laughs> I no. recognize a feeble reason there. And, uh, no, I'm afraid not. I didn't know whether, whether this was done maliciously or whether this was just inadvertent. Uh -huh. And it takes quite a while to become a dentist, so I decided I'd be a school teacher instead. Mm -hmm. Well, you'll find teaching many of those children is like pulling teeth. <laughs> what sort of work uh, do you do, uh, Wayne? Well, I'm half owner in Can Do. Can Do? You mean Can Do the Magician? I knew him well. How are the old faker? <laughs> Not Shan Do, Can Do. K A N dash D U. Well, dash D U too, huh? <laughs> What does it mean, can do? Well, it's Marine Corps language for we can do anything. Have a care, young fella. 
We don't use Marine Corps language around here. There may be some sailors listening. <laughs> what do you mean you can do anything? Well, we will do anything for anyone at any time for any reason as long as it's legal and ethical. Well, it has to be legal and ethical, huh? Mm -hmm. You must be starving to death, aren't you? <laughs> now, what's the hardest job you've been asked to do, Wayne? I think the hardest job that I've ever had to do is when a movie company asked us and wanted us to obtain one of their obsolete M3 General Grant tanks. Wanted one of what? One of the Army's obsolete M3 tanks. You're welcome. <laughs> well, you're a nice couple. I'm sorry I don't have time to clinch this romance, but maybe you'll get together in the quiz, huh? <laughs> you run your $20 no more than our other couples, you'll get a chance at the $1,000 question. Can't tell you how much you have to win, but George is going to remind our listeners. The French war bride and her partner still lead with $319.86. Let's see how high I can build you $20. You selected anatomical terms. Here's your first question. How much will you bet? Okay. Okay, all right. 1975. 1975. The white manual pertains to what part of the body? Hands. Hmm? Hands. Hands. Hands is right. You're on your way. You have $39.75. Pretty silly of that. You imagine a fellow says, Cole, I'm going to put a pair of gloves on my manuals. <laughs> How much did they get? $39.75. How much are you going to bet of that? $39.50. The word epidermal refers to what part of the body? The outside. Skin. Well, skin. No, skin. Skin. We prefer skin. <laughs> You now have $79.25. $79. All right. The word cardiac pertains to what part of the body? The heart. The heart is right. <laughs> you now have $158.25. How much are you going to bet? We'll bet it all. Okay. She's a pretty smart dentist, this kid. Yeah. <laughs> all right. The word pedal pertains to what part of the body? Or foot, yes, that's good enough. <laughs> and you wind up with $316.50, and that means that the French war bride and her partner, with $319.86, in just one minute, get the chance of the DeSoto Plymouth $1,000 question. Well, thanks, and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Thank you. Right now, let's pay attention to some important information about the beautiful 1953 DeSoto. And here comes our winning couple for tonight, Groucho, the French war bride and her partner, all set for the DeSoto Plymouth $1,000 question. All right, here we go for $1,000. I'll give you 15 seconds to decide on a single answer between you. Think carefully and please no help from the audience. Here it is. In many parts of the world, people still make daily use of a counting device that originated before recorded history. It is a board with beads or counters on it. For $1,000, what is this primitive mechanical brain called? All right, what is the answer you two have decided upon? A Bacchus. That's right, a Bacchus. <laughs> Well, congratulations from the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plima dealers from coast to coast, you bet your life. <laughs> Be sure to tune in again next Wednesday night at the same time for the Groucho Marx Show, when the big question will be worth $1,000. And don't miss Groucho's television show, also presented by the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America. And remember that the dealers who sell the distinguished 1953 DeSoto also sell the brilliant new Plymouth, the first truly balanced car in the low-priced field. DeSoto, Plymouth, two great new cars, both products of the Chrysler Corporation. And when you drive in, tell them Groucho sent you. Good night, folks, and remember, see the 1953... Thank you.
Mistletoe. Folks, here's a message from the National Tuberculosis Association. Join the fight on TB. Buy Christmas seals. You bet your life. Transcribed from Hollywood is produced by John Goodell. Directed by Robert Dwan and Bernie Smith. Music by Jerry Fielding. This is George Fenneman signing off for the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast. Ladies and gentlemen, the secret word tonight is chair. C H A I R. Yeah, you can spell too. Yeah. <laughs> you bet your life. It's Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life. The comedy quiz series produced and transcribed from Hollywood and brought to you by the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers. The dealers who bring you America's most talked about new car. The distinguished 1953 DeSoto and the exciting new Plymouth. See them both at your DeSoto Plymouth dealers. And now, here he is, the one, the only... Well, drag him out here. Oh, that's me. <laughs> Well, here I am again with $1,000 for one of our couples. Well, Groucho, our first couple, Miss Marge Riley and Mr. Arnold Lightus, were chosen from our studio audience just before we went on the air. And here they are. Folks, please come in and meet Groucho Marx. Well, welcome for the DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common word, something you find around the house. Miss Marge Riley, eh? Where are you from, uh, Maggie, uh, Margie? I'm from Okemo, Oklahoma. Where's that? Okima, Oklahoma. O- Okima. Well, where is Okima? It's in Oak Fusky County. <laughs> oh, why didn't you say that? Huh? <laughs> Where's Oak Fusky County? It's in Oklahoma. It's near Okima, I suppose, huh? <laughs> now, what did you uh, What did you do in Okima? I went to school and I lived on a farm. You lived on a farm? Really? Yes, well, wow, you don't look like a farmer. <laughs> You haven't got a plow with you or a rake or anything? You didn't know. <laughs> what did you do on the farm, uh, Marge? Oh, I fed the chickens and fed the hogs and chopped wood and chopped cotton. You uh, chopped the hogs, did you say? No, <laughs> I fed the hogs. Uh, don't they call it slop the hogs? Huh? I didn't. That was nice. <laughs> <laughs> well, what is the difference between slopping a hog and, uh, and feeding a hog? <laughs> Well, there is a difference. Well, what is the difference? Our, our hogs were grain-fed. And uh, Arnold uh, Laitis, is that your name? Laitis. Laitis. That's an odd name, Laitis. I knew your brother, Tonsil, very well. <laughs> <laughs> That's a, a Greek name, isn't it? No, it's a uh, Polish name. Originally, it was spelled L-E-J-T-I-Z-O-U-S-K-I. <laughs> How did you pronounce it then? Laitisowski. Oh, now, how tall are you? I'm 6'2". Oh. I thought six maybe you foot. were a 10-foot pole, you know. They, uh... <laughs> no, they use them a lot of times. But, you know, when you meet a guy and you say, I wouldn't touch you with a 10-foot pole, I thought maybe this fellow was one of them. <laughs> what sort of work do you do? Uh... Well, I manage a um, cheese sales company. We sell cheese. You sell it all alone by yourself? No, actually, I, uh, I work for my father-in-law. He's a uh, oh. cheese distributor. Well, keep your opinions of your father-in-law to yourself. Right? <laughs> what do you do there? Well, I, uh, I'm the manager. I uh, sort of keep the wheels uh, in motion with regards to uh, uh, sales promotions and policies and that type of thing. You sound pretty vague. 
What you actually mean is that you married the boss's daughter, huh? That's right. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm kind of at a loss with you, Mr. Arnold. The only cheese jokes I know are very old ones. And unlike cheese, they don't improve with age. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose you're familiar with the one about Swiss cheese, huh? Um, which one is that? Well, you know, Swiss cheese has all those holes in it because it needs the ventilation. <laughs> Uh, that's not true. Uh, cheese doesn't smell. Well, you go to your delegatessen, and I'll go to mine. <laughs> I don't object to you punching holes in, in your cheese, but don't punch holes in my jokes. <laughs> now, tell me, just what is cheese? I'd be interested in your definition, since you're an expert. Well, cheese uh, originally is, uh, is milk. Uh, if you want to start at the beginning, it's originally grass. <laughs> <laughs> what are some of the more popular cheeses you handle? Well, there's cheddar cheese, Swiss cheese, Jack cheese. Uh, Jack cheese, I know them very well. Huh? <laughs> Jack cheese. Uh, right across the street. Romano, <laughs> Roquefort, blue cheese, provolone. What egg? is blue cheese? Is that a cheese that's despondent? <laughs> How do you serve cheese at home? Oh, we serve cheese at home all the time. You we, do, huh? we have it. Uh, we can have it for every meal. You can. We huh? can. It's uh, an illustration. We uh, use uh, grated cheese on eggs, or we use cheddar cheese uh, for a cheese omelet. In fact, a friend of mine uh, puts a, a, a square of Liederkranz on his hotcakes every Sunday morning, <laughs> which is a rather unusual thing. And you can use cheese for for lunch in the salad, uh, blue cheese or grated cheese, or with sandwiches, Swiss cheese for dessert, bel pieds, port de salut with crackers or, or fruit and coffee, and then. Uh, um, <laughs> Well, how much do I owe you so far? One <laughs> <laughs> of the finest meals I've ever had, huh? I want to meet this father that puts cheese on hotcakes. <laughs> well, I know you're anxious to win some money here tonight, so in just one minute you're going to play your bet your life for a chance at the $1,000 question. Right now, there's something I want you to hear concerning the distinguished 1953 DeSoto. Here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. Out of our list of 20 categories, you selected number 19, common words containing men's names. Now, here's your first question. How much will you bet? And talk real loud. What do you think? Well, let's hold back a penny. Okay. 1999. All right, 1999. What is the word containing a man's name that means a saw or pulled muscle? Charlie Horse? Yeah, uh, Charlie Horse is right. <laughs> I knew Charlie Horse very well. He was a bro blood brother of Jack Cheese. They used to go around together. <laughs> You now have $39.99. Remember, you're going for $1,000 tonight. How much of this sum will you bet on this one? All but a penny. All but a penny. All but a penny. What do you call the British military flag? It contains a man's name. Uh, the Jack. Flying Jack, isn't it? Union Jack. Union Jack Union cheese. Jack. I know very well. You now have $79.97. That's the other brother, Union Let's Jack cheese. Now, how much are you going to bet? All of it. All of it. What do you call a man who makes his living cutting down trees for commercial use? Lumberjack. Lumberjack, Lumberjack is right. <laughs> That's Lumberjack cheese. That's another brother. You've got a family of these jacks, huh? You've now climbed to $159.94. All right, and here's your last chance to be the other couples. How much are you going to bet? I love it. What do you call a man whose business it is to climb high buildings to make repairs? Steeplejack. Steeplejack is right. <laughs> Put it there, kid. And you wind up with $319.88. Thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers. Groucho, we invited some college girls to the uh, program tonight. And just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected Miss Isabel Stewart. Her partner, Mr. John Martyr, has an interesting hobby. So folks, come on in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, welcome to your bet your life. Say the secret word and divide $1,000. $100. And divide a hundred dollars. <laughs> it's a common word, something you find around the house. Il Isabel Stewart, uh, you're the college girl, eh? Yes. How old are you, uh, Isabel? Twenty-one. Twenty-one. Uh, are you married? No, sir. Why not? Well, I'd like to get an education. You get an education, you won't want to get married. Eh? <laughs> what do you want an education for? Do you want to be smarter than your husband? No, I... Um 
kind of like my husband to be smarter than I am. Well, it takes a very smart wife to make her husband think he's smarter than she is. <laughs> That's a little philosophy, you see. We throw that in. We don't charge anything for that. <laughs> Good. It's of no value, but we, it's a, gr a gratuitous piece of philosophy here and there. It's very helpful at times. Mr. John Marta, huh? That's right, sir. You don't look like a Marta. Uh, that, that's you, isn't it? That's right, sir. Sir, who are you talking to? <laughs> I thought he was addressing you. Huh? Oh, that's me? That's you. Well, that's more like it. Uh, thank you very much. I deserve a little respect around here. And... Make a note of this, Panaman. <laughs> Where's that bounder, eh? Huh? Where are you from, Sir John? Uh, John, sir? I'm from England. From, oh, from very old England, eh? What part That's of England? Right. Nottingham. Nottingham? We say Nottingham. Nottingham? We say Nottingham, uh, yes. That is if you work in a packing plant. <laughs> what college do you attend, uh, Isabel? That's a very pretty name, Isabel. Thank you very much. I go to J.C. Pierce, I mean J.W. Uh, Pierce Junior College. Oh. C.W. I thought that was. Pardon me. <laughs> Are you sure you're not in kindergarten? <laughs> you go to J.C.W. Pierce. Uh, pardon me, kindergarten. <laughs> now where is that? That is in Canoga Park. Oh, I didn't know there was a college in Canoga Park. Oh, what are you taking in college? I'm majoring in beef production. In beef production? Yes, sir. You mean you coach the football team? Or is this a cow college? No, it's an agricultural college. Oh, I didn't know we had one of those around here. What all do they teach at this place? Well, they have liberal arts and uh, floriculture and uh, swine husbandry, sheep husbandry. Swine husbandry? <laughs> You mean you have to go to college to know that all husbands are swine? <laughs> you have a football team there? Uh, not this year. It? I guess that's logical. You wouldn't want to spend all week feeding the pigs and then on Saturday get out and kick them around. <laughs> I'm, I'm curious, Isabel. Why should a, an attractive young girl like you go into beef production? Does somebody give you a bum stare at some time? <laughs> No, I've always just loved animals, and uh, I saw my opportunity to go to Pierce, and I just went uh -huh. to Pierce, and I oh, love Do it. you have a song there, a college song, like Cow Cow Boogie or something? Like that? <laughs> you sing Swine Women in Song? <laughs> now, uh, tell me, uh, Mr. Marta, uh, Mr. Fenneman says you have an int We're very polite around here, aren't we? Yeah? Sure. Everything is prefaced with Mr. Tell me, John, Fenneman says you have an interesting hobby. Uh, uh, just what is your hobby? I'm president of the Southern California Cricket Association. Oh, really? I've got three crickets at my house. <laughs> They've been keeping me awake for years. Uh, tell us something about cricket. What is it like? Well, to the Englishman or people born in England, uh, it's pretty much the same as baseball is to an American. That's ridiculous. What fun is there in beating an umpire with a tea bag? <laughs> Or do you just throw the puck? <laughs> Cricket is a pretty old game, isn't it? Yeah. That's right. It's been played in England since the 13th century. Well, Satchel Paige has been playing baseball since the 12th century. <laughs> <laughs> do you have any famous players like Babe Ruth? You know, he hit 60 home runs in one season. Yes, we have. We have uh, one young man that scored 628 runs in one inning. Oh, a pitcher's battle, eh? <laughs> Now, how could a man possibly score 628 runs in one inning? Well, Riddle first, me that. First of all, Gracia, he, uh, on each hit, a long hit over the fence, there's six runs in cricket. If you hit Why do you get six runs if you hit the ball over the fence? That's the game. Oh. Six runs over the Who's fence. Who's responsible for these rules? Well, the Marylebone Cricket Club in London. Oh. How long does the average cricket game last? Well, the first last game in uh, England takes three days. Mm-hmm. Isabel, uh, would you like to attend a cricket game with me sometime? No, thank you, sir. Why not? I think you'd get a kick out of it. Mm, they last a little too long. Well, don't let that bother you. <laughs> you see, what I had in mind wasn't exactly cricket. <laughs> well, right enough of this chatter. Let's see if you can win some real money here tonight. You're going to play your bet your life for a chance at the $1,000. Beat our other couples. 
I can't tell you how much you have to win, but George is going to remind our listeners. Miss Riley and Mr. Lightus won $319.88, and the secret word is chair. Here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. You select and name the city. These are all cities of the United States. Here's your first question. How much would you bet? Okay, the boss has about 15 Okay. $15. 15. If you wanted to ring the Liberty Bell in Independence Hall, what city would you visit? Philadelphia. Philadelphia is right. You now have $35. Remember, you're going for $1,000 tonight. Now, how much of the $35 will you bet on this question? $30. Is that all right with you, Mr. Bull? That's fine. If you wanted to sip a little tea in the famous Back Bay region, what city would you visit? Boston. Boston is right. <laughs> You've now climbed to $65. How much of the $65 are you going to bet? $64. How <laughs> about $60? All right. $60. Isabel, you're looking at him as though he were a cow, huh? <laughs> <laughs> are you ready? I'm ready. Shall we proceed? If you decided to check on some exhibits at the Smithsonian Institute, what city would you visit? Washington, D.C. Washington, D.C. <laughs> You now have one hundred twenty-five dollars. And is your last chance to be the other couples? How much will you bet? The works. Oh, okay, the works. The works. works. If you wanted to stroll along Michigan Avenue or Lakeshore Drive, what city would you visit? Chicago. Chicago. And you wind up with two hundred and fifty dollars. Thanks and good luck from the Desoto Plymouth dealers. Thank you. Come on, Johnny. We uh, have some new parents for you now, Groucho. Oh. Mr. and Mrs. Arthur E. Bishop. And here they are. Folks, would you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx? Welcome, youngsters, for the DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Say the secret word and divide $100. You'll divide $100 if you get the secret word. It's a common word, something you find around the house. Mr. and Mrs. Arthur Bishop, eh? Oh, a sailor, eh? Glad to have you aboard, matey. Mrs. Uh, Bishop, uh, what is your first name? My name is Mary. Mary. Well, how old are you, Mary? I'm 19. And uh, Arthur, what is your age? 21. 21. What a shameful waste, huh? <laughs> the time to be 19 or 21 is when you're my age. <laughs> then you can really appreciate it. Huh? What do you do in the Navy, uh, Art? Well, I was just promoted from a fireman to uh, engineman third. What's a fireman doing in the Navy? Did the Admiral tell you to go to blazes? Or... <laughs> now, how did you happen to meet this lovely and attractive girl? Well, um, she moved in down the block for me, and... Uh, and you was... moved in right away, huh? <laughs> well, I already lived there. Oh, and... you lucky fellow, huh? <laughs> well, she was uh, sitting on the front lawn with her girlfriend, or her cousin, and uh, I knew the friend next door to her, and I was talking to him, and I said, uh, Boy, she sure is cute. I would sure like to get to know her. And, uh... <laughs> well, <laughs> well, Mary, uh, Mary, while this sea wolf was leering at you and trying to figure some sly way to meet you, what were you doing? Well, I was trying to figure out a way to meet him. <laughs> Two minds with but a single thought. Disaster. <laughs> Well, tell me, Sailor, what finally happened? Did you finally wangle an introduction? Yes, I sure did. Well, tell us about this breathless moment, Mary. What happened well, when Casanova finally met you? He, uh, he came up onto the lawn and he said, Hello, glad to meet you. Then he got in his car and drove home. <laughs> well, he probably figured he couldn't top that line. Huh? <laughs> There's no use toying with perfection. Once you etch out something as classic as that, <laughs> ride along with it, huh? What was your reaction to this passionate courtship, Mary? What did you think of Admiral Farragut by this time? Well, I thought he was terribly nice, but awfully shy. Maybe he was just sleepy, you know. <laughs> what made you think he was shy? Well, he didn't ask me for a date until two years later. <laughs> Well, I'd say he was pretty shy, all right. Maybe he was just shy of funds. <laughs> Where did you go on the first date? We went to a drive-in movie. Well, that explains that he wasn't shy. 
<laughs> he was just waiting for a double feature. That's it. <laughs> what happened after that first date with Mary? Joined the Navy. <laughs> Apparently, there's something about this girl that makes you want to hit the road. <laughs> <laughs> what happened next, Dodge? You joined the Navy, then what? Well, I went through uh, nine, weeks, nine weeks' boots, and then I went aboard the USS Toledo and spent nine months in Korea in the uh, battle zone, and then uh, we returned to the States, and then that's when I put in for special leave to go home to get married. How long have you been married, Mary? One year tomorrow. Tomorrow, your first anniversary. Well, congratulations. <laughs> Married a whole year. In these times, that's practically a golden wedding. <laughs> now, Fenneman says your new parents, uh, what is it, a boy or a girl? We have three baby girls. <laughs> You have triplets? Well, shiver my scuttlebutt. <laughs> well, what do you know? Mary, you're lucky he's the shy type. <laughs> Otherwise, you might have had a Boy Scout troop by this time. <laughs> What did you name them, Art? Uh, <laughs> Paula, Pauline, and Paulette. Why didn't you call them John Paul Jones? <laughs> well, I might as well have. She names them Sally, Susie, and Sandy. Well, you each have your own set of names. Huh? <laughs> Isn't this confusing to the children? Well, they can understand. <laughs> Do they look alike, Mary? Yes, they're identical. I can't even tell them apart. How about you? Yes, I can tell them apart. Oh. They have beads with their names on them. <laughs> I may pipe you overboard before we do it. <laughs> Art, how are you making out in the Navy? Three extra mouths to feed? Well, it's uh, pretty rough to make ends meet right now. I would uh, like to get out and get a job. I've had a lot of experience in diesel engines and gasoline engines. Worked with them most of my life. And uh, I like to get wound up in something like that. Well, perhaps some of certainly get things done. <laughs> <laughs> Not only that, but you certainly know how to triple production. <laughs> I really, really hope that all five of you are very happy together. Now it's time to play your bet your life for a chance at a lot of money. You run your 20 bucks, and the more than our other couples, you'll get a chance at the $1,000 question. Can't tell you how much you have to win, but George is going to remind our listeners. Our first couple is still ahead with $319.88. Here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. You selected songs by Nancy O'Hay Brown as your category. Here's your first question. How much would you bet? $19.95. $19.95. Give me the name of this song. Okay. Smoothie is right. And, and you're on your way. You have $39.95. Remember, you're going for $1,000 tonight. Now, how much of this $39.95 are you going to bet this time? $39.94. Play it, Jerry. I think it's in When I Hold Your Hand. No, I, I wish it was, kids, but unfortunately, it's paradise. paradise. <laughs> Gee. That's a shame. Well, they now have one cent, Groucho. Here's your third question. How much of this one cent would you bet? <laughs> All of it. All of it. <laughs> Play this one, Jerry. Now you got two cents. 
This is your last chance to beat the other couples. You're going to bet the two cents, I presume. <laughs> All right, play the song, Jerry. Well, they, won- they wind up with four cents. You folks didn't win, so obviously we can't give you any more money. However, we'd like to give you a triplet, $50 a piece. That makes a total of $150 for them. Oh. <laughs> well, that's all um... Even if you didn't know the answer was paradise, you kids are in paradise and you're very lucky. Uh, Groucho, this couple wound up with their four cents, which means that our first couple, Miss Riley and Mr. Lightus, with $319.88. In just one minute, get the chance of the DeSoto Plymouth $1,000 question. Well, thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Right now, here's something of importance about the beautiful 1953 DeSoto. Well, here's uh, Miss Riley and Mr. Lightus, the winning couple, all ready for the DeSoto Plymouth $1,000 question, Groucho. Good morning, folks. Well, this is the 10-foot pole and uh, <laughs> the old hog slopper. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go for $1,000. I'll give you 15 seconds to decide on a single answer between you. Think carefully and please no help in the audience. Are you ready? In 1814, a new set of lyrics and a new title were given to a song called Anacreon in Heaven. A N A C R E O N. In heaven. For a thousand dollars, what is the name of this song today? Talk it over. All right, what is the answer you two have decided upon? Star Spangled Banner. Star Spangled Banner! Congratulations from the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast. You bet your life. Be sure to tune in again next Wednesday night at the same time for the Groucho Marx Show when the big question will be worth $1,000. And don't miss Groucho's television show, also presented by the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America. And remember that the dealers who sell the distinguished 1953 DeSoto also sell the brilliant new Plymouth, the first truly balanced car in the low-priced field. DeSoto, Plymouth, two great new cars, both products of the Chrysler Corporation. And when you drive in, tell them Groucho sent you. Good night, folks, and remember... See the 1953... DeSoto Folks, here's a reminder from the National Safety Council Courtesy and good judgment are two keys to highway safety You Bet Your Life Transcribed from Hollywood is produced by John Goodell Directed by Robert Dwan and Bernie Smith Music by Jerry Fielding This is George Fenneman signing off for the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast tonight is people. P-E-O-P-L-E. Oh, he spells good, huh? You bet your life. Really? It's Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life, the comedy quiz series produced and transcribed from Hollywood and brought to you by the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers. The dealers who bring you America's most talked about new car, the distinguished 1953 DeSoto, and the exciting new Plymouth. See them both at your DeSoto Plymouth dealers. 
And now, here he is, the one, the only... Well, drag him out here. Oh, that's me. (laughs) Well, here I am again, starting the seventh year of You Bet Your Life. I enjoyed those summer shows again, and I hope you did, too. So tonight we're starting the fall season off with $1,000 for one of our couples. Well, Groucho, we uh, have a housewife and a police officer for you now. Mrs. Marion Shaw and Officer Fred Smith, would you please come in and meet Groucho Marx? Welcome. Welcome for the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Say the secret word and you'll divide $100. It's a common word, something you see every day. Unless you look in the end. Uh, now, let's see... Uh... Mary Ann Shaw and uh, Officer Fred Smith. Uh, where are you from, Mary Ann? I'm from Texas, Groucho. I was born... From Texas, Groucho. Is that near here? <laughs> <laughs> no, Rockport. Oh, Rockport. Where is that near? Is that Corpus near... Christi. Corpus Christi, mm-hmm. I see. Huh? And Officer Smith, uh, uh, where are you from? Well, Groucho, I was born and raised in the northeastern part of Oregon, a small town known as the Grand Oregon. Uh-huh. And why did you take it on the lamb, Officer? Huh? The Army caught up with me. Oh. I was called into the service. I see. Uh, how, did, how did you meet Mr. Shaw, uh, Marianne? Was he, uh... he was an accountant, and I met him through a friend that, uh, well, he didn't exactly. I met him, but he didn't ask me to go out, and oh. I was trying to meet him, but he wasn't trying to meet me. And That's pretty clear. You haven't said anything, but it's clear. <laughs> You say he was an accountant? Yes. Well, he was probably doing a little figuring himself. Don't you think? <laughs> well, that was my problem. I didn't think he was. So. Oh. Well, how is it you had to do all the plotting in this romance? Uh, wasn't he interested? Well, I couldn't tell. That was my problem. I think he was very shy. That's why I liked Oh, a shy accountant, eh? <laughs> <laughs> how shy was he? About 20,000 grand? <laughs> Well, what did he say when he proposed to you since he was so shy? Do you oh, remember? Did he give a good account of himself? <laughs> what did he do? Oh, he just said, I don't remember exactly what he said, but I said yes, and it was settled from then on. <laughs> you didn't even hear what he said? Well, I, I thought he was probably talking about, I've been leading up the subject, and, and I thought he was probably, <laughs> but he seemed to be agreeable, and so it was all right. Oh. He might have been asking you if your shoes hurt or something. <laughs> and you said yes, huh? That, that was pretty dangerous, wasn't it? Well, no. <laughs> it turned I... out all right, yeah. though. Huh? Well, uh, uh, Officer Smith, let's talk about another kind of crime. Uh, I've often wondered, how does the L.A. police force compare with the other major cities? Well, according to uh, FBI observations... It's rated as one of the best police departments in... Uh, FBI police. observations? There must be some police force if the FBI is watching them. <laughs> I'm mighty fine. Say, I'm getting pretty fresh here. What kind of a cop are you, anyway? Before yeah. I get any further with this, huh? Well, uh, Groucho, I work a uniform patrol, a radio car. Oh, you're at the end of the dial, huh? <laughs> yes. Um, you can't get anything else. You can always get that. Mr. Schmaltz, go to go to four three three five six six three over six x. Why don't they do it in English so we can understand it too? Huh? Well, we get a lot of calls, or more or less, listen to uh, our radio all the time for instructions and calls of any type. You listen to the radio all the time, huh? You must be smoking five different brands of cigarettes, huh? <laughs> By the way, do you ever listen to this show on the radio? Yes, I listen to it all the time. Next time you arrest somebody, don't tell them Groucho sent you, huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, Mary Ann, let's get back to you. I'm curious. How, how does a charming, attractive housewife spend her time? Do you belong to a bridge club? No, I'm the national president of Thanks, Groucho, and I spend You're my time... Huh? <laughs> what are you thanking me for, uh, Mary Ann? Well... I haven't done anything except insult you a few times, eh? Well, you spell thanks, T-H-A-X, so this is different. It's a morale-building organization that keeps the individual men in Korea reminded that the people at home are behind them Mm -hmm. by directing packages. Wait a minute. You said people, and that's the (laughs) same word. Well, 
People is the secret word, so you and your uh, the fly cop over here each win 50 bucks. Isn't that wonderful? Now you got something to be thankful for. Well, now I already us, have. <laughs> now tell us about this uh, organization that you're the uh, prime mover in. You sent the uh, you sent a package to the boys in Korea? Well, I wanted to. I think you'd have done them all good if you'd have sent yourself there. Huh? <laughs> no, there wasn't any way for a, an individual person to send an individual package. So uh, we got a drive started with the help of a, a club in San Diego and some friends. And we uh, had about 3,000 packages and sent them over. And a newsletter every other week to 5,000 men in hospitals and so forth. Well, what are your future plans with this organization? Well, I'd like to see it fold up by having all the guys come home, but as long as they're still there, I'd like to just keep thanks going and as many people as we can interest in it. Well, I think that's a thing. wonderful job you're doing. And... <laughs> Mary Ann, I think most of us want to do things for the boys overseas, but usually that's about as far as it ever gets. We're all apt to forget very quickly. And if you have any packages left over, I'll give you my address later. <laughs> well, you're a real nice couple, and I wish you success in the quiz. Now it's time to win some money. In just one minute, you're going to play your bet your life for a chance at the $1,000 question. Right now, I want you to pay close attention to a message about the distinguished new DeSoto. Friends, the car you should own is a DeSoto. Why? Because DeSoto is designed and built to give you extra comfort extra safety, and extra performance. For extra performance, remember DeSoto lets you drive without shifting. With DeSoto's famous tiptoe hydraulic shift with fluid drive, you simply turn the key to start, step on the gas to go. And then there's the mighty DeSoto 160 horsepower Fire Dome V8 engine, the world's most efficient engine design that gives you all the power you'll ever use and delivers that power while using regular fuel. For extra comfort, there's DeSoto Full-Time Power Steering. DeSoto Full-Time Power Steering works for you all the time, not just some of the time. DeSoto gives you comfort, too, with its Auraflow shock absorbers, which turn even the roughest roads into boulevards. Huge DeSoto Power Brakes give you a safe, sure stop every time, with just half the pedal pressure of ordinary brakes. Tomorrow, go to your DeSoto Plymouth dealers and drive either the mighty DeSoto Fire Dome 8 or the brilliantly responsive Power Master 6. Both great cars let you drive without shifting. And remember, all dealers who sell DeSoto also sell the beautifully styled Plymouth, first truly balanced car in the low-price field. All right, here we go. Let's see how I can bet you $20. You selected songs of the year 1940 as your category. Now, all of these songs were big hits that year. Let's see how many of them you remember. Here's your first question. How much will you bet? Now, your partner, so talk it over. Okay. You bet it all. All right. Give me the title of this song. Okay, Jerry. Last time I saw Phil Harris. That's fine. You now have $40. Remember, you are going for $1,000 night. How much of the $40 would you try? All the way. Huh? All the way. Okay. What is the name of this song? Play, Mr. Fielding. Imagination. Imagination in this correct. <laughs> the third question, how much will you bet? All of it. Oh, okay, well, okay, let's see if you can identify this one. Play, Play Jerry. Oh, oh, this is a real fly oh. cop, this guy. <laughs> I'll never smile again. You now have one hundred six. Last shooting. chance to beat the other couples. How much are you going to go for? <laughs> All right, identify this one. Okay, Jerry. Oh, when you wish upon a star. When you wish upon a star is absolutely the correct <laughs> <man>. <laughs> 
Minnesota Plymouth Thank Dealers. You, Well, Groucho, we selected Mr. George Kaufman and Mrs. Constance Nelson from among our volunteers in our audience tonight. And here they are, folks. Would you come in and meet Groucho Marx? Welcome, welcome for the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers. Say the secret word and you'll divide $100. It's a common word, something you see every day. Mrs. Constance Nelson and Mr. George Kaufman. George Kaufman, are you George Kaufman, the playwright? No, I'm another George Kaufman. Oh. <laughs> There's only one George Kaufman. My advice to you, George, is to change your name to something else. Where are you from, George? I was born in Russia. I was born uh, in a small village called Yalosvetgrad. That's oh. 100 miles from Odessa. And I left there when I was 18 months old and came direct to Los Angeles. And I've lived here ever since. <laughs> Did you come alone? No, uh, my mother brought me here. Oh, you, you came with your mother, I see. How old are you, George? Fifty. Mm -hmm. uh, I bet you were glad to get out of Russia, huh? Well, uh, I'm very happy to be here. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a pretty shifty answer. <laughs> Constance uh, Nelson, uh, that, that's you. Uh, where were you born, Connie? At Hearts Are in Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. Now, could you give us some idea of your age, Connie? We have a pretty big radio audience, you know, and they like to form a mental picture of our contestants. Near 50. Not quite. Well, that's pretty vague. <laughs> Most listeners, when a woman says she's around 50, assume that she's about 95. <laughs> now, you look uh, pretty young, though. Connie, I'd say you're around 40. Thank you. Now, tell us, what was life like back there in uh, Oklahoma, close to 50 years ago? <laughs> well, it was wonderful. My mother was Polish and my father was Lithuanian. Is that so? Well, how did they get along, Polish and Lithuanian? They got along wonderful. I spoke Polish and Lithuanian, and I sing songs like, Yes, We Have No Bananas, and... Uh, tomorrow, tomorrow, how happy we will be. You say you sing, uh, yes, we have no bananas in Polish? I sure do. Could you give us a couple of lines of that? Well, I think it'll come back to me. Well, do it in Lithuanian. We don't care. <laughs> well, do it with watermelons if you can't do it with bananas. <laughs> Talk, yes, mini mommy, bananusi. Meeny mommy, bana nusi, gee shy. That's very nice. Me mommy, shablaki, kaposti, so bully. Don't give us the whole bunch of bananas. She's going to hang on to this until it's all over. Well, be sure to tune in again next week, folks. Huh? Next week, we're going to do How Much Is That Doggy in the Window in Swedish. Huh? <laughs> Well, Mr. Kaufman, let's converse with you for a moment. How did you meet Mrs. K? Through a mutual friend. You mean and... an insurance company? <laughs> no. No. What sort of work are you doing, uh, George? I have uh, an unpainted furniture store. Why don't you paint it? <laughs> in Las Feliz, near San Fernando Road. Between... Are all the stores unpainted in, in Las Feliz? No, this one. Mine is. It's uh, on Las Feliz. Yeah. Between San Fernando Road and Riverside Drive. Yeah. And it's the best unpainted furniture store anywhere. <laughs> and we have the largest and best quality unpainted furniture anywhere. And we also have garden furniture. <laughs> and we have uh, the All right, enough furniture. already. Huh? <laughs> we have the best and unpainted furniture yeah. in all styles. Do you mind if I say a few words about the DeSoto? <laughs> and we, uh, we, we really do. We have it in all styles. Stop the music! <laughs> Sing Yes, We Have No Bananas in Polish. Okay, thank you. We have Mini the... Mavi, okay, you talk. We have the best unpainted furniture. Very cool. Oh, yeah. Well, this has been very interesting, George. Uh, one mile east of Riverside Drive. <laughs> one mile west of San Fernando Road. Well, paint the store and I'll come over in the morning. Yeah? It's very best. It's uh, unpainted furniture. Oh, yes, I understand. <laughs> the 
Best quality. Yes, there's no question about that in my mind. Oh, it's on Las Feliz. Yeah, you know. I know. <laughs> Now it's time to win some money. You run your $20 no more than our other couples, and you'll get a chance at the $1,000 question. Now, I can't tell you how much you have to win, but George is going to remind our listeners. Mrs. Shaw and Officer Smith won $320, and the secret word is people. You selected locations of cities over 100,000 in population. All of these cities are in the United States. Let's see if you can identify the state. Now, you're partners, and you have to decide between you. Here's the first question. How much will you bet? How much do you want to bet? All of it. Oh, no, not all of it. Oh, yes. Oh, no. Sure, all of it. Oh, no. Sure. No. Is it anyhow? Oh, come on, no, kids. No. Yeah, all of it. No, how about $19? $19? $19. $19. $19. Okay. $19. In what state is the city of Shreveport? Remember, it's over 100,000 population. Talk it over. What was it? What was it? In what Shreveport. state is the city of Shreveport? The Shreveport. Louisiana. You haven't known. Louisiana. Louisiana. That's right. You now have $39. Remember, you're going for $1,000 tonight. How much of your 39 will you bet on your second question? How much do you want? All of it. No, no. <laughs> no, let's not bet all of it. Okay. It's up to you. Yes. Huh? Yeah, you have thirty-nine dollars. How much are you betting? Thirty-seven. All right. And what state is the city of Berkeley? California. That's right. <laughs> you now have seventy-six dollars. How much of the seventy-six are you going to risk on this one? How much do you want? To All of it. Oh no! <laughs> no. <laughs> How much do you want? We just what you want to. Seventy-four. Uh, Seventy-four dollars. And what state is the city of South Bend? Remember, it's over a hundred thousand in population. South Bend. What state? Indiana. Mm -hmm. Indiana. That is correct. You now have $150. And is your last chance to beat the other couples? How much would you bet? All of it. All of it? Yes. Mm -hmm. All right, let's shoot the word. Okay. If you win this, will you have the store painted? (laughs) All right, and what state is the city of Mobile? Alabama. Alabama. Alabama is correct. And you wind up with $300. Thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers. Well, Groucho, we have a West Point cadet and a young single girl for you now. Miss Antoinette Pagano and Cadet Craig Elliott, would you please come in and meet Groucho Marx? Well, welcome for the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers. Say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common word, something you see every day. Antoinette Pagano and Cadet Craig Elliott. A West Point cadet, eh? We're always glad to have somebody from West Point here. I'm certainly glad to be here, Groucho. Oh, I was wondering if you were alive. Antoinette Pagano, is that the correct pronunciation? Yes, Groucho. How long have you been at the point? I don't go to West Point. Oh, then this ramrod here must be the cadet, huh? <laughs> I never would have guessed. I thought he was part of the building. Huh? <laughs> what sort of work do you do, uh, I'm Antoinette? a student at the Art Center School. You're a student? Mm-hmm. At the Art Center? What are you learning at this school? Well, we're taught the elements of art and how to apply them to a professional field such as illustration. Uh, you're an uh, illustrator for magazines? and. Uh... Well, I hope to be someday. Oh, I see. And uh, you're not married? No. You're very attractive. Thank Have you. Have you ever had a date with a West Point cadet? No, I haven't. Well, are you doing anything after the show? Uh, nothing in particular. <laughs> Good. I'll see you later. We can, uh, <laughs> we can discuss West Point. Huh? <laughs> Cadet, uh, what shall I call you, Craig? Uh, cadet, uh, mister, or what? Cadet is appropriate, sir. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I'll just call you Craig and relax, will you? I am relaxed, sir. <laughs> well, loosen your girdle or something. <laughs> Let your hair down. 
How did you get into West Point, Craig? I understand it isn't an easy thing to do. Well, sir, I was appointed by Senator Joseph C. O'Mahony of Wyoming. Uh, I took a competitive exam with 36 other boys from the state of Wyoming. And I received the highest grade in the state, and I was therefore tendered the appointment to either West Point or Annapolis, and I chose West Point. And then I took Could the Could you have gone to Vassar? I don't believe so, sir. Would you have preferred Vassar? That's a difficult question, sir. Well, no matter how fat you were when you went there, you could have left Vaseline, you know. <laughs> well, Craig, when they picked you, I think they made an excellent choice. Only do me a favor, will you? When you get back there, tell them to stop putting so much starch in your bath water. <laughs> what are some of the things that happen to a young man entering uh, West Point? Well, first of all, the <clears throat> correction of posture has begun. Yeah. <laughs> well, I've said you succeeded there, all right. <laughs> and this is brought about by various methods, mainly just uh, correction by the first class, which, uh, who are in charge of the fourth class. Then you have to stand like this all the time? Yes, sir. We are at attention at all times. Suppose you have an itch and you have to scratch. <laughs> it just goes unscratched. <laughs> What are some of the other disciplinary features of West Point? Well, sir, we are required to sit on the forward six inches of our table, our chair, in the what? dining hall. You sit on the table at West Point? No, sir. The forward six inches of the chair at all meals in the dining hall. And we were, are required... You're allowed to sit down during those four years? Yes, sir. Oh, pretty yes. soft racket you've got there. <laughs> And we are also required to be at attention outside our rooms at all times. We are not allowed to speak to anyone outside our rooms without permission. What is the purpose of all this discipline? It is to uh, instill in us a sense of self-discipline and to uh, make us so that we will uh, follow orders without question, sir. Uh -huh. I saw a movie once about West Point, and all they did was stroll up and down Flirtation Moor. <laughs> is there such a place, or is that at Annapolis? No, sir, that's definitely at... West Point, and there is such a place. It, well, what exactly a lane that, is a fl flotation walk? It is a lane that winds its way along the banks of the Hudson and uh, beneath a rock called the Kissing Rock. And as the legend has it, the Kissing Rock is reputed to fall if any girl refuses to kiss the cadet with whom she is. I see. At this is time. all legendary? <laughs> the part about the rock is not legendary, sir. There is actually a Kissing Rock. Oh, I'm sure of that. Huh? Do the girls ever refuse to kiss their dates? Well, sir, the rock hasn't fallen yet. <laughs> They probably starch the rock, too, you know. <laughs> That's just one vast field of starch, the whole place. Huh? <laughs> well, Craig, I've kidded you, but I want you to know how I really feel about West Point. The discipline they practice and the things they teach help keep our country strong. And you're a good advertisement for them. Now you're going to play your bet your life. You run your $20 no more than our other couples, and you'll get a chance at the $1,000 question. I can't tell you how much you have to win, but uh, George is going to remind our listeners. Mrs. Shaw and Officer Smith still lead with $320. Now, here we go. Let's see how high I can bid you $20. You selected Roman numerals as your category. Now, your partners, you decide on everything between you. Here's your first question. How much will you bet? The whole 20, Gato. Is that... Uh... I guess so. What does the uh, Roman numeral X stand for? Ten. Ten, Ten is correct. <laughs> Well, you're off to a good start. You have $40. I'll be going for $1,000 tonight. How much of the $40 are you going to bet on this one? Oh, 40 Okay. What is our equivalent of the Roman numeral C? 100 $100. You now have $80. Here's your third question. How much of the 80 are you going to try? Oh, lady. <clears throat> what is our equivalent of the Roman numeral V? Five. Correct. <laughs> You've now climbed to one hundred sixty dollars. Here's your last chance to beat the other couples. Now, how much are you going to bet? All of it. All of All it. Of what does the Roman numeral M stand for? One thousand. One thousand is right. <laughs> and you wind up with three hundred and twenty dollars. And that means that you and Mrs. Shaw and Officer Smith 
Also, with $320, oh. we'll get a chance for the DeSoto Plymouth $1,000 question in just one minute. Thanks and good luck to the DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Fannerman, why don't you tell our audience what's so special about the Groucho Special Used Cars? Well, that's easy, Groucho. They're the finest used car values in town. You see, because the new DeSoto is so popular, your DeSoto Plymouth dealer is getting the cream of the crop in fine used cars. All great values, but just a few of the very best are being selected as Groucho Specials. These are the really exceptional used car values your DeSoto Plymouth dealer picks as the best buys in town. My DeSoto Plymouth dealer picks them? You mean he goes all over the country picking out Groucho specials? Doesn't that keep him pretty busy? Now, you know better than that, Groucho. Each DeSoto Plymouth dealer picks out his own Groucho specials. Oh. Well, tell him about the beautiful picture on the windshield of the Groucho specials, Fenneman. Sure, Groucho. Folks, that's the Groucho special sticker with Groucho's picture. The Groucho Special Sticker is your dealer's way of pointing out the very best used car buys he has. Now you no longer need take a chance when you buy a used car. Just look for the Groucho Special Sticker. What's more, your neighborhood DeSoto Plymouth dealer can arrange convenient budget payments for you. Friends, visit your neighborhood DeSoto Plymouth dealer and look for the Groucho Specials. And when you drive in, tell them Groucho sent you. Well, Groucho, here are the two couples tied for the chance of the big question. Each couple will decide on a single answer and write it down on a little piece of paper we've given them. If both couples get it right, they'll split the money between them. Okay? One of the most famous roads in the world was constructed more than 2,000 years ago. It was 132 miles in length and ran south from Rome. Parts of it are still to be seen. For $1,000, what is the name of this historic highway? <laughs> Well, the uh, West Pointers are not only smart, but so are the Los Angeles police. They both got the answer, which is, which is the Appian Way. Well, each couple won $500 on the Appian Way. Congratulations from the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast. You bet your life. Thank you very much. Thank you. Be sure to tune in again next week at the same time for the Groucho Mike Show, when the big question will be worth $1,000. And don't miss Groucho's television show, also presented by the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America. And remember that the dealers who sell the distinguished 1953 DeSoto also sell the brilliant new Plymouth, the first truly balanced car in the low-priced field. DeSoto, Plymouth, two great new cars, both products of the Chrysler Corporation. And when you drive in, tell them Groucho sent you. Good night, folks, and remember... Just be sure to see the distinguished... New DeSoto! Folks, here's a reminder from the National Safety Council. Don't be a wacky walker. Remember, walkers wise use their eyes. You bet your life. Transcribed from Hollywood is produced by John Goodell. Directed by Robert Dwan and Bernie Smith. Music by Jerry Fielding. This is George Fetterman signing off for the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers... From coast to coast, you bet your life is heard by our armed forces throughout the world. Ladies and gentlemen, the secret word tonight is foot, F-O-O-T. Really? You bet your life. (laughs) 
it's Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life, the comedy quiz series produced and transcribed from Hollywood and brought to you with more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers, the dealers who bring you America's most talked about new car, the distinguished 1953 DeSoto and the exciting new Plymouth. See them both at your DeSoto Plymouth dealers. And now, here he is, the one, the only... Just a faded son of love. Oh, that's me. Well, here I am again with $1,000 for one of our couples. We have a young married couple for you, Groucho. Mm -hmm. So will Hilda... Not for me. Yes, uh, Hilda and... for each other, apparently. (laughs) Hilda and William Bittles, would you please come in and meet Groucho Marx? Welcome to the DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Say the secret word and uh, the wife will take home the $100. It's a common word, something you always have with you. Pretty cute looking dish here. Eh? <laughs> Let's see, Hilda and William Bittles, eh? Bittles, why, what kind of a name is Bittles? Yeah. So it is a pure Irish name. Pure Irish? Well, what is pure Irish? I know what pure Scotch is. I don't know what. Pure... <laughs> Where in Ireland are you from? Donegal, County Donegal. County right. Donegal. That is right. Mm-hmm. Now, Mrs. Mrs. Bittles, that's you, huh? Eh? Yes. Uh, and you're married to Pat O'Brien here, huh? <laughs> William Bittles, Mr. Marks. Ah, uh, uh, sure, it is the luck of the Irish. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, and sure, and it is. Uh. Let's see, your first name is Hilda? Yes. Oh. What part of Sweden are you from, uh, Hilda? Well, I'm not from Sweden. I'm, I was born in Jacksonville, Florida. But oh. I claim Georgia as my home. I see. Yeah. How long have you been married, Bill? Four years. Mm-hmm. You look like you're pretty happy about it, are you? Oh, it's as happy I am. I have to keep pinching myself. Why do they myself? say everything backwards over there? <laughs> sure, as happy I am. I yeah. have to pinch myself once in a while just to remind myself that I really am married in, in America. Well, if you have to pinch yourself, it can't be much of a marriage. Eh? <laughs> Hilda, could you tell us how you met uh, County Donegal here? Yes. I was working for the Red Cross in Fullerton, and one day a girlfriend telephoned and asked if I would date this young man who had just arrived in the United States from Ireland. He had been here three months. He was living in the YMCA, and he hadn't had a date since his arrival. It's hard to get one in the YMCA. (laughs) (laughs) You you didn't try the YWCA at all. (laughs) You were in the Red Cross? Yes. And uh, did you always answer these uh, emergency calls like this? Oh, yes, Mr. Marks. Uh Uh-huh. I mean, uh, how did they know that you wanted to go out with a a young man? Was there something about... Well, I was single, and... He was single, and... (laughs) I enjoyed going out, and... Uh He was certainly looking forward to it. And your girlfriend phoned you? Yes, she did. What did they have? Did they have an alarm in the office or something, like in a firehouse? (laughs) No fella just got in? Uh, No. Well, uh, Bill, I'm curious. Uh, Why did you leave Ireland in the first place? Well, I had... It's a long... What should I say? Why in the first place did you be after leaving Ireland? (laughs) (laughs) It's not the I'm going to be to tell you now. (laughs) I had the good fortune of being detached to an American unit in North Africa during the war, had have been in the British Army, and I was picked with two other young officers to be attached to this unit. Anyhow, I saw how the Americans lived, how they ate and behaved. They were getting about four times the pay I was getting, and they had four pairs of shoes to my one pair of boots, and, and they got fresh underclothes as many times as they wanted all day. So I said, if I ever got out of this mess alive, I, I would go to the United States of America and make my home there. If a country did so much for its fighting men who weren't doing any more than stopping bullets like we were, that it must be a a wonderful country worthy of living in. I see. In other words... In other words, you you actually came to America to get a clean suit of underwear. What are some of the differences you find between living in, uh, in Ireland and, and living in California? Well, the weather, of course, is the big feature. Uh, the, the food, all this wonderful food here, there's no rations or anything. You can have as much as you want, as yeah, many times as you want. The food is different, yeah. <laughs> in this country, you can get excellent Irish food, you know, in any French restaurant. <laughs> What 
What's the most unusual dish uh, you've come across in this country, in addition to Hilda? <laughs> well, I would say a corn in the cob was the biggest surprise to me. It was, huh? I'd never seen corn on the cob before. They don't, don't have they smoke them over there? <laughs> <laughs> no, I had never seen it before. Uh, no. So when I got out here, I... I uh, Did you smoke a corn cob pipe in Ireland, didn't you? No. MacArthur does, huh? You yeah. smoke a clay pipe over there. A huh? clay pipe, yeah, that's right. That's what they... I once asked an Irishman, I says, why do you smoke a clay pipe? He says, well, if you drop it, you don't have to pick it up. <laughs> What sort, what sort of work are you doing here in America? I uh, happen to be an instrument engineer for the Fluor Corporation here in Los Angeles. What is that? They're fluor fluoroscopes? Uh, no, no. They are engineers and designers of uh, uh, refineries and pulsation dampeners and cooling oh. towers, etc. I see. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's no use going any further, but I don't understand what you're talking about anyway. <laughs> well, uh, let's quit this foreign gab and see if you can win some money here. Because it's time to play You Bet Your Life. All you have to do is run your $20 and more than our other couples, and you'll get a chance at the big money. Let's see how high I can put your $20. You selected uh, Complete the Name of the Firm. I'll give you one of the names of nationally known business firms, and you give me the other. Here's your first question. Now, how much will you bet? Shall we bet it all? Well, I've been adventurous in America up to now. I'll, I'll take a chance on you all. How much? $20, you bet? $20. All right. This firm publishes dictionaries. The first name is Funk. What is the second name? Funk and Wagnall. That's right, Funk and Wagnall. <laughs> Off to a good start, you have $40. All right, uh, how much of your $40 will you bet on your second question? Would you like to bet it all? Yes. We would like to bet it all. All right. This firm is noted for their fine sporting goods. The first name is Abercrombie. What is the second? And Fitch. No, Abercrombie. One answer now between sporting. you. Abercrombie and... Fitch. I think it's Fitch. Abercrombie and Fitch. That's right. <laughs> oh. You now have $80. I was thinking of Fitch. <laughs> All right, here's your third question. You have 80 smackers. Now, how much are you going to risk? Yes, all right. $80 you're going to bet. This firm is known for their surgical supplies. The first name is Johnson. What is the second? Surgical supplies. Yes, yep. Band-aids, all kinds of things. What is it, honey? I don't know. Johnson. First name is Johnson. Take a guess now. Johnson and Vic. No. Um. It's so easy to us. Johnson and Johnson. Oh, God. Oh, no. <laughs> well, they lost all their money, Groucho. Well, we can't allow anybody to leave here flat broke. I'll give you one more question. Get this right, and we bring your winnings up to 25 bucks. We all know that Mount Everest is the highest mountain in the world. Now, I want you to tell me what is the lowest mountain in the world. <laughs> lowest mountain? No, the lowest there's no, mountain. There's no low mountain. Yes, it is. It's Grant's tomb. You win 25 <laughs> <laughs> Sorry you didn't win more. Huh? <laughs> Thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Uh, now, uh, before we continue, here's something I want you to hear about the beautiful new DeSoto. No matter what you're looking for, you'll find it in the distinguished new DeSoto. This new DeSoto is a really beautiful car with long, low, wide, glamorous lines. What's more, in the DeSoto, you can drive without shifting, thanks to DeSoto's famous tiptoe hydraulic shift with fluid drive. In a DeSoto, you simply turn the key, step on the gas, and go. Just as important... DeSoto is a safer car, with such important features as DeSoto full-time power steering, the power steering that works for you all the time, DeSoto safety rim wheels, and big, sure DeSoto power brakes, the brakes that require just half the pedal pressure of ordinary brakes. You'll find that the DeSoto is a better driving car, cushioned and protected by remarkable DeSoto Auraflow shock absorbers and new scientific spring suspension and powered by the world's most efficient engine design, the mighty 160-horsepower DeSoto Fire Dome V8 engine. So stop in at your DeSoto Plymouth dealers tomorrow. See this stunning new car, either the mighty 160-horsepower DeSoto Fire Dome 8 
or the brilliantly responsive Power Master 6. Both great cars let you drive without shifting. Make a date now to try the world's finest car by the distinguished new DeSoto. And remember, the dealers who sell the distinguished new DeSoto also sell the truly balanced 53 Plymouth, the low-priced car most like high-priced cars. Okay, George, who is next? Well, Groucho, we have a uh, grandfather and a young mother for you now. And here they are, Mrs. Betty Finney and Mr. Jack Martin. Please come in and meet Groucho Marx. Well, howdy doody. Welcome, youngsters, to your bet your life. Say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common word, something you always have with you. Mrs. Betty Finney. Mrs. Finney, I'll, uh, I'll start with you. Yeah, where are you from, Betty? I'll I'm call from... you Betty, huh? Yes. Yeah. I'm from Tacoma, Washington. You don't object to this familiarity? No, you? not at all. You're from where? Tacoma, Washington. Tacoma, huh? Do you mind if I ask your age? You don't look old enough to mind. How old are you? No, I'm 28. 28. Well, you're a fine-looking gal. You're married, huh? Yes. No. The whole thing goes out the window. What sort of work does your husband do? He's an appliance salesman at uh, Cliff Swanson's in Studio City. He's an appliance salesman? Mm-hmm. Household appliances. Oh, I see. Huh? Mr. Martin, how old are you? 65. 65. Uh, well, you're a fine-looking lad. You said you don't look 65. How do you keep uh, looking so vigorous? I don't drink and I don't smoke. And, I'm, and I never worry, no matter what happens. Oh. You have nothing to worry about. Nothing's going to happen to you, uh, <laughs> Jack, old boy. Where are you originally from, Jack? New York City. I was born at the Belasco Theater's oh, location. You, you were born on the stage of the Belasco Theater? No. <laughs> 44th Street, where the Belasco Theater is. Oh, I see. Do you remember what it was like in that neighborhood 65 years ago? Oh, they were all high stoops. <laughs> the whole neighborhood was high stoops? <laughs> well, there were a few of us low stoops around. <laughs> yeah, that's the only place they call them stoops, I think, is in New York. New York City. Yeah, when I know. When I first left New York, I was born in 78th Street in New York. That's true. East side. Yeah, Lexington Avenue, right near, in the heart of three breweries, Rupert's, Eretz, and Ringling's. Huh? <laughs> and he used to hobble to school in the morning with the smell of the hops coming out of the brewery. <laughs> oh, this is, this is true. And there was a big clock at Eretz, on top of Eretz. George Eretz. Yeah, that's right. That's yeah. how we told time. And that's when we knew we were late, which was most of the time. <laughs> well, enough of this uh, reminiscing. Uh, Betty, Fenneman introduced you as a young mother. How many children do you have? I have a set of twins. Uh-huh. Well, congratulations. I have a set of encyclopedias. <laughs> Would you like to make a swap? No. You give me your two, and I'll, I'll give you Quag to Sam. <laughs> are twins very common, Betty? I know some of the twins I've met are pretty common, but uh, I'm referring to yours now. Well, the uh, odds are 80 to 1. 80 to 1? Mm -hmm. Did you consult a, a bookie instead of a doctor when you... Uh, no, I read some, some uh, uh, statistics You read it. the statistics. Uh -huh. Do you believe this, Jack, that the odds are 80 to yes, 1? Yes, it's a fact, because I saw it in the paper, too. Oh. <laughs> you don't happen to have twins, do you, Jack? No, not yet. You haven't? <laughs> You haven't got twins, huh? No. Jack, you're a grandfather, is that right? Yes, sir, eight times. Are you uh, pretty handy with a diaper? Experience. Uh, how many children do you have? Four. Four, huh? Do you have any comments to make about today's children? How do you feel they compare oh, with, the with children... yesterday's uh, squawkers? Well, the children today are nothing like when we were kids. No, that's they... true. They're much younger. Huh? No. <laughs> they're very disobedient. It's hard to make them do anything. And they're well, not even polite to the elders. Is that... Do uh, you think that's true, uh, Betty? Oh, not in my experience. No. I was too young. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> when you were a kid, Jack, what did you do for fun? How did you play without television, hot rods, space uniforms, and comic books? Uh, what sort of innocent fun did you indulge in? Oh, we had a gang. On 10th Avenue. You had a gang on 10th Avenue? Yeah. yeah. What kind of a gang was this? It's called the Red Shirt Gang. One of the boys had a red shirt, and we called it the Red Shirt Gang. And we used to go around and steal sandwiches and apples and stuff on the box. Now, Betty, aren't you sorry your twins weren't born in his generation? No. You wouldn't have all the expense of bringing them up. The sheriff would be doing it for you. <laughs> 
Well, you're a nice couple, and I'd like to go on talking to you, but now it's time to play You Bet Your Life. Now, you run your $20 and the more than there are other couples, and you get a chance at the $1,000 question. The first couple went broke, and the secret word is foot. You selected Sights of London. Here's your first question. How much will you bet? $20. $20. Don't you want to consult with your partner here at all? No. Is this all uh, satisfactory? Yeah. All right. What is the residence of the royal family in London called? The Buckingham Palace. That is correct. You're on your way. You have $40. Remember, you're going for $1,000 tonight. How much of the $40 are you going to bet this time? $20. $20. 40. Huh? 40 40 40 right, uh, bet Now, 40. she's grabbing the reins, huh? <laughs> There's a famous district of wharves and warehouses that is the residential area for the Chinese population of London. What is this district called? Limehouse District. Uh, that's mm-hmm. right. Uh, you now have $80. Here's your third question. How much will you bet? She insists oh. on 80 oh. Well, of course. She's got twins. You haven't, have you? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So Walter Raleigh and many other political prisoners were confined in a building where the crown jewels are now displayed. What is the name Tower of the Tower of London. That's correct. You now have one hundred sixty dollars. Is your last chance to beat? Is your last chance to beat the other couples? How much did you bet? All of it. All of it. All of it. English kings and queens are crowned in one of the most celebrated churches of the British Empire. What is the name of this church? Uh, it's uh, Westminster Abbey. That is absolutely correct. <laughs> and you wind up with three hundred twenty dollars. Thanks and good luck from the Desoto Plymouth dealers. <laughs> Groucho, we, uh, we invited some grammar school boys to the program tonight. And just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected Eddie Risman. His partner is Mr. Barry O'Neill. So, gentlemen, would you please come in and meet Groucho Marx? The shrimp pope must have just got in, huh? <laughs> Barry O'Neill and Eddie Risman. Risman? Risman? Yes. Risman. Which one of you is uh, Eddie Risman? I am. You are. How old are you, Eddie? Ten and a half. Where are you from originally? Minneapolis, Minnesota. Married? No. <laughs> Have you got a girlfriend? No. Why not? You're a handsome lad. Oh, I'm too busy for that. That's sissy stuff. <laughs> you think that boys who like girls are sissies, eh? Okay, I'm a sissy and I'm proud of it. Huh? <laughs> Barry O'Neill, huh? That's you? You're a fine broth of a boy. Now, how old are you, Betty, my lad? Nineteen. Nineteen. That's a fine age. And what part of Ireland are you from, Betty? I'm not born in Ireland. I'm born in Stuttgart, Germany. Well, I knew it all the time. Anybody, <laughs> anybody named Barry O'Neill has to be from Stuttgart. <laughs> I, it's written all over you. You as Irish as our cow. <laughs> how is it for you from Germany with a name like Barry O'Neill? It's not my real name. My real name is Ralph Schlehoff. Rolf Schlehoff? Yes. And you changed it to Barry O'Neill? That's quite a journey, huh? <laughs> Why did you change your name? Well, I like... I like the name uh, Barry O'Neill because um, Rolf Schlehoff is hard to pronounce and, uh, and I live with Irish people. So I prefer to take the name O'Neill. Oh. You lived with Irish people, huh? Yes. But what prompted you to come to this country, Barry? Did you have any particular reason? Oh, yes. It's... Uh, I was, as a small boy, I always liked to come to the United States because it's a great country. And uh, during the war, my mother, she used to wash laundry for American GIs, and uh, and uh, I used to deliver the laundry, and I used to meet an American GI, and I told him I'd like to go to the United States. And uh, he write to his folks, and he sponsored me, and after two years, I, I had the opportunity to come to the United States, and I'm sure happy. Um, I'm here. Well, we're glad to have you. Are you Are you working, Barry? Yes, I do. I work in a machine shop in Southgate. Oh, I see. And what do you What do you do there? I'm a milling machine operator. You're a what? Milling Milling machine. Milling machine. Oh. Yes. What do you do on a job like that? Well, I'm cutting gears and cams and all different kind of work. I used to cut glasses in school, but of course that's a different business. Have you picked up any American hobbies like the Bugs Bunny Club uh, since you're I, here? I have no time for for hobbies. 
You you don't have time for hobbies at all? No. You mean you don't like girls either? Yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not completely alone up here. <laughs> what do you do with your spare time, Barry? I'm a professional fighter and... Uh... A boxer? Yes. Oh, you work all day and train every night, huh? Yes. Don't you occasionally take a night off for uh, other things? <laughs> <laughs> Yes, and Monday nights I'm going to National Guard. And You'll have to wind back in Germany again, delivering the wash, you know that. <laughs> I always became a fighter, you know. Only two things kept me from being the greatest fighter of my time. Lack of ability and the fact that I was a coward. <laughs> Eddie, have you ever had any fights around school? Yes, I've lost most of them. <laughs> oh, how nice, huh? <clears throat> what were you fighting about? Well, a boy once pushed me off a bench, and that started a big fight. What happened? Oh, we were, um, he pushed me off, and I got mad at him. I hit him, and he hit me back, and before you know it, we were in a fight. <laughs> Was there a, a girl involved in this? No. Nope. This is just man-to-man stuff, huh? Yes. <laughs> Eddie, I'm curious. You know, you can win a lot of money around here tonight. Almost a thousand dollars. Now, what would a boy do with all that money? Well, um, I might uh, get a new house and furnish it with new ice box, stove, and a uh, rug, maybe. Get my mother a new dress and, uh, oh, maybe a lot of other stuff I'd need. Baseball equipment. <laughs> Of course, uh, are you aware at all of the actual value of the dollar today? Huh? <laughs> I think it's uh, 46 cents. Have you considered buying a, a car for your father? No, he already has one. I see, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm afraid to ask the next question. <laughs> Eddie, uh, what kind of a car does your old man have? Uh, is it a DeSoto? No. Uh, Eddie, I'll save you a lot of time. <laughs> we will need to go through the formality of the quiz. Who was buried in Grant's tomb, you see? <laughs> That's right. You lose $25. <laughs> well, you're nice boys, and I wish both of you the best of luck. Now, Barry, good luck to your new life in America. And Eddie, good luck to you in the quiz. You. You'll certainly need it. <laughs> All right, now let's see how much you can win. You beat our other couples, and you'll get a chance at the $1,000 question. I can't tell you how much you have to win, but George is going to remind our listeners. Our second couple, the mother of twins and Mr. Martin, lead with $320. Here we go. Let's see how I can bill you $20. You selected capitals of Central and South American countries. Was there any particular reason why you picked this category, Eddie? Well, yes, we're studying that in school. And... I see, yeah. Well, that's unfortunate. All right, now. <laughs> Here is your first question. How much will you risk? Nineteen. Nineteen. All right, what is the capital city of Chile? San Diego. San Diego. Santiago is right, huh? <laughs> you now have $39. Maybe going for $1,000 tonight. How much of the 39 are you going to try? Thirty-eight. Thirty-eight. What is the capital city of Peru? Lima. Lima. It was named after a bean. That's right. You now have seventy-seven dollars. And here's your third question. How much of the seventy-seven are you going to try? Hmm? Seventy-six. Seventy-six. All right. What is the capital city of Argentina? Buenos Aires. Buenos Aires is right. <laughs> You now have $153. Is your last chance to be the other couples? How much of this money are you going to bet? All of it. All of it. What is the capital city of Brazil? Rio de Janeiro. What is it? Rio de Janeiro. Right. Rio de Janeiro. Right. You wind up with $306, and that means that the mother of twins and Mr. Martin with $320... In just one minute, get the chance of the DeSoto Plymouth $1,000 question. Thanks, and good luck. Friends, we've heard the same report from all over the country. The Groucho Special used cars are the best used cars in town by far. Well, that makes very good sense to us. 
You see, to begin with, your DeSoto Plymouth dealer gets better cars in trade-in for new DeSotos and Plymouths. That means his whole stock of used cars are fine, well-conditioned cars that are really good bargains. But then he goes through that stock of fine used cars and picks a few of the very best as Groucho Specials. Groucho Specials are usually low-mileage, late-model cars, specially priced to make them red-hot bargains. When you see that Groucho Special sticker on a car, you know it's your DeSoto Plymouth dealer's way of pointing out what he thinks is a really good buy. Of course, all his used cars are bargain-priced, with low-down payments and easy budget payments stretching over many months. Tomorrow, stop in and see your friendly DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Examine his fine stock of wonderful used cars. Take special notice of those wonderful Groucho specials. You better hurry, though, because they're going fast. And when you drive in to see the Groucho special, tell them Groucho sent you. Here comes the winning couple, Groucho. Uh, the uh, mother of twins and Mr. Martin, all set for the DeSoto Plymouth $1,000 question. Right in here. Well, if you win this, each of your twins could have $250. Assuming, uh, unless Mr. Uh, Martin wants to give you the other 500 <laughs> All right, here we go for $1,000. I'll give you 15 seconds to decide on a single answer between you. Think carefully and please no help from the audience. In September of 1942, General Leslie R. Groves was placed in charge of a newly created government agency delegated to develop the atomic bomb. For $1,000, what was the name of the first atomic bomb project that changed the course of history? Now, talk it over. <laughs> What is the answer you two decided upon? No, that's a tough question. It was the Manhattan Project or District. Uh, so that means the big question next week will be worth $1,500. I'm sorry you didn't win more, but thanks to both of you and to all of our contestants on the show tonight from the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America. <laughs> Be sure to tune in again next Wednesday night at the same time for the Groucho Marx Show when the big question will be worth $1,500. And don't miss Groucho's television show, also presented by the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America. And remember that the dealers who sell the distinguished 1953 DeSoto also sell the brilliant new Plymouth, the first truly balanced car in the low-priced field. DeSoto, Plymouth, two great new cars. Both products of the Chrysler Corporation. And when you drive in, tell them Groucho sent you. Good night, folks, and remember, just be sure to see the distinguished new DeSoto. Folks, here's a reminder from the National Safety Council. Twilight reduces visibility. Reduce your speed accordingly. You bet your life. Transcribed from Hollywood is produced by John Goodell. Directed by Robert Dwan and Bernie Smith. Music by Jerry Fielding. This is George Fenneman signing off with more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast. You Bet Your Life is heard by our armed forces throughout the world. Ladies and gentlemen, the secret word tonight is house. H-O-U-S-E. Really? You bet your life! The more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers of America present Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life. 
the comedy quiz series produced and transcribed from Hollywood. And here he is, the one, the only... That's me, the Queen of the May. Well, here I am again with $5,500 for one of our couples, George. It's a lot of money, huh? Sure is. Groucho, the first contestants to try. Groucho is not the first contestant. (laughs) No, no. The first contestants to try. If I was a contestant, I'd be standing over there and you'd be sitting here. I wish you were. Uh... (laughs) The first contestants. And you're not alone either, George. (laughs) What I was getting at. You're drunk with power, (laughs) Sam. The first contestants to try for the $5,500 question tonight were selected from our studio audience just before we went on the air. Mm, how uh, interesting. And here they come right now. Mr. Irving Humphrey and Miss Evelyn D. Smith. Come in and meet Groucho Marx. Well, welcome, kids, for the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers. Say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common word, something you see every day. Mr. Irving Humphrey and Miss Evelyn uh, Smith, eh? Uh, Mr. Humphrey, uh, where are you from? Philadelphia, originally. West Philadelphia. West Philadelphia, yes. huh? Is that Philadelphia? Yes, it is. West oh. of the river. Oh, I see, yeah. Did you have uh, many a scrapple there in Philadelphia? And pepper pot soup. And pepper pot soup, I see. And uh, are you married? Yes, I am. I see. Yeah. Miss uh, Eveline Smith, is that right? Uh, my name is not Smith. It's D. Smith. Oh, it's D. Smith, yeah? Yes. How do you spell it? Uh, D apostrophe S. Smith. D apostrophe Smith. Evelyn, let's not be so formal. I'll call you Mr. Smith, huh? All right. What sort of work do you do? I'm a double. <laughs> Suppose I'm slipping. I should have noticed it right away. <laughs> what kind of a double? Double dynamite or double trouble? But by the way, did you see Double Dynamite, the movie I was in with Jane Russell? Not as yet. Well, you ought to see it's playing around. You ought to see it. It's pretty good. All right. Don't forget now. No, I shan't. Meet you in the balcony. <laughs> now, uh... <laughs> What kind of uh, trouble do you get into, uh, Evelyn? No, I'm a uh, motion picture uh, stunt girl, double. You don't look stunted. Uh. <laughs> I do all the uh, fighting and the falling off cliffs and turning over cars and crashing planes and driving motorcycles and all the uh, stunts. And uh, Do you remember your first stunt? Yes. Uh, What'd you do? Well, it was for a picture called uh, Torpedo Boat. I had to crash this speedboat into, um, into rocks. And, uh, real rocks? Real rocks, just down at Cabrillo Beach. And uh, so this was my first job, and I wanted to make a good impression, so I really crashed the boat, and it threw me in onto the sand. I crashed a party <laughs> the other night. I never crashed a boat. <laughs> so it threw you into the sand? It threw me in the sand. I broke two ribs on my first job. Is that so? Well, what happened? Did they send for a doctor? Uh, no, they... Uh, stood around and shook hands and congratulated themselves on getting such a good shot. <laughs> That's those Hollywood directors, kindly, thoughtful, and solicitous. <laughs> well, tell us some more about your work. Uh, you must have had a lot of unusual experiences. Well, uh, I can remember one time when I, uh, I drowned uh, 12 times for Betty Davis in Stolen Life. <laughs> and what was uh, Betty doing while you were drowning for her? Well, I'm not sure, but I think she was having her picture taking, uh, getting artificial respiration. (laughs) While you were drowning. (laughs) Well, if one of your stars should happen to expect the stalk someday, my advice to you is keep away from the hospital. (laughs) Well, uh, I'd better talk to you for a while, I think. Mr. Humphrey, uh, you certainly have an interesting occupation. What is it? I'm a tree surgeon. Well, tell me, Doc, are you in practice for yourself, or do you just have a branch office somewhere? No, I have my own business. I do business under the name of Humphrey Tree Surgery. I see. Well, how do you get your customers when the trees want you? Do they just wave a limb at you? Or... No, we have our ordinary customers, but once in a while we get emergency calls. You Emergency calls? You mean an, an old tree calls at 3 in the morning and says, uh, Hurry, Doc, we're expecting a little acorn? <laughs> Why, a tree could go nuts under those conditions. <laughs> what kind of emergencies can a tree possibly have? Well, when we have windstorms, rainstorms, whatnot, it usually blows over trees and they lean against wires or buildings and they have to be removed. And I see. Take well, care. Su- suppose this patient is in a bad way. Uh, what, what do you do? Do you give it penicillin? No, usually we cut it up for firewood. <laughs> <laughs> That's a nice way to treat a patient. Said he made a fuel out of him. <laughs> Well, I'd like to talk to you two some more, but now I want to give you a chance to earn some money, real money. In just one minute, you're going to play your bet your life for a chance at the $5,500 question. 
But first, I want you to pay close attention to this. Take the five-mile trial. Take the five-mile trial. Your DeSoto Plymouth dealer invites you to take the five-mile trial in a new DeSoto Fire Dome 8 or the DeSoto Power Master 6. He wants you to get behind the wheel yourself so you can actually feel the surging power of the exciting new 160-horsepower Fire Dome V8 engine that gives you more power from every drop of gas. Yes, acceleration and power you've never known before, and on regular gasoline. In your five-mile trial, you'll learn what DeSoto full power steering means. Not partial, but full power steering that works for you all the time. When you're parking, even when your car is at an absolute standstill, DeSoto full power steering lets you turn the wheel with one finger. You'll discover new power brakes, Oroflow shock absorbers, and a host of other exciting features that make the new DeSoto the greatest value on the road today. So stop in at your DeSoto Plymouth dealers and ask to take the five-mile trial in either the mighty new 160-horsepower DeSoto Fire Dome 8 or the handsome new DeSoto Power Master 6. And remember, all dealers who sell DeSoto also sell Plymouth, the low-priced car most like high-priced cars. All right, now let's see how you work together as a team. Uh, George, explain the rules, George. Right. Yeah. You uh, bet as much of your $20 as you want on each of four questions, and the couple that earns the most money gets a chance at the $5,500 DeSoto Plymouth question later in the show. Now, here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. From our list of 20 categories, you selected Western Tunes as your category. Now, uh, here's your first question. How much will you bet? 1975. 1975, huh? You've been watching this show. <laughs> what is the name of this Western melody? Play it, Jerry. Wagon wheels. What is it? Wagon wheels. Wagon wheels is right. Well, you're on your way. Oh, only a tree surgeon with no wagon wheels. <laughs> You're on your way. You have $39.75. Remember, you're going for $5,500 tonight. Now, how much of the $39.75 are you going to try? $39. Give me the title of this song. $39.50. How much? $39.50. All right. Give me the title of this song. Play, Mr. Fielding. Twilight on the Trail. Twilight on the Trail. Twilight on the Trail is right. You now have $79.25. And here's your third question. How much are you going to bet? 79. 79. Let's see if you can identify this one. Okay, Jerry. Red River Valley. Red River Valley. Red River Valley is right. The $158.25. And here's your last chance to beat the other couples. How much are you going to bet? 158. 158. What is the name of this song? Last Roundup. Last Roundup is right. Look at that. Yeah. But you still wind up with $316.25. That ain't hey. That's right. Well, thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Thank you. Roger, we invited some beauty operators to the program tonight. And just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected Roberta Tate. Her uh, partner is a housewife, Mrs. Uh, Teddy Rochers. Ladies, meet Roger Marx. You're right you here. Do. Right in here. How do you do? Welcome, girls, to You Bet Your Life. Say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common word, something you see every day. Miss uh, Roberta Tate and Mrs. Teddy Roaches. Where are you from, uh, Roberta? Well, I'm a native. Your native what? Native son? Native daughter. Oh, you're a girl, huh? Uh -huh. It's amazing. <laughs> yes. Well, it isn't amazing, but it's certainly amusing. Huh? <laughs> you're a beauty operator? That's right. Well, so am I. Just show me a beauty and I'll start operating. You know? <laughs> Are you married? No, I'm not. Now nah, you're talking, kid. <laughs> I'll start operating right after the show. <laughs> but what are some of today's popular hairstyles? Could, could you bring me up to date? I'm... Yes. I think that one of the most uh, popular today is the poodle hairstyle. 
What's a poodle? Is that when it rains, you mean? You step into a poodle? <laughs> what are some of the other popular hairdos these days? Well, there's another one that's been quite popular, and that is the horse's tail. <laughs> Well, that's just at the racetrack, isn't it? What's a horse's tail? What does that consist of? Well, a horse's tail is, again, an adaptation, and it is where the hair is smooth and sleek, drawn back, and tied with a ribbon or a band, and the hair hangs down the back, very similar to a horse's tail. Well, do you have to whinny when you wear that? Uh... No, con- fortunately consi- not. No, you don't, huh? Fortunately What's considered not. the smartest haircut, a poodle or a horse's tail? Well, there aren't uh, near as many horses' tails as there are poodles. <laughs> Obviously, you haven't been around Beverly Hills very often. <laughs> Mrs. Teddy Roaches, eh? How'd you ever get a name like uh, Teddy? Oh, my uncle was a personal friend of Teddy Roosevelt, and I presume they wanted another boy because that's what they named me. And you got the name because he was an admirer of Teddy, is that oh, it? Oh, sure. Was he a good friend of his? Mm-hmm. Uh, where were you born, Teddy? Well, that's very complicated. Well, it usually is. is yes. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody has it easy these days, Teddy. Well, unusual. This is life is grim right from the beginning. <laughs> See, before I was born, I lived in San Francisco. Before you were born? And after I was born... Many people prefer it that way. (laughs) And after I was born, I still lived in San Francisco. Now, just just a moment, uh, just a moment. (laughs) How did you know you were in San Francisco if you weren't born yet? Ah, but I know. My mother went uh, for a trip, and she told me. She went for a trip to Europe. And uh, she missed the boat. The boat. <laughs> the engine was broken or something, so she couldn't come back. Your mother's engine was broken? <laughs> the boat. The boat's engine was broken, and you were in Frisco, and you weren't born yet? No. So in between, you see the two uh, San Francisco stays. Well, I was born in Paris. <laughs> well, that's clear enough for anybody but me. <laughs> Well, judging from your accent, uh, Teddy, you must have remained in France. Uh, did you just get over here recently? Oh, no, I was two weeks old when I came back. <laughs> was your mother with you at the time? Oh, sure. <laughs> well, that's Paris for you. It's amazing what you can pick up there in two weeks. <laughs> now, come clean now. You just didn't get an accent from spending two weeks in France. What happened? Oh, no, I went back there. When I was five years old, I went back to Paris, you see. Mm-hmm. And I went to the... You didn't like Frisco? Or San oh, Francisco? Oh, yes, I did. Right. But, you see, when I was five years old, I just didn't have any... You had no choice voice in, the matter, in, huh? <laughs> in the matter. Well, I, what do you know? Are you French or American? Uh? Oh, I'm Amer- an American. Uh-huh. You see, my uh, great-great-grandfather came here when, uh, oh, in 1705. Oh, it wasn't Lafayette, was it? Oh, no. <laughs> How did you meet your husband, Mrs. Roaches? <laughs> well, I went to take a friend of mine uh, to the boat in Marseille. This is and when you were two weeks old? Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> that was after the war, after the first world on war. Oh, that's right. There were two and then I got lost. I got lost in the, um, amongst all the ships on the quay, you know. And then my husband came along and rescued me. So, and... Uh, you weren't married yet, and, you, and he oh, was no. your husband? Oh, well, I mean my future husband. Oh. No, I tried very hard to get away from him, you see. After he'd known me a week, he wanted to marry me. And I didn't want to because I had four other fellows who wanted to marry me at the same time. <laughs> so you I'm, must have been pretty hard stuff, eh, Teddy? No, I don't know why they are. You don't know why these four fellows were chasing you? <laughs> Well, if we had more time, I could probably explain it to you, Teddy. (laughs) Those French are pretty naive, aren't they? (laughs) Well, this has been most interesting, and since we mentioned beauty tonight, my advice to you is see the new DeSoto Fire Dome 8, because it certainly is a beauty, and I know because I'm driving one. Now, you're going to play your bet your life. You beat our other couples, and you'll get a chance at the $5,500 question. I can't tell you how much you have to win, but George is going to remind our listeners. The tree surgeon and his partner won $316.25, and the secret word is house. Here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. You selected songs associated with famous vocalists. Here's your first question. How much will you bet? 
1950. Okay. 1950. Who made famous the song Over the Rainbow? Uh, Judy Garland. Judy Garland is right. And you're on your way. You have $39.50. All right. Remember, you're going for $5,500 tonight. How much of your uh, 3950 are you going to bet? How much would you like to bet? 39 39 $39. All right. Who made famous the song, When My Baby Smiles at Me? Um. Um. Oh, if you I don't know. know, take a guess. No, I know. Ted Lewis. All right, that's right, Ted Lewis. Now, uh... <laughs> you have $78.50. All right, here's your, third, uh, here's your third question. How much are you going to bet? You have $78.50. What you say? Oh, 78 <laughs> All right, 78 Who made famous the song, Thanks for the Memory? I know, too. Thanks for the Come on, kids. Oh. Take a stab. If you don't know. Kate Smith. Oh, uh, I'm it anyway. Sorry, it's Bob Hope. Oh, oh horrible. <laughs> you now have 50 cents. Mm. Oh, that's a shame. Here's your last chance to beat the other couples. How much of the 50 cents are you going to risk? Oh. All of it. All right. All right. Who made famous the song When the Blue of the Night? Oh. That's a good gamble because I don't know. <laughs> well, take a guess. I don't. It's uh, Bing Crosby. Well, I, I'm sorry, but nobody leaves here with less than $25. I'm going to give you this one question. Get it right, and we'll bring your winnings up to $25. You ready? Who was buried in Grant's tomb? <laughs> Grant. General Grant is right. Thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. We have a grandfather and a high school boy for you now, Groucho. Uh, Mr. George Bartlett and Mr. Billy Compter come in and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome for the DeSoto Plymouth Dealer. Say the secret word and you'll win $100. It's a common word, something you see every day. Grandfather and a high school boy, eh? Which one is the high school boy? I am. Oh, you are. Yeah. Who are you? I'm Billy Compter. Well, I'm glad to know you. Then uh, this is uh, Mr. Bartlett, huh? You're right. George Bartlett, huh? Uh, Billy, how old are you? Seventeen. And what is your age, Mr. Butler? Oh, I'm only 91. Really? He's got a grip like Jack Dempsey. <laughs> 91? I thought he was 60. You said you don't look it. Where are you from, Billy? Philadelphia. West Philadelphia? No, I'm from any part of Philadelphia. Oh, I see. Well, that's quite a trick, huh? <laughs> Why are you from Philadelphia, Billy? Do you, do you know? Well, well, there's there's something about it. My parents live there for, for one thing, and I guess Just that's, for one thing. That's well, that's that's pretty necessary. If they live there, then I live here. I see. Huh? And you were an accessory to the crime, is that it? <laughs> it was a horrible one. I don't think so. I think you're a fine-looking lad. Thank you. I think you are too. <laughs> Yes, but, but I'm telling the truth. <laughs> Mr. Bartlett, uh, what's your hometown? Vineland, New Jersey. Where? Vineland, New Jersey. Vineland, New Jersey. Uh, yeah. That's near Atlantic City, isn't it? Uh, down along that line, yes. Uh-huh. You're a grandpappy? Oh, only 15 children, uh, grandchildren. Is that so? 15 grandchildren, huh? Eh? On a dead man's chest, huh? <laughs> How'd you happen to get so many grandchildren? <clears throat> Were you well, working have, in the vineyard? Uh, I have six children, and, uh, you know, they all got married. You know what happens after that. <laughs> Frankly, I don't, but I'd be willing to listen to it. <laughs> what sort of work do, you, do your children do? Oh, they're all doctors. They're all, all doctors? All doctors. No one, wonder you're so, so healthy looking. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You don't look like, like you ever had a sick day in your life. Uh, well, did you? <clears throat> uh, I was just... Um, Given up to die uh, some few years ago, I was uh, quite ill, and the doctors gave me three days to live. The doctors gave you three days to live? How long ago was this? This was 53 years ago. <laughs> well, for a doctor, that's a pretty accurate diagnosis. <laughs> if there are any doctors listening, I'm only kidding. Now, Mr. Bartlett, uh, to what do you attribute your phenomenal recovery? Uh, California climate. Principally. Yeah. 
More liars on this show tonight than we've had in years. <laughs> what are some of the, the jobs you've, you've held during your career, Mr. Uh, Bartlett? Well, I started out kind of young, selling newspapers on the street uh, right after the Civil War. And uh, shortly after I had been selling the papers for a while, the people in the office thought that uh, I would make a pretty good devil. And so they uh, gave me a position as printer's devil. I worked there for a while, and finally I graduated from there and went to college. After I got through college, I went to work for a General Electric Company, where I was made the chief consulting engineer. They generally gave me uh, the jobs that no one else could do. And uh, among those was uh, harnessing Niagara Falls. The, uh, they gave me the job of... Uh, Were you there on your honeymoon at that time? Oh, no, my honeymoon was past. I had a full moon by that time. <laughs> <laughs> you say you harness Niagara Falls? What sort of work did you do when you came to California? Oh, I dabbled in real estate. And did you make any money? Oh, about $1,000 a day. Really? $1,000 a day? What's... Seven days a week. Is that so? You worked Sundays too, huh? Oh, well, I tell you, I just worked all the time. Say, I think you must have had a lot of money. How long did you keep on making this kind of dough? Well, I kept on. I don't know what, when I would have stopped, but uh, the crash came in 29 and I lost every blooming thing I had. <laughs> well, I wouldn't feel too bad about it. <laughs> If you hadn't lost your money in the crash at 29, you'd be wiped out in the taxes of 52. <laughs> right, you are. <laughs> George, I can't get over how healthy and young you look. What's the secret? Do you have a drink occasionally? Oh, no, I don't drink. Do you smoke? Oh, no. No. You lead an exemplary life, huh? Oh, I don't know about that particularly. <laughs> I'm afraid to ask the next question. <laughs> Now, Mr. Bartlett, do you have any special philosophy you must have to be so successful? Could you tell us what it is? I don't know particularly, but um, some years ago I framed a little motto which I have on my wall. The words were like this. Uh, God and I are partners in this business. God is owner and I am steward. And I've tried to live up to that ever since. Well, that's, that's wonderful, Mr. Bartlett. I want to check in. If everybody in this world had a philosophy like that, everybody would live to be 700 years old. Huh? Well, we wouldn't have so many wars anyway. No, we certainly will. Well, I'd say both of you boys have successful futures. Now, good luck to both of you. <laughs> now you're going to play your bet your life. You beat our other couples and you get a chance at the $5,500 question. I can't tell you how much you have to win, but George is going to remind our listeners. The tree surgeon and his partner still lead with $316.25. Here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. You selected observation test as your category. Here's your first question. How much will you bet? About, uh, we'll bet about 19, 1950. Oh, yes. I might just as well bet the $20 on okay. that one. Let's, let's take 19.99. We need it. 19.99. We, we can flip for the other. All right. Here we go. Whose likeness is on a one cent stamp? Washington. George Washington is right. <laughs> Off to a great start, you have thirty-nine dollars and ninety-nine cents. Thirty-nine dollars and ninety-nine cents. How much are you betting? How much are you betting? Thirty-three cents for leaving. All right, you're betting uh, thirty-nine dollars and ninety-six cents. Yeah. So, here we go. Is that all right with you, Mr. That's Bartlett? Right. That's right. How many rows of keys does the standard typewriter have? <clears throat> Seven. No, no. Talk it over. About one answer between you. Fourteen. How many oh, rows? How oh, many rows? Oh, oh, oh! I see. Wait, can I, we have one more? One, two, three, four. Four rows. Five rows. Five rows. Four. One. What do you one say? answer now. Seven. No, no. A, B, C. Five. Five. No, I'm sorry. It's four. You hit, hit it, and then you straight away from it. Well, that's a shame. They, uh... How much have they got? Three cents. You've got three... All right, now you've got three cents. How much are you going to bet? Oh, we'll, we'll risk it. You're going to bet the three. The yeah. colors of the solar spectrum, as in a rainbow, are always in a definite order. What color is on top? It's either uh, red or blue. Which one? Blue. One answer now. Blue. Which, he said no, I'm sorry. Red. It's red. No, it's red. It's red. 
Well, you did better this way. Now, all right. Now they're broke. They're broke. Nobody leaves here broke. We're going to give you one more question for $25. You get this right, and I'll give you $25. And no helping, please. All right, you ready? Ready. In what city was the Boston Tea Party? Boston. Boston, Boston is right. Put it down, Mr. Bartlett. Put it down, sorry. Well, Roger, this couple went broke, so that means that the tree surgeon has partnered with $316.25 in just a minute. Get the chance at the DeSoto Plymouth $5,500 question. You know, when you buy a used car, the reputation of the man who sells it is often as important as the car itself. When you deal with a reliable person, like a DeSoto Plymouth dealer, known and respected in the community, you can be confident you're going to get an honest dollar's worth. It will be a car that not only looks nice, but has many miles of good, faithful service in it. And that's what counts. Of course, a DeSoto Plymouth dealer has many makes and models to choose from, in every price range. In addition, he has some used cars that he knows particularly well, because he sold them originally, and to service them in his shop from the time they were brand new. So if you're in the market for a used car, now is a good time to buy. But here's a tip. Be sure to go where you'll get a fair and square deal, where you'll find the best used car values in town, to a DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Here's the tree surgeon and his partner, the winning couple of Groucho, all set for the $5,500 DeSoto Plymouth question. All right, here we go for $5,500. I'll give you 15 seconds to decide on a single answer between you. So think carefully and please no help in the audience. Here it is. Shakespeare's famous Romeo and Juliet is the story of two feuding families. Romeo's last name was Montague. For $5,500, what was Juliet's family name? You have one answer between you now. Detangon? No, I, I'm sorry. The correct answer is Capulet. Capulet. So that means the big question next week will be worth $6,000. <laughs> That's the most money we ever had. Well, you lost the big money, but you want... How much did they win the quiz? Uh, $316.25. Well, Good. congratulations Thank and you. thanks to both of you and to all of our contestants on the show tonight. Be sure to tune in again next Wednesday night at the same time for the Groucho Marx Show, when the big question will be worth $6,000. And don't miss Groucho's television show, also presented by the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America. And remember, all dealers who sell DeSoto also sell Plymouth. Two great cars, both products of the Chrysler Corporation. And when you drive in, tell them Groucho sent you. Good night, folks, and remember... See DeSoto Fire Dome 8... Tomorrow! Folks, here's a reminder from the National Safety Council. Make safe driving a habit. Check your car. Check accidents. You Bet Your Life, transcribed from Hollywood, is produced by John Goodell. Directed by Robert Dwan and Bernie Smith. Music by Jerry Fielding. This is George Fenneman signing off for the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast. Ladies and gentlemen, the secret word tonight is age. A-G-E. Don't get personal, Fenneman. <laughs> really? You bet your life. The more than 
3000, the Soto Plymouth Dealers of America present Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life, the comedy quiz series produced and transcribed from Hollywood. And here he is, the one, the only... What's he doing now? Oh, that's me. Well, here I am again with $6,000 for one of our couples tonight. We've gone this high only once before. I've been that high many times, but... Uh, <laughs> well, it's a lot of money. Maybe somebody will win it tonight, huh? Let's hope so. Groucho, uh, just before we went on the air, uh, we selected an aircraft worker and a man with an interesting job to be on the show, and here they come. Miss Betty Dormont, Mr. Jerry Hoffman, meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, folks, for the DeSoto Plymouth Dealer. Say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common way. It's something you always have with you. Let's see now. Miss Betty uh, Dormont and Mr. Jerry Hoffman, eh? Betty, uh, may I ask your age? Yes, I'm 24. 24, huh? How long have you been 24? <laughs> About 24 years. Well, that's a good answer, anyhow. It's baffling, but it's a good answer. <laughs> Mr. Jerry Hoffman, where are you from, uh, Mr. Hoffman? Originally from the Bronx, New York, Groucho, but I've been out. Uh, I've been here for 26 years. Oh, well, then you're practically a native son, huh? Eh? Yes. You still root for the Bronx Bombers? Uh, no, I don't pay much attention to baseball. You don't, huh? Eh? No. You mean, in other words, you root for Cincinnati? <laughs> now, I understand you have a very interesting job, uh, Jerry. What, just what is it? Well, I am in public relations, Mr. Marks. Oh, okay. Well, just how public are your relations? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's commonly called a press agent, Trey. Oh, you're a press agent, huh? Yes, sir. Well, a press agent can be pretty common. All right. What kind of agents do you address? Uh, well, I'm with Columbia Pictures. Uh, are they in still the... in business? Huh? Yes, as a matter of fact, uh, <laughs> very much so. It was a picture called The Marrying Kind, were proved. What is it called? The Marrying Kind, with uh, uh, Judy Holliday and a new star, Aldo Ray. Oh, that sounds like it ought to be a pretty good picture. It's huh? a wonderful picture. Didn't Blake you? Granite have something to do with he it? He produced it. Oh, well, he's a nice, nice fellow. Yes, Give my a very clever man. I will, thank you. Yes. And you can have him, too. As long as <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, Betty, do you mind if I talk to you for a while? No, sir. I'd be happy to talk to you. You would, huh? I didn't mean right here. I was thinking of uh, later on. Uh, <laughs> perhaps after the show. Uh... <laughs> Well, enough of that kind of thing, you know. <laughs> Where do you work, Betty? Uh, I work at Douglas Aircraft in the inspection department. Well, uh, what do you do in the... In what do you do there? Well, briefly, uh, we inspect inspectors. <laughs> <laughs> well, what does the inspector inspect while you're inspecting the inspector? <laughs> I think my needle stuck, huh? <laughs> well... He inspects the airplanes and... We and how much wood does a woodchuck chuck of a woodchuck woodchuck wood? Uh, he inspects the airplanes and we sort of follow him and pick up the squawks that he writes about the airplane. Uh, are you allowed to take any of these home with you? <laughs> what do you do with these reports that you make? Well, we compile them in statistics and then they graph them in the front office. In front. You say there's graph in the front office? <laughs> <laughs> Seems to me that's why they need the inspector. <laughs> Now, uh, uh, Jerry, uh, I'll call you Jerry. Uh, it's Please do. Kind of formal. Now, uh. uh, Jerry, I'm curious. You give new actors the big build-up. Now, pretend Betty here has just signed a contract and she's brand new. Nobody ever heard of her. Now, well, what would you do with her? Well, that's a Leading large question. order, but uh, not too large, considering that the girl has a lot of natural charm and a lot of natural attractiveness. Uh, they might want to change her hair. This is a matter for the front office to decide. Is that where they change uh, it, in the uh, front office? <laughs> <laughs> well, they make the decisions on, gla on the glamour treatment. I see. But uh, we may also suggest some changes. The uh, basic job for the publicity department would be to make her uh, name a household word. You mean uh, like Drano? <laughs> Well, you're a very nice couple, and I, I think you're going to be very happy together. <laughs> and I'd like to go on talking to you two all night, but uh, we have so much money at stake tonight that we've got to get on with this. Now, in just one minute, you're going to play your bet your life for a chance at the $6,000 question. Right now, I'd like you to devote your attention to an important announcement. Take the five-mile trial. Take the five-mile trial. Your DeSoto Plymouth dealer has mapped out a five-mile trial course through stop-and-go traffic, over rough roads and out on the open highway. A stern test for any car. 
And he invites you to get behind the wheel and drive the new DeSoto Fire Dome Mate over this course. So you can discover for yourself all the great new DeSoto features. As you drive along, you'll be able to feel the great power of the exciting new Fire Dome V8 engine. Power with smoothness never before achieved in any car. You'll feel the sure stopping power of DeSoto power brakes. In parking, and out on the highway, too, you'll feel new ease in steering. Why, DeSoto's sensational new full power steering takes literally all the effort out of steering. Makes turning the wheels as easy as dialing a phone. So tomorrow, stop at your DeSoto Plymouth dealers and ask to take the five-mile trial. In either the exciting new 160-horsepower DeSoto Fire Dome 8 or the famous DeSoto Power Master 6. Find out why the new DeSoto is America's most talked about new car. And remember, all dealers who sell DeSoto also sell Plymouth, the low-priced car most like high-priced cars. <laughs> All right, now let's see how you work together as a team. Uh, Fire Dome Fenneman? <laughs> yes. This is Fire Dome Fenneman. Uh, uh, tell him the rules. You bet as much of your $20 as you want on each of four questions, and the couple that earns the most money gets a chance at the $6,000 DeSoto Plymouth question later in the show. Clear? Here we go. Mm. Let's see how high I can build you $20. From our list of 20 categories, you selected scrambled proverbs. Here's your first question. How much will you bet? 1990 or 50 which you want? Right. Hmm? 1950. 1950. She 1950. Like 1950. All right. What is this proverb? Where there is no speculation, there is no increase in value. Uh, no, uh, no risk. No. Uh... There's no increase in value. Oh, dear. Uh... There is no speculation, there's no increase in value. Where there is no speculation, there is no increase in value. No risk. Isn't that awful? Oh, dear. Oh, goodness, Terry. I know you know it, too. You, you were oh, hanging right around it, Jerry. It's a nothing ventured, nothing, nothing gained. Nothing huh? gained. Yes. Oh. Well, that's too bad. You uh, now have 50 cents. Now, don't, don't get discouraged. The big money is the $6,000. One week we had a couple here that won the, big, uh, the chance at the big money, and they won $1. So I don't want you to get discouraged. Remember, you're going for 6000 Now, how much are you going to bet this time? The 50 cents, right? <laughs> The whole thing. Yes. Whole thing. All right, what is this proverb? It is inadvisable to peer into the oral cavity of a gratuitous equine. Never look a gift horse in the mouth. That's right, that's right. That's a much tougher one. Well, you're climbing again. You have uh, one dollar now. All right, now how much are you going to bet? Two dollars. One dollar. Uh, one dollar. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to borrow a dollar from Mr. Hopper. <laughs> what is this proverb? During the absence of the domesticated feline, the rodents cavort. When the cat's, cat's away, away, the mice are Absolutely away. right. <laughs> You now have two dollars. Is your last chance to beat the other couples? How much are you going to go $2. for? The whole thing. All right. What is this proverb? A revolving boulder will not accumulate lichen. Rolling stone. Gathers no more. Well, they wound up with four dollars, Groucho. Nobody leaves here with four dollars. I'm going to give you one question for twenty-one dollars, which will give you a total of twenty-five. Now get this right, and no coaching, please. It's a tough question. You ready? How many layers in a three-layer cake? Three. three. Right, three layers is right. Put it there. Thank you. Sorry to do that. Thank you. Thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. We invited some insurance men to the program tonight, Groucho, and just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected Mr. Ross Harrison. His partner is a housewife, Mrs. Lucy Rankin. Folks, meet Groucho Marx. Welcome to your Bet Your Life. Say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common word, something you always have with you. Mr. Ross Harrison, you're the, you're the insurance man, eh? I could tell, I could tell you were insurance man because you've got one foot in the microphone already. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> now, Mrs. Lucy Rankin, uh, you're, you're the housewife. Where, where were you born, Lucy? Canary Islands. Is that so? Could you fly a few times around the room? <laughs> Where, where are the Canary Islands, Lucy? Off Morocco. You're off your rocket, did you say? <laughs> Lucy, I'm not interested in your personal peculiarities. <laughs> At this point, I just want to know where you were from. Canary Islands. Canary Islands. Mm -hmm. Did you meet Admiral Bay down there? <laughs> How did you happen to be born in the Canary Islands when there were so many other places to be born in? Were you throwing a wing ding at the time? <laughs> 
<laughs> no, my father was a mining engineer on the Gold Coast of Africa. Mm -hmm. Canary Islands are rather close. Oh, are they? Mm -hmm. well, I thought the Canary Islands was near where Columbus came when he... Uh, he did. Well, that wasn't near Africa, was it? Mm -hmm. Is that so? Mm -hmm. I, better, I better go back to school again. <laughs> I, I get everything mixed up. Now, Lucy, we've never had anybody on the show before who was born on the Canary Islands. Were you born in the regular manner, or did you hatch? <laughs> Regular manner, I guess. <laughs> My mother uh, was American, and uh, the doctor was Spanish, and she couldn't speak any Spanish, and he couldn't speak any English. But I was born anyhow. <laughs> Lucy, that could have been disastrous. <laughs> that Spanish doctor could have taken out your mother's appendix. <laughs> Then where would you be? <laughs> Riddle me that. <laughs> well, you're real cute, Lucy. You look like a nice guy. Are you married? Sure. Skip it. <laughs> <laughs> Lucy, since you were born in the Canary Islands, what kind of a citizen are you? Are you uh, American or are you, are you a canary? <laughs> well, according I thought you'd be more yellow. <laughs> are you American or canary? Well, according to Spanish law, any child born in the Spanish territory is a Spaniard. Mm -hmm. But my mother refused to register me, had me registered as Spanish, and he refused to register me as English. So I'm miscellaneous. <laughs> you mean you were miscellaneous before you were married? <laughs> now you're miscellaneous. <laughs> well, let's talk to you, Mr. Harrison, about insurance. Looks like you could stand a little yourself after that cough you just threw there. <laughs> you better take out fire and theft on that lung of yours. <laughs> now, before we go any further, I, I want to make it plain that I don't want to buy any insurance. Is that clear, Mr. Harrison? I don't want to sell any insurance. Don't want to sell you any insurance. I see. You regard me as a bad risk, eh? <laughs> I don't sell insurance. I just why, don't you sell, why don't you want to sell me insurance? I don't sell insurance. I just make adjustments. Well, could you do something to my back here? This oh, my back. <laughs> what kind of adjustments do you make? Oh, uh, we uh, investigate all kinds of accidents, determine liability, and attempt to make a settlement. Well, like what, for example? You'd have to be more specific. <laughs> what kind of crooked hanky-panky do you get involved in in your job? <laughs> Nefarious. You would be surprised how many aches and pains we can cure when we dispense that long, green folding money. People recover so rapidly. It has charms to soothe the savage beast. The most healing balm in the world. I thought you looked a little shifty the minute you walked in here. <laughs> <laughs> now, I don't want to be insulting, but how is it you're not in jail, Mr. Harris? <laughs> I don't commit the embezzlements. I only investigate them. Oh, I see. <laughs> what makes you suspicious in the first place? Do you just automatically regard everybody as a crook and, and work from there? A good claims adjuster is almost clairvoyant. He can read a man by his shifty eyes, his nervous motions, his mannerisms of speech. Well, I'm glad I don't fit that description. <laughs> but in case you think I do, just remember, it takes a crook to catch a crook. <laughs> I want to thank every crook in the audience. For <laughs> well, you're a, you're a mighty interesting couple. <laughs> and I want to give you a chance to win some real money. But before I do, I want to remind you to take a ride in the new DeSoto Fire Dome 8. Now you're going to play your bet your life. You beat our other couples, you'll get a chance at the $6,000. Can't tell you how much you have to win, but Mr. Fenneman is going to remind our listeners. The publicity man and his partner won $4. And the secret word is age. All right, here we go. Let's see how high I can bid you 20 bucks. You're, there are common expressions that you have heard and used many times. I'll give you a keyword, and you give me the whole expression. For example, if I said proud, you would reply as a peacock. Proud as a peacock. Is that clear? I don't know why you picked such an involved category. <laughs> All right, here's your first question. How much of the $20 will you try? Talk up, what Lucy. What do you think? Mm, $19.80. Honey, you're going for broke. <laughs> 1980. Is that all right with you, no, uh, Mr. Harris? I don't agree with it. I'm conservative. I'm an insurance adjuster. All right. Let's put five on. Oh, no. Then go for broke. 
All right, time's yeah, a wasting, kids. Come on. Why wow. don't you compromise Let's and go for broke? What, twenty? Twenty. Okay. <laughs> You're going for the whole twenty? Okay, here we go. The word is wise. What's the rest of the expression? Wise as an owl. Wise as an owl is right. <laughs> Off to a great start, you have $40. Remember, you're going for $6,000 tonight. How much of the $40 you are going to try this time? Thirty-nine seventy-five. dollars <laughs> 39 is that 39 it? 75 dollars 79 The white is pretty. What is the rest of the expression? Pretty? As a picture. That's right. Pretty as a picture. <laughs> You now have $79.75. Here's your bad question. How much of the $79.75 you going to risk? $79. Go ahead. $79. The word is stubborn. What's the rest of the expression? Stubborn? As a mule. As a mule. Stubborn as a mule is right. You now have $158.75. It's your last chance to be the other couples. How much are you going to go for? All of Shoot the word. All right, the way it is flat. What's the rest of the expression? Flat? As a pancake. That's right, flat as a pancake. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I, wait a minute. I haven't got it added up yet. Oh, why don't we say that? <laughs> Give him the $6,000. No, you wind up with a grand total of $317.50. Well, thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. <laughs> We have a married couple for you, Groucho. They were... Merry-go-round, did you say? No, we have a married couple oh. for you. They were selected from our studio audience just before we went on the air uh, because they have some interesting experiences to tell you. Mr. and Mrs. Cornelius Smith, meet Groucho Marx. Welcome for the DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Say the secret word and divide $100. Say the secret word and you'll win $100. It's a common word, something you always have with you. Mr. and Mrs. Cornelius Smith, huh? No use flirting with you. You're married already, huh? <laughs> Let's see, Mr. and Mrs. Cornelius Smith. And you're married. Uh, Mrs. Smith, what's your first name? Grace. Well, you're very attractive. May I ask how, how old you are? Thirty. Thirty. Well, you don't look it. And you're married to Mr. Smithy? Yes. Cornelius. Oh, come now. I can't call you Cornelius. What shall I call you? Everybody calls me Corny. <laughs> That's a coincidence. That's what everybody calls me, too. <laughs> well, where are you from? Corny Island? No, I was born in Fort Huachuca, down on the Mexican border. I beg your pardon? Fort Huachuca. Fort Wich- uh, Have you tried antihistamine? <laughs> Gracie, uh, you have very pretty teeth. <laughs> Atta girl. Now, where is your birthplace? Baguio, Luzon. You sound like you're in worse shape than he is. <laughs> Baguio, Luzon? How, did you, uh, how do you explain your birthplace, uh, Mrs. Why, Smith? Uh, my father was a major in the Army and stationed in the Philippines. Oh, I see. Now, Connie, where do you explain, how do you explain where you were born? Well, my father was in the Army, too. And uh, he was stationed at Fort Huachuca. My mother was there, too. <laughs> that comes in pretty handy. <laughs> how long did you live in that fort, Connie? Well, about a year, Groucho, and then we went down to South America to uh, Venezuela and to Colombia. And then back up to Camp Meade, and then to Camp Bullis, and then to uh, Fort Sam Houston, and then to uh, Fort Bliss. Your father certainly kept moving. He must have been a private, was he? No, he was a colonel. Well, sometimes those colonels have to keep moving even faster <laughs> than the private. <laughs> if they don't, they might get drafted. <laughs> I mean, for active duty. <laughs> Corny, with all that Army background, I'm surprised you, you're not a general. How, how come you didn't join the Army? Well, I went to the Marine Corps instead, Groucho. You learned more about the Army than I thought you did, huh? <laughs> Where did you bump into this charmer here? I met her in Doran, Saudi Arabia. <laughs> that's up in Oregon, isn't it? <laughs> well, that's in the Middle East, Groucho. Oh, yes, near Muncie, Indiana. I'm... Uh... <laughs> Now, quit stalling, Corny. Where, where did you meet Grace? Oh, I met her in Arabia. Uh, I was doing engineer work for the, uh, one of the oil companies out there, and uh, she was the secretary of the president of the company. Ar- Arabia is a strange country, Corny, isn't it, for a couple of Americans? What did you do for entertainment over there? Pretty much the same thing you do over here. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Now, don't tell me you played canasta every night. Uh, <laughs> you better explain that, uh, Corny. Well, I mean, they have... Uh, what happened? <laughs> That's well, pretty they dated. Have... They don't say that anymore. They say, how about that? They have movies, tennis courts, swimming pool, lots of parties going all the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, those Arabian nights aren't so bad, you know. <laughs> How are the daytimes? Huh? Uh, not too good. Where did you get married? In Cairo, Egypt. Oh, well, that sounds and, like And uh, then we went to uh, Europe on our honeymoon. Mm -hmm. did you, where did you go in Europe? Oh, we went to Greece. Go behind the to, Iron Curtain? Uh, yeah. No, to France and Italy and others. I don't remember them all. You don't remember where you were? Well, I would say you had a real nice honeymoon. Uh. <laughs> Do you remember where you went, Corny? Sure. <laughs> American men are so romantic. <laughs> That's what Zsa Zsa Gabor says. <laughs> well, Grace, now that you're back in America, what sort of work are you, are you and Corny doing? Why, he's doing a sculpture in ceramics. He uh, does uh, American Indians, the Navajos, or uh, oh. Kachina dolls, little figurines about so high. Mm -hmm. Is there anything like tangerines? <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, what do people do with these things after they buy them besides dust them? Oh, they put them on the sideboards and high boards and on whatnot shelves. Wait a minute. What's a whatnot shelf? Huh? Why, it's a... Is word. that a shelf made out of a whatnot? <laughs> Anything, I guess you don't know a name for it. You just call it a whatnot. Well, I don't have a name for that, don't I? <laughs> well, why do people want these whatnots? Well, they make uh, good conversation pieces. It gives people something to talk about. Then you mean they're not content to talk about taxes and the war and the election? The United Nations or silly stuff like that, eh? <laughs> They'd rather lose themselves in whatnots. I don't believe it. Who'd be silly enough to talk about a whatnot? Well, we've been talking about them for a few minutes now. <laughs> Did you know that a camel can go eight days without a joke? <laughs> and this is a shining example. <laughs> Well, you make a charming and, and a pretty witty couple, and I'd like to continue talking to you two, but it's time to play your bet your life for a chance at the $6,000. Now, you run your 20 bucks into more than our other couples. I can't tell you how much you have to win, but uh, George is going to remind our listeners. You look like a pretty smart couple. Here. The lady from the Canary Islands and the insurance man lead with $317.50. Here we go. Let's see how high I can bet you $20. You selected largest cities of the countries of the world. You ought to be pretty good at that after that honeymoon you had, Corny. <laughs> Here's your first question. How much will you bet? Uh, Talk up. Don't keep it a secret. Nineteen ninety-nine. Nineteen ninety-nine. What is the largest city in Chile? Santiago. Santiago is right. <laughs> well, you're on your way. Not to be. You have thirty-nine dollars and ninety-nine cents. Remember, you're going for six thousand bucks tonight. How much of the thirty-nine ninety-nine are you going to bet? Okay. Thirty-nine ninety-eight. What is the largest city in Morocco? Casablanca. Casablanca is right. You have $79.97. Is your third question, how much of that are you going to bet? Shoot the works. Shoot the works? All right. What is the largest city in Romania? Bucharest. Bucharest is right. You have $159.94. And is your last chance to beat the other couples? How much are you going to go for? All let's, of it. Let's go. All of it. All of it. All right. What is the largest city in Switzerland? Talk it over. It's either Bern or Zurich. Zurich. Zurich is right. <laughs> and you'll wind up with $319.88, and that means that you people, in just one minute... Get the chance of the DeSoto oh. Clemens $6,000 question. Here's a good tip for all of us car owners to keep in mind as we look forward to another busy season of summer driving. Make safe driving a habit. Check your car. Check accidents. May is Vehicle Maintenance Month. And there's no better place to take your car for a safety inspection than a DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Here, highly skilled mechanics trained in factory methods will see to it that your car gets a complete safety checkup. Brakes, headlights, 
wheels, tires, steering, windshield wipers, glass, horn, muffler, and exhaust. They'll see that everything is done to make your car safe and sound for the thousands of happy miles of driving ahead of you. And you'll be pleasantly surprised when you find how little this costs. Remember, make safe driving a habit. Check your car. Check accidents. Drive in where you see the familiar sign of better service, the friendly sign of a DeSoto Plymouth dealer. And now, here's our winning couple, Groucho, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, all set for the DeSoto Plymouth. I like the cut of your jib. Uh, <laughs> $6,000 question. Come on in, folks. Well, maybe that honeymoon came in pretty handy, otherwise you wouldn't have known all those cities. Here we go for $6,000. I'll give you 15 seconds to decide on a single answer between you. Think carefully and please no help from the audience. Here it is. If you'll remember, nectar was the drink of the gods on Olympus. For $6,000, tell me, what was the fabulous food of the gods that ensured them strength, power, beauty, and immortality? Talk it over. What is the answer you two have decided upon? Ambrosia. Ambrosia is right. <laughs> well, <I'm fair. laughs> That's, right. That's right, you win six thousand dollars. Come on back. Plus, how much... Uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. They won $6,000, and how much in the quiz, George? Oh, I've completely forgotten oh, that. Uh, $319.88. That makes $6,398.63. Uh, no, but it's close. <laughs> $63,1988. Is that right? No. No? Well, how yes. much? Yes. <laughs> I'm happy. Benjamin, you're fired. <laughs> get your fired old mate and get out of here. <laughs> Well, uh, what are you going to do with all that swag, kids? Another well, we, honeymoon? Uh, I think maybe so. We've always wanted to go down to British East Africa under Nairobi and Kenya and Tanganyika. We haven't been down there yet. Yeah, well, give them my regards. <laughs> <if you go. laughs> well, congratulations from the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast. You bet your life. Thank you. Be sure to tune in again next Wednesday night at the same time for the Groucho Marx Show, when the big question will be worth $1,000. And don't miss Groucho's television show, also presented by the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America. And remember, all dealers who sell DeSoto also sell Plymouth. Two great cars, both products of the Chrysler Corporation. And when you drive in, tell them Groucho sent you. Good night, folks, and remember... See DeSoto, fire don't make... Tomorrow. Folks, here's a reminder from the National Safety Council. Make safe driving a habit. Check your car. Check accidents. You Bet Your Life, transcribed from Hollywood, is produced by John Goodell. Directed by Robert Dwan and Bernie Smith. Music by Jerry Fielding. This is George Fenneman signing off for the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast. Ladies and gentlemen, the secret word tonight is money. M-O-N-E-Y. Rally. You bet your life. The more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers of America present Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life, the comedy quiz series produced and transcribed from Hollywood. And here he is, the one, the only... 
A real schlemiel. Hey, that's me! <laughs> Well, here I am again with $1,000 for one of our couples. Last week, we lost $6,000 on the show. Remember that? Yeah. Well, Groucho, we asked for young single people to volunteer tonight. And just before we went on the air, we selected Mr. Kenneth Anderson and Miss Betsy Sherman. And now I'd like them to come in and meet Groucho Marx. Well, welcome, youngsters, for the DeSoto Plymouth Say the secret word and you'll divide $100. It's a common word, something you use every day. Mr. Kenneth Anderson and Miss Betsy Sherman, and neither of you is married, eh? Where are you from, uh, Betsy? I'm from Lake Okeechobee, Florida. Uh, how old are you? Uh, I'm 29. 29, huh? Eh? Yes. Gee, young-looking girl to be so old. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. It's the most ambiguous compliment I think I've ever had. <laughs> <laughs> Kenneth Anderson, eh? Yes, sir. How, how old are you, Ken? 31, Mr. Marks. And uh, where are you from, uh... Wilmington, Delaware. Wilmington? Oh, that's where the DuPonts live, isn't it? That's right. Do you, do you know any of the DuPonts? Not personally, but you see them around town. You do, huh? You know, in the past 20 years, I bought over 100 cans of their paint, and in all the years, all the times I've been in Wilmington, none of them has ever asked me up to their house for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> Kenneth Anderson, eh? what, what'll I call you, Ken or, or Andy? No, you may call me Dick, Mr. Marks. Call you Dick? Dick, yes. Naturally. What else could I call you? <laughs> what sort of what sort of work do you do, Al? <laughs> I'm saying you gotten away from Kenner, haven't you? Absolutely. I'm uh, from the circus, Mr. Marks. Hmm. I'm in the Flying Heralds. You're a Flying Herald? Yes. I get one up in my porch every afternoon. <laughs> eh? <laughs> I meant to talk to the newsboy about that too. <laughs> Now, let's, let's, let's start all over again, huh? Your name is Kenneth, they call you Dick, and you're one of the Flying Harolds. Yes. Well, I'll call you Charlie, huh? Okay. And you can call me Herman. Okay, Joe. Fine, Frank. Now, tell me, uh, now what are the Flying Harolds? We are a flying trapeze act. You mean you're the daring young man on the flying trapeze? One of them. Betsy, you'll have no trouble catching this guy. <laughs> all you have to do is stand under him with a net. <laughs> what circus are you with? Clyde Beatty Circus. Oh, well, uh, they're around here someplace, sir. Uh, let's find out some more about you two. Betsy, what sort of work do you do? I'm a skip tracer. Now you're talking. What kind of a strip teaser are you? <laughs> <laughs> That's the kind of talk I like to hear. <laughs> I I was a I'm pretty tracer. sick of this manby pamby stuff. <laughs> I Come on, whip it up, Betty. <laughs> Let's get going. Two on the aisle. I said that I was a skip tracer for the National Credit Exchange at 112 West 9th. Oh, what a Room letdown, huh? Eh? A skip tracer, huh? Huh? No, that's certainly... You must be a... Are you sure you're not a strip teaser? <laughs> well... <laughs> She's not as sure as she thought she was. <laughs> it would only take a little prodding, I think. <laughs> Why don't you abandon that other thing, Betty, and uh, and uh, declare yourself? <laughs> What's a skip tracer? Well, a skip tracer finds people, and um, I look for people that don't want to pay their bills and people who uh, could pay them but don't want to. And uh, well. Uh, Let's not get personal. <laughs> My main purpose is to get money out of people and all that sort of thing. <laughs> money! You said money! <laughs> well, you got money out of us. You said uh, <laughs> money, and money is the secret way tonight, so you get $50. Well, thank you. And uh, Flying Freddy over here gets $50. <laughs> Well, you both like excitement. You're the right age for each other, and I can see no reason why you shouldn't get married immediately. <laughs> Betsy, this is Leap Year. Why don't you go ahead and propose to the flycatcher here? Well, I don't think I want to get married. Dick, it's up to you. Go ahead. You ask her to marry you. Why don't you ask her? <laughs> okay, I will. 
Betty, uh, do you have any objections to marrying Dick? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. She said yes, and I pronounce you Bonham and Bailey. <laughs> Now, in just one minute, you're going to play your bet your life for a chance at the $1,000 question. But first, I want you to listen to some information that will be of value in the years to come. Take the five-mile trial. Take the five-mile trial. All over the nation, folks are going to their DeSoto Plymouth dealers to take the five-mile trial in either the new DeSoto Fire Dome 8 or the new DeSoto Power Master 6. And they're marveling at DeSoto full power steering. Not partial, not part-time power steering, but full power steering that makes turning the wheel as easy as dialing a phone. Right, Groucho? Frankly, I didn't believe this till I actually tried it myself. Full power steering in the new DeSoto makes parking a cinch. DeSoto full power steering makes you all of the car easier and safer at all speeds. Discover full power steering for yourself by driving either the DeSoto Power Master 6 or the mighty Fire Dome 8 with 160-horsepower V8 engine. Visit your DeSoto Plymouth dealers and take the five-mile trial tomorrow. And remember, all dealers who sell DeSoto also sell Plymouth, the low-priced car most like high-priced cars. All right, now let's see how you work together as a team. Uh, Fire Dome Fenneman, <laughs> would you mind explaining the rules? You bet as much of your $20 as you want on each of four questions. And the couple that earns the most money gets a chance at the $1,000 DeSoto Plymouth question later in the show. See how high you can build your $20. From our list of 20 categories, you selected number 19. That's River Cities of the United States. Right? That's right. Here's your first question. How much will you bet? And talk real loud. 19. 19. 19. 19. On what river is the city of Louisville? Ohio. Ohio is right. Well, you're off to a good start. You have $39. Round on both ends and high in the middle. <laughs> Woo-woo. Remember, you're going for $1,000 now. How much of your uh, $39 will you try this time? 38. 38. 38. Okay. On what river is the city of Wichita? Uh, Missouri. Missouri. Kansas? No, I'm sorry. It's the Arkansas River. Arkansas. Or Arkansas River. I don't know how they pronounce it. You've dropped to one dollar. <laughs> You've dropped to a buck, and here's your third question. How much of the dollar are you going to bet? <laughs> All right. And what river is the city of Omaha? The, um, Missouri. Missouri is right. <laughs> <laughs> you now have a dollar and a half. Here's your last chance to beat the other couples. How much of the buck and a half are you going to go for? Dollar. Might as well. Okay, and what river is the city of Albany? Hudson. Hudson River is right. <laughs> Sorry, you lost well, you wound up with two dollars and a half, and that's not enough, is it, Groucho? Uh, not an. Oh no, I should say not. Nobody leaves here with less than twenty-five bucks. I'll give you this one question for twenty-two dollars and fifty cents. No coaching. This is a tough question. You ready? Who is buried in Grant's tomb? <laughs> Grant is right. <laughs> Thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers. We uh, we invited some English professors to the program tonight, Groucho. And just before we went on the air, our studio audience yeah, selected Mr. Me. Elmore Leppert. His partner is a housewife, Mrs. Amanda Elizabeth Willingham Stewart. And here they are, folks. Meet Groucho Marx. How Welcome. Do to, how do you do? Welcome to You Bet Your Life. Say the secret yeah, word and you'll divide $100. It's a common word, something you use every day. No, then let's see. Uh, Mrs. Uh, Amanda Elizabeth Willingham Stewart. Yes, sir. Is that one person or is that Phil Spadalny's all girl orchestra? It's just one person. That's you? Yes, sir. That's me. Well, howdy doody. Howdy do, sir. Howdy doody, huh? And uh, El Elmore Leppard, eh? That's right. You look a little like Dennis Day. <coughs> kind Thank of a you. cross between Dennis Day and Will Rogers, Jr. A couple of very attractive young fellows, by the way. So you're an English professor. Well, that's huh? right. If I was smart, I'd stop right here and let Amanda do all the talking. Yeah. What's your hometown, Amanda? Well, I was born in Llano County, Texas, on Grandpa's cow ranch in 1895. <laughs> <laughs> 
And uh, where did you meet your husband? Uh, I met him at my aunt's. Where was your aunt's? She lived in Cottle County, Texas. That was in 1913. Mm-hmm. And where did she live in 1912? <laughs> well, I don't know where she lived in 1912. I wasn't there. <laughs> where were you in 1912? I was in Oklahoma. <laughs> Well, is that all there is to it? Uh, how, did, how did you meet your husband? Well, I met my husband at, at my aunt's. He come over there to visit, and I, I met him there at my aunt's in Cottle County. He came to visit your aunt? Yes. He didn't know you were going to be there? No, he sure didn't. <laughs> well, uh, where, where did he propose, Amanda? He proposed in the cotton patch. <laughs> One of those places where they go out to pick cotton. Oh. You've seen them, haven't you? I have a cotton patch in my trousers. Nobody's ever proposed. Anything. Uh, well, Amanda, a, a cotton patch is a place for easy pickings. Yeah, it sure is. Now, what did this Casanova say when he proposed? Well, he says, just, uh, we was talking about people getting along, and he says, well, now, Mandy, how do you think me and you would get along? Mm-hmm. What'd you say? I said, well, we might get along just fine if it wasn't for them boys of yours. What boys? Well, his sons by his first wife. Oh, he had a, he had a child by his first wife? Yes, nine of them. <laughs> all the way from three and a half years to 21 or two. Well, how could you resist a proposal like that? Huh? Well, it wasn't very Cotton hard to resist. Cotton patch nine children, huh? It wasn't very hard to resist. Well, it was pretty convenient marrying a ready-made family. Didn't that save a lot of trouble, Amanda? No, sir, it sure didn't. We had 11 of our own. <laughs> he, had, he had six boys and three girls by his first wife, and I had six girls and five boys. You said you made a bum out of his first wife, didn't you? Yes, I did. <laughs> Do you have an album in your parlor, uh, Amanda? Do you look mm-hmm. through old pictures? Uh? Well, I look through old pictures, but they're not in an album. Well, the reason I ask, because there's a new album coming out. It's a Decker album, and it has six, six songs in there written by Harry Ruby. And sung by me, and uh, I may be prejudiced, but I'm crazy about it. And uh... yeah. by the way, Professor, what do you think of my English? Oh, I think your English is excellent. You you seem to have fine vocabulary. Mm-hmm. Get across what you want to say. Do you happen to notice any errors in my speech? Uh, if you do, I wish you'd let me know because. Uh... All right, I'd be glad to. Well, let's not get delirious about it. <laughs> Amanda, let's get back to you and your family. With 20 children, I would venture to hazard that uh, you have in the neighborhood of 30 grandchildren by now. How is that, Professor? Pretty classy, eh? Well, well, um, you wouldn't say, I venture to hazard. That's that's redundant. You would say, I, I venture to say that you have 30 grandchildren in the neighborhood of 30 grandchildren by now. Really? Yeah, I, better, I better move out of that neighborhood. Yeah, but Amanda, what both... would you say is right, him or me? They're both wrong. <laughs> Why do you say we're both wrong? Because I've got 47 grandchildren. <laughs> Besides the great grandchildren. Professor, you may know your English, but Amanda knows her onions. <laughs> well, I, I just love to continue this conversation, but it's time you earn some money. And, Professor, yeah. if you take a ride in the new DeSoto Fire Dome 8, even you will be speechless. It's a great car. Now, then, uh, you're going to play your bet your life. You beat our other couples, and you'll get a chance at the $1,000 question. I can't tell you how much you have to win, but uh, Mr. Fenneman's going to remind our listeners. The trapeze artist and his partner won $2.50, and the secret word is money. Here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. You selected biblical quiz. Yeah. Here's your first question. How much will you bet? Well, you Talk saying? it over. <clears throat> what do you well, think? Do you I feel think, pretty sure of this? I think about $18.48 or 50 <laughs> why, why? 
Five forty-eight. He doesn't teach mathematics. He teaches English. Well, I'll do the mathematics. This is a real covered wagon girl. I'll bet she came west with a pair of mules. All right. How much are you going to bet? And her husband. And, oh. About 1852, I think. 1852. <laughs> just 100 years ago. Who wore the coat of many colors? Uh, Joseph. Joseph is right. You're on your way. You have $38.52. Remember, you're going for $1,000 tonight. How much of the swag are you going to bet on this question? All right. What's the question? <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what I'll do, Amanda. I'll give you the answer, but I won't give you the question. So you have $38.52 right now. $38.52. $38.52. Well, let's bet $38.40. $38.40. Here we are. Who captured the city of Jericho? Uh, Joshua. Joshua. Joshua fit the Battle of Jericho. You now have... Joshua the Battle of Jericho, Jericho, Jericho. Joshua the Battle of Jericho, and the walls came tumbling down. Yeah, the walls came. <laughs> Besides which, you have uh, seventy-six dollars and ninety-two cents. All right, now how much of that money are you going to try this time? Seventy-five. Yeah. Okay. All right. 70. All right. On what mountain did Moses receive the stone tablets containing the Ten Commandments? On the Mount Sinai. Mount Sinai is right. <laughs> Mandy, you read your Bible, haven't you? Yes, sir. You now have $151.92. And is your last chance to beat the other couples? How much of this are you going to go for? What do you say? Well, what do you say? I've told... I've Isn't said fair so the other far, couples you... now? You want to shoot the works? Yeah. No, no, I guess not. Uh, I think we can just go ahead and you shoot want, the works. You want to shoot the works? Yeah. All right. I'm not shoot the works. The whole shoot thing. Shoot the works. All right. What profit? What prophet was beheaded to please Salome, or Salome, whichever way you want it? Oh, is, is that in the New Bible? <laughs> I haven't been home all day, man. <laughs> what prophet was beheaded? To please Salome, or Salome. I think I know the answer. Shall I tell you? Yeah, you know it. You, you feel you know it? I don't think I know that. Well, get together on one answer between you. All right, that was John the Baptist. That's right, John the Baptist. Give him a big (laughs) kiss. Look at that. Nice work, Professor. And you wind up with $303.84. Thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealer. That was right, but it wasn't sure because you didn't pronounce that word, just that name. I told you I haven't been home all day. (laughs) Uh, Now we have a man with an unusual occupation for you, Groucho, along with a uh, young lady volleyball player who was selected by our studio audience just before we went on the air. And here they are, Mr. Dick Sprague and Pat Bearer. Come in and meet Groucho Marx, please. Welcome, welcome for the DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Say the secret word and you'll divide $100. It's a common word, something you use every day. Mr. Dick Sprague and Pat Barra. Huh? Oh, this is indeed a stroke of luck. Huh? Tall, beautiful blonde. Huh? Where are you from, uh, Pat? I'm from Skokie, Illinois. I was born across the street from an ice skating rink. Oh, you married a gay blade, I suppose. <laughs> we have jokes for all occasions. <laughs> Where are you from, Dick? Well, I was born in Philadelphia, but I left when I was one year old. Why? <laughs> uh, I've never found out. <laughs> You're a volleyball player? Yes. I understand that that's a, that's a wonderful thing to be. Now, uh, just what is volleyball? Well, volleyball is a game played on a court with a seven-foot-six net, and there are six people on each side of the court, and the object is to get the, game, get the ball going as fast as you can until your team gets the advantage to hit the ball down on the other side so the other team can't return it. That sounds like a fast game. Where, where do you play this? Well, we usually play on the beach. I played some fast games on the beach myself. <laughs> Occasionally my opponents were faster than I was. In that case, there was no game. <laughs> you play on any particular team, uh, Pat? Yes, I play for the Wahinis. 
Wahine, is that anything like a Frankfurter? <laughs> no, Wahine means girl in Hawaii. Oh, hot dog. <laughs> How long have you been playing with this outfit? Well, the Wahinis were formed last September. Well, you look like you're very well formed. Uh, <laughs> How does this team uh, represent any organization like the Marinated Meat Packers? Or? Well, no, we're independent, but we're looking for a sponsor now. Oh, really? Eh? Yes. Well, if you're not too independent, perhaps you'll find one. <laughs> I may be interested myself. Uh, what would I get out of this? Well, you'd get your name on the back of our warm-up suit. <laughs> That's life for you, huh? <laughs> Forty years in show business, and I wind up with my name on the back of a warm-up suit. <laughs> Well, Dick, let's find out something about you. Uh, you have an unusual occupation, I understand. And since I'm a keen student of human nature, I, I bet I can figure out what you do. You want to bet? No. Well, that eliminates my first guess. <laughs> <clears throat> You're not a bookie, huh? No. Well, give me a hint. Who do you work for? Uh, Computer Research Corporation. You call that a hint? <laughs> I'll guess once more. You make two pays for ball headed eagles. <laughs> no, uh, I design uh, electronic uh, digital differential analyzers. You know, that's an amazing coincidence. That's just what I was going to guess next. <laughs> what, what kind of work do you do, Dick? <clears throat> uh, well, are you familiar with uh, electronic brains? <laughs> are you referring to my own or. <laughs> If you're referring to mine, I would say I'm not familiar with one. Uh, well, I design uh, computers which uh, have been... Could you design me to... a new brain? Well, it's possible. <laughs> uh, these computers I work on are actually referred to as uh, electronic brains. Uh -huh. uh, they uh, perform uh, all sorts of automatic calculations on uh, complicated scientific problems. And uh, some people think they will actually uh, do... Uh, routine, dull routine thinking for you. Well, do you have a name for this monster? <clears throat> well, uh, the last uh, computer I designed was called uh, KDAC, but uh, there have been uh, a number of them, one called Maniac, another one called uh, Shadrach, uh, Meshach, uh, Univac, and uh, the granddaddy of uh, all these machines was called uh, ENIAC. The granddaddy was ENIAC? <laughs> That's right. Well, who was the grandmother? Well, uh, there wasn't any. <laughs> These machines may be brilliant, but they sure lead a dull life. <laughs> My guess is they're outsmarting themselves. <laughs> well, you're a very nice couple, and uh, I hope you win lots of money, because it's time to play your bet your life for a chance at $1,000. You feel real smart tonight? <laughs> well, I'll tell you in a minute. Well, all you got to do is run your 20 bucks and the more than our other couples. I can't tell you how much you have to win, but George is going to remind our listeners. Amanda and the English professor lead with $303.84. Here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. You selected comic strip characters. Here's your first question. How much would you bet? 20. How much? $20. Shadow is the pal of what high school hero? They, bl they slape sodas at the sugar bowl. Harold Teen. Harold Teen is right. You're on your way. You have $40. Remember, you're going for $1,000 tonight. How much of the $40 are you going to risk on this? 40 40 The whole thing. Louise is the wife of what comic strict hillbilly? Snuffy Smith. Snuffy Smith is right. Really climbing. You have $80. She'd give me a million dollars. I couldn't answer that. Here's your third question. <laughs> Uh, how much are you going to bet this time? Eighty. Eighty? K.O. is the kid brother of what comic strip character? Moon Mullins. Moon Mullins is right. You're really climbing. You have $160. And is your last chance to beat the other couples? How much of the 160 All of it. Shoot the words. Okay. <laughs> Terry has a freckle-faced pilot friend who shares in most of his adventures. What is his name? Hotshot Charlie. Hotshot Charlie and the Roy Boy. <laughs> wind up with $320 
And that means that you two, in just one minute, get the chance at the DeSoto Plymouth $1,000 question. Thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. For anything pertaining to cars, the best man in town to see is your DeSoto Plymouth dealer. And he wants you to know you're always welcome when you walk through his doors. He considers it a pleasure to show you the two great new cars he sells. The beautiful new DeSoto and the handsome new Plymouth. Your DeSoto Plymouth dealer is proud of his fine line of used cars, of every make and model. He wants you to see his modern service shop, where master technicians use the finest equipment there is to do a really expert service job, and to do it faster, which means a saving to you. Not only that, you'll notice the folks who work in his shops, offices, and showroom not only believe in courtesy, they practice it. Yes, that's the DeSoto Plymouth dealer in your neighborhood. Why not stop in and see him tomorrow? And here's the volleyball player and Mr. Sprague, all set for the DeSoto Plymouth $1,000 question, Groucho. Well, Mr. Sprague, I don't know whether that mechanical gadget of yours is going to help you any this time. <laughs> Here we go for $1,000. I give you 15 seconds to decide on a single answer between you. Think carefully and please no help from the kibitzes. Here it is. Of all the states that border the oceans in the United States, which has the shortest coastline? Talk it over. You've got 15 seconds. One answer between you. What is the answer you two have decided upon? New York. No, I'm sorry. It's New Hampshire with only 13 miles of general coastline. That's the correct answer, so that means the big question next week will be worth $1,500. Well, they lost the big money, but how much did they win in the quiz, George? $320 in the quiz. Congratulations and thanks to both of you and to all of our contestants on the show tonight. Be sure to tune in again next Wednesday night at this same time for the Groucho Marx Show, when the big question will be worth $1,500. And don't miss Groucho's television show, also presented by the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America. And remember, all dealers who sell DeSoto also sell Plymouth. Two great cars, both products of the Chrysler Corporation. And when you drive in, tell them Groucho sent you. Good night, folks, and remember... See DeSoto Fire Dome, mate... Tomorrow. Folks, here's a reminder from the National Safety Council. Make safe driving a habit. Check your car. Check accidents. You Bet Your Life, transcribed from Hollywood, is produced by John Goodell. Directed by Robert Dwan and Bernie Smith. Music by Jerry Fielding. This is George Fenneman signing off for the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast. Ladies and gentlemen, the secret word tonight is wall. W-A-L-L. Really? You bet your life. <laughs> the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers of America present Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life, the comedy quiz series produced and transcribed from Hollywood. And here he is, the one, the only... Who? Oh, that's me. <laughs> well, here I am again with $1,500 for one of our couples. We asked for married couples to volunteer tonight, Groucho, and just before we went on the air, we selected Mr. and Mrs. Melvin Cole. And here they are. 
Folks, meet Groucho Marx. Well, welcome, youngsters, for the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers. Say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common word, something you find around the house. Mr. and Mrs. Uh, Melvin Cole, eh? And what is your hometown, Mrs. Cole? Chicago, the north side. Oh, the north side. In that case, I'll take the north side. Eh? <laughs> it's much more scenic than the south side. <laughs> you don't, uh, two don't seem very large. Uh, how tall are you, uh, Melvin? Well, uh, sometimes I'm 5'3", and sometimes I'm 5'5". Five five. When I went in the Army, I was 5'3". You mean you shrunk purposely? Yeah? <laughs> and uh, what is your first name, Mrs. Cole? I can't keep calling you Mrs. Cole. Right? Well, you can call me Anne, but my real name is Anniversary. Yeah, well, when is your anniversary? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I was called that because I was born on my parents' fourth wedding anniversary. Oh, I see. Do you ever call yourself Vasari? I mean, uh, always stick to the Anna? How tall always are you? Am. I'm four ten and a half, uh, without heels. Mm -hmm. Are you referring to Melvin when you say that? <laughs> <laughs> what sort of work do you do, uh, Melvin? Uh, we're closet uh, decorators, Mr. Marks. I beg your butt, sir? Closet decorators. You work for Fibber McGee and Molly? <laughs> no, but they probably need us. <laughs> You're in closets. Well, we we probably met before, haven't we? Yeah. <laughs> Just what do you mean you're in the closet business? I never heard of a closet business. Well, we do everything for the closets that the interior decorator does for the rest of the house. We do. That's uh, pretty underhanded, isn't it? Huh? Well, it's an inside job. Is that one of the jokes of the profession? That, uh... <laughs> no, uh, after we take the skeletons out, that's what's left. You and... take Red Skelton out of the closet and put <laughs> Zipper McGee in, eh? We've never met him in the closet yet. Well, what do you do while Melvin is rattling around the closet, saying, what do you do? I'm in the closet business with him. <laughs> well, you two must hang around a lot together, eh? <laughs> well, you're, you're, you're the prettiest closet maker I've ever seen. Eh? Well, thank you. Well, you're a nice couple, and if you come to my house, Mr. and Mrs. Cole, I'll be glad to throw you in the furnace. <laughs> and if you don't like that, Mrs. Cole, I'll be glad to carry you to Newcastle. <laughs> now, in just one minute, you're going to play your bet your life for a chance at the $1,500 question. But first, I'd like you to pay close attention to something instructive. Take the five-mile trial. Take the five-mile trial. Your DeSoto Plymouth dealer invites you to take the five-mile trial in a new DeSoto Fire Dome 8 or a DeSoto Power Master 6. He wants you to get behind the wheel yourself so you can appreciate the difference in DeSoto. For example, in the Fire Dome 8, the exhilarating feel of power as you touch your toe to the accelerator and call on the mighty new 160 horsepower DeSoto Fire Dome V8 engine. Driving up steep hills and through stop and go city traffic, you'll discover the tremendous acceleration and reserve power of this mighty DeSoto V8 engine that gives you more power from every drop of gas and on regular gasoline. The new DeSoto Fire Dome V8 engine is years ahead of every other type of passenger car engine built today. So here's your chance to try the sensational new DeSoto full power steering, power brakes, and all the other great new DeSoto features. Visit your DeSoto Plymouth dealers tomorrow for a five-mile trial in a new DeSoto, either the Fire Dome 8 or the Power Master 6. And remember, all dealers who sell DeSoto also sell Plymouth, the low-priced car most like high-priced cars. Now here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. From our list of 20 categories, you selected number 10, creators of famous movie roles. Here's your first question. How much will you bet? Twenty. Talk up, kids. Let's bet twenty. twenty bucks. Twenty dollars. Okay. Who created the role of Frankenstein's monster? Uh, Boris Karloff. Boris Karloff is right. <laughs> Off to a good start. You have forty dollars. Remember, you're going for fifteen hundred dollars. Now, how much of the uh, forty dollars are you going to try this time? Shoot the works. Forty. Who created the part of Lynn Belvedere? Clifton Webb. Clifton Webb is right. Really climbing. You have eighty dollars now. Here's your third question. How much of the eighty? Eighty. Eighty. Who created the role of Pa Keppel? Uh, Percy, Percy Kilbride. Kilbride. Right. You now have one hundred and sixty dollars. You certainly picked a category that you knew. Yeah? Here's your last chance to be the other couples. How much are you going to bet? Twenty. 
All of it. All of it. Oh, this kid's a gambler, huh? <laughs> Who created the kindly Dr. Christian? Gene uh, Herschel. Gene Herschel is right. <laughs> Up right over the top with $320. $320, thanks, and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. We asked for housewives with interesting uh, occupations to volunteer tonight, Groucho, and just before we went on the air, Mrs. Ruth King and Mrs. Sylvia Treichler were chosen. And here they are. Ladies, meet Groucho Marx. Well, welcome. Uh, welcome to You Bet Your Life. Say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common word, something you find around the house. Mrs. Ruth King and Mrs. Uh, Sylvia Treichler. Treichler or Treichler? Treichler. Treichler. Who is, who is Sylvia? That's me. Thanks. I've been asking who is Sylvia for 40 years. <laughs> and at last tonight I've found you. Hot diggity. <laughs> Mrs. Ruth King. Ruth, uh, where are you from? I'm from Alabama. Have you got a banjo on your knee? Or... <laughs> what have you got on your knee? Anything? Water. Water, huh? <laughs> They're all too smart for me tonight. Huh? <laughs> May I ask your age, Ruth? I know that's a kind of an impudent question, but uh, we do that here. Yes, yes. I can't ask you, huh? <laughs> but uh, you won't answer, is that it? Well, that's your privilege. You don't have to. <laughs> How old are you, Sylvia? 27. 27. Uh, let's say you're 27, too. Right? I'm fine. Where do you live, Sylvia? Out in the valley, Sherman Oaks. Oh, Sherman Oaks. Were you, were you born in Sherman Oaks? No, in Zurich, Switzerland. Oh, well, is that near Sherman Oaks? <laughs> no. And Mrs. King, do you do anything besides housekeeping? Well, uh, in my spare moments, I'm writing my autobiography. Oh, really? Well, who's this autobiography about? <laughs> Isn't it unusual for a housewife to write a, a, a book like that? Well, I, I haven't always been a housewife. I, uh, when I was much younger, I did some flying. You did some frying? Flying. Oh, flying. I don't hear very well. You'll have to... <laughs> the glasses... Uh, <laughs> bifocals. You don't hear well with bifocals. <laughs> You say you did some flying? Uh, yes. And where, where did you fly? I mean, what kind of flying have you done? Well, I was the first girl to attempt to fly across the Atlantic Ocean. Wait a minute, you... <laughs> well, that, that was Ruth Elder that flew across the ocean. Is that... that's you? Yes, me. Well, it's a great pleasure to have you here, Ruth. Thank you, you were big headlines back there in, uh, when was it, around? In 1927. 1927. I remember you very well. Thank you. I even remember Columbus. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what ever made you decide to fly the Atlantic? Well, uh, uh, on the day that Lindbergh made his landing in Paris, uh, I was in a beauty contest, and word was flashed to us that Lindbergh had made his landing. And I decided right then that someday some girl would make that fight, and I decided that I would be the one to do it. Oh, you had a lot of nerve, didn't you? Huh? Uh, how much later was this after you five, made this decision? Huh? Five months later. Five months later, I was flying across the Atlantic Ocean. Uh huh. And uh, not in a bathing suit, huh? <laughs> no. <laughs> not how, in a bathing how long suit. did it take you to fly across the Atlantic? Uh, we were in the air for 35 hours. We had three hours to go, but we were forced down at sea. Well, how long had you been flying when you decided to try the Atlantic? Oh, I'd never been up in an airplane. You'd never been up before, no. huh? How long were you in the water before you were rescued? Uh, just about an hour. Mm -hmm. Is that how you got water on the knee? <laughs> 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 you right? You'd never flown, and you decided to fly across the ocean, huh? I suppose if you decided to learn piano, you'd hire Carnegie Hall for your first recital. <laughs> After you started your trip, uh, how did it go, Ruth? It went very well the first night. Uh, as far as weather was concerned, the weather was... Were you scared? Oh, yes. Huh? You are. Yes. Well, you're honest about it, anyhow. Most people lie about those things, you know. Oh, I was scared. But the, the, uh, dif the flying was very difficult because uh, we had ten cans of gasoline packed in the tail surface of the plane. 
and which made the plane very tail heavy. Mm-hmm. And of course, you know, we didn't have the planes the, uh, those days as we have today. No, of course not. So uh, the first night was wonderful. The second day was all right, except the flying was still difficult. Ma- holding the plane on an even kill was difficult. And then uh, in the afternoon, we ran into a terrific storm. And we battled the storm all night long. And couldn't we fly were tossed, above it? Or? We couldn't get above it. We couldn't get under it. And we couldn't get around it. And it was sleeting and lightning and rain. The rain was a perfect wall of water on the windshield. Wall, you said wall. <laughs> you said wall, that's the secret word, so here's fifty dollars for you. And here's fifty dollars for you. Now you can get your knee fixed, Ruth. Eh? <laughs> you get yourself a pump for fifty dollars and pump that knee, eh? Well, you were you were getting close to the other side, eh? And there was this perfect wall of water. <laughs> Uh, well, uh, He's pretty cute at that. <laughs> well, during the storm and, and the plane being thrown away around the way it was, our uh, oil line broke. And we began to lose altitude, and we knew that we were going down at sea. And, of course, every white cap in the distance to me was a boat, because I was looking so hard for one. And finally, we did sight. When we were about 600 feet off the water, we sighted this little oil tanker. You said you were lucky. We were very lucky. It was the only ship within 300 miles radius, and it had left its port three days late and was also off its course because of the same storm we had been fighting. And then you proceeded to uh, France? Uh, Well, eventually, yes, it took us a long time to get there because the little tanker was on its way to Texas, and uh, we didn't want to go to Texas, but they did take us to the Azores. They were carrying oil to Texas? (laughs) (laughs) Things have slightly changed in the last 25 years. Sylvia, do you remember Ruth Elder's famous flight? No, I was just a baby at the time. (laughs) Sylvia, there's a boat leaving for Switzerland in the morning. (laughs) Well, it's been a pleasure to have you both here. All right, now you're going to play... You're going to play your bet your life. But first, I want to uh, remind you to see the new DeSoto Fire Dome 8. It's, it's a great car. Are you ready? Now, you decide on one answer between you. I can't tell you how much you have to win. George is going to remind our listeners. George is hiding outside in a doghouse. The married couple won $320, and the secret word is wall. Let's see how high I can bid you $20. You selected events and personalities of the Roaring Twenties. You ought to be good at this, Ruth. Here's your first question. How much will you bet? <laughs> Let's bet $19.99. All right, fine with me. Why, Ruth, you're flying the ocean again. (laughs) All right, one of the greatest of all amateur golfers was the quiet perfectionist from Atlanta. What is his name? Bobby Jones. Bobby Jones is right. (laughs) On your way, you have $39.99. Now, how much of the $39.99 are you going to bet? Let's bet $39.98. All right. What do we got to lose? $39.98. All right. The canaster of the 20s was a game played with ivory dominoes imported from China. What is the name of this Chinese game? Talk it over. You know what it is. How does it look? Oh. How does it look? Mahjong. Mahjong is right. <laughs> you now have $79.97. Mahjong. Mahjong. Isn't that, uh, hmm? in French, isn't that Mr. Mahjong? I don't know. I don't know either. Eh? <laughs> All right, you have seventy-nine dollars and ninety-seven cents. Now, how much are you going to bet on this? Ninety-six. Hmm? Ninety-six. We got seventy-nine. Seventy-nine ninety-seven. Oh, sure. We'll save a penny. Yeah. Makes it seventy-nine ninety-six. You're betting, right? Yeah. Yes. Here's the way they do it on some quiz shows. One of the most popular writers of the twenties was an author of the book Main Street and Babbitt. What was his name? <laughs> You've got 15 seconds to decide on this. He wrote Main Street and Babbitt. What was his name? Been hacked? No. One answer between you. <laughs> I'm sorry, the correct answer is Sinclair Lewis. Oh. Mm. You have one cent left. You have oh, one boy. cent left. Let's fly high enough. Yeah, we'll fly How much are you going to bet? We better How bet much the whole thing. All right, you're going to bet the whole thing. 
The first woman to swim in the English Channel was the 19-year-old butcher's daughter from New York. What was her name? Trudy. Trudy Adderley. Gertrude Adderley is right. I'm sorry. <laughs> Gee, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. You wound up with two cents, Groucho. Oh, uh, nobody leaves here with two cents no. except me. <laughs> Give you one question. Get this right, and we'll bring your winnings up to $25. So you're now going for $24.98. I guess I'm pretty good on that. <laughs> Ready? In what city is the San Francisco Opera House? <laughs> San Francisco is right. <laughs> Thanks, and good luck from the Soda Plymouth deal. Groucho, we invited some girls from a testing bureau to the show tonight. And just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected Miss June Duran. Her partner is a baseball umpire, Mr. Jack Powell. And here they are. Folks, meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, welcome for the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers. Say the secret word and win $100. It's a common word, something you find around the house. A baseball umpire, eh? I'll get around to you in a minute. I'll... I'm saving you, old boy. <laughs> Where are you from, uh, June? From Los Angeles. Los Angeles, huh? Eh? Uh, how old are you, June? Thirty-one. Thirty-one? You don't look it. I thought you were about twenty-three. Thank you. You're very well preserved. <laughs> are you married? Yes, I am. Let's forget the whole thing, huh? Eh? <laughs> uh, uh, Mr. Powell, huh? Eh? Where, where are you from? Uh, foul ball, Texas? <laughs> no, Peoria, Illinois. I, I knew he'd be from a town where there's a brewery. <laughs> He's got a hops on his fast one, I'll bet. Huh? Are you uh, married? Yes, sir. Typical umpire. Another wrong decision. <laughs> hey, this is fun. I like this. <laughs> Are you British? No. Well, I read someplace that the sun never sets on the British Empire, and I just... <laughs> Checking, that's all. <laughs> June uh, Duran, is that right? That's right. Where, where is it you work, June? Well, I work at the California Test Bureau. Testing Bureau? That's huh? right. Well, well, what do you test? Well, we test people. Are you testy yourself? Well, <laughs> no. Well, we test people for educational and vocational guidance, and we also uh, test for aptitude testing. Mm -hmm. What is that? What's an aptitude test? Well, an aptitude test... I have test. a very good aptitude. I had about three steaks for dinner tonight. <laughs> <laughs> well, an aptitude test is we'd give a type of a test we'd give you to see uh, your strengths and your weaknesses and your uh, potentialities, what type of work you should be doing, and your levels of interest. My levels of interest? <laughs> you won't get very far with me, June. <laughs> My interests don't happen to be on the level. <laughs> Well, let's go crooked. Let's get back to you again. Huh? <laughs> How many umpires are there in a game of baseball? Either three or four. That's more than uh, many teams have ball players. <laughs> well, make up your mind. You're not behind the plate now. What do you mean, either three or four? Well, we have 14 umpires. Mm -hmm. And when all the teams are playing, there's only four places they can go. <laughs> You're wrong. There's five places there. <laughs> All right. What are the other three places they can go? Well, they rotate. They do, huh? Well, they're dizzy enough to rotate. What do you mean they rotate? Well, the first day the umpire will work behind the plate. The next day he'll work at third base. The next day at second base. And the next day at first base. I see. Now, suppose a catcher is really angry at one of your crooked decisions. Uh... <laughs> crooked what? decisions? Yeah. What do you mean, crooked decisions? Well, one of the honest decisions. Uh, what can he do about it? Well, he can protest as long as he protests in the right respect and manner. Like what? By not using any profanity or anything like that. He's not allowed to use profanity? No, sir. He should be respectful at all times, is that it? That's right. You mean he should say, like, uh, Dear sir, isn't it possible? <laughs> Your judgment may be a trifle faulty in this matter. <laughs> you jake you. <laughs> Suppose the player does protest in a gentlemanly manner. Do you do you accept the protest? Absolutely. What do you do about it? Nothing. 
<laughs> you ever change your decision, you robber, you? Robber? Where do you get that? Robber. <laughs> Here's the way DeRosa goes. Ah, so I don't know. <laughs> He don't get very far when he goes that way either, does he? Well, he got Lorraine Day. <laughs> That's one break he got. Have you ever admitted that you made a single mistake? No, I haven't. You mean to tell me in all your umpiring you've never made a single mistake, Jack? I may have made them, but I never admitted them. <laughs> Just as I thought. Crooked as the day is long. <laughs> and the days are pretty long these days. Why don't you admit them, Jack, like a man? Well, I'll tell you, Groucho. I never made a mistake from my heart when I was umpiring a ball game. What are the requirements for an umpire? An umpire <laughs> must have honesty, integrity, good eyesight, and plenty of intestinal fortitude. <laughs> Wouldn't it help if you knew a little about baseball? <laughs> well, I've kidded the umpire, but as an old blown-in-the-bottle baseball fan, I know umpires are necessary. Honest, and they help to make the game a great one. This is a lie, but I thought I'd better say it. <laughs> Put it there, Jack. I've watched you for many years, and you're a great umpire. Thanks, Dr. Let's play your bet your life. $120 and no more than the other couples. I can't tell you much after win, but George is going to remind our listeners. The married couple still lead with $320. You selected songs about sports as your category. Here's your first question. How much of the 20 are you going to try? Talk it over. You have one uh, decision between you. Well, shall we get 1975? Sure, 1975. 1975. Give me the title of this song. Play, Jerry. <laughs> Hunting we will go is right. Now have thirty-nine dollars and seventy-five cents. Now you're going for fifteen hundred dollars. This is just chicken feed. How much of this money are you going to go for? Thirty-nine. Thirty-nine. Okay. Thirty-nine dollars out of thirty-nine seventy-five. What is the name of this song? Hamtown <laughs> races is right. $78.75. Third question, how much are you going to bet? 78. 78. 78. Let's see right. if you can identify this song. Okay, Jerry. <laughs> Talk it over. I think it's Skater's Waltz. Skater's Waltz is right. <laughs> $156.75. And is your last chance to beat the other couples? Shoot How much are you going to go for? All of it. Shoot All the works. All right. This is extra inning game. Play it, Jerry. <laughs> sailing, sailing. Pretty straight. You wind up with $313.50. And that means the married couple with $320 in just one minute get the chance at the DeSoto Plymouth $1,500 question. No, I'm sorry, but you did pretty well with that, Jack. Pleasure to be here. Thank you. Three billion, three hundred million dollars. That's the staggering cost of one year's motor vehicle accidents. So reports the National Safety Council. And many of these accidents can be avoided. It depends on you. If your car isn't as safe as it can be, get a trustworthy safety checkup at the place that knows your car best, at your DeSoto Plymouth dealers. You'll find the expert mechanics at a DeSoto Plymouth dealers are experienced in all types of car repair. Not only that, they get frequent training in factory methods to keep them up on the latest and quickest methods of servicing your car. These master technicians have the finest, most up-to-date equipment to work with, enabling them to do a better job at a reasonable price. And incidentally, if your car should need parts, your DeSoto Plymouth dealer can supply you immediately with the right factory-approved parts. So don't take chances with your safety or your family's safety. Stop in for a thorough safety checkup 
where you see the familiar sign of better service, the friendly sign of a DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Here's the winning couple, Groucho, all set for the DeSoto Plymouth $1,500 question. Well, here's your chance to get out of the closet permanently. Here we go for $1,500. I'll give you 15 seconds to decide on a single answer between you. Think carefully and please no help in the audience. You ready? According to the Bible, Moses led the Israelites in their flight from bondage in Egypt to the promised land in Palestine. For $1,500, what is this great migration called? Talk it over. What's the answer you two have decided upon? Uh, the flight out of Egypt into Lebanon. No, I'm, I'm sorry. The correct answer is the Exodus. Oh. So that means the big question next week will be worth two thousand dollars. Well, you lost the big money, but uh, how much did they win the quiz, George? All the way, three hundred and twenty dollars. Well, that's only been done twice, I think, yeah. in the history of our show. Congratulations and thanks to Thank both you. of you thanks. and to all of our contestants on the show tonight. Be sure to tune in again next Wednesday night at the same time for the Groucho Marx Show, when the big question will be worth $2,000. And don't miss Groucho's television show, also presented by the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America. And remember, all dealers who sell DeSoto also sell Plymouth, two great cars, both products of the Chrysler Corporation. And when you drive in, tell them Groucho sent you. Good night, folks, and remember... See DeSoto Fire Dome, mate, tomorrow. Council. Make safe driving a habit. Check your car. Check accidents. You Bet Your Life, transcribed from Hollywood, is produced by John Goodell, directed by Robert Dwan and Bernie Smith, music by Jerry Fielding. This is George Veneman signing off for the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the secret word tonight is clothes. C L O T H E S. Really? You bet your life. The more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers of America present Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life, the comedy quiz series produced and transcribed from Hollywood. And here he is, the one, the only... Rachel! Just a flash in the pan. Oh, that's me! <laughs> well, here I am again with $2,000 for one of our couples. Groucho, um, we have a bachelor and a spin... stand there all day. You can go ahead. You can go. <laughs> I was waiting for the cue. Doing the show long <laughs> enough to know when to come in. Groucho, we have a bachelor and his... on strings, you know. <laughs> Put you on the Howdy Doody show. <laughs> Groucho, we have a bachelor and a spinster for you. They were selected from our studio audience just before we went on the air. A likely story. <laughs> Miss Mary Francine Tyler and Mr. Navak Kurnik. Meet Groucho Marx. Well, welcome. Welcome for the DeSoto Plymouth Eaters. Say the secret word and you'll divide $100. It's a common word, something you see every day. Mary Taylor, is that you? Uh, Tyler. Tyler, oh. Were you ever president of the United States, Mary? Uh, I never was. No. How, how old are you, Mary? Eighty-two years old. Really? Uh-huh. <laughs> well, you certainly don't look it, Mary. Thank you. You look about uh, 58. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> how young are you, uh, old boy? Seventy-seven. Seventy-seven. Uh, well, you don't look it. You look about 58. <laughs> 
Mary, will you marry this uh, fellow? No. <laughs> well, that's a direct answer, all right. No equivocating here. Mr. Koenig, uh, that's you. That's yeah. you're, you're the bachelor. Your yeah. first name, what is your first Navak. name? Navak. What's that? Navak. Navak Koenig? Yeah. Sounds like an old lady eating popcorn. <laughs> Navak Koenig. <laughs> Where'd you get an alias like that? In Russia. In that case, I suggest you take it up with the Security Council. <laughs> what part of Russia did you flee from? I come from the state of Minsk. Minsk? Yeah. Oh, I know. That's about halfway between Omsk and Ansk, isn't it? <laughs> no, it was between Moscow and Warsaw. Oh, is that near the Volga? No, no, far away from the Volga. Is there really a Volga there? There is, yeah. You know, there is no Swanee River. There They've been, been singing about it for years. No, they don't sing much that Swanee River there. <laughs> they don't sing about much in, in Russia about, about anything, do they? No. 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 What did you do in Russia? I was there run? in the lumber business. You were in the lumber business? Yeah. I used to buy the timber from the government and uh, work mountains and I shipped them over to Germany. Oh. And they invented lumber, didn't they? They, uh, the they invented, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they do, do a remarkable job over there. Now, Navak, uh, how, old, uh, how old did you say you were? Seventy-seven. Well, you're a very young-looking man. You're seventy-seven, and Mary is uh, eighty-two. Uh, eighty-two. Why, he's barely dry behind the ears. Huh? <laughs> Mary, are you going to let five years stand between you and uh, ultimate happiness? No. I'm happy as I am. <laughs> yes, but think of poor Navak. <laughs> Alas, poor <laughs> Navak, I knew him well. <laughs> What kind of a woman are you looking for, Navak? I am not looking for anything. <laughs> These kids are nuts about each other. <laughs> well, stop beating around the bush. If you're not looking for a woman, how do you expect to get married? I don't expect to get married. Playing hard to get, eh? <laughs> How devilish clever these Russians are. <laughs> we see through your little game, Koenig. <laughs> Mary and I weren't born yesterday, you know. <laughs> Navak, why are you so sour on matrimony? Come clean now. Did something happen when you were a youth? Uh, Pretend uh, you're lying on my couch and I'm taking notes. When I was about 40 years in this country, the women began to shoot their husbands and quite few cases. <laughs> And the jurors freed them every time. And I didn't want to make a shooting gallery for women. Well, uh, every woman doesn't carry a rod, you know. How are you with a gun, Mary? Do you think you could plug him at 50 paces? No, he'd be perfectly safe in front of my gun. Well, how are you with a bow and arrow? Not too sad either. Have you ever come close to uh, marriage? Uh, once in a leap year, a girl proposed. Where? In a leap year, a girl <laughs> proposed to me. In a in leap year, the, where is that? Is that? Uh, that was in the city of Brotherly Love, Philadelphia. Oh, in Philadelphia? Yeah, but I liked the girl also, but uh, I disliked her, the mother, the future mother-in-law. <laughs> The old lady have a rifle? Or? No, didn't have what Why I didn't you need. like her? Why didn't you like the mother? Uh, I, in general, I am uh, against mothers-in-law. <laughs> now, what happened? Uh, you met this girl and you yeah. were enamored of her? Yeah, and the father was... I liked the father very much. Uh -huh. But uh, I told him, that on account of your wife, uh, she will always give us trouble. So he wanted to induce me that he will keep her away from us. Did so, he like his wife? Yeah, I don't know, because I asked him once. He used to take her, wherever he goes, he used to take her alone. So I asked him once, why is it that wherever you go, you take her alone? He says, uh, Sonny, it is better than to kiss her goodbye. <laughs> Certainly a logical answer, all right. <laughs> well, it's been pleasant talking to you two, and Navak, if you should get married, be sure to let us know, huh? Right. Or, or to be sure to let Mary know. Huh? <laughs>
You haven't got a mother-in-law, have you? No. 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 See, you'd be perfectly safe there. <laughs> now, in just one minute, you're going to play your bet your life for a chance at the $2,000 question. Right now, please stop making sheep's eyes at each other and listen to some wonderful advice. Take the five-mile trial. Take the five-mile trial. Visit your DeSoto Plymouth dealers tomorrow for a five-mile trial in a new DeSoto. Behind the wheel of the DeSoto Fire Dome 8 or the DeSoto Power Master 6, you'll be able to judge for yourself the real meaning of DeSoto full power steering. Making sharp turns, driving over the roughest roads, you'll have absolute control and with almost no effort. When the car is standing or when you're trying to park, you'll find you can turn the steering wheel with one finger. It's as easy as that. You see, DeSoto power steering is not partial, but full power steering. It works for you not just some of the time, but all of the time. It's one of the greatest advances in driving convenience and safety in years. Try DeSoto full power steering in the new DeSoto Power Master 6 or the mighty DeSoto Fire Dome 8 with the 160 horsepower V8 engine. Go to your DeSoto Plymouth dealers tomorrow and take the five-mile trial. And when you do, tell them Groucho sent you. And remember, all dealers who sell DeSoto also sell Plymouth, the low-priced car, most like high-priced cars. All right, now let's see how you work together as a team. Uh, Fire Dome Fenneman, <laughs> would you mind explaining the rules? You uh, bet as much of your $20 as you want on each of four questions, and the couple that earns the most money gets a chance at the $2,000 DeSoto Plymouth question later on in the show. Here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. From our list of 20 categories, you selected number 19, weights and measures. Is that right? Yes. Here's your first question. How much of the 20 are you going to bet and talk right out loud? How much? 19? 19. 19. 19. Okay. How many feet in a statute mile? In what? In a mile. How many feet in a mile? A straight mile. In a mile. In a mile. mile. 5,280. That's right. 5,280. <laughs> well, you're on your way. You have $39. Remember, you're going for $2,000 tonight. Now, how much of the $39 will you try this time? 38. 38. All right. How many square feet to the square yard? 144. How many square feet to the square yard? Now, think it over. Nine square feet, one square that's, yard. That's right. Nine is right. <laughs> <laughs> You now have $77. Here's your third question. How much of the 77 be will you go for? 78. You only, you only have... Se- <laughs> oh, 76. Even I can't do that. <laughs> if you want to bet 78, you'll have to give me a dollar. <laughs> no, 76. 76. All right, how many ounces of the pound? This is Abbott of Poise weight. How many ounces? Uh, 16. 16 is right. <laughs> You now have climbed to one hundred and fifty-three dollars. And this is your last chance to be the other couples. How much of the hundred and fifty-three? One hundred and fifty-three. Shoot the works. Here we go. How many pints of the gallon? Eight. Eight. Eight? Yes. All right. Eight is right. <laughs> and you wind up with three hundred and six dollars. Thanks That's and good fine. luck from the Desoto Plymouth Thank dealers. Thank you so much. Groucho, we invited some women who work at the draft board to the program tonight. Just before we went on the air, Mrs. Helen Hummel was chosen. Her partner is a gentleman from our audience, Mr. Paul Grimes. And here they come. Folks, meet Groucho Marx. Welcome to your Bet Your Life. Say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common word, something you see every day. Mrs. Uh, Helen Hummel and Mr. Paul Grimes, eh? Helen, uh, Mrs. Hummel, uh, where are you from? I'm from uh, Indiana, Hartford City. Mr. Paul Grimes? Where, where are you from? I was born in uh, Moberly, Missouri. That is not exactly in Moberly, about four miles out on Coon Creek. <laughs> but you actually were born, though, huh? Are you married? Not yet. Well, well you should have been here a while ago. <laughs> Your name is a Navac Cornick, is it? <laughs> have you got a girlfriend? I sure have. It's swollen. Are you sure it isn't puppy love? How serious is this romance? Have you proposed to her? I proposed to her three times. Kind of pressing your luck, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> Never whip a tired horse, you know. <laughs> when did you do this proposing? Well, the first time was uh, about 27 years ago. 
Then she's just making up her mind now? Where did you ever find such an impetuous girl? I found her in Mobile, Missouri. In the creek? No. What happened when you proposed to her 27 years ago? She married another man. <laughs> you proposed and she married another fellow, huh? What's Are you mean? always that lucky? Uh, what happened then? Well, that marriage didn't work out, so a few years later I proposed again. What happened the second time you proposed? Same thing. <laughs> Paul, it seems that every time you open your mouth, you put somebody else's foot in it. <laughs> well, congratulations. What stage is this romance in at present? Well, I proposed again. Good for you. Who's she going to marry this time? <laughs> Me. Well, that'll teach you to let sleeping dogs lie, Paul. <laughs> Let's see now. What, what is it you do, uh, Helen? I'm with. I'm the head of the Selective Service Local Board 100, Hollywood Draft Board. Dra the Draft Board? Yes. Well, if I've said anything to offend you here, I... Uh... <laughs> As a matter of fact, it doesn't affect me at all. If Grant couldn't get me, I doubt if you'll be able to swim. <laughs> what sort of work do you do, Mr. Grimes? I'm information assistant to the director of the County Air Pollution Control District, Los Angeles County. Oh, a night watchman, huh? <laughs> Could you make that a little shorter and break it down into small words so I would know what you're talking about? Well, I handle public relations for Air Pollution Control District. Well, some of my relations are polluted, but I have nothing to do with it. <laughs> Could you make it still shorter? What, what are you talking about? Smog. <laughs> Smog, eh? No wonder she wouldn't marry you. She couldn't see you. <laughs> now, in your own smoggy way, just what do you do? Well, I work for the Air Pollution Control District. I give out the information about it. In that case, I'd like some information. What are you doing about smog? Getting rid of it. Well, I don't object to you getting rid of the smog in Los Angeles, but I wish you wouldn't blow it all to Beverly Hills. <laughs> Technically, just what is this uh, smog, Paul? It's a complex matter of dust, smoke, fumes, gases, vapors, a lot of things that combine in the atmosphere. Has your outfit investigated the exact cause of smog? Well, it's all these things, plus the uh, what the chemists call the unsaturated hydrocarbons that oxidize in the atmosphere and are held in by a temperature inversion. Well, don't look at me. I seldom do any of that stuff. <laughs> I still don't understand why they call it smog. Smog is a coined word uh, from uh, uh, smoke and fog. Actually, smaze would be a better name for the Los Angeles product. Well, I I'm, I'm happy to see your outfit is doing something about the smog. <laughs> After years of research, you finally decided to call it smaze. <laughs> That's certainly going to get the curtains clean in my house. <laughs> Well, you're a nice couple, and I hope you win lots of money here tonight. And while I think of it, drive the new DeSoto Fire Dome 8. First chance you get, it's a, it's a great car. Now, you're going to play your bet your life. You beat our other couples, and you'll get a chance at the $2,000 question. I can't tell you how much you have to win, but uh, George, Fire Dome 8 is going to remind our listeners. The first couple won $306. And the secret word is close. All right, here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. Each of these men played a prominent part in changing the history of their country. I'll give you the man's name, and you tell what country he was from. Here's your first question. How much are you going to go for? Nineteen. 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 Paul von Hindenburg was a soldier of what country? Germany. Germany is correct. You have $39. Remember, you're going for $2,000. Now, I know how much on you are you going to bet on your second question. Thirty-eight. Thirty-eight. All right, Helen. That's right. Benito Juarez was the leader of what country? Mexico. Mexico is right. You've climbed to $77. Here's your third question. How much of the 77? 76. 76. Leon Trotsky was famous in what country? Russia. Russia is correct. You have $153. And is your last chance to beat the other couples? How much of the 153? 153. 153. From what country was Oliver Cromwell? England. England is right. Where that, Paul? You wind up with $306. Thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. We have a house.
housewife from our audience and a man from the office of the uh, price stabilization here tonight, Groucho. And uh, I'd like you to meet them. Here they are, Mrs. Ola Batsol and Mr. Harvey Webster. Meet Groucho Marx. Well, welcome for the DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Say the secret word and you'll win $100. It's a common word, something you see every day. Mrs. Uh, Ola Batesol. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Huh? <laughs> I don't object to the Batesol. It's the Mrs. that uh, that I find a little disquieting. Mr. Harvey Webster, how do you do? Uh, where are you from? Well, uh, Ventura, California, but actually Southern California. Are you married? Uh... Very much so. Uh -huh. What do you mean by very much so? You, are you happily married? Or... Well, yes. I have seven children. I guess I'm married. <laughs> That's besides the point. Are you happily married? <laughs> Ola Batesol, uh, that's you, huh? Yes. Why is it all the beautiful women have such curious names? Zsa Gabor, <laughs> Rita Ali Khan, Zazu Pitts. <laughs> what kind of a name is this? Ola Batesol? Ola is a Swedish name and Batesol is German. Where are you from, uh, Ola? Houston, Texas. <laughs> That's one of the prettiest parts of Germany, isn't it? <laughs> oh, I, I want to be sure where we stand. Uh, are, you, are you sure you're married? Yes, I'm sure. <laughs> you don't have to be quite so vehement about it. <laughs> What's your husband's first name? Myron. Imagine being married to Myron Bates, oh. I don't think I like this fellow, Ola. Where, where is he now? He's in Canada. Well, wow, now you're talking. <laughs> well, he can stay there as far as I'm concerned. What sort of work does he do? He's one of the country's top wrestlers. <laughs> How far north is he in Canada? <laughs> I mean, is he around Hudson Bay? Hudson <laughs> Bay, man, I really ran the No, I'm, I'm only kidding. Is, is he really a wrestler? Yes, he really is. He is, eh? In that case, to my oldest daughter, Miriam, I leave my building blocks. <laughs> <laughs> and my new DeSoto fire domain. Ola, the first time you ever saw your husband, was it love at first sight? No, no. I thought he was real funny looking. He, <laughs> he weighs... Why do you say that? <laughs> he weighs 325 pounds. Oh, no. He's six foot three, and he has a long black beard. <laughs> Sounds like a buffalo. <laughs> <laughs> what happened on your first day? Did he did he want to wrestle? No, he took me to a wrestling match, and uh, I he was threw real... you in the ring, I suppose. <laughs> no, I was really rather disappointed because uh, when he made his entrance into the ring, I found out that he was the villain. He's just terribly snarls at the people, and they boo and hiss, and he bites their ears. And when the referee isn't looking, he puts these holes on them, and uh, Wraps their legs in the rope, and he's really quite a mean guy. <laughs> I certainly don't blame you for marrying this fellow. He, he sounds irresistible. <laughs> Strange name for a wrestler, isn't it? Uh, Myron Batesell. Most of them have ordinary names like Lord Bliz and Baron Leone. And <laughs> well, terrible he... take. Does your husband have a professional name? Yes, he's called the Cardiff Giant. Well, he's a very famous wrestler, isn't he, the Cardiff Giant? Yes, he is. And you say he's in Canada now? Yes, he's wrestling in Canada now. Uh -huh. And he, he will definitely not be home tonight? No, no, he won't be home tonight. Well, he doesn't scare me anyway. <laughs> If he was in here right now, I'd, I'd set fire to his beard. <laughs> Say, uh, haven't I met you somewhere before? <laughs> Didn't I say hello to you about a week ago? Yeah. Let's see, what was your... Oh, your name was uh, Webster, wasn't That's it? That's right. Webster. What kind of work is it you do? Oh, I'm uh, with the Office of Price Stabilization. Well, I'm glad to have you here. There's a lot I'd like to know about your outfit. How do you uh, control prices? Well, we follow out the mandates or the dictates of Congress and uh, have... Do you have many mandates uh, while your husband's in Canada? <laughs> <laughs> what are some of the items controlled by the OPS? Well, practically everything. 
How about beautiful girls? Do you control them? No, only things that affect the cost of living. <laughs> you don't think beautiful girls affect the cost of living? <laughs> Harvey, you're living in a fool's paradise. <laughs> well, you're nice people, and I'd like to go on talking to you two. But uh, unfortunately, now it's time to play You Bet Your Life. What you have to do is run your 20 bucks into more than our other couples, and you get a chance at the $2,000 question. I can't tell you how much you have to win, but George is going to remind our listeners. Our first and second couples are tied at $306 each. Here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. You selected former Academy Award winners. Here's your first question. How much will you bet? Decide between you and talk real loud. Let's bet 20. 20 bucks. 20 dollars. The lady said so. <laughs> All right. In 1938, the Oscar went to the actress who played a southern belle in the picture Jezebel. What is her name? Betty Davis. Betty Davis is right. <laughs> On your way, you have $40. Remember, you're going for $2,000 tonight. How much of the $40 will you try? Aren't you glad we bet 20 Yes, mm-hmm. but... <laughs> 40 Let's bet. 40 yeah. You have $40. Okay, 40 bucks. $40. Who won the award in 1941 playing Sergeant York? Gary Cooper. Gary Cooper is right. <laughs> you now have $80. Here's your third question. How much of the 80 80 <laughs> 80 bucks. Webster hasn't got any words for this. <laughs> Who won the Oscar in 1945 playing the title role in Mildred Pierce? Uh, Joan Crawford. Joan Crawford. <laughs> you climbed to $160. Is your last chance to beat the other couples. How much are you going to bet? $160. <laughs> you win. All right. Who won the award in 1943 for his acting in The Watch on the Rhine? Paul Henrid. Talk it over now. Who won the award in 1943 for his acting in The Watch on the Rhine? Claude Rains? No, I, I'm sorry. It's Paul Lucas. You had half of it, huh? Uh, it went for a crush, huh? That's a shame. I'm just as sorry as you are, but I'll give you one more question. You get it right, and we bring your winnings up to 25 bucks. Are you ready? Yeah. What fruit is used in grape juice? <laughs> well, I imagine grape. Grant's to him is right. <laughs> well, that means, Groucho, this couple went broke. It means that our first two couples who tied with $306 get the chance at the $2,000 DeSoto Plymouth question in just one moment. Two couples at two. Yeah. Faster service by skilled mechanics. That's what you get at a DeSoto Plymouth dealers. And here's why. The master technicians who service your car are not only thoroughly experienced, but thoroughly trained. They get continual training, supervised by the factory. Recently, for example, more than 6,000 of these DeSoto Plymouth dealer mechanics attended 252 special training schools in all parts of the nation. Under the instruction of factory service executives, these men get additional training in all phases of repair and maintenance and on the newest techniques of automotive service. This continuous training, in addition to their years of experience, naturally makes the skilled mechanics at a DeSoto Plymouth dealers the best qualified men to service your car. It means your car gets the finest care and a real saving to your pocketbook. When you take it where you see the famous sign of better service, the friendly sign of a DeSoto Plymouth dealer. And now here are the winning couples, Groucho, our first two couples who tied for the big question, the chance at the $2,000 DeSoto Plymouth question. Come on in, folks. You'll both get a chance at it. All right, here we go with two couples tied for a chance at the $2,000 question. Now each couple will decide on a single answer and write it down on one of these cards. If both couples get it right, we'll split the money between them. Okay, you have 15 seconds, and here's the question. At Balaclava, a small Russian seaport in the Crimea, there occurred a famous military attack in 1854. This attack is known today in song and story. For $2,000, what is it called? All 
right, I'll take the cards and read them. Well, here is the answer. The charge of the light brigade, so this couple Stop win the big money. You win the Mr. Grimes and the lady from the draft board won. That's right. You win the $2,000. Uh, plus how much in the quiz, George? Uh, $306 in the quiz, Groucho. Uh, you won $2,306. Well, congratulations from the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast. You bet your life. Put it there again. Be sure to tune in again next Wednesday night at the same time for the Groucho Marx Show, when the big question will be worth $1,000. And don't miss Groucho's television show, also presented by the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America. And remember, all dealers who sell DeSoto also sell Plymouth. Two great cars, both products of the Chrysler Corporation. And when you drive in, tell them Groucho sent you. Good night, folks, and remember... See DeSoto, fire don't make tomorrow. Folks, here's a reminder from the National Safety Council. Is safety a habit with you? You bet your life. Transcribed from Hollywood is produced by John Goodell. Directed by Robert Dwan and Bernie Smith. Music by Jerry Fielding. This is George Fenneman signing off for the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast. Ladies and gentlemen, the secret word tonight is paper. P-A-P-E-R. Really? You bet your life. The more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers of America present Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life, the comedy quiz series produced and transcribed from Hollywood. And here he is, the one, the only... He's a waste of time. Oh, that's me. (laughs) Well, here I am again with $1,000 for one of our couples. We asked for some uh, young people to volunteer tonight, Groucho. And Mm -hmm. just before we went on the air, Mrs. Amelia Mendez de Bitterlein, Mr. Bill... Stop (laughs) ad-libbing. I couldn't do it again. And Mr. Bill Bill Albans were selected. And here they are. Folks, meet Groucho Marx. Well, welcome for the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers. <laughs> welcome for the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers. Say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common word, something, something you see every day. Uh, Amelia Mendez, eh? And uh, Bill Albans. Yes, sir. Uh, where are you from, Bill? Charlotte, North Carolina. Charlotte, North Carolina? Yes, sir. How old are you, uh... I'm almost 28. Almost 28. Well, you're a fine-looking lad. Are, are you married? No, sir, I'm not. I'm single. You, uh, do, do you care for the ladies? Oh, yeah, man. I've been crazy about them since I've been that big. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> what did you do about them when you were that big? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll see what I can do for, uh, for you, uh, Bill. Amelia uh, Mendez, uh, D. Bidlin, huh? Where, where are you from? Uh? Panama City, Panama. Oh, from Panama, huh? Yes, well, sir. we rarely had anybody from Panama. Where's your hat? <laughs> now, you know, people all over America are planning their vacations these days. Well, some of them may want to visit Panama. How would you suggest that they go, by ship or by plane? I would suggest that they go by plane because it's faster, and then they could stop in several uh, Central American countries as well as Panama. For example, they could go to Guatemala, to Nicaragua and Costa Rica. You say they'd visit Guatemala? How long would we stay in Guatemala? Overnight or a day. It depends on how much time you have. Just one day in Guatemala? Well, I guess that's right, that old saying. Here today in Guatemala. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> Bill, where do you plan on, on uh, going on your vacation this year? Well, I'm going to try to be in, in Helsinki, Finland. What's your language, Bill? There are ladies present. <laughs> Why would you want to go to Helsinki, Bill? Well, uh, you see, that's where they're going to hold the Olympics this summer. Oh, and what, are you going as a spectator or as a participant? I'm going to try to go as a participant, yes. Oh, well, that's a very great honor to be on the Olympic track team. Have you had much experience? Well, I was on our last Olympic team. Well, congratulations. We're honored to have you. Today. <laughs> Just to be a contestant. <laughs> what event will you win? I was in the uh, hops. What is this, uh, training for pedestrians? <laughs> <laughs> Are you planning on entering the hop, step, and jump this year? No, I'm going to try for our decathlon team this year. Well, what about this fellow up north? The, what's his name? The, <laughs> yeah. You know who I mean? Huh? What's his name? I, I believe know. it's Bob Mathias. Mathias, yeah. yeah. Well, are you going to have to compete against him? <laughs> yes, sir, I think Well, I that's am. tough going, isn't it? Yeah. He's supposed to be one of the greatest since uh, Jim Thorpe and well, uh, Babe Hendrickson, huh? Well, he probably is the greatest, I guess, yeah. yeah. And you have to go up against that? And you don't get any handicap or anything? No. I think you're very foolish. If I were you, I'd go to Panama. <laughs> 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 well, it's been certainly pleasant talking to you two, and I hope you win lots of vacation money here tonight. Of course, in just one minute, you're going to play your bet your life for a chance at the $1,000 question. Right now, I want you to pay close attention to some <laughs> words of special importance. Take the five-mile trial. Take the five-mile trial. Go in tomorrow to see your DeSoto Plymouth dealer and drive the new DeSoto Fire Dome 8 or the famous Power Master 6. Compare the DeSoto Fire Dome 8 with any car on the road today, not just on the straightaway but going up steep hills and through stop-and-go city traffic and under all road conditions. You'll discover the sensational acceleration and reserve power of the new 160-horsepower DeSoto Fire Dome V8 engine at all speeds. It's America's most advanced engine design, giving you more power from every drop of gas and on regular gasoline. DeSoto full power steering takes the work out of driving. And when parking, it makes turning the wheel as easy as dialing a phone. Get the feel of DeSoto's full power steering, the only type of power steering that takes the work out of steering all of the time. Yes, go to your DeSoto Plymouth dealers tomorrow and take the five-mile trial in the spectacular DeSoto Fire Dome 8 or the handsome DeSoto Power Master 6. And remember, all dealers who sell DeSoto also sell Plymouth, the low-priced car, most like high-priced cars. All right, now let's see how well you work together as a team. Uh, Fire Dome Fenneman. Coming. Give him that 160 <coughs> horsepower motor and tell him the rules. All huh? right. You bet as much of your $20 as you want on each of four questions, and the couple that earns the most money gets a chance at the $1,000 DeSoto Plymouth question later on in the show. Uh, let's see how high I can build you $20. Uh, out of our list of 20 categories, you selected number nine, which happens to be cities with names of famous people. All right, now here's your first question. How much will you bet and talk right out loud? $18. $18. All right. Nine. Ohio's largest industrial city bears the same name as one of our former presidents. What is the name of this city? Cleveland. Cleveland. Right. <laughs> And you're on your way with $38. How much of the uh, $38. $38 are you going to risk? I say 37 It's all right. 37 A large city in Maryland was named for the founder of the state. What is the name of this city? Lord Baltimore. Baltimore is right. <laughs> you're climbing. You have $75. Now, here's your third question. How much will you bet? 74 <laughs> 74 okay. What is the name of the Wyoming town founded and named by Buffalo Bill? If you don't know, guess. Wyoming. What is the name of the Wyoming town founded and named by Buffalo Bill? Sh Cheyenne. No, oh. uh, I'm sorry. It's Cody. Cody. C O D Y. And you've dropped down. Buffalo Bill's real name. <laughs> dropped down to one dollar now. Well, here's your last chance to beat the other couples. How much will you bet? Bet the book. <laughs> bet the book. <bug. laughs> The largest city in Kentucky was named for a French king. What is the name of this city? Louisville. Louisville is right. 
And you wind up with $2. Nobody leaves here with $2. I'll give you one more question. You get this right, and we'll bring it up to 25 Who is buried in Grant's tomb? <laughs> General Grant is right. <laughs> Thanks, and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Groucho, we invited some young single... Uh, single. Groucho... Where we... were you last night, <laughs> Groucho, we invited some young single Republicans. You go right home and go to bed early tonight. I will. <laughs> You've got to watch yourself now. <laughs> we invited some and young... And burn the candle at both ends, you know. <laughs> we invited some young single Republicans to the program tonight, along with some young single Democrats. And just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected Miss Shirley Palbaum and Mr. Mike Richardson. And here they are. Folks, meet Groucho Marx. Well, welcome, youngsters, to You Bet Your Life. Say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common word, something you see every day. Shirley uh, Palbaum, eh? Right. And uh, Mike Richardson. That's right. I presume that's you, huh, Mike that's Richardson? That's my name. A young Republican and a, and a young Democrat. Mike, uh, I think it'd be nice if you two held hands. Would you mind uh, holding hands for just a second? Oh, go on. Sure. Hold hands with him. <laughs> Now, keep them that way. Don't let go. We're too nervous. <laughs> it's the old joke. If they let go, they'll kill each other. <laughs> How old are you, Shirley? Well, uh, it isn't I look answer. older than it I isn't, am. It isn't obligatory. You don't have to answer. You look like a real young, attractive, pretty girl. Thank you. How old are you? <laughs> How old are you, Mike? I'm 31. Now, let's see. You're the Democrat. Is that right, Mike? No, sir. That is not right. <laughs> That's becoming fighting words You don't have to get angry You'd think I'd call him a wife beater You must be the Democrat, eh? Sure. I certainly am <laughs> Look how pleased she is you think I'd call her Marilyn Monroe <laughs> How active a Republican are you, Mike? Groucho, I'm the president of the Westwood Young Republicans. What sort of work do you do, Mike? I'm the purchasing agent for the Hardman Tool and Engineering Company. We build aircraft chairs. What is your job, Shirley? Uh, I'm a legal secretary. I work for Richard Richards, who's chairman of the Democratic County Central Committee. Uh, you're not married? No. For a Democrat, you sound more like an independent. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Mike? You married? No, I'm not. A single Republican and a single Democrat, eh? You two should get married by all means. You could have your own third party. <laughs> <laughs> now, what's the purpose of the young Republicans, uh? Well, we try to supply a tra uh, transportation to the polls. We do babysitting on Election Day. We uh, stuff envelopes, make sure that thousands of cop pieces of... Is that of all you stuff? <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure you just stuffed the envelopes? <laughs> have a Quite Freudian sure. slip, have I ever heard? <laughs> what do you mean you provide transportation? Well, on election day, I'd say some of our members make as many as 20 trips to the polls. <laughs> well, don't the Democrats object? <laughs> or are they busy making 21 trips to the polls? <laughs> I'm strictly neutral in this battle because it <clears throat> happens I'm a Whig. <laughs> <laughs> Except on windy days when it blows off. <laughs> well, let's hear, could we have a little sample campaigning? Uh, Mike, give me all the reasons I should vote the Republican uh, ticket this year. And take all the time you want. You've got 30 seconds. Go ahead. <laughs> I would say you should vote the Republican ticket, first of all, for the obvious reasons you see in the newspaper. You said paper, oh so you win 50 bucks, and your partner here, your mortal enemy, also gets $50. <laughs> you can buy a lot of votes with this money. <laughs> well, let's campaign some more. <laughs> it won't do you any good. The duck has run out of money. <laughs> He's clean out of money. All right, let's hear the campaign speech. 30 seconds. <laughs> Hold my hand. <laughs> The young Republican is now on a different campaign. <laughs> and a much smarter one, if you ask me. Well, Mike, that was a perfect political speech. <laughs> I slept through every minute. 
Shirley, girly. <laughs> What's your turn now? You got half a minute to convince me I should vote the Democratic ticket. Now, well, go I've, ahead. I've always been a Democrat, and I uh, expect to remain a Democrat. I think the Democrats are for the working people, which is quite evident today. The, the employment has uh, risen to... Uh, Great heights in the Hoover administration. We had the uh, he had depression. Now we've got poor old Hoover. He's been out of office 25 years, and they're still hollering at him. <laughs> it was a very impressive speech, though, Shirley. Mom. You have beautiful teeth. <laughs> well, enough of this petty talk about the fate of the nation. Let's get down to important matters. You two already are, I notice. Huh? <laughs> what kind of a girl are you looking for, Mike? Well, I'm looking for what I would consider a wonderful girl, the type that I would think as much of on Sunday as possibly on Saturday night. <laughs> I'm looking for the type who would revere me. <laughs> That's a new approach. Yeah. I've never heard that. <laughs> now, how would Shirley differ on Sunday than she would on Saturday night? I think she'd be fine on Sunday. <laughs> what about Saturday night? Just as good. He's a politician, all right. <laughs> Now, suppose she happens to be a Democrat, this uh, dream girl that you're pursuing. Hmm? Well, I hope that in time we might sort of think alike politically. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you will, my boy. You're going to make an excellent Democrat. <laughs> Congratulations, kid, and I'll pronounce you man and wife. And Shirley, you can be the Speaker of the House. Thank you. You can run things on the floor, Mike, like the vacuum cleaner. <laughs> and may you have lots of little planks in your platform. <laughs> well, it's been very nice talking to you two, and I hope in November the best man wins, even if it's a woman. <laughs> By the way, there's one thing that's definitely a winner, and no matter what party you belong to, and that's the new DeSoto Fire Don't Make. It's a real great car. All right, uh, forget your differences now. You're going to work together for a chance at the $1,000 question. You beat our other couples, and the chance is yours. Is that fair enough? Fair enough. Fenneman, remind our listeners how things stand up here. The girl from Panama and her partner won $2. And the secret word is paper. Here we go. Let's see how I can build you $20. You selected resorts of the United States. These resorts and towns are visited by thousands of tourists each year. Here's your first question. How much will you bet? Talk up. We're going to bet the whole $20. I Republicans see. are shooting the works this year. <laughs> they're not only shooting the works, they're shooting the Democrats. <laughs> All right, in what state do you find Atlantic City? New Jersey. New Jersey is correct. And you're on your way with $40. Remember, you're going for $1,000 tonight. Now, how much of the $40 are you going to risk now? Forty dollars. Forty dollars. In what state do you find Cape Cod? Massachusetts. Massachusetts. You climbed to eighty dollars. Here's your third question. How much of the eighty? The whole thing. The whole works. In what state do you find Sun Valley? Idaho. Idaho is right. <laughs> You now have one hundred and sixty dollars. Is your last chance to beat the other couples? How much of the hundred and sixty are you going to try? The works. In what state do you find the Catskills? New York. New York is correct. <laughs> and you wind up with three hundred and twenty dollars. Well, thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. <laughs> Mike is cooked. I can see it in her eyes. <laughs> we asked for, um, for married couples with interesting backgrounds and stories to volunteer tonight. And just before we went on the air, Mr. and Mrs. John Caldwell were chosen. And here they come, folks. Meet Groucho Marx. Welcome for the DeSoto Plymouth Dealer. Say the secret word and you'll win $100. It's a common word, something you see every day. Mr. and Mrs. John Caldwell, eh? John, where are you from? Um, I was born in uh, Fort Worth, Texas. How old are you, John? I'm uh, 33 years old. Mrs. Uh, Caldwell? That's you, huh? Yes. What's your first name? Mary. Mary. Well, John and Mary, eh? Where did you ever get such unusual names? <laughs> <laughs> Where were you born, Mary? Uh, Yorkshire, England. Oh. Yorkshire? Were you born inside of a pudding? 
<laughs> if you're from England and John's from Texas, uh, where did you meet him? Well, uh, I met him down under. <laughs> can, can Doc? Well, no, in uh, Sydney, Australia. Oh, you mean the Antipodes, huh? Mary, where did you get married? In Texas or down under Sydney? Uh, <laughs> no, we were married in Sydney, but um, the day we were to be married, John was up in Brisbane, and that's 600 miles away. John was 600 miles away? John is no fool. <laughs> Where were you heading, Johnny? Towards Alaska? <laughs> no, uh, I was um, up in Sydney trying, or up in Brisbane trying to get a plane down to Sydney for my marriage that afternoon. Where did you go on your honeymoon? Well, that's the sad part. Uh, <laughs> we didn't, As uh, a rule, it isn't. <laughs> However, I'm willing to listen to anything. <laughs> we didn't have a honeymoon because. Uh, uh, three days later, I shipped out in the Merchant Marine. How long were you separated from your bride? Oh, a long time. Uh, this ship that I left on was wrecked up in New Guinea, and then I was put aboard another ship that went uh, around the world and uh, uh, touched in about every port except an Australian port, and eventually I wound up in New York City more than a year after having seen my bride and naturally feeling very cheated and wanting to get back down there. Well, what happened? Here you are in New York, and she was in Australia. <laughs> Well, uh, she couldn't get over here, and I couldn't get down there on a ship, so I thought if I went down to Panama, I could get a British ship, but when I got down there, I couldn't, so I bought a little uh, 29-foot sailboat and thought I'd try, uh, you know, sailing to Australia. Well, tell us about your <coughs> boat trip. How many other lunatics were aboard? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's sad, too. I was alone. <laughs> you were alone? Yeah. Um, well, what about at night? Did you have to sleep? Well, yeah, but that little boat did all right. Uh, I'll tell you about it. I, I never. The trouble uh, was that I'd never sailed uh, a boat before. Uh, well, that's certainly the right equipment to go around the world. <laughs> but, uh, I think a fellow is crazy to have any experience in a thing like that. Uh, Just buy a boat and sail around the ocean. Huh? I had. Uh, I had a book on how you to... You were foolish to do it in a boat, though. <laughs> you should have done it on a log or something. <laughs> a pogo stick or something, yeah. you know, exciting. I, uh, I had a couple of books aboard, though. I had a book on how to sail. Well, and... that's good. That's, good. <laughs> that's really all yeah. you need. <laughs> no, because... Now, what about at night when you wanted to sleep? What'd you do? Well, I had a book on how to navigate. <laughs> <laughs> well, you read this while you were sleeping? <laughs> Did you have a motor on this thing? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Gasoline yeah. motor, and did it work all right all the way through? After five days, it conked out. Pulled a shark aboard, and he banged away the cockpit and got his head on the engine and broke spark plugs off. And I mentioned that I had sails. And... But you had the shark then for company, didn't you? I could just shark play like a card. Play, play, card. I just, 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 I mean, I mean, no, uh, this wasn't a card shark, huh? <laughs> You know, you meet them on boats, you know. And, uh, <laughs> You gotta be very careful when you're traveling. <laughs> so? Well, I got past the Perlis Islands nearby Panama and past the Galapagos, that's a thousand miles away, and past the Marquesas, that's four thousand miles out into the Pacific. But I had some uh, tough luck after leaving the Marquesas. I ran into a hurricane and uh, I was dismasted. Of course, I was, all my, most of my food was destroyed, my compass was broken, the sextant was no good, and, uh, and uh, putting the boat under a jury rig, I just drifted uh, well, helplessly. How, how, long, how long did you drift? Uh, 40, 49 days adrift in the South Pacific looking and for land. Did you have enough food uh, and water for this uh, uh, emergency? Well, uh, the uh, food uh, gave out very soon and uh, of course you start getting hungry and uh, I got so desperate I ate the moss off the side of the boat and uh, I finally found a jar of Vaseline and that really wasn't so bad and uh, <laughs> face cream and uh, I made a slingshot and knocked down a seabird but I was using nuts and bolts from the engine and ran out of nuts and bolts. <laughs> uh, uh, and of course by that time things uh, were getting to... Getting get pretty involved, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> up, to, up to then it was a picnic, huh? <laughs> There's one thing I want to know. Did you live through this ordeal? <laughs> and if not, where are you now? Uh, own island of Tuvatha in the exploring islands of eastern Fiji. Yeah. And finally they took me off to a uh, copper schooner and then uh, to the main island and I connected with a bomber to Australia. But um, 
Of course, when I made this date with Mary at the time I left Panama, I told her I was leaving on the smallest boat I'd ever been on with the smallest crew, and I'd be there in six or seven months while I was three months late when I got there. I bet she was pretty angry, too, huh? <laughs> well, you've had enough adventures to last a dozen lifetimes. You realize, of course, you could have avoided all this trouble if you'd met each other at Catalina. <laughs> <laughs> Although, don't think you can't get in trouble in Catalina. <laughs> Well, you're a nice couple, and I hope you win lots of money tonight. Because right now you're going to play your bet your life for a chance at a $1,000 question. Are you ready? Sure, sure. All you got to do is run your $20 no more than our other couples. I can't tell you how much you have to win, but George is going to remind <coughs> our listeners. The young Democrat and the young Republican are ahead with $320. You selected nautical times as your category. Here's your first question. How much will you bet? Uh, all, all of it. it huh? All of it. What is the after part of a ship called? Stern. Stern is right. You have forty dollars. You remember you're going for a thousand dollars tonight. How much of the thirty dollars will you try oh, this? Forty. Time? Forty dollars. All of it. Forty dollars. I'm the skipper on the boat, but. <laughs> what is it called when you change the course of a vessel by shifting the position of the sails? Tack. Coming about. Tack or tacking. That's right. You keep on. You now have eighty dollars. Uh, How much you betting? The whole thing? Yes. <coughs> what do you call the ship's diary or journal? The log. Logbook is right. <laughs> you find the one hundred and sixty dollars. And it's your last chance to beat the other couples. How much of the hundred and sixty? All of it. All of it. What is the left side of a ship called? Port. Port is right. <laughs> You wind up with $320, and that means that you're tied with the young Democrat and the young Republican who also have $320, and you'll both get a chance at the $1,000 DeSoto Plymouth question in just one minute. Yeah. Repair bills are the price you pay for not lubricating your car properly, and you can avoid so many costly repairs by driving your car into a DeSoto Plymouth dealer's for a lubrication checkup every thousand miles. Depend on it. You'll get more than just an ordinary grease job, more than just a change of oil in the crankcase. The men at your DeSoto Plymouth dealer's work to exacting factory specifications, and that's your assurance of a proper, complete lubrication job. In fact, no matter what the job, from an engine tune-up to a major repair, you'll get the same thoroughgoing attention because your DeSoto Plymouth dealer knows your car best. His master technicians are thoroughly experienced and trained in factory methods. They use the finest tools and equipment available. And if your car should need parts, your DeSoto Plymouth dealer can supply you immediately with the right factory-approved parts. So whether you're interested in a lubrication job or a repair job, big or small, you can be sure of this. You'll get top service. Fast, efficient, and courteous service wherever you see the friendly sign of a DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Well, here come the two couples who are tied for our big question tonight, Groucho, the young Democrat and the young Republican, and Mr. and Mrs. Caldwell. Come on in here, folks. Get in here all together and... Uh, put... Here's where you all sail the seven seas. Uh, each couple, uh, it says on our card here, Groucho, will decide on a single answer and write it down on one of the cards they have in their hands. Now, if both couples get it right, they'll split the money between them. Okay? You have 15 seconds, and here is the question. In 1894, a French army officer was found guilty of betraying army secrets and was sentenced to Devil's Island. Through the efforts of Emil Zola and others, his case aroused public opinion, and he later was pardoned. For $1,000, what is the name of this celebrated French officer? Huh? You folks, uh, no. nothing there? No answer? No. Let's see the answer. 
The correct answer is Alfred Dreyfus. Oh, of course. <laughs> That's pretty easy, too. Well, you lost the big money, but uh, how much did they win in the quiz, George? Well, they went the limit, $320 each. Well, congratulations, and thanks to both of you and to all of you and to all of our contestants on the show tonight. Okay. Tune in again next Wednesday night at the same time for the Groucho Marx Show. And don't miss Groucho's television show, also presented by the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America. And remember, all dealers who sell DeSoto also sell Plymouth. Two great cars, both products of the Chrysler Corporation. And when you drive in, tell them Groucho sent you. Good night, folks, and remember... See DeSoto, fire don't make... Tomorrow... Folks, here's a reminder from the National Safety Council. Don't stick your neck out in traffic. You Bet Your Life, transcribed from Hollywood, is produced by John Goodell, directed by Robert Dwan and Bernie Smith, music by Jerry Fielding. This is George Fenneman signing off for the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast. <laughs> word tonight is light. L-I-G-H-T. Really? You bet your life. And here he is, the one, the only... That's me, Groucho Marx. again with a paltry thousand dollars. A sailor from the Coast Guard and his partner and army officer's daughter flipped me last week for six thousand dollars. So tonight we're starting over poor but happy. <laughs> uh, who's, who's first to try in this holocronade tonight, uh, Mr. Fenneman? <laughs> well, we invited some airline pilots to the program tonight, Groucho, and just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected Mr. Boyd O'Donnell. His partner, selected from the audience, is Miss Irene Merlin, a ship's nurse, and here they are. Folks, meet Groucho Marx. Well, Hello, welcome. Okay. Say the secret word and you'll divide $100. It's a common word, something you see every day. Uh, Irene uh, Merlin, is that right? That's right, Groucho. That's a lovely name. Where are you from, Irene? Well, I was born in Proctor, Minnesota. Uh-huh. You're the uh, pilot, uh, Mr. Uh, Boyd O'Donnell, huh? That's right. Uh, where are you from, uh, Boyd? I'm from originally Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Uh-huh. Are you married? No. The kind of a pilot I like to meet. He's got his feet on the ground. <laughs> Irene, uh, you're not married either? No. Just checking, you know. <laughs> you think you could get interested in a fellow like me? Well, I think you're rather premature, Groucho. No, I was born in the regulation time. <laughs> you mean there's no chance for me at all, Irene? Oh, no. Well, good night, Irene. <laughs> Boyd is casting sheep's eyes at the I mean, Who do you work for, Boyd? I work for the Flying Tiger Line. Well, make up your mind. Which is it, a lion or a tiger? No, a Flying Tiger Line, L-I-N-E. Oh. That's what I like to see in a pilot. Good spelling. <laughs> uh, well, what is it you do, Irene? You say you're a nurse? Well, I'm a ship's nurse, Groucho. So what's the matter with the old tub? <laughs> is she seasick? What's the, what's the name of your patient? SS President Cleveland. Why do they always call a ship a, a she, don't they? Why is that? Well, uh... Why do they? I why, guess... why are they, I mean? Can I speak now? <laughs> yeah, I'll shut up for a while. <laughs> every skipper, every captain is a male, and whether a ship is called a he, a she, or an it, it has to take the place of a captain's affection. 
Well, there's no point in getting angry about it. Either. <laughs> I'm trying to be as benevolent as all get out here. <laughs> now, who owns the president, Cleveland? American president, Larry. Where do you travel on your ship besides fore and aft and port and starboard? Well, Pretty nautical stuff, eh? <laughs> a vast air, mate. Does that do anything to you, Irene? Terrific. <laughs> Does nothing to me, eh? <laughs> well, anyway, where do you travel? Well, we make a complete tour of the Orient, Grad. So we go to L.A. and then Hawaii. What? Complete tour of the Orient. You go to L.A. What's that? Heard this town called many things. From San Francisco. Oh, I see. From San Francisco to Los Angeles, every other trip. Mm -hmm. From there, we go to Hawaii and then Japan, China. You go Australia. to where? What was the other place? Hawaii. I'm all right. How are you? I always, <laughs> I always say that if anybody says Hawaii. Japan. And it never gets a laugh either. <laughs> but it's something to live with. <laughs> Irene, you're not married, and neither is Hot Shot Charlie over here, right? No. Would you, uh, would you be interested in a flying tiger? Well, it would be a change. I won't ask you what it's a change from. We'll just let it go with that. Thank you. Well, maybe I can arrange it. Do you like to fly? Well, frankly, Raj, I've never been off the ground. Irene, you old ship's nice. You, your anchor's dragging. <laughs> Tell me. How would you like to ride in uh, in Boyd's uh, plane? I think I'd like it. Boyd, would you like to have a passenger like Irene on your next trip? Couldn't take her. Well, it's possible she couldn't take very much of you either, Boyd. <laughs> We're a very friendly trio, don't you think? <laughs> couldn't take her. That's what I like in a pilot romance. I assume you mean you don't want her on your plane, and as a representative of American womanhood, I demand an explanation. <laughs> Gosh, it isn't that. It's that, um... It isn't it, what? Well, it isn't that uh, we can't take her. I mean, we're not, for, we're not allowed by the CAA to, to fly. What's the CAA? That's the Civil Aeronautics Administration. How would they know about it? Well, uh, <laughs> we only fly freight, you see, domestically, and we're not allowed. <laughs> Some pretty fair freight there, I'd say. Well, you two make a wonderful couple. And I hope you have many happy little seaplanes. All right, now let's see how you make out in the quiz. Uh, Mr. Fenneman. Yes. I used to call him George, but we got so many complaints. <laughs> he says, uh, we got letters saying, what do you call this guy Fenneman for? Call him Mr. Fenneman or George. So that re accounts for the kind of dignity that we now have in the show. Uh, Fenneman. Uh, <laughs> explain the rules. Huh? All right. Uh, you bet as much of your twenty dollars. Fenneman you doesn't laugh at me; he gets bounced. <laughs> <laughs> you bet as much of your twenty dollars. <laughs> There's nothing a man won't do to retain a job. <laughs> you bet as much of your twenty dollars as you want on each of four questions, and the couple that earns the most money gets a chance at the thousand dollar question at the end of the show. All right, now let's see how high you can bet your twenty dollars. You selected what's the number? Uh, how much are you going to bet of your twenty dollars? Let's bet fifteen. Okay. How many blind mice? Three. Three. Three is right. <laughs> Some rat out there started the applause. <laughs> you're on your way with thirty-five dollars. Remember, you're going for thousand dollars tonight. Now, how much of your thirty-five are mm. you going to risk? Thirty-four fifty. Thirty-four fifty. Huh? Wow. You're betting. Uh, okay. How many leagues under the sea? Seven. Seven. Twelve. 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 Think it over. Twelve. Talk it over. Let's discuss it. Let's talk. Twelve. Seven. Fourteen. I'm sorry. Oh. It's twenty thousand. Oh, how awesome. You have fifty cents. <laughs> Here's your third question. Now, how much of the fifty cents are you going to bet? <laughs> now, don't go crazy now. <laughs> My friend says 49 cents. <laughs> you still your friend, Irene? Indeed, he is. Well, that shows your money isn't everything. Okay. How many men on a dead man's chest? Say it out loud. Seven. No, I'm sorry. It's 15. <laughs> You've got one cent left. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now, here's your last chance.
has to be the other cover. <laughs> We'll go completely off. You're going the whole penny? We'll go the whole penny. We'll go completely It's your last chance to beat the other couples now. You're betting a whole cent. How many horsemen of the apocalypse? Um, three. No, I'm sorry, four. <laughs> Say, Groucho, let's give him another question. Huh? <laughs> we can't let you go away flat broke like that. I'm going to give you one more question. If you get it right, you win $10. So think hard, and I'll help from the audience. Who was buried in Grand Tomb? Oh, Grand. <laughs> we invited. I bet to... they make a fat living on quiz shows. Those two. <laughs> I hear they go from quiz shows to quiz show, cleaning up all of them. <laughs> Groucho, we invited some studio uh, location uh, men to the show tonight. And just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected Mr. Jack Lawton. His partner is a housewife from the audience, Mrs. Elsa Hansen. Folks, meet Groucho Marx. How do you do? How do you do? Welcome, welcome, kid. <laughs> welcome to your bet your life. Say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common word, something you see every day. You're a housewife, uh, Elsa? Yeah, I'm housewife. I'm running for lumberjack boarding house. Oh, gee, I wouldn't think so. I thought you were a toe dancer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, where are you from, Elsa, old girl? I'm from Western Minnesota. That's uh, that's farthest stop northwestern Minnesota. Um, no more road and no more railroad. No more road and no more railroad? Yes, that's sir. the name of the town you come from? Vinton. Oh, Vinton, huh? Yes, sir. Well, how is it in the summer? Summer is wonderful. Good fishing. Good fishing, huh? Mm hmm And Mr. Uh, Jack London, huh? Lawton. Lawton, yeah. You're the location man? Yes, sir. Now, what is a location man? Well, a location man is a sort of an explorer for a motion picture company. I see. Well, I've done a little exploring around the studios myself. Mm -hmm. Never had much luck, though. <laughs> Where are you from, Jack? Uh, Philadelphia. Philadelphia? Yes. How long have you been out here, well, I came out here originally in 1915. Mm -hmm. I've been out Universal practically ever since. That's a fine joint out there, isn't it? That Universal joint out there. <laughs> <laughs> I try anything. You can't see. <laughs> a joke may jump up from any place. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> now, Jack, as a location man, just what do you do? Well, usually find locations for the company to shoot different parts of the valley out here and around the surrounding country. Well, pretend I'm a big producer and I'm spending millions on a picture about Africa. Now, uh, where should I shoot it? Oh, Africa. <laughs> they pay him $1,000 a week to answer questions like this. <laughs> Suppose I don't want to go to Africa. Now, find me a good location around here. What do you suggest? Oh, the San Fernando Valley. San Fernando Valley uh, yes. is the equivalent of Africa? Well, you can find most anything out there. <laughs> now, let's get uh, located again. Yeah. Tell me, what are some of the odd places you've had to find in California? Well, Besides Hollywood on a foggy night. <laughs> well, we found the French Riviera up around Santa Barbara. We found the White Cliffs of Dover at Portuguese Bend. And we found Italy right back in the Chatsworth Mountains there. Well, how closely do these places actually resemble the original? Why, Chatsworth there it looks more like Italy and Italy itself. I see. Have you ever been to Italy? No. Well, then how do you know what it looks like? Well, I've seen lots of pictures of Italy. Which ones, for example? Well, a bell for a dono and several other pictures. Where'd they make them? Chatsworth. <laughs> You. For a moment, I thought you were a paw flusher. <laughs> what sort of work does your husband do, Mrs. Hanson? I don't have no horse, and I've been rid of 19 years. Oh, that's why you were eyeing me up before. That's what I did. That's what I did. <laughs> now, did anything unusual ever happen in your boarding house that you could tell us about, Mrs. Hanson? Yeah, so I remember I went three years to go to California. Oh, you've been here? Oh, no, not California, I mean Florida. Oh. So, 
Didn't I say anything? Well, not much, Shepard. Yeah. Except that it's much warmer here than yeah, it is in Florida. I know, I know. I like it better here. Oh, you better. You yeah. want to win any money here tonight. Huh? <laughs> I was only one less dad, and he didn't took his stuff and went to the other morning house. I said, Joe, you better hurry up now. I go in the morning. He says, now, Mrs. Hanson, when you go away, you say, so I'm going to die. I say, oh, Joe, I can't be here taking care of you. I say, you don't going to die anymore now, and I'm away, and you can go to the other morning house. And you know he died. And I, I said, I feel <laughs> trick to play on the boarding house. <laughs> now, you're going to play your bet your life. You beat our other two couples, you'll get a chance at the $1,000 question. I can't tell you how much the first couple won, but... <laughs> I'll give you a hint. They didn't win all the money. Oh. <laughs> but Mr. Fenneman, sometimes known as George, is going to remind our listeners. The pilot and the ship's nurse lost all their money... So these people have a clear field. Here we go. Now, let's see how high I can bid you $20. How much of the 20 are you going to bet? 15. Yeah, 15 million. 15, 15, 15 dollars. dollars. You selected, name the state. Here's your first question. You're going to bet $15. As late as 1947, we were acquiring national parks. The last being the Everglades. In what state is this national park? Florida. Florida is right. <laughs> Start, you have $35. I have a hunch that you're going to beat the first couple. <laughs> Remember, you're going for $1,000 tonight. Now, how much of the $35 are you going to bet? Yeah. Mm -hmm. $25. $25. In Hannibal, overlooking the Mississippi, there's a statue of Mark Twain. In what state is this statue? Missouri. Missouri is right. <laughs> $60. You're sharp as a tack, and here's your third question. How much will you bet? We bet 50. Yes. You're going to bet 50. 50. On July 8, 1833, the Liberty Bell tolled for the last time. In what state did the bell last ring? Um, Talk it over, now. In what state? In, that was in... Uh, I'm sorry, it's uh, Pennsylvania. Uh, they now have $10. Well, you're down <laughs> to $10. That's a shame. Yeah. Yeah. All right, here's your last chance to beat the other couples. How much of the ten are you going to bet? Well, bet it all. Bet it all. The Creoles are the descendant of original French and Spanish settlers. In what state are they located? Louisiana. Louisiana is right. <laughs> Just before we went on the air, Groucho, we found a member of a garden club and a married man in our audience. And here they are, Mrs. Maria Wilkes and Mr. Ian Batchelor. Meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, welcome. Say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common way, some... something you see every day. A married man and a garden club me a, a garden club member. Is that right? Uh, Mr. Ian, is that the way you pronounce it? That's right. Mr. That's Ian right. Batchelor. Yes. I thought you were a married man. I am a married man. Well, how can you be a bachelor if you're married? That's my name. What's your name? Bachelor. <laughs> you know, we can get sued by Abbott and Costello for this. <laughs> Who's on first? Uh, you know? <laughs> Let's see, you're a member of a garden club? I am. No, you. No, I'm a bartender. <laughs> you don't belong to a garden club? No, I don't. Are well, you sure that's a prize-winning crop of spinach you've got on your lips there? What kind of a mustache do you call that, uh, Ian? Oh, I call it an old-fashioned mustache. Well, cut it off and put a cherry on it. I like old-fashioned. <laughs> what is your name? Maria Wilkes. Oh, Maria Wilkes, that's right. Uh, uh, where are you from originally? <laughs> I'm from Italy and South Africa. You were born in Italy? Born in Italy, went and to South Africa, and then came here. How long, were, how old were you when you were in South Africa? Well, that would be telling too much. Why do you object to telling too much? Uh, Women don't like to tell their ages. I didn't ask you your age. I just asked you how old you were when you were in Italy. You're a good mathematician. <laughs> I was a child. You were a child. You're still a child. Thank you. It's nothing really. <laughs> Ian, where are you from? Are you a bottle baby from County Cork? Oh, I'm from San Francisco. 
San Francisco, huh? Yes. Yeah. I can't keep calling you Ian. Well, what do your customers call you? Well, they call me Big Mac. Well, I can understand why, Mac. You look as big as a full-grown bull. <laughs> just, how, just how big are you? I'm 6'1", in height, and I weigh 300 pounds. Well, I saved you a lot of bull. <laughs> you know, if you hadn't told me you were a bartender, I'd have sworn you were a jockey. <laughs> I mean, on the horse, I bet, on last Saturday. What, what size shirt do you wear, Mac? This shirt I have on is a sports shirt, and it's size extra, extra, extra large. <laughs> Send me a lot of extras. Huh? You sound like the five-star final. He's probably equipped with a radio, heater, and white sidewall tires. <laughs> how, how large are your suits, Mac? It's size 54. Oh, wow. Well, it's just the size I buy. <laughs> now, where do you do your bartending, uh, Mac? At the Coach and Horses. Are you one of the horses or the coach? Eh? <laughs> now, Mac, uh, how about food? Are you a big eater? Yes, I'm a heavy eater. For breakfast, I often have two ham steaks, a side of hash brown potatoes, a quart of milk, and a dozen eggs. Doesn't anybody ever send you a care package? <laughs> Mrs. Uh, Wilkes, what did you have for breakfast? A lemon tea, a lemon water and herb tea. <laughs> That's pretty daring, isn't it, Mrs. Wilkes? <laughs> lemon water and herb tea. I used to know a fellow named Herb Tea. I wonder if he's any way. <laughs> Mrs. Uh, Wilkes, uh, which garden club do you belong to? The Los Angeles Garden Club. The Begonia Society, the Future Society, the Bulb Society, uh, the Anthroposophical Society. What was that last one? Anthroposophical. <laughs> what does that mean? That means the study of the higher culture of plants and all the things that go with the higher culture of plants. Could I join one of your garden clubs? We'd be uh... delighted to have you. Well, let's not overdo it. <laughs> <laughs> Are there many garden clubs around here, Mrs. Wilkes? I'd say about a hundred. A hundred, eh? Why are there so many? Oh, don't you know that gardening is one of the most important and uh, popular pastimes in Southern California? You're speaking, I presume, of outdoor pastimes. Oh. <laughs> After all, Mrs. Wilkes, don't forget, there's, there's television. <laughs> Well, you've been an unusual couple, and any time I want to get a pot of geranium, I'll visit Max alone. <laughs> now, all right, let's see how you two are going to make out in the battle for the $1,000. You're only $20, and the more than our other couples, I can't tell you how much they won, but uh, Mr. Fenneman is going to remind our listeners. If the movie location man and the housewife are leading now with $20. Here we go. Let's see how high I can bet you $20. You selected animals and birds and songs. How much are you going to bet? Talk it over, your partner. I think $15. I think $15, yes. Uh, what, what flies over the white cliffs of Dover? This isn't a song now. You know what? Do you know what it's going to be? No. Don't, don't be thinking of Audubon. Be thinking of uh, I know. songs. You know? I don't know the songs. Well, it's, uh, it's uh, Bluebirds. The Bluebirds, I'm sorry. All right. $5 now, Groucho. All right, you have $5. <laughs> How much are you going to bet? Let's bet. Three. 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 What kind of an animal ain't what she used to be? The old gray man. The old gray man is right. <laughs> you have $8. You got $8. Remember, you're going for $1,000 tonight. Now, how much of the eight are you going to bet? Six. Six dollars. Uh, what sings in Barclay Square? From a song. Don't you know that's no, it's well, uh, it's a nightingale. Nightingale, I'm sorry. A nightingale sang in Barclay Square. Yeah, but then you get a chance to sing on it. <laughs> they have two dollars. so beautifully. They have two dollars now. Oh, they have two dollars. <clears throat> All right, uh, it's your last chance to beat the other couples. How much of the uh, two dollars are you going to bet? You bet the two, oh, of the, course. The two dollars. What came over the mountain to see what he could see? The bear. The bear is right. <laughs> <laughs> Now here's one more chance to win some money. Get this one right and I'll give you $10. No help in the audience, please. What kind of birds do you find on the Canary Islands? Canary. Canaries is right. <laughs> well, 
told you, people wound up with $4. And that, me <laughs> and that means our second couple, the location man and the housewife, with $20, get the chance at the $1,000 question. All right, here we go. For $1,000, I'll give you 15 seconds to decide on a single answer between you, so think carefully and please don't help the audience. Here it is. Three famous men are often referred to as the tongue, the sword, and the pen of the American Revolution. <coughs> Patrick Henry was the tongue, Washington was the sword, but for $1,000, who was the pen? you two have decided upon? Franklin. No, no, no. I'm, I'm sorry. It's uh, Thomas Jefferson. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that means the big question next week will be worth $1,500. Well, you lost the big money, but you cleaned up, didn't you? How much did they win in the quiz, George? $20 in the quiz. $20 in the quiz. <laughs> Congratulations and thanks to both of you and to all of our contestants on the show tonight. Starring Groucho Marx has come to you through the facilities of the United States Armed Forces Radio Service. Ladies and gentlemen, the secret word tonight is chair, C-H-A-I-R. Really? You bet your life! The more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers of America present Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life, the comedy quiz series produced and transcribed from Hollywood. And here he is, the one, the only... Russell! What a bore. Oh, that's me! <laughs> well, here I am again with $1,000 tonight for one of our couples. We have a couple of young single people for you tonight. This is Fire Dome Fenneman, in case you forget. <laughs> These uh, young single people were chosen from our studio audience just before we went on the air. Miss Louise Callahan and Mr. Harold Goodman, come in and meet Groucho Marx. Well, welcome, kids, for the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers. Say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common word, something you, you use every day. Louise Callahan and Harold Goodman. Louise, say this, there's quite a lot of you, isn't there? <laughs> How much of you uh, is there, Louise? 165 pounds, hmm. six feet tall. Six feet tall, and you weigh 165, huh? Mm -hmm. Where are you from? I'm from Shemokin, Pennsylvania. Oh, well, I'm Shemokin now, eh? <laughs> Where, where are you from, Harold? Indiana Harbor, Indiana. How old are you, uh, Harold? Twenty-seven. Twenty-seven. Yes. Huh? Well, you're a fine-looking lad. Thank you. What what sort of work do you do, my lad? I'm a physician. Oh, a doctor, huh? Mm -hmm. yes. Is there any difference between a doctor and a physician, except um, the fee? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> well, many many professions apply the name uh, doctor to their title, but. Um, a physician is... That's a euphemism, isn't it? A euphemism is yes, fine. Uh, yes, I well, think. euphemism and me for using that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I'm curious. What made you uh, decide to become a doctor in the first place? Well, that's a question that I've been asked many times, and it's a very difficult one to answer. Was this after you operated they asked you that? <laughs> <laughs> well, how do you answer that query? The answer... A necessity has to be very nebulous and vague, and, and I just can't give you a specific Well, we don't answer. object to a nebulous answer. You here. don't? Oh, no. Well, it uh, offers a great You'd be surprised deal. how nebulous we can get on this show. <laughs> I, I've seen you before, and yes. I'm sure that... Uh, <laughs> the, uh, the field, of course... How would you like a... it if I practiced <laughs> medicine, huh? <laughs> I'm, sorry. I'm allegedly the comic on this show. Uh, 
medicine offers a great deal of variety and um, interest. Well, show business offers a lot of variety too. Right? <laughs> I would like very it's much to be in show business. Week, huh? I would like to be in. Well, uh, the, the way you're going now, it won't be a matter of a few minutes. <laughs> you may be sitting here, and I may be rolling bandages. <laughs> Want something better? Go on. Now, what were you saying? I think I'd finished. Oh, you finished? <laughs> well, how'd you make out? <laughs> There you are. Well, that, 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 that was quite interesting, and I've learned a lot from that, Doc. Now, you say that uh, this is a kind of a nebulous uh, answer you could only give, mm-hmm. a vague answer. Uh, I hate to bring up an unpleasant subject like this, but weren't you at all interested in the financial returns of being a doctor? It's a long time before that comes around. You spend four years in college. That takes a great deal of money. Four years in medical school also costs a good deal. Uh, this is followed by a year of internship at the rate of about 10 cents an hour. If you want to specialize a residency for three or four years at 15 cents an hour, uh, then out in practice it'll take a little while to get established. 15 cents an hour? It's quite good these days. Well, it costs you 60 cents to shoot pool for an hour. <laughs> Why couldn't you skip all those preliminaries and just hang up a shingle when you get out of high school? Well, that would be unethical, and besides, uh, you'd get caught. <laughs> well, suppose they nailed you a few times. You'd save 12 years anyway. <laughs> <laughs> now, Louise, uh, what sort of work have you, have you been doing? I used to be the human fish at the uh, Miami Biltmore in Florida. You were a human fish? Yes. Did you have a worm in your mouth? Or? <laughs> no. I'll tell you about it, Groucho. Well, I wish you would. <laughs> Well, uh, what they did was put a harness on me, and there was a man with a pole and a line, and I would go out in the water and swim real hard and try to fight it, and people on the sides would make bets and to see if uh, I would stay out in the water or whether he pulled me in or not. Well, after they caught you, did they hang you over the mantle? Or... <laughs> Imagine coming home and explaining this to your wife, saying, I just caught this fish. <laughs> Well, you make a splendid couple, and now the rest is up to you. I, I've done all I can. Now, in just one minute, you're going to play your bet your life for a chance at the $1,000 question. But first, I want everybody to listen to this. Friends, what do you want in a car? An engine might be nice. If you're looking for the highest standards of safety and performance, you should own a DeSoto. How about if you're looking for little things, like wheels? Well, Groucho, no matter what you're looking for, you'll do better with a DeSoto. You mentioned engines. DeSoto, you know, has the sensational 160-horsepower Fire Dome V8 engine. The engine specifically designed to give you top performance under all conditions. The DeSoto Fire Dome gives you surging power plus real economy. Because the Fire Dome was built to run at peak efficiency on ordinary fuels, not expensive premium fuels. The mighty DeSoto Fire Dome V8 engine means you'll always have power when you want it. Power when you need it. And as for wheels, DeSoto offers you wonderful safety rim wheels, an extra safety factor. DeSoto's safety rim wheels have special protective ridges designed to hold the tire securely on the rim in case of a blowout. This helps you control the car and bring it to a safe stop. So you see, friends, for outstanding performance and wonderful safety... Your next car should be a DeSoto. Tomorrow, drop in at your DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Take the five-mile trial in the mighty DeSoto Fire Dome 8 or the famous DeSoto Powermaster 6. Prove to yourself that your next car should be a DeSoto. And don't forget, all dealers who sell DeSoto also sell Plymouth, the low-priced car most like high-priced cars. All right, now let's see how you work together as a team. Uh, Fireman, Fire Dome Fenneman. <coughs> yes, sir. Would you mind explaining the rules to these young culprits, uh, young couple? Well, you bet as much of your $20 as you want on each of four questions, and the couple that earns the most money gets a chance at the $1,000 DeSoto Plymouth question later on in the show. Here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. From our list of 20 categories, you selected songs written by famous personalities as your category. Uh, here's your first question. How much of the 20 would you try? 1950. 19- 1950. Billy Rose and several others combined their talents to write this song. Give me the title of it. Okay, Jerry. Me 
me and my shadow. Me and my shadow is right. Well, for a good start, you have $39.50. The song has been made famous by the old master, Ted Lewis. $39. $39 you're going to bet. Remember, you're going for $1,000 tonight. Now, you're going to bet $39. Rudy Valley had a hand in writing this song. Give me the title. Good night, sweetheart. Good night, sweetheart is right. You now have $78.50. How much are you going to bet? $78. 78 Here's the third question. $78. Bing Crosby was one of the writers of this song. What's the name of it? Play it, Jerry. Ghost of a Chance with you. Ghost of a Chance with you is right. You're now flying to $156.50. Uh, how much of this are you going to bet this time? $156.50. All of it. You're going to shoot the works? Here we go. It's your last chance to beat the other couples. In 1924, Al Jolson helped write this song. Let's see if you can identify it. California, here California, I come. California, here I come. <laughs> and you'll wind up with $313. Okay, Louise, you're a fine couple. Thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Groucho, we invited some Red Cross workers to the program tonight, and just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected Miss Marjorie Stevens. Her partner is a husband who volunteered, Mr. George Heckenkamp. Folks, come in and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome to You Bet Your Life. Say the sacred word and divide $100. It's a common word, something you use every day. Uh, Marjorie Stevens, eh? Yes. And Mr. George Heckenkamp. Right. Say, that's a cute uniform, Marjorie, and you're a cute girl. Uh, Are you a CB? No. This is a Red Cross uniform. Oh, well, you don't look very cross. Uh. <laughs> do you do anything else aside from uh, Red Cross work? Yes, I help an orthodontist. Oh. Well, he goes to his church and everybody goes to the <laughs> <laughs> George Heckenkamp, huh? Yes. Where are you from? I'm uh, originally from Quincy, Illinois. Oh, so I had uh, the Quincy for a while. <laughs> I played in Quincy. That was long before you were born, though, I think. <laughs> Are you married, George? Yes, I am, sir. Mm-hmm. How'd, how'd you meet your wife? <clears throat> well, she was dancing with a fellow I didn't like one time, and I cut in on him and been dancing with her ever since. <laughs> you dance 24 hours a day? <laughs> was your wife pleased at this uh, turn of events? Uh, well, I'm married to her. She, she, Answer my she question, was. George. <laughs> None of this nebula stuff. We've had enough nebulae tonight. <laughs> what did you do in, uh, in Quincy? Well, I didn't do too much in Quincy. I moved to Pittsfield, Illinois. What did you do in Pittsfield? Moved to Peoria? <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, I had a flower shop there, a florist shop. Oh, I see. And everything went to pot? <laughs> <laughs> How'd you make out there? Well, I lost money. Oh, that was pretty prophetic, wasn't it? <laughs> what did you do when you came to California? Well, I opened two flower shops out here. Well, that's, that was pretty smart, George. <laughs> you got wiped out in one flower shop, you thought you'd do it with two shops. <laughs> you figured you could go uh, under much faster that way. Is that <laughs> it? You're a pretty sure cookie, George. <laughs> How'd you make out the second time? I lost twice as much. <laughs> George, I hate to say this, but in the flower business, I'd say you're a blooming idiot. <laughs> now, if you're crazy about losing money, I happen to know a little oil deal up in Wyoming. <laughs> now, this is a very attractive deal. You could get wiped out overnight. <laughs> What did you do to make money, George? <clears throat> well, I worked for an airline at night, and I worked for a bank during the day. Well, that wasn't very bright, George. If you really wanted to make money, you should have worked at the airline during the day and the bank at night. <laughs> Are you sure you got the right girl, George? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> What are you doing now, George? <clears throat> well, I'm a uh, motorcycle officer for the State Highway Patrol. 
George, I think you're one of the finest men I've ever met. <laughs> and there's anything I can do for you, don't hesitate to call on me. <laughs> what do you do for the Red Cross, uh, Marjorie? I'm a driver. We take hostesses to the you hospital. Take the hostess enter- with the mostess on the boat. <laughs> to uh, entertain the boys who are in the hospitals and can't get out. And they uh, play games and cards. And uh, then we take uh, doctors to the blood mobiles and uh, nurses' aides. And uh, men go to uh, different sports around town, like your football games and... Uh, Boxing and all that sort of thing, and we well, just. Well, I'm no sport. Over. Would you come to me some night? Too? <laughs> well, seriously, you guys are doing a wonderful job. Now, how much do you get paid for all this work? There's a lot of work, isn't it? Nothing. This is all volunteer. Yes. Well, you're doing an even greater job than I thought, Marjorie. It's just Thank you. <laughs> and if George wasn't married, I'd see what I could wake <laughs> up here between you two. George, let's get back to your job. For example, how did you happen to become a motorcycle cop? You were leading a fairly comparatively honest life uh, up to now. I'd been interested in police work a long time, and I took a civil service exam, and um, I passed it, and while I was... How fast were you going? (laughs) Well, while I was waiting for uh, my exam or to be called my appointment, uh, I received four traffic tickets in two weeks, and... So I decided if I couldn't beat him, I'd better join him. <laughs> George, there's one thing that bothers a lot of motorists. Why is it you motorcycle cops always hide behind a billboard? <laughs> well, we don't hide behind billboards unless they build them while we're sitting there. It's against regulations. <laughs> We've got to stay out in the open all the time. You say you're always out in the open? Yes, sir. Well, this may surprise you, but I think it's a good thing you are, George. We need you fellas. It takes a lot of courage to control all the screwballs who hit it up on the highways. And I, I think you're doing a great job. And it's a very dangerous job. And I want to congratulate you. The main thing I said, I said in fun. That's the oath to you, too. You. You're a couple of fine citizens. Now, in just a minute, I'm going to give you both a chance to make some money. But first, I just want to remind both of you to take a ride in the new DeSoto Fire Dome 8. You'll be as crazy about it as I am. Now, uh, you're going to play your bet your life. You beat our other coppers, and you'll get a chance at the uh, $1,000 question. Can't tell you how much you have to win, but uh, Fire Dome George is going to remind our listeners. The doctor and his partner won $313, and the secret word is chair. Here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. You selected state landmarks, right? Yes, sir. Here's your first question. How much are you going to go for? $20. Talk right up, yeah. kids. We'll shoot the works. $20. Shoot the works. All right. In what state do you find the famous Pikes Peak? Colorado. Colorado. Colorado is right. You now have forty dollars. Let me going for a thousand dollars tonight. How much of the forty dollars are you gonna bet this time? Let's go forty dollars. Might as well. Forty dollars. Forty dollars. In what state do you find Bryce Canyon? Utah. Utah. Utah is right. You now climb to eighty dollars. Here's your third question. How much of the eighty? Shoot the way. <laughs> All the way. In what state do you find the famed Everglades? In Florida. Florida is right. You now have one hundred and sixty dollars. Is your last chance to beat the other couples? How much are you going to go for? I'll shoot the works oh. all the way. Shoot the works. In what state do you find the Grand Coulee <laughs> Dam? Uh, Washington. I'd say Washington. Washington is right. <laughs> You wind up with $320. Thanks and good luck from the Soto Plymouth Dealers. We have a real cute couple, wasn't it? We have a young couple for you now, Groucho, who recently became parents. They uh, volunteered from our studio audience. Mr. Gordon Walker and Mrs. Annie McWinney Walker meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, youngsters, for the DeSoto Plymouth Dealer. Say the secret word and you'll win $100. It's a common word, something you use every day. Anne and, and Gordon Walker. Let's see, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Walker, huh? That's right. And your new parents? Uh-huh. Well, it's a good thing you're both walkers. It'll come in handy around <laughs> 2 in the morning, huh? <laughs> How old are you, uh, Gordon? 32. 32? I That's thought right. you were about 22. Thank you. Wow. Oh. And Mrs. Uh, Annie McWinney Walker, huh? Anne. Anne, Anne. 
McWinnie, eh? Was your mother frightened by a horse? Uh... <laughs> what kind of a name is McWinnie? Uh, Scotch. Annie? Eh? Scotch. Oh, Scotch. Yeah, well, what kind of Scotch are you? Domestic or imported? Eh? <laughs> imported. Were you born in Scotland? No, I was born in the Isle of Man. Oh, the Isle of Man? Mm-hmm. What were you doing there, you hussy? <laughs> That's just the name of the place. There are actually lots of women there. Oh. Well, is that near Boys Town, the Isle of Man? <laughs> no, it's a tiny island between Ireland and England. Oh. Now, Fenneman says your new parents... Uh, how, how old is your child, Gordon? We have three of them. You have triplets? Well, congratulations. <laughs> and how old are the little kids? Douglas is five, Linda is four, and Keith is 12 weeks. Really? That much time between them? <laughs> <laughs> Those triplets must have made medical history. <laughs> How did you meet uh, Gordon? Oh, that's kind of a complicated story. I don't doubt it. <laughs> there were three youngsters around. It's getting more complicated all the time. <laughs> Couldn't you break it down into small installments? Go ahead. How'd you meet him? Well, it started through uh, Gordon's boss, who was interested in stamp collecting. And Gordon's uh, boss was interested in stamp collecting? Uh-huh. And now you have three kids? I don't know. <laughs> well, I had a brother who was a prisoner of war. and oh, uh, where was this? He was in um, Libya. Gordon's boss was interested in getting a stamp from a prisoner of war. So he wrote to my brother, and uh, he couldn't reply directly to America because it was neutral. So he wrote to uh, Mr. Lund, that was Gordon's boss, and addressed the letter to me in Scotland. <laughs> and oh. I, now, uh, let's get this straight now. Where was <laughs> Where was Gordon's boss? In Ma- Martinez, California. Martinez. He was in California. You were in Quincy. Your brother was in Libya. <laughs> and you were in Scotland. And they're all collecting stamps, and now they got three kids. <laughs> Shows you what a wonderful world we're living in. <laughs> Somebody told you that 30 years ago, you'd have said they were mad. <laughs> How did Gordon get involved in all this? Well, he read one of my letters. Uh, Mr. Lund's oh, a wife. Sneak thief, and eh? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Lund's wife and myself corresponded, and Gordon saw one of my letters and was interested, and he wrote to me. When did you two finally meet each other? We met after we decided to get married. <laughs> Wasn't that rather hazardous? Well, it wasn't any riskier than marrying a girl that I'd known. Well, that's, that's logical, I guess. That's, that sounds like uh, the right words from the father of three children. <laughs> now, how long did this orgy of letter writing continue? <laughs> Four years. And I'm surprised you didn't marry the postman. He, uh, <laughs> you said you saw more of him than you did of Gordon. <laughs> did your family, uh, what did they have to say about this uh, unusual courtship? Oh, my mother was very excited about it. My dad went around to all his friends saying, look what Gordon got in the mail. (laughs) Some people have all the luck. All I ever get in the mail are blotters from the telephone company. (laughs) What sort of work do you do, Gordon? I'm an analytical chemist for the Shell Oil Company. Oh, Well, has he shelled out pretty regularly? uh? (laughs) Do you know much about his chemistry work, Anne? No, it's all double Dutch to me. It's what? It's all double Dutch to me. Double Dutch, huh? I don't understand it, but when I can't get to sleep at night, he tells me about it, and I go right to sleep. (laughs) (laughs) He probably originally married her because he wanted someone to understand him. (laughs) Someone to be close by his side through thick and thin. (laughs) She's only there through thick, I think. <laughs> and there's something that's been bothering me. If you were born in the Isle of Man, how is it you have a scotch burr? We moved to Glasgow when I was three. Oh, you went to Glasgow. Mm-hmm. Uh, did, did you belong to Glasgow? No. <laughs> I know a song about Glasgow, you know. Will Fife used to sing it. Did you ever hear that song? I belong to Glasgow. Yeah, could you sing it? <laughs> huh? Would you sing it with me? All right. Can you sing? A little. <laughs> Hasn't stopped me. Yeah. <laughs> okay, here we go. I belong to Glasgow, (laughs) good old Glasgow town. But there's there's something the matter matter with Glasgow. Glasgow. Oh, it's going round and round. (laughs) And I'm only a common old working chap. 
We both lost our heads in that song. <laughs> you know, we may have more in common than Gordon and she had. <laughs> well, you're a nice young couple, and obviously the post office did an excellent job as Cupid. <laughs> and I wish the both of you a long and a happy life together. <laughs> now it's time to play your bet your life. You've got to run your twenty dollars no more than the other couples, and you'll get a chance at the thousand dollar question. I can't tell you how much to win. You have to win, but George is going to remind our listeners. The Red Cross worker and the police officer lead with $320. Okay, here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. You selected the animal kingdom. Here's your first question. How much will you bet? Um, $19.99 and a half cents. <laughs> what do you call a male deer? Buck. Buck is right. You have $39.99 and a half cents. Now, how much of the $39.99 and a half are you going to go for? Well, we'll save a half a cent and bet $39.99. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> what do you call a baby horse? A colt. Colt is right. You have $79.98 and a half. Yes. <laughs> See, <I> you... <laughs> <laughs> now, how much are you going to go for? This is the third question. We'll save a half a cent again. Seventy-nine ninety-eight. And that makes it, doesn't it? Okay. What do you call a female sheep? You. You. Don't call oh, it to me. Call it to you. That's you. right. To you. <laughs> she knew that from the bunny bucks of scandal and all that. You have one hundred fifty-nine dollars ninety-six and a half cents. Here's your last chance to be the other couples. Uh, how much will you bet? Um, we'll still save a half a cent. <laughs> all right. What do you call a baby bear? A cub. A cub is right. <laughs> Why do you call a baby when he isn't bad? <laughs> Cute. <laughs> Cute. And you wind up with three hundred nineteen dollars ninety-two and a half cents. <laughs> and that means that the Red Cross girl and the police officer, with three hundred twenty dollars in just one minute, get the chance at the DeSoto Plymouth one thousand dollar question. <laughs> well, <laughs> thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth deal. Too bad. Fellman, let me tell you something about used cars. Do you know you've got to be mighty careful where you buy one? That's right, Groucho. My advice is go to DeSoto Plymouth dealer. He has a wide selection of popular makes and models. And when you buy from him, you know you're getting a really reliable car that'll give you plenty of good service. That's true, George, and that's because a DeSoto Plymouth dealer has a reputation to uphold. A reputation for fair and square dealing. So for a good used car, at a fair price, easy terms, go to your DeSoto Plymouth dealers. And when you do... Tell them Groucho sent you. Remember, wherever you see those two great names linked together, DeSoto and Plymouth, you can always be sure of a fair and square deal. Here's the Red Cross girl and the police officer, Groucho, the winning couple, all set for the DeSoto Plymouth $1,000 question. Well, um, how do you feel, smart? I don't know, scared. Now, if you win this money, stop hiding behind billboards, will you? <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> All right, for $1,000, I'll give you 15 seconds to decide on a single answer between you. Think carefully, and please, no help from the audience. Here it is. America's most famous ship, Old Ironsides, actually had copper sides which were installed and designed by a great patriot. For $1,000, who was this famous craftsman? Kids, what's the answer you two have decided upon? I think it was Paul Revere. Paul Revere is right! That's right, you win a... That's right, you win a thousand dollars. How much in the quiz, George? Uh, Three hundred and twenty dollars in the quiz. One thousand three hundred and twenty dollars. <laughs> Well, congratulations from the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast. You bet your life. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much.
Be sure to tune in again next Wednesday night at the same time for the Groucho Marx Show, when the big question will be worth $1,000. And don't miss Groucho's television show, also presented by the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America. And remember, all dealers who sell DeSoto also sell Plymouth. Two great cars, both products of the Chrysler Corporation. And when you drive in, tell them Groucho sent you. Good night, folks, and remember... See the Soto Fire Dome 8 tomorrow. Folks, here's a reminder from the National Safety Council. The three R's of safe driving are ready, reasonable, and right. You bet your life. Transcribed from Hollywood is produced by John Goodell. Directed by Robert Dwan and Bernie Smith. Music by Jerry Fielding. This is George Fenneman signing off for the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast. Ladies and gentlemen, the secret word tonight is floor. F L O O R. Rally. You bet your life. The more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers of America present Groucho Marx and You Bet Your Life, the comedy quiz series produced and transcribed from Hollywood. And here he is, the one, the only... Oh, come now. Oh, that's me! (laughs) Well, here I am again with $1,000 for one of our couples. We invited some dietitians to the program tonight, Groucho, and just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected Miss Jean Granger. Her partner is a volunteer from the audience, Mr. James Barrows. Folks, come on in and meet Groucho Marx. Over here, sir, please. <laughs> right in here. Right here. Pleased to meet you. Well, welcome, welcome. Bye, bye. Welcome to the DeSoto <laughs> Plymouth Dealers. Say, say, the, say the secret word and divide a hundred bucks. Thousand dollars, hundred dollars. It's a common word, something you find around the house. <laughs> what were you planning to do, go home already? Well, I tell you, it's very confusing, you know. I, I'm a gold bug. You know, I got the I gold fever. I don't care what you got, but don't sneak out of here before I get a crack at you. Huh? <laughs> James Barrows, eh? What is your hometown, Mr. Barrows? Boston, Massachusetts. Well, it's a great town. <laughs> Somebody out there from Holyoke. <laughs> I've been in Boston many times. Which part of Boston are you from? Roxbury, Massachusetts. Roxbury, yeah. And four blocks from John L. Sullivan, the world's greatest fighter. My mother's name was Sullivan, and I'm proud of the Irish. And every second kid about John L. Sullivan didn't say a good word for John L. Sullivan, they had to answer to James A. Barrows. That's hard to believe. Mr. Barrows, of course you realize that John L. Sullivan's been dead about 40 years, huh? Yes, sir. But I still... Are you aware of that? Yes, but I still got the Sullivan in me. I see, huh? And well, get it out before we get through it. Miss <laughs> <laughs> Granger, what sort of a dietitian are you? I work for the Los Angeles Department of Water and Power. Oh, you just mm-hmm. uh, feed water to people? And, uh, <laughs> is that what you do? Oh, no, we do much more than well, that. What does a dietitian we're, we're interested do? in uh, people's eating habits. Oh, I see. What would you say is the chief dietary problem that people are uh, confronted with? I think weight is. Mm-hmm. What do you recommend for people who are overweight? Well, of course, I recommend a good diet. Mm-hmm. And I certainly uh, would like to warn people to keep away from fad diets. Fat diets? Fad diets. There are so many fad diets. I don't diets. hear very well. My glasses are not what they used to be. <laughs> <laughs> well, what do you regard as a, a fad diet? Oh, there are lots of them. They're very popular, in fact. Uh, let's see. There's lamb chops and pineapple. Or there's an orange diet, or a banana diet, or a peanut diet. There are all kinds of diets. Peanuts? Yeah. You mean you can lose weight just by eating peanuts? Well, some people think they can. I don't believe it. <laughs> Did you ever look at an elephant? <laughs> <laughs> now, 
Mr. Barrows, what sort of work do you do? I'm a gold sniper. Is that anything like cigar? <laughs> what's, a, what's a gold sniper? Well, a gold sniper is when you get the gold bug. You get the gold fever, see? Starts out with the gold fields and gets a couple of big nuggets, you know. And, and uh, this is year 1952, but I still think I'm a 49er. It's hard to believe. You mean 1949 yeah, or 1849? 1849, because of what anybody says, I still believe that myself. Uh-huh. Because when I go out to look for these gold nuggets, I find them pretty big. And I really believe that's all I see is gold, gold, gold. Now, that's hard to believe, and the more I look at them, the bigger they get. And I tell everybody, don't get the gold fever. I give them a price. If they don't take it, what can I do about it? That's hard to believe. Well, it's certainly hard to believe, all right. <laughs> it is. And there's really not much you can do about it. Uh, no, but I give them a price not to get the gold fever. And some will take it serious. They want to take off. Professors and congressmen and judges, and I talk to all kinds of people, and they want to take off. I say, no, 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 take it easy. Not that big, and no. Calm them down, but they go and look for the, they can't blame me for the gold rush. I nearly started five gold rushes in California. And I don't want to start no more. It's hard to believe. Where do you meet these congressmen? Oh, sometime I'm hitchhiking with my gold pan across the Mojave Desert or something. And you see, my, I got money in my pocket. I start with the gold fields, but before I know it, I see Harold's Club, Reno. Boom, I come up there, and well, I make it pretty good, and sometime I come back, and then I start for Las Vegas, and I bump into the Mojave Junction, Death Valley, Scotty's Place, like in Coyote Road, Curtis Creek, the Sutter River, the Yuba River, the Snake River, Idaho, Calvary, Colorado County. Nuggets, 75 pounds. See? Well, come on, I'll go with you. Oh, wait a minute. Don't take don't, 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 it. Wait a minute. I got it as bad as you got it. I can't stand it any longer. It's hard to believe. I know. here eking out these few bucks here when I could be hitchhiking with a pan of gold. I'm only human, too, you know. Yes, Don't get the gold fever. Believe well, me. I've, I've got it. <laughs> I haven't got the intelligent, but the most intelligent people in the world, when I talk about the big nuggets, gee, have you really got them? I says, well, I got a suitcase full of rocks. I carried along one. And I you had, had the suitcase with yeah, you, huh? Yeah, full of rocks, you know, 75-pound yeah, gold nuggets. You got rocks in your yeah. suitcase. Maybe that explains well, everything. Well, <laughs> every, every, every place he comes in, on the Feather River, the Yuba River, Dead Valley, Junction, Coyote, Well, Furnace, Cracker, Goldfield, Nevada, or Tuna Pond, Nevada, wherever it happened to be. Well, Jim, this has been Please. very innovating, the whole thing, and I, 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 I must say it's been an, an interesting experience talking to you. And, and I still uh, got the gold fever. Don't well, think I ate. let's go. Here we go again. <laughs> you're not to see me yet on the highways and the byways uh, with that gold fever? I, I hope so, Jim, yeah, and I, I hope you're very successful face. and have a big strike someday, yeah? yeah I hope you win lots of money tonight, because in just one minute you're going to play your bet your life for a chance at the $1,000 question. But first, I want you to pay attention to this. Friends, when you drive, it's important that you have a clear view of the road ahead. This is especially true in wet, rainy, or stormy weather. That's why DeSoto is equipped with electric windshield wipers for your safety. You see, ordinary windshield wipers slow down or stop whenever extra acceleration is used. But electric windshield wipers maintain a constant, steady speed, regardless of engine load. This means that even in a situation that requires extra acceleration... Your powerful DeSoto electric windshield wipers will maintain their same steady, reliable clearing action. Never slow down or stop. In a DeSoto, you can pass a car on a straightaway or climb the steepest hill, assured that your electric windshield wipers will keep working to give you a clear view of the road ahead. DeSoto electric windshield wipers are just one of the many safety features you get when you buy DeSoto. Features like DeSoto safety rim wheels, that materially reduce the danger of loss of control after a blowout. Big DeSoto 12-inch brakes. And wonderful DeSoto full power steering that gives you safer, surer road control. Stop in at your DeSoto Plymouth dealers tomorrow and see the car designed for your safety, DeSoto. And remember, all dealers who sell DeSoto also sell Plymouth, the low-priced car most like high-priced cars. All right, uh, now that's nice and quiet. Let's see how you work together as a team. Uh, Fire Dome Fenneman? Yes, sir. Would you mind explaining the, the rules here? Well, you bet as much of your $20 as you want on each of four questions, and the couple that earns the most money gets a chance at the DeSoto Plymouth $1,000 question at the end of the show. You ready? Ready? I'm ready. Here we go. Let's see how high you can build your $20. From our list of 20 categories, you selected number 13 of IE as your category. How much of the 20 are you going to bet? Talk right up, kid. Fifteen dollars. Fifteen dollars. The largest active volcano in the world is on the island of Hawaii. What is the name of it? 
It's it's in Honolulu. I think it's Mauna Loa. Mauna Loa. Yeah, Mauna Loa right. is right. Right. Mauna Loa is right. <laughs> well, I ain't never been there. Now, remember, you're going for $1,000 tonight. <laughs> now, how much of the $35 are you going to try this time? $25? All right, 25. 25 All right, what do you call a feast done in the native style? A luau. A luau is luau. correct. Now you have $60. Here's your third question. How much of the 60 will you risk? Ooh, 50. 45? All right, 45. All right, what do they call the garlands or necklaces of native flowers that are joined together? Lays. Lays is correct. You now have $105. And is your last chance to beat the other couples? How much of this money will you try? What do you think? Ninety, uh, ninety-five? Ninety-five. Ninety-five. One of Hawaii's most beautiful beaches commands a good view of the famous Diamond Head. What is the name of this beach? Wacky Key. Wacky Key is correct. Correct. <laughs> and you wind Thank up you. with $200. You. Thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Gotcha, we invited some hotel men. Oh, now, maybe I'll get a chance to talk. (laughs) (laughs) Gotcha, we invited some hotel men to the program tonight. I didn't know there was any man could out-talk me. (laughs) We invited some hotel men to the program tonight. I see. And just before we went in the air, our studio audience selected Mr. Herb Lopier. His partner is a young lady from the audience, uh, Miss Olivia Eastus. Folks, meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, welcome to your bet your life. Say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common word, something you find around the house. Olivia Eastus, huh? That's you, huh? That's right. And Mr. Lopez? Yeah, that's right. Uh, Olivia, where are you from? Abilene, Texas. Abilene, Texas? I thought that was a cold cream, huh? <laughs> I know Eastus is Eastus, but I didn't know Eastus was in Texas. Huh? Well, that takes care of that. Now, uh... <laughs> that's kind of a curious name. What kind of a name is Eastus? It's a Welsh name. Welsh? Yes, it's oh. a... Do you not... sing uh, the Welsh songs? The... Um, yes, I can, but I want to tell you about the name. Well, I wish you would. Well, it's about... As long uh... as you don't discuss gold mining, I'll be very happy. <laughs> happy to listen to anything you have to say. Well, Talking it's about... to Mr. Eastus is like a week in the country. <laughs> it's about 1,100 years old. Well, you don't look that old. Uh... <laughs> And, uh, Mr. Lopez, you're the hotel man, eh? That's right. Where are you from? Uh, I'm from the, uh, city of good neighbors, Buffalo, New York. Are you married, Olivia? No. <laughs> Not quite certain, are you? <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever come close to marriage? Well, I was engaged once, mm-hmm. but, uh... Just once? Well, the last time. I see. <laughs> but, uh... What happened? Well, um... Uh, my fiancé kicked my Siamese cat, and I gave him back the ring. <laughs> now, that's the truth. <laughs> you gave the ring to the cat? No, I gave the ring back to my fiancé because I didn't know before he might start kicking me after we were married. <laughs> I've heard of puss in boots, but this is the first time I've ever heard of a boot in a puss. <laughs> Now, let's talk about your hotel. Wh- which one are you with? Uh... I'm with the Statler. Oh, that's a fine hotel. I've stayed there many times. How come I've never seen you there? Well, uh, what city were you in? We're in eight cities. And... Well, this one was in Cheyenne, Wyoming. Is that the one you're with? <laughs> well, we don't have any hotel in Cheyenne. I don't know who to believe, you or my crooked bath towels. <laughs> you say you have no hotel in Cheyenne? No, no. Now, which one do you work for? Well, I work for the new Statler in Los Angeles. Oh, I stayed there last March. I must say, your service was terrible, and the rooms were drafty. <laughs> now, has felt such a breeze now. Are you responsible for that? Well, hardly. The hotel wasn't built then. <laughs> wasn't completed. Wasn't finished, did No. You? Well, any hotel that'll take me in is finished. <laughs> well, tell us something about this hotel. I've been reading about it in the papers... How does it differ from uh, any other hotel? Well, the hotel is 13 stories high. It's five wings. In the hotel, there are 1,275 rooms, and they're all outside. (laughs) Well, when I want to sleep in the park, I don't have to register your hotel. (laughs) And, uh... I'm not sure I don't like the old-fashioned hotels better. (laughs) Ah, that one in Cheyenne, Wyoming was a good one. 
gold nuggets all over the lobby. <laughs> Trouble is, you had to stoop down to pick them up. Huh? What else is different about it? Well, the keyhole is uh, in the door. Now you're talking, huh? <laughs> what about it's the above the doorknob. What's that? It's above the doorknob. The which keyhole is... is above the doorknob? Oh, yes, absolutely. It's a convenience uh, You regard that as an advantage to have the keyhole above? Oh, absolutely. I used to bump my head on the doorknob, but this time I'll knock my teeth out. <laughs> I'm off to Cheyenne in the warm morning, huh? <laughs> well, it's been, it's been restful talking to you two, and, uh, <laughs> and I, I wish you both lots of luck in the quiz. By the way, take a tip from me and drive the new DeSoto Fire Dome 8. It's really a great car. Now, uh, we're going to play You Bet Your Life for $1,000. All you got to do is beat our other couples, and you get a chance at the $1,000 question. I can't tell you how much you have to win, but Fire Dome Fenneman is going to remind our listeners. The gold prospector and his partner won $200. The secret word is floor. Here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. You selected famous United States athletes. Here's your first question. How much will you bet? Fifteen. Talk up, kids. Fifteen dollars. Fifteen. Fifteen. In what sport is Patty Berg famous? Golf. Golf. Oh, Galoff is right. <laughs> Well, you're off to a good start. You have $35. Let me go in for $1,000 tonight. How much of the $35 will you try now? $34.99. We'll leave one penny. <laughs> Is that all right with you? Uh, Is that we right? get $98. You, $98? It's up to you. You go well, ahead. Uh, uh, $34.99 is all right. $99. We'll leave one penny. $34.99. Mm -hmm. In what sport is Cecil Smith famous? C E C I L. Is it. Building? Hmm? Mm. Pretty sure. Come on. Bowling. No, I'm sorry. He's a very famous polo player. How much have they got? One cent. Approach See, you should have bet uh, $34.98. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here's your third question. How much of the penny are you going to bet? All of it. All of it, eh? <laughs> and what sport is Ralph Branca famous? Baseball is right. Now you got two cents. See, I can figure this out, too. Now they have two cents. Here's your last chance to beat the other couples. How much of the two cents will you bet? Sure. In what sport is Willie Hoppy famous? Uh, he's a billiard champion. Billiard champion is right. Groucho, they wind up with four cents. Nobody and... leaves here with four cents. I'll give you one more question. You get this out, and we'll bring your winnings up to $25. You ready? Who was buried in Grant's tomb? <laughs> General Grant. General Grant is right. Yes. <laughs> Thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers. We have a couple of volunteers from our studio Dealers. audience, Groucho. They were selected just before we went on the air, and here they are, Miss Carol Marie Lavic and Mr. Terrence Patrick O'Brien. Meet Groucho Marx. Welcome for the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers. Right <laughs> Say the secret word and you'll win $100. Common word, something you find around the house. Miss uh, Carol Levick and Mr. Terence uh, Patrick O'Brien. <laughs> Carol, what kind of a name is Levick? It's Levec. It's a French it's name. It's Levec. What kind of a name is Levec? <laughs> it's a French name. What part of France are you from? Oh, I was born in Hollywood Hospital. <laughs> is that in Paris? No, it's in Hollywood. Just checking. You know. How long ago did uh, go to this happen? Nineteen years ago. Nineteen years ago. Well, you're a fine-looking girl there, Carol. Thank you. Mr. Terence Patrick O'Brien, eh? What part of France are you from, monsieur? <laughs> no, I, I was born in Washington, D.C. You, come, my, you uh, come from an old Washington family? My uh, ancestors, uh, they came from County Clare and County Cork, Ireland. So I guess that makes me, my, makes me an Irishman, I guess. About, about like Patty's pig, I don't know. <laughs> are you married, Terry? I sure am, Groucho. Mm -hmm. I'm married. Did you marry him? <laughs> Did you marry a little Irish, Colleen? No, I'm sorry you asked me that. I, uh, I was supposed to marry an Irish girl, but I wound up marrying a Scotch girl. I, I don't know how that happened. <laughs> I uh, changed the name, though. I made her... I call her Dugan now. Everybody calls her Dugan. Hmm. Even her father calls her Dugan. 
So, uh, but she's still Scotch, huh? Well, yes, yes, she sure is. <laughs> well, everybody gets tough breaks. There's nothing you can do about it. How did you meet this fabulous Mrs. O'Brien? Well, I was a short order cook in the uh, restaurant there, and she used to come in and Where eat. Where was this? In Washington, D.C. Oh. And she'd come in and eat, and uh, generally she'd wind up eating about eight dollars worth of chow, and I'd charge her a nickel, and so she liked me. Uh. <laughs> How long did you work at this place? A couple of weeks. <laughs> well, that's easy to understand. How soon after you pauperized this proprietor did you ask her to marry you? Well, as it turned out, we had a date there, the very first date, and uh, we went up to Pat Corrigan's bar, a little place you used to go to, and drinking kissable colas, and she asked me to marry Wait, her. What's a kissable cola? What's a kissable cola? Well, I don't know, but you wind up getting married if you drink too many. <laughs> Well, thanks for the warning, Pat. Uh, now, after you left your job as a cook, uh, what sort of work did you engage in? Well, I, I found out my wife that her uh, father was pretty well loaded. You know, he was... Uh, was gotta... he taking these kissable callers, too? <laughs> well, anyhow, there was your father loaded, and what happened? Well, he was a pretty good old duck, or he seemed like it, and he had seven trucks and a nice business. Not so loud. This duck listens to every word you say. <laughs> and, uh... So I, uh, I told him that uh, perhaps he'd like to give his son-in-law, you know, a job as a general manager or something like that. <laughs> but uh, he said his business was in too good shape to let me have any... <laughs> he made me a truck driver, yeah. I was a truck driver. He made you a truck driver? I was a truck driver. And what'd you do with his truck driver? Well, I, I did pretty well there for a while. Oh, no, you were the truck driver, huh? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. I thought you said he made you a truck driver. I wonder... <laughs> I worked for him for several weeks, and then I asked him about this general manager's job, and it wasn't coming, so I, I quit. I mean, no point in no, staying too long. I think it's silly to stay in any job where you're not general manager. <laughs> well, what happened after that? Well, I found out from my wife that her grandfather was pretty well loaded, too. <laughs> No, he, he was the general superintendent of all the mines in Alabama. You know, an awful lot of mines in Alabama. Yeah. And I said that maybe uh, he could use a general manager or vice president or something. He, uh, he told me... Why don't me you that... throw your hat in the ring for president? <laughs> well, what happened then? What kind of work uh, did he want you to do? Well, I went to work there. I was uh, shooting off the dynamite in the mine. Mm -hmm. And uh, the job... Uh, I didn't like the job too much. You know, Why, you know. were you connected with the dynamite? No, I, I set off the explosive charges, and I, uh, I didn't like it. It uh, didn't look too good. And oh, with that kind of a job, much. you can get to the top in a hurry. <laughs> <laughs> I, I quit that. Well, I, what finally happened? Well, I, I quit, and I uh, told my wife. My wife plays the piano, you know. She's very good. In the mine? No, no. <laughs> and I told her that uh, perhaps we could uh, go to New Orleans or someplace, and... Uh, we could uh, play the piano t together as a team, you know. It looked like a pretty good deal. So we went down to New Orleans on the, with that in mind. And? Well, we... What uh, happened down there in the bayou? Well, we, we didn't do too good uh, down there. It's sad. Uh, she was doing all right. I was having a little trouble myself. I wasn't doing so good. Why was that? Well, I didn't know how to play the piano. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh... No, no, really, really... You mean you had a job as a piano player and you couldn't play the piano? Well, we never got the I first I told you job. to run for president, didn't I? <laughs> no, I, I really, I intended to do the right thing. I was going to learn how to play and... Uh... Oh, sure, you could have picked it up overnight. It's not good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, it's been enlightening talking to you two. I'd like to continue, but now it's time to play You Bet Your Life. Now, uh, you, you run your $20 into more than our other couples, and you'll get a chance at the $1,000 question. I can't tell you how much you have to win, but uh, George is going to remind our listeners. The gold prospector and his partner lead with $200. Here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. You selected barbershop ballads as your category. And after that piano playing you did in New Orleans, you ought to be pretty good at this. Here's your first question. How much will you go for? Uh, we'll go for uh, 15 Okay. All right, what is the name of this old-time favorite? Play, Jerry. No, no, Strawberry Blonde. Strawberry Blonde is right. 
yet. Thank you. You now have $35. Jordan, you got $35, and how much you going to bet this time, my lad? Uh, let's uh, go for... How much do we have? 35. You have 35. 35. Uh, thirty four ninety nine. Why don't you get a hold of yourself, girl? <laughs> <laughs> 30, 30, uh, how much is it? 34, 34, 90, 98. We'll save two cents. You're saving two cents. Two okay, cents. here 34, we go. 34, 98, right? Give me the title of this song, Mr. Fielding. Can't you hear me calling Carolina? Can't you hear me calling Carolina? You have now climbed to sixty-nine dollars and ninety-eight cents. And here's your third question: uh, How much are you going to bet? Sixty-nine ninety-seven. That all right with you? Uh, That's okay. 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 Let's see if you can identify this one. Play, Jerry. Moonlight Bay. Moonlight Bay is right. You've now climbed to one hundred thirty-nine dollars ninety-five cents. It's a good, it, it's a good thing this fellow didn't Shoot take the piano lessons. That's we'll go for all of it. All of it. All, all of it. it. All right. It's your last chance to beat the other couples. You're going to go for all of it. What is the name of this song? Meet me tonight in Dreamland. Meet me tonight in Dreamland is right. Put it there. I'll give it a big kiss. Okay. Put it there. What about me? Before you go away, you wound up with two hundred seventy-nine dollars and ninety cents. Well, pretty good. Thank you. Which means? Oh yes, the results. Benjamin <laughs> on the ball there. Huh? <laughs> and not means... daydreaming. Hey kids, that means that you too get a chance at the DeSoto Plymouth one thousand dollar question in just one minute. Yes. <laughs> When you drive your car to a DeSoto Plymouth dealer for service, you can be sure of this. You'll get friendly service, courteous service, and you'll get the kind of service that will mean many extra miles of top performance from your car at a price that's fair. You see, the mechanics at your DeSoto Plymouth dealers are skilled men, master technicians, with years of on-the-job experience. What's more, these DeSoto Plymouth dealer mechanics get regular periodic training in the latest factory methods, so they're always up on the latest and best methods of servicing your car. They have the most modern tools and equipment to work with, helping them to do a better job faster, which means a real saving to you. And if your car should ever need them, your DeSoto Plymouth dealer has ready access to the correct factory-designed and approved parts. So for friendly, courteous, efficient service for your car, it will pay you to drive in at the famous sign of better service. The friendly sign of a DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Well, here comes Mr. O'Brien and his partner, the winning couple, Groucho, all set for the DeSoto Plymouth $1,000 question. Right back. Well, here you are, my lad and lassie. Here we go for $1,000. <laughs> I'll give you 15 seconds to decide on a single answer between you. Think carefully and please no help in the audience. Here it is. One of Great Britain's most important institutions is known as the Old Lady of Threadneedle Street. It was founded in 1694. For $1,000, what is the Old Lady of Threadneedle Street? What's the answer you two have decided on? Cabinet or Prime Minister or something? No, I'm sorry. It's the Bank of England. Oh. Correct answer is the Bank of England, so that means the big question next week will be worth $1,500. Well, you lost the big money, but how much did they win the quiz, George? Well, they won $279.90 in the quiz. Well, congratulations and thanks to both of you and to all of our contestants on the show tonight. Thank you, Mr. Be sure to tune in again next Wednesday night at this same time for the Groucho Marx Show, when the big question will be worth $1,500. And don't miss Groucho's television show, also presented by the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America. And remember, all dealers who sell DeSoto also sell Plymouth. Two great cars 
both products of the Chrysler Corporation. And when you drive in, tell them Groucho sent you. Good night, folks, and remember, see the DeSoto Fire Dome 8 tomorrow. The DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America salute the American Automobile Association on the occasion of its golden jubilee for 50 years of service to the motorist and the nation. You Bet Your Life, transcribed from Hollywood, is produced by John Goodell, directed by Robert Dwan and Bernie Smith, music by Jerry Fielding. This is George Fenneman signing off for the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast. Ladies and gentlemen, the secret word tonight is tree. T R E E. Really? You bet your life. The more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers of America present Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life, the comedy quiz series produced and transcribed from Hollywood. And here he is, the one, the only... I accept the nomination. Oh, that's me! (laughs) Well, here I am again with $1,500 for one of our couples. Don't even say the secret word. The duck will come down and pay him 100 bucks. The word tonight is tree. We asked for people with interesting occupations to volunteer tonight, and just before we went on the air, uh, these are the two that were selected. Laura B. Winner and William Thomas meet Groucho Marx. Welcome to the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers. Say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common word, something you see every day. Miss uh, Laura B. Winner, eh? That's right. Where are you from, Laura? I was born in Tazewell County, state of Illinois, near Peoria, Illinois. Oh, that's where those breweries are. I was born in Tazewell County. You were born where? In Tazewell County. I wasn't born in Peoria County. Oh. Well, is that on the outskirts of the brewery? Well, uh... There was uh, breweries in our locality. Uh-huh. Could you give us, uh, uh, I don't like to ask this question, but could you give us an approximate, uh, uh, your approximate age, uh, roughly, you know? Forty-six. Well, that, that's rough enough. All right. <laughs> Mr. William Thomas? Yes, sir. Got your name backwards, haven't you? Shouldn't your name be Thomas Williams? No, no, William Thomas. Oh. Where are you from? Uh, where are you from, Tom? I was born in downtown Los Angeles, you were born downtown? No, no, I was born near downtown. Oh, well, did your mother get a ticket for parking overtime? <laughs> no, I don't think so. Oh, she played it smart, eh? Parked in a delivery zone, eh? <laughs> Laura, let's get back to you in that brewery. By the way, uh, are you the one they wrote that song about? Uh... Which song is that? Well, I was, I was thinking of Chloe, but I'll accept any song. <laughs> Are you married, uh, Laura? No. Well, that's a shame. An attractive, intelligent girl like you. Uh, would you would you like to get married someday? Not particularly. <laughs> well, that's a very shifty answer, Laura. <laughs> what do you mean, not particularly? Uh... Well, I'm not looking for a husband. No. Why? Why wouldn't you like to get married? Well, I've tried it three times. <laughs> <laughs> Well, so what? The Republicans have tried it four times. <laughs> and they're still punching. Now, Laura, Fenneman says you have an interesting occupation. Uh, what is it you do? Well, I own the uh, Winter PBX Switchboard School in the 6th and Hobart Building here in Los Angeles, California. PBX? Uh... Yes, sir. Uh, well, I, don't, I don't quite understand. What are you talking about? Uh, well, what PBX... is a PBX? A PBX means private branch exchange. That is the operator that handles the calls in the companies where they have uh, a necessity for many phones, many calls coming in, and the PBX operator is the one that receives the calls first. Uh, Do you think there's a a good future in it for me? Well, the PBX work as uh, operators is very good for elderly gentlemen. (laughs) 
<laughs> that are not, uh, they're not physically able to do manual labor any longer. <laughs> But they have a great deal of gray matter, and they're not ready for the shelf yet. So it really is a good occupation. How would you like it if I came down to your place and pulled all the wires out of your PBX? <laughs> Tom, that's you, Bill. Uh, what, uh, what kind of work do you do? I'm a postman. Oh, really? Well, it's nice to have you here. A little later, we can all play post office. Huh? <laughs> You're a postman, eh? Yes. Postman. I can't think of any postman jokes. Uh, oh, yes. Did you hear about the... Woman who sued the doctor for operating on her husband? Was that the one that opened her mail? Yes, I heard that one. <laughs> You're quite a card yourself, aren't you? <laughs> now, you stay right here and see if you can't win some money. It's been very, very educational talking to you two. I don't know if your name is Tom or Willie now. Which is it? Bill. Will Bill, you? that's good. And I hope you win lots of our money here tonight. See, in just one minute, you're going to play your bet your life for a chance at the $1,500 question. <coughs> right now, I want you to pay attention to something of great importance. Friends, the car you should own is a DeSoto. DeSoto. Designed and built to give you extra comfort, extra safety, and extra performance. Consider these famous DeSoto features. For extra performance... There's the mighty 160-horsepower DeSoto Fire Dome V8 engine, the sensational new engine that gives you all the power you can use while burning regular fuel, not costly premium fuel. You get extra performance, too, from DeSoto Full Power Steering. Full Power Steering, which lets you turn the wheels with just one finger, even when your car is standing still. DeSoto Full Power Steering works for you all the time. Not some of the time. In your DeSoto, you also get the extra comfort of Auroflow shock absorbers, which turn even the roughest roads into boulevards. Of course, you also get famous DeSoto chair-high seats. Talk about extra safety. Huge DeSoto 12-inch brakes give you a safe, sure stop every time. No car in America has bigger brakes. And thanks to DeSoto power braking system... These huge brakes are completely effective with just half the pedal pressure. There are DeSoto safety rim wheels, the wheels which materially reduce the danger of loss of control after blowout. Truly, DeSoto is the finest car value on the road. Tomorrow, go to your DeSoto Plymouth dealers and take the five-mile trial in either the mighty DeSoto Fire Dome V8 or the brilliant Powermaster 6. Convince yourself. Your next car should be a DeSoto. And remember, all dealers who sell DeSoto also sell Plymouth, the low-priced car most like high-priced cars. Here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. You selected meanings of words. Here's your first question. How much will you bet? Oh, $15. Five. No, $15. 15. Come on. 15, okay, 15 All right. If you were loquacious, what would you be? Talkative. Talk talkative is right. <laughs> and you're off to a good start. You have $35. Remember, you're going for $1,500 tonight. Now, how much of the $35 are you going to try this time? 20, 30. Talk up. $34.01. $34.03. $2. All right. We'll sell halfway with you. $34.02. All right. If you right. were emaciated, what would you be? Uh, thin. That's Government. right. Thin is right. Don't go any further. <laughs> You now have $69.02. Here you go. Here's your third question. How much are you going to go for? Um, Talk up, um, kids. Six, six, $69.01, then. Okay. How much? $69.01. $69 cent. If you were irate, what would you be? Angry. Angry, man. Angry is right. You've now climbed to $138.03. How much are you going to bet? All Fast now. Come on. All, all of it. it. All of it. Here's your lay. All right. You're going to bet uh, all of it. If you were obese, what would you be? Fat. Fat is Fat. right. Good boy, Lord. <laughs> yes. Oh, no. No? no? <laughs> you wouldn't kiss each other? Well. With all that Jim money? Huh? <laughs> and you wind up with $276.06. Thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealers.
just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected a man in uniform to be on the show. His name is Private Herb Wiedemann. His partner, also chosen by our audience, is Mrs. Babette Pearson. Folks, meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, youngsters, to You Bet Your Life. Say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common word. It's something you see every day. Babette uh, Pearson, huh? And Herb uh, Wiedemann. That's right. Man in uniform, huh? That's you right. You must be another political candidate, are you? No, I'm not. What are you running for, son? Nothing. I see. You didn't accept the nomination willingly, eh? <laughs> you just prefer to get drafted? That's what I did. Where are you from, General? Boulder, Colorado. Oh. I was born in Glendale, California. Oh. Mrs. Uh, Pearson. Yes. Where, where are you from? I was born in Oskaloosa, Iowa. Mm-hmm. Are, are you married? Yes, I am. Okay. What's your excuse for being here? Are you, are you a candidate? No, I'm a welcome wagon hostess. Uh, a what? Welcome wagon. Welcome wagon? Is that so? I noticed when you walked in here, you, you were wagon, but I didn't realize it... <laughs> I didn't realize it meant welcome. Huh? <laughs> How come you're on the wagon? Did you take the pledge, Babette? And if so, where did you put it? Uh, <laughs> what is a welcome wagon? Well, uh, I call on people to make them more, uh, better acquainted, people when they move new into the community, and uh, tell them about the churches and schools and some of the friendly merchants. Mm -hmm. Well, let's be specific. Now, suppose I moved into your community. What is the procedure? What's the first thing you do? Well, after you have moved, then I would call on you with my little basket. Oh, Red Riding Hood. <laughs> what do you mean with your basket? Are you an undertaker? What have you got in your little basket besides a Tommy gun? Oh, uh, some civic material and uh, some gifts, a uh, free wash job, a uh, bouquet of flowers, a yardstick. Pretty handy stuff, huh? <laughs> How does all this strike you, this kind of stuff? Uh... It strikes me just fine, sir. What does? Let's walk and wagon. <laughs> Would you be interested in a free car wash and some flowers? Uh? Well, I think the Army provides us with everything we need, sir. I guess that's true, but once in a while, don't you soldiers yearn for something soft around your neck? <laughs> like a car wash and a permanent wave? <laughs> they use soft soap, you know. <laughs> what happens when you first get in the Army? Do they meet you with a welcome wagon and a basket of goodies? <laughs> no, sir, but we did get a uh, orientation speech from the commanding general who to told us what the Army expected of us. Mm -hmm. And did you tell the general what you expected of him? <laughs> <laughs> what, did, what, did you, they what did they expect from you? Uh... Well, they expected us to do our best and learn as much as possible, so uh, if and when we get in combat, we'll be able to uh, do our job, job well. Well, I hope you stood right up and told them what you expected of the Army, didn't you? <laughs> That's right, you know, you can do that now. This is the new Army. <laughs> You can tell a general off any time you feel like it. Did you know that? No, I didn't. <laughs> well, you try it sometimes. <laughs> they don't even get mad. Nothing happens except you get shot the following morning. <laughs> but it's still very friendly. They use soft-nosed bullets. And you hardly feel it. <laughs> well, you make a very charming couple, and my advice to both of you is to take a ride in the new DeSoto Fire Dome 8. And you'll live happily ever afterwards. All right, now you're going to play your bet your life. You beat our other couples, and you'll get a chance at the $1,500 question. I can't tell you how much you have to win, but George is going to remind our listeners. The postman and his partner won $276.06, and the secret word is tree. Here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. You selected male and female of the species. Here's your first question. How much will you bet? This is Mr. Fenneman. How do you do? This is, uh, this is Bobette. She has a welcome wagon. Fifteen dollars. <laughs> You're going to bet fifteen dollars. Uh huh. Okay. All right. Are you ready, soldier? Ready. Sir. Do you acquiesce? Are you in full accord with this uh, decision? Positively. All right. Now, what do you call a male duck? Gander. You have to decide on one answer between you now. Oh. Duck. 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 I'm sorry. It was named after a hotel in Chicago, the Drake. Drake. <laughs> <laughs> you dropped down to five dollars. Well, that's a shame. That's too bad. Well, remember, you're going for fifteen hundred dollars tonight, and that's the big money. Now, how much of the five dollars are you going to try this time? Two. Two. Two dollars. All right. What do you call a male sheep? Two. Talk it over. Yeah. A ram. A ram is right. <laughs> Well, you're on your way again. You have $7. Here's your third question. How much are you going to bet? 
Three. Okay. Three dollars. Oh, this is this is this is duck soup. Now, what do you call a male goose? Gander. A gander. That's right. It was. It was named after a hotel in Chicago. A gander. <laughs> You now have ten dollars. Now you have ten dollars, and it's your last chance to beat the other couples. How much are you going to bet? Talk it up. Ten dollars. Ten dollars you're going to bet. What do you call a female rabbit? Doe. That's right. It was named after the Treasury in Washington. A doe is right. And you wind up with twenty dollars, but I don't think that's enough. Is it, Groucho? No, I, I don't think no. so. I think we ought to give them a chance to uh, win some real money here. I'm going to give you one more question. You get your uh, get this right, and it'll bring your winnings up to twenty-five dollars. Who is, no, no coaching, please. Who is buried in Grant's tomb? <laughs> Charles Grant is right. <laughs> Thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers. Uh, Groucho. Yes? Uh, before we go on here tonight, I... Yes. Uh, well, I you s- are on here tonight, aren't you? I mean, before we go on with the show. Oh, before you proceed with the show is what you mean, huh? Yes, before we proceed with the show, yes, yes. I, I th- like Let's to mention... be specific about this. <laughs> I'll try to be. Yes. I wanted to mention that um, I bought one of your record albums. You did? Well, I appreciate it. And it's very charming, really. Well, I- I'm astonished that you're so surprised, George. Huh? <laughs> yes, I guess I shouldn't be that surprised, should I? Uh, I was sort of hoping maybe you'd tell the, the people here oh, about it. very nice of you, George. That's the Decker album that I made with Victor Young's orchestra. We did six songs by Calman Ruby, and uh, songs like Captain Spaulding and uh, Omaha, Nebraska, and Dr. Hackenbush, and they're on sale at all the record stores, and I understand they're going very well, and I hope you'll all drop in and buy one of these uh, recordings before they're all gone, because they're going like hotcakes, <coughs> and uh, some of the songs sound like hotcakes, but I, <coughs> I trust you'll all go out and purchase one of these records, otherwise I will be a public charge. <laughs> Now, who is next on the agenda? That's what they always say at the American Legion, the Shrine, places like that. Well, we have some... I, new... What do you know what that means, agenda? Uh, do I, I, I... I don't know what it means, and I don't want to embarrass you. List, you know. I think. Is that what it means? I'm not sure. I mean, a boat can have a list without having an agenda, <laughs> can it? We invited Well, some... look it up after the show, will you? <laughs> We have some newlyweds for you, Groucho. Really? Yeah. I'll were... take half of them. <laughs> I'll take the distaff side. <laughs> they were uh, selected by our studio audience just before we went on the air, and I'd like to have you meet them now. Well, how nice. Mr. and Mrs. Robert Donnelly, meet Groucho Marx. Well, look at this. Newlyweds, eh? Well, welcome for the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers, and for me, too. Say the secret word and take home $100. It's a common word, something you see every day. Bob, where are you from? Patterson, New Jersey. Well, uh, how old are you? 30. 30? Mm-hmm. And uh, Mrs. Donnelly, uh, I presume that's you. Uh, What is your front name? Ia. Beg your pardon, what was that again? Ia. I thought that's what you said. (laughs) My Ia's aren't what they used to be. (laughs) Oh, McDonald had a farm. (laughs) Ia, (laughs) Ia, (laughs) Ia. Is that named after you? uh... I don't think so. Mrs. Uh, Donnelly, uh, how how do you spell your name? (laughs) Ia. You write a letter. You say you can get through fast, can't you? <laughs> How old are you? Uh... Twenty-five. Where are you from, Ia? Yeah? Uh, I was from Kansas City originally, but I came out here several years ago. Uh-huh. I well, live in California well, you now. Live, well, that's life. Here today and gone tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> what made you decide to come to Los Angeles? Uh, was it Ia? No, uh, I was out here for a while during the war, Groucho, and decided to come out again. Oh, you were in the service then? Or? Yeah. How did you happen to meet Ia? Well, I was driving along one of the Los Angeles streets, and uh, uh, she was standing on a corner waiting for the traffic light to change in a halter and shorts. And I uh, was watching her. She sounds like a horse. (laughs) I was watching her instead of watching where I was driving, and I smashed into the car in front of me. So a lot of people came around, and uh, uh, I asked her for her phone number, and just in case I needed a witness. What kind of an impression did Hot Rod Charlie make on you at this uh, place meeting? I know what kind of an impression he made on the car in front of him. Well, I was very impressed well, with him, yes. He... Was it a whirlwind courtship? Uh, did you get married on the corner there? Or... <laughs> no. Well, tell us about it. Was it exciting? Well, it was pretty exciting. Uh, what took place? Uh... Well, while I was courting her, she had her appendix out. And, uh, was this on the corner? <laughs> no. <laughs> well, what happened? Well, her uh, 
we both like movies. We went to a lot of movies together, about 12 a week. Uh-huh. And uh, our cat gave birth to seven kittens in an old tree in the backyard. <laughs> You said cat, and that's the secret word. We change it from tree to cat. Now, and you, uh, you split a hundred dollars between you. You get fifty, and he gets fifty. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How about the proposal? Was it romantic? Oh yes, it was very romantic. It was after dinner, and we were playing beautiful classical music on the record player. You're pretty shrewd, huh? You really <laughs> set the scene. <laughs> Bob, did you get down on one knee when you proposed? No, I was washing dishes. <laughs> Before you were married? <laughs> Brother, were you hooked? <laughs> well, that scene must have been very romantic. Two young lovers in front of the sink holding dishpan hands. <laughs> in a frenzy of passion, Bob <laughs> squeezes the dish rag and she says yes. <laughs> and he says, will you be my little Brillo forever and ever? <laughs> well, you make a very engaging couple, even if you are married. <laughs> now, Bob, do you have any pet names for her? Oh, yeah, I call her, uh... I call her Squash. Isn't that romantic? (laughs) Why do you call her Squash? Well, every time I lie on the sofa in the front room, she sits on my stomach. Well, that's logical. I suppose if she sat on your head, you'd call her Cabbage. (laughs) What kind of work do you do, uh, Bob? Well, I'm an apprentice glass blower. Mm-hmm. Now, what does an apprentice glass blower blow? Do you just hang around doing nothing until 5 o'clock and then blow? <laughs> no, we uh, make all kinds of glass products neon mm-hmm. lighting and uh, medical tubing, vials, goblets, glasses, you bottles. Manufactured goblets? Yeah. I always thought a gobbler was a small sailor filled with wine. <laughs> <laughs> Did you like that one, mate? That was pretty good, but I've heard better. <laughs> well, let's hear the one that uh, cracks them up down at the glassworks. <laughs> let's well, hear it. There's, uh, there's a sta- the, the standard one about uh, the glass blower that comes to work with the hiccups, and he blew 115 percolator tops before they could stop him. <laughs> <laughs> Well, let's go back to where your wife was sitting on your stomach. <laughs> well, you're a very nice young couple, and I hope you win lots of money here tonight. Now, what would you do if you won $1,500? Oh, I think I'd put it in an account for Deborah. Deborah? Well, that's very nice. Who is she? Some dish down at the glass factory? <laughs> no, Deborah is the name we've decided to give to our first child. Well, that's a very pretty name, but uh, won't he feel sort of embarrassed on his <laughs> on his 19th birthday if he gets a shaving mug with Debbie on it? <laughs> All right, now it's time to play your bet your life. Run your 20 bucks into more than our other couples, and you'll get a chance at the $1,500 question. Can't tell you how much you have to win, but George is going to remind our listeners. The postman and his partner still lead with $276.06. Here we go. Let's see how high I can budget $20. You selected stars of foreign movies. That's a pretty tough one. Here's your first question. How much will you bet? And one answer between you on the answers. Fifteen. Fifteen. Who starred as Hamlet in the Academy Award movie? Lawrence Olivier. Right. Lawrence Olivier. Off to a good start, you have $35. I forgot. They saw 12 movies in a week. Remember you're going... (laughs) You're going for $1,500 tonight. How much of your $35 are you going to try this time? $34.99. All right. Who was the ballet dancer who starred in Red Shoes and Tales of Hoffman? Uh, Moira Shearer. Moira Shearer is right. Really climbing, you have $69.99. Here's your third question. How much will you bet? $69.98. Who played the title role in The Private Life of Henry VIII? Charles Lawton. Right. <clears throat> you now have one hundred thirty-nine dollars ninety-seven cents. And is your last chance to beat the other couples? How much of this vast sum are you going to bet this time? Uh, bet it all. 
Shoot the works. Who played the lead in Elephant Boy? Sabu. Sabu is right. <laughs> now, kiss him like you did when you had the halter on. <laughs> now, here's the news. You wind up with $279.94. And that means that you, our young married couple, get the chance in just one minute at the DeSoto Plymouth $1,500 question. <laughs> Friends, I'd like to remind you about getting your car ready for colder weather. Uh, be sure to tell them, George, there's a lot more to it than just getting antifreeze and having your oil changed. Well, that's right. If you expect your car to start on the coldest winter mornings, to shift smoothly, to operate efficiently, then the place for you to take it right away is to a DeSoto Plymouth dealer's. First, for easier shifting on even the coldest days, your transmission will get the proper lubricants. For quicker winter starting, your battery will be checked. To handle the increased electrical load of winter driving, the DeSoto Plymouth dealer mechanics will step up the generator and check your spark plugs. The brakes of your car are especially vital in bad weather, so they'll be carefully serviced for safer winter stopping. The master technicians at your DeSoto Plymouth dealers will tune the engine of your car, too, to make sure it will give you economical operation mile after mile. And, of course, you'll get the proper oil, your radiator will be cleaned and flushed, you'll get a good antifreeze, all the things your car needs to give you worry-free operation, even in the coldest weather. And believe me, you'll be amazed how little you pay for all this expert service for your car. So drive in for that cold weather checkup tomorrow, wherever you see the famous sign of better service, the friendly sign of a DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Well, here's our young married couple, Groucho, all set for the DeSoto Plymouth $1,500 question. All right, now, uh, nice and quiet. Here we go for $1,500. Give you 15 seconds to decide on a single answer between you. Think, so think carefully, and please, no help from the audience. Here it is. I'm sure everyone is familiar with a perennially popular poem which begins with the line, It was the night before Christmas. For $1,500, tell me the name of this children's classic. You got 15 seconds. All right, what's the answer you two have decided upon? A visit from St. Nick? You're absolutely right. <laughs> You notice how her attitude has changed since they won the big money. Huh? Well, that's right. You win $1,500. You wouldn't kiss him that much on the $169. And <laughs> uh, you won $100 in the, uh, for the secret way? Yeah, and $279. And the, figure the whole thing up, uh, Fenneman, and shove it <laughs> under my door. Huh? How much? Come on, I'm fast. I got it right here. $1,879.94. <laughs> Not working out all right, now what, what, are you go, what are you going to do with all that swag? Well, I think we'll put it in a savings account, Groucho. Well, that's uh, a very for the future. way, yes. <laughs> well, congratulations. From the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast, you bet your life. Be sure to tune in again next Wednesday night at the same time for the Groucho Marx Show, when the big question will be worth $1,000. And don't miss Groucho's television show, also presented by the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America. And remember, all dealers who sell DeSoto also sell Plymouth. Two great cars, both products of the Chrysler Corporation. And when you drive in, tell them Groucho sent you. Good night, folks, and remember... See DeSoto, fire dough, mate... Tomorrow Folks, here's a reminder from the National Safety Council Slow down at sundown You Bet Your Life Transcribed from Hollywood is produced by John Goodell Directed by Robert Dwan and Bernie Smith Music by Jerry Fielding 
This is George Fenneman signing off for the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast. Take a word, the duck. The duck here will come down and pay him $100 in cash. The word tonight is water. Something I have very little contact with. Uh, Groucho, uh, we asked for some engaged couples just before we went on the air tonight. Oh, how nice. And um, just before we went on the air, Miss Dorothy Hildebrand and Mr. Eddie Kretz were selected to be on the show. And here they are. Folks, meet Groucho Marx. Well, welcome, welcome, youngsters, for the DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common word, something you'll find around the house. Miss Dorothy Hildebrand, eh? Mm-hmm. And uh, Mr. Eddie Kretz, a boy and a girl, eh? <laughs> <laughs> uh, where are you from, Dorothy? Los Angeles, family 31. And uh, what is your hometown, Eddie? Pomona. Pomona, eh? Huh? What's your nickname, son? I'm sure your pals don't call you uh, Mr. Kretz. Well, they wouldn't dare. <laughs> Cracks means scratch, I think, in German. <laughs> now, I call says, well, I, I started from Kratz when I was a boy. <laughs> Anyhow, it's a good, noble, uh, Ameri- German-American name, isn't it? Yeah. Isn't it? <laughs> well, you're not sure of it, are you? Well, uh, what, is, what do they call you, uh, Eddie? Well, uh, I have been called Hot Shoe. <laughs> Hot shoe? Me. <laughs> you mean you say hot shoe and somebody says gesundheit? <laughs> Why do they call you hot shoe? Are you, uh... Well, I mean, I'm pretty lively with the... They feet. don't like to stay in one place for a long, long time, I guess. Oh, you're a rover, in other words. Oh, yeah. oh a vagabond, huh? <laughs> Song of the road and all that sort of thing, yeah. Do you, do you have a pet name, too, uh, Dorothy? Well, some of my friends call me Frosty. Frosty? Uh-huh. Well, uh, you can overcome that, you know. Uh... <laughs> I understand you're engaged, uh, Hotfoot. Uh, when is the fatal day? Well, I'm not quite made of mine yet. <laughs> That's what you think. <laughs> Footy, you're living in a fool's paradise. <laughs> And uh, what about you, Frosty? How far has this engagement progressed? Well, it depends upon the army. If he's taken in, well, we'll have to wait till he's out. But if he's rejected, we'll get married right away. Well, I thought I'm, I'm glad you finally made up your mind. <laughs> do, do you have a job, Frosty? Yes, I do. I work in the uh, county hospital as a cashier. Cashier? Mm-hmm. Oh, do you have to pay to go to the hospital? Oh, no. Just to get out. <laughs> I'm sure she's used that joke before. <laughs> what sort of work do you do, uh, Hotfoot? I work for my dad as a mechanic. What kind of a mechanic do you do? Well, um, auto bill. Repairing your father? Is that what you do? <laughs> you have riparian rights or something? <laughs> Have you given uh, any thought to the obligations and responsibilities that are involved in matrimony? Oh, yes. I'd, uh, I'd have to stay home a little more at night, I guess. 
That's a kind of an ambiguous answer there. <laughs> and I'll thank you not to be more specific. <laughs> I'm curious about today's young lovers, I'll put to. When you want some excitement, what do you do? Do you look at stereoptic and slides? <laughs> well, if we go for a ride. Well, those slides can be pretty exciting. You <laughs> go for a ride, you say? Yeah. <laughs> How, how do you mean exciting? Do you mean when you stop riding and start parking? Well, you're going to get married anyhow. Well, I'm clean here, huh? It's kind of hard to park I mean, on a motorcycle. I mean, that's what I was referring to. You can go for a ride on a motor. Yeah, on a motorcycle? Yeah. You call that exciting? Well, I mean, have you ever sat with a beautiful girl and looked at stereotypic and slides? <laughs> with all the lights turned out? I often wonder what was on those slides. <laughs> now, after you, after you married, uh, Eddie, uh, are you going to continue riding your motorcycle? Yes. <clears throat> I, I thought it would. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You're not very sure, are you? Sure, I mean, uh, that's what I... Are those what your plans at the moment? Well, it's not at the moment. I mean, you mean after your trap? Is this agreeable with you, Frosty? Well, you won't have much time to ride motor after we get married. <laughs> You're going to raise little pup up, then, eh? Well, you're a nice couple, and uh, I wish you luck as you travel down the bumpy road of life. <laughs> Both Frosty and Hotfoot. Now, in just one minute, you're going to play your bet your life for a chance at the $1,000 question. And now, uh, right now, here's some advice I want you to listen to very carefully. Car Master 6. Here we go. Let's hear how I can give you $20. From our list of 20 categories, you selected number 19, which is sporting terms. Here's your first question. How much will you bet? Mm-hmm. 15. Talk it out. 15. 15. Fifteen. In what sport is the expression touche used? Sword fighting. Well, that's close enough. Man, same thing. Uh, and you're off to a good start. You have thirty-five dollars. Remember, you're going for a thousand dollars tonight. How much of your thirty-five will you bet now? Okay. Thirty. All right. In what sport is the expression lob used? L O B. Talk it over and take a guess if you don't know. <laughs> Take a guess. Mm. Well, you should have tried anyhow. It's tennis. You should have known. Oh, right? well, you played yeah, tennis. Oh, that's the high ball, you know. You have five dollars. Oh, well, that's too bad. Here's your third question. How much of the five would you try? Now, don't be discouraged. Half of it. Two and a half. From what sport are the expressions dribble and jump ball used? Uh, basketball. Oh, that's right. Now you have seven and a half. You have dollars, and it's your last chance to be the other couples. How much will you bet? I don't bet at all. Mm-hmm. In what sport is the expression squeeze play used? Baseball. Uh, no. Baseball. Uh, baseball. You should have known that. Oh, that's... National pastime. Well, we, nobody leaves here broke. We're going to give you one more question, and if you get this right, you're going to leave here with $25. You ready? ready. Who is buried in Grant's tomb? <laughs> General Grant is right. Give me $25. Well, you know. Thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plenty Dealer House. Uh, Groucho, just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected a house. Which do you like, a dealer house or dealer? <laughs> I hadn't really given that much thought. Uh, <laughs> well, think about it, Tanner. Oh, I'm like well. <laughs> thinking. I'd like to say that uh, just before we went on the air, uh, we selected a housewife from our studio audience, and her partner is a businessman, Mr. Arthur Laveau. Folks, would you come in here, please, and meet Groucho Marx? I think I like dealer. You do not. I didn't hear that. Well, welcome, welcome to your bet your life. Say the secret word and divide a hundred dollars. It's a common word, something you find around the house. Our house. Uh, Mrs. Uh, Muriel Stetson. They uh, say you're pretty tall. How tall are you, Muriel? I'm six foot and a quarter of an inch. You're six feet and are you... Uh, That's quarter? without shoes. That's without shoes, huh? Well, are you frequently without shoes? <laughs> Occasionally. 
I want to go without you, so yeah. Well, hand them over. I'll wear them, huh? <laughs> well, I'm, I'm sure the quality is every inch as good as the quantity. Thank you. <laughs> what a sickening thing to say to anybody. Arthur <laughs> Levolve, eh? Is that the way you pronounce it, Levo? Levo. Do you like Dila House better or Dila? Dila House. Dila. What would go with Levo? Levo. It sounds like a cow pulling her foot out of the mud. Uh, it's supposed like, to be a French name. A French name. Mm-hmm. Uh, where are you from? Uh, Art Euro? New York City. New York City, huh? Well, that, is that part of France? Uh, <laughs> no, French it's Quarter? A... No. What is a French Quarter? That's two francs, isn't it? <laughs> uh, who do you get for uh, uh, Art Euro? Uh, Pan American World Airways and Company in Mexicana de Aviación. Oh, I'm the same to you. <laughs> Yeah, you work for the uh, Pan American Airlines, is that it? That's correct. I rode one of your planes when I went to the Mexico City to the film festival some time ago. Were you aware of that? Uh, very much so, sir. You were, huh? I didn't know I was that prominent. Uh, well, uh, this may have slipped your mind, Mr. Marsh, but uh, uh, I believe you owe us some money. Six dollars and forty cents. Six dollars and forty cents? It's a lie. I've never been to Mexico City. Or Chico, one of those other now, how come I owe you $6.40? Well, the fact of the matter was that uh, you were busily engaged in dining just before departure. That's true. And uh, you didn't want to leave until you had your food, which, as I recall, was matzo ball soup and bacon and eggs and apple pie. <laughs> so, you must have thought of a League of Nations, I would say. Uh, you wanted to present a united front to the world. <laughs> you were uh, asked if you could continue your meal, and we reluctantly said yes, and you went on board the airplane, promising to send back the dishes. You never did. That'll be $6.40. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine him complaining just because I picked up a few dishes. <laughs> Odd old boy, some of the dishes I picked up in Mexico City. <laughs> serious complaints than yours. <laughs> so you just have to wait your turn. Huh? <laughs> and uh, do you have a job, Muriel? Yes, I model clothes for tall girls, the top fashions of California, and tall togs. Oh, tall togs, huh? Tall togs out of school? Is that what you call it, huh? Why is it you tall girls always marry skinny little runs? How big is your husband, for example? Well, he's a growing boy. He's six foot nine and he weighs 270 pounds. <laughs> hey, he's a big little runt, isn't he? <laughs> now, Mr. Levolve, uh, since you're connected with the airlines, do you do any flying yourself? I mean, on a plane, of course. Uh, no more. I'm more concerned uh, with the study of flying saucers. Are you still thinking of those dishes I took on that airplane? <laughs> talking about the phenomena in the sky. Oh, well, how, how long have you been interested in flying saucers? About 20 years. Where, where do you think they come from? Well, there are several schools, theories on that score. Uh, uh, some believe that they're from the solar system. Uh, the rest of us who subscribe to extraterrestrial visitors think that they are from another system entirely. Significantly enough, the Air Force in 1947 did make the guard of stating that if they were extraterrestrial, they probably came from the vicinity of a star known as Wolf 359, which is about 12 light years away. Wolf? What is the name of it? 359. It's right near Al Flynn, isn't it? <laughs> well, what is all this galloping crackery uh, doing here, do you think? I believe they are watching us, uh, evaluating our civilization, trying to cope with a problem of how to get in touch with us. Well, with the shape the world's in, if they're smart, they'd be over-bothering Venus instead of us. <laughs> well, I must say, it's been interesting talking to you two, and I hope you win a reasonable amount of money in the quiz. That's about as God of a statement as I expect to make tonight. Now, here we go. Let's see how high I can build it. Uh, right now, you're going to play your bet your life. I mean, bet your, I bet your life. Uh, beat all other couples, and you get a chance at the $1,000 question. Our first couple lost all their money, so these people have a clear field. And the secret word is water. 
There we go. Let's see how high I can build you twenty dollars. You select the famous man of history. How is your first question? How much will you bet? Fifteen. Talk up, kid. Fifteen. Seventeen. 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 Okay. Seventeen dollars. All right. Richelieu is a famous man of what country? France. France is right. You're on your way. You have thirty-seven dollars. So I'm going for a thousand dollars tonight. How much you with thirty-seven when you risk this time? Thirty-five. Paul von Hindenburg was a soldier of what country? Germany. Germany is correct. You now have seventy-two dollars. How much in the seventy-two are you going to try? Seventy. Okay. Seventy. Seventy. All right. Uh, Benito Juarez was a leader of what country? Mexico. Mexico is correct. You now climb the one hundred and forty-two dollars. Needs your last chance to beat the other couple. Uh, couple. How much will you bet? One hundred and forty-two dollars. Have you discussed this? Uh... Well, that's all right with me. Okay. <laughs> From what country was Oliver Cromwell? Great Britain. England is okay. We don't like it. You'll wind up with two hundred and eighty-four dollars. Thanks and good luck from the Desoto Plymouth Dealer. You like Dealer or Dealer? <laughs> uh, Groucho, we have a couple of people with interesting jobs for you now. Uh, Mrs. Daisy Tate was chosen because of her occupation, and Mr. Russell K. Hart is a special guest. So, folks, would you come in and meet Groucho Marx? <laughs> Welcome, folks, with the Desoto Plymouth Dealer. <laughs> Mrs. Daisy Tate, eh? You're very pretty, Mrs. Tate. Uh, shall we have a tea da tea? <laughs> All right. Where are you from, Daisy? Selma, Alabama. Selma? Did you come with a banjo on your knee, uh, Selma? <laughs> no, but I know the man that did. You did? <laughs> uh, Daisy, the gentleman from down south ever ask a lady her age? Never. Well, I'm a skunk from up north. <laughs> Daisy? 79. 79? <laughs> well, you're the prettiest 79 I've seen, Daisy. Make you my best person. Now, well, Daisy, Fenneman, uh, Mr. Fenneman, says you have an interesting occupation. What do you do? Are you a steeplejack? No, I'm a model. A model? <laughs> Oh, I beg your pardon, Daisy. That was just an old northern reflex. <laughs> You're a model, you say? Yes. What, what kind of a model? Uh, from uh, portraiture, commercial, Portrait. illustration. Commercial portraits? Uh, yes, for instance, uh, in the Leader's Home Journal, my last work was I was uh, a married woman with a son that I was wild about. And I saw that he was going to marry a woman that I didn't think he should marry. But he married her. And finally, my son had to go to New York. He just couldn't stand the gas. Uh, was he a fisherman? <laughs> no. Now, Russell K. Hardy, you'll forgive me, sir, if I devoted my attention to this charming little lady. <laughs> oh, brother, cotton wouldn't melt my mouth with it. <laughs> Russell Keyhart, what is the key for? Crumb. <laughs> Did you say crumb? Is that whole wheat or pumpernickel? <laughs> where are you from, crumb? And yeah, where do you or where do you crumb from? <laughs> no noise. Are you married, Mr. Hart? Yes, I am. Oh, then in your case, it's two hearts and three-quarter time, eh? No, no. no three hearts. Sorry, I'll bid four space. <laughs> How did you meet Mrs. Hart, uh, Russ? Well, it was in the eighth grade in grammar school. I sat behind her. And uh, she never liked me very much because I used to put her pigtails in the inkwell. And I didn't pay very much attention to her for the next four years. And then when I was a senior in high school, I dated her. Uh, she was living in the old soldier's home at the time. Now, you were after her for her pension? Is that right? No, you see, her father uh, worked there. Oh. And, uh... Dipping pigtails or something? <laughs> well, he was the chief clerk in the treasurer's office. Oh. Well, you know what you were doing, eh? <laughs> 
Hartman says you're a special guest, Mr. Hart. Why is that? Are you a model, too? No, I guess it's because I'm the mayor of Santa Monica. Really? <laughs> you look so honest, Mr. Hart. <laughs> On behalf of the 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers, I welcome you and present you with this key to a new DeSoto Fire Dome 8. Thank you very much. That is the key. Now, all you have to do now is go out and buy the car. <laughs> <laughs> now, Mr. Hart, how long have you been mayor of Santa Monica? About 18 months. 18 months. I'm a babe in the woods about such things as politics. Maybe you can straighten me out on a few things. For example, uh, after your mayor, will you be an ambassador in Mexico? <laughs> do you have? Is your city pretty clean? Yes, it's really very clean. In other words, since you've been May, you've been cleaning up. You got it? <laughs> I'll confess, Your Honor. Well, to tell you the truth, Groucho, all I receive in a monetary way for being mayor of the city of Santa Monica is $50 a month. The city council is made up of a group of seven professional businessmen who are elected to follow out the good old American system of a representative government. And they're taking their turn on the city council as a civic duty. And certainly not for the $50 a month that they get out of it. Well, it's, it's wonderful to hear that, Mayor. <laughs> you deserve a lot of credit. And if all the politicians listening uh, took a page out of your book, you could be sure of one thing, Mayor. You'd never get those pages back. <laughs> you may have, but I want, I, I want you to know we appreciate you coming down here tonight, and I'm sure you're a fine public official. And if you're ever investigated by Kefauver, my advice is buy a ticket to Mexico City. <laughs> right now, you two are going to play your bet your life. Lend you 20 bucks and more than our other couples, and you'll get a chance at the $1,000 question. I can't tell you how much you have to win, but George is going to remind our listeners. Our second couple, Mr. Laveau and his partner, are leading with $284. Here we go. Let's see how I can build you $20. You selected States of the Union. Here's your first question. How much will you bet? And talk right up, Daisy. You're a partner in this. Nineteen. Nineteen. How much? Nineteen dollars. All right. Uh, Lake uh, Okeechobee, I guess it is. O-K-E-E-C-H-O-B-E-E. -E -E. Okeechobee. Okeechobee, huh? No. I haven't been down there in a hundred years, so I wouldn't know. It's one of the largest freshwater lakes in the United States. In what state is it located? Okeechobee. And if you don't know, take a guess. New York. Well, you're, you're quite a ways off, Mayor. It's Florida. <laughs> now I have one dollar. Now you're down to one dollar. Might as well bet it all, hadn't we? <laughs> all right, Randy, you're going to put $1,000 tonight. There's no telling how it'll come out, you know. You're going to bet the dollar. Franklin D. Roosevelt used to visit Warm Springs for treatment and rest. In what state is this located? Georgia. Georgia is correct. Oh, well, you don't have $2. Here's your next question. How much of the two? What's the better at all? Bet it all. Okay. Purdue, Wabash College, and Culver Military Academy are just three of the many institutions of higher education located in one state. What is the name of it? Indiana. Indiana is right. Now you have four dollars. It's your last chance to be the other couple. How much are you going to go for? Four dollars. Uh, four dollars. Chesapeake Bay with its famous oysters, bisects, and uh, an eastern state. What is the name of the state? Maryland. Maryland is correct. <laughs> Well, they wind up with only $8. Nobody okay. leaves me with $8. I'm going to give you one more question. This is for $17, which will bring your total up to $25. And no coaching, please. You ready? Mm -hmm. What fruit is used in lemonade? Lemon. Lemons is right. Go ahead, Amy. Since these people wound up with only $8, that means that our second couple, Mr. Laveau and his partner, with $284, in just a minute, get the chance at the DeSoto Plymouth $1,000 question. Thanks. Thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Dealer service shop. You'll know your brakes are right. You'll drive with a feeling of security. So have your brakes checked tomorrow, where you'll see the famous sign of better service. 
the friendly sign of a DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Well, here comes Mr. Laveau and his partner, the winning couple, all set for the $1,000 DeSoto Plymouth question. Groucho? Right in here. Well, you'll be able to buy a lot of sauces if you win this money tonight. <laughs> here we go for $1,000. I'll give you 15 seconds to decide on a single answer between you. Think carefully and please no help from the audience. Here it is. In Shakespeare's Henry IV, Henry V, and Merry Wives of Windsor, there appears a cowardly braggart whose good humor and wit have endeared him to millions the world over. For a thousand dollars, I want you to identify this genial fellow. Talk it over. Two have decided upon. We hope that it's pistol. No, I'm sorry. Uh, the correct answer is false, sir. Oh! That means the big question next week will be worth $1,500. Well, you lost the big money, but how much did they win on the quiz? Uh, $284 in the quiz. Well, congratulations and thanks to you, to both of you, and to all of our contestants on the show tonight. Remember that the dealers who sell DeSoto also sell Plymouth. The low-priced car, most like high-priced cars. DeSoto, Plymouth, two great cars. Both products of the Chrysler Corporation. Friends, go in and see a DeSoto Plymouth dealer tomorrow. And when you do, tell them Groucho sent you. Be sure to tune in next week, same time, you'll bet your life. Brought to you by more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers of America. And remember... with a reminder from the National Safety Council. Keep your wits and windshield clear. Ladies and gentlemen, the secret word tonight is table, T-A-B-L-E. Really? You bet your life. The more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers of America present Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life, the comedy quiz series produced and transcribed from Hollywood. And here he is. The one, the only... Groucho! Sorry, he's taking the five-mile trial. Oh, that's me! <laughs> well, here I am again with $1,500 for one of our couples. Groucho, we have some young single people for you tonight. They were selected just before we went on the show. Uh, Miss Madonna McGlon and Dr. John D. Chudikoff meet Groucho Marx. Wait a minute, Fenema. What's that name again? Uh, Chudikoff. Kazuna. <laughs> <laughs> well, welcome, youngsters, for the Soto Plymouth dealers. Say the secret word and divide a hundred dollars. It's a common word, something you see every day. Miss uh, Madonna uh, McGlone. Is that right? That's right. And Dr. John uh, D. Chudikoff. What's your hometown, uh, Madonna? Minneapolis, Minnesota. Minneapolis, huh? Isn't that near St. Paul? Yes, it's one of the Twin Cities. Oh. How old are you, uh, Madonna? Uh, Twenty-eight. Twenty-eight? Well, you mm -hmm. don't look it. Well, thank you. thought you were about 27. Huh? <laughs> John uh, uh, D. Chudikoff, uh, where are you from, uh, Johnny? I was born in uh, southwest Los Angeles, uh, about a stone's throw from USC. How old are you, uh, John? Thirty-one. And how did you meet your wife, John? I'm not married. Don't change the subject. How did you meet your wife? <laughs> what are you doing now, Mr. Chudikoff? Uh, Dr. Chudikoff, if you don't mind. Oh, yes. No, I, I don't mind. <laughs> it's your patience I'm thinking about. <laughs> well, who are you doing now, Mr. Chudikoff? <laughs> By the way, Doctor, I have a little pain in my shoulder after the show. Could you uh, fix it up for me? I'm afraid not, Groucho. I'm a veterinarian.
Where is your abattoir, Doc? <laughs> I operate the Valley Animal Hospital in Van Nuys. You do? You operate on the whole hospital? Or... <laughs> why, why do they call you a doctor, Doc? Well, our training is uh, very similar to that of the MDs, and I have the degree of Doctor of Veterinary Medicine. Well, what's the reason for that? Do you have to practice on humans before they'll trust you with an animal? <laughs> <laughs> why is it similar? Well, our training is uh, very similar, and the, the studies in the anatomy of an animal is uh, also very similar to that of the human, except uh, animals do not have a collarbone or an appendix. Do you have an appendix, uh, Madonna? No, I don't. Have you got a collarbone? I have two of them. You have two collarbones? Two collarbones. I'm just checking. A man can't be too careful these days. <laughs> I, I had a girl out the other night, and she didn't have an appendix or a collarbone. <laughs> I wonder if that girl really was a kangaroo. <laughs> do you have a job, Madonna? Yes, I do. I'm a nurse. I'm a registered nurse. Mm-hmm. Well, where are you registered? In the American Kennel Club? <laughs> where do you do your nursing? No, I work at Queen of Angels Hospital. It happens to be uh, the largest private hospital west of the Mississippi. We have 501 beds there. Do you work in the operating room? Yes, I do. I don't know why they call it the operating room. Last time I was there, I started operating in the nice chloroformy. <laughs> uh, are you assigned to any particular part of the hospital, you know, in case I get sick? Well, I'm always in the operating room. Oh. Well, what do you have to do to keep on good terms with the doctors? Well, we want to maintain a professional attitude, uh, calling them doctor, standing when they come in the room. You and hop up when they come in the room? Oh, yes. Mm-hmm. Did you know that? Uh, do your dogs do that when you walk in the room? <laughs> they all stand on their hind legs when you walk in? <laughs> well, uh, what are some of the differences between your job and that of a, a regular doctor? Doctor? <laughs> Doc? Well, are you a dry doc or do you drink? Or uh... <laughs> uh, they're very similar. Uh, gosh, oh, it's uh, a bit more difficult for us to diagnose our cases because uh, our our patients can't tell us where it hurts. No, you ought to consider yourself lucky. <laughs> you know the old line: never ask anyone how they feel; they're liable to tell you. <laughs> how, how do you know how much to charge a patient? For example, suppose a cow comes in. What do you, do you find out if she's loaded first? <laughs> and if she is, do you milk her for everything she's got? Well, our fees are quite a bit more reasonable. Uh, for example, an MD will charge around $150 to deliver a baby, where I'll uh, deliver a dozen puppies for about $10. That's very interesting. If a woman doesn't have $150, she can always have a dozen Irish setters. <laughs> I want to ask you a question, Doc, and I want you to be honest about this. What brand of dog biscuits do you smoke? <laughs> now, is it safe working with animals? Isn't there a chance you might catch something dreadful like fleas? <laughs> no, there's not much danger. In fact, in many ways, it's, uh, it's safer to work with animals than with humans. Well, how, for example? Would you mind amplifying that a little well, bit? Well, believe it or not, for example, it would be much safer for a baby to be licked by a dog than to be kissed by a human. You mean it's safer to be kissed by a dog than a human? That's right. Doc, I think I understand why you're not married. (laughs) (laughs) Well, you two have a lot in common, and I hope you'll be very happy together. I now pronounce you man's best friend. (laughs) You're a nice young couple, and I wish you good luck in the immediate future. Because in just one minute, you're going to play your bet your life for a chance at the $1,500 question. First, I want you to pay close attention to some good advice from Mr. Fetterman. Friends, I'd like to remind you about getting your car ready for colder weather. Be sure to tell them, George, there's a lot more to it than just getting antifreeze and having the oil changed. That's right. If you expect your car to start on the coldest winter mornings, to shift smoothly, to operate efficiently... Then, a place to take it right away is to a DeSoto Plymouth dealer's. First, for easier shifting on even the coldest days, your transmission will get the proper lubricants. 
for quicker winter starting, your battery will be checked. To handle the increased electrical load of winter driving, the DeSoto Plymouth dealer mechanics will step up your generator and check your spark plugs. The brakes of your car are especially vital in bad weather, so they will be carefully serviced for safer winter stopping. The master technicians at your DeSoto Plymouth dealers will tune the engine of your car, too, to make sure it will give you economical operation mile after mile. And, of course, you'll get the proper oil, your radiator will be cleaned and flushed, you'll get a good antifreeze. All the things your car needs to give you worry-free operation even in the coldest weather. And believe me, you'll be amazed how little you pay for all this expert service to your car. So drive in for that cold weather checkup tomorrow. Wherever you see the famous sign of better service, the friendly sign of a DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Now, uh, let's see how high I can build you $20. Out of our list of 20 categories, uh, you selected uh, number one, Summer Hits is your category. These songs were all popular during the summer. Now, let's see if you can identify them. Here's your first question. How much will you bet? $19.50. How much? $19.50. $19.50, huh? Okay, play it, Jerry. Kiss of Fire. Kiss of Fire is right. Off to a good start, you have $39.50. All right, remember, you're going for $1,500 tonight. Now, how much of your $39.50 are you going to try? Oh, $39, is that right? $39. All right, let's see if you can identify this one. Play it, Jerry. Walking my baby back home. That is absolutely correct. <laughs> you now have $78.50. How much will you bet? $78. 78 Did you consult with the dog doctor? Yes, I did. <laughs> what is the name of this song? I'm Yours. I'm Yours is right. <laughs> and you'll now have $156.50. What did you say was the name of that song? I'm Yours. I may hold you to that. <laughs> Here's your last chance to beat the other couples. Now, how much of the $156.50 will you risk? The whole thing. The guns are my spoke. All right, play it, Jerry. Play it. Watch me. Watch me. What is it? Watch me, my baby. Watch me is right. With $313. Groucho, we have a housewife and a man with an interesting background. Mrs. Maydell Goodall and Mr. Joseph R. Shearer. So you can come in now, folks, and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, welcome to your Betcha Life. Say the secret word and, uh, right. and you'll win $100. It's a common word, something you see every day. Mrs. Uh, Maydell Gouldall, eh? That's a pretty fancy handle, Maydell. I'll just call you May. Oh, uh, that'd be fine. Oh. <laughs> and you can call me December. <laughs> Where are you from, May? Eh? Oh, I'm from Houston, Texas, but I was reared in San Angelo, Texas. Can't you tell that I'm a Texan from the way I talk? <laughs> I can tell you from Texas, but I didn't know you were reared, that's all. Oh, no. <laughs> Mr. Joseph Shearer, you're a dog doctor, huh? No, oh, I'm you're here. Not? Oh, well, where are you from, Joe? I'm from Lausanne. I beg your pardon? I'm from Lausanne. <laughs> Lausanne, isn't that in the Philippines? Oh, no. Uh, you mean, uh, you think, uh, Lausanne? Well, thanks. I'm always glad to know what I'm thinking. Of. <laughs> where are you from, Joe? From Lausanne. You, go, you persist in saying that, huh? That's, uh, uh, Isn't that what I was thinking of a minute ago? No, you said Luzon in the Philippines. But uh, Luzon is a beautiful town on Lake Geneva in the little country of Switzerland. Oh, in other words, you're, you're a Swiss, huh? That's right. Can you yodel? No. Fine Swiss. Are you? <laughs> you're more uh, towards the cheese type, huh? <laughs> what made you decide to come to the United States? I wanted to learn English. 
I see. What sort of work do you do? Uh, did you smuggle anything in? Uh? No. Nothing, yeah? I'm selling life insurance. You are, huh? Well, isn't it a shame I don't speak English? Huh? <laughs> and, uh, May, uh, what sort of work does your husband do? Well, my husband's in the insurance business, too, Groucho. Well, I'm caught like a rat in a trap. <laughs> Are, are you married, uh, Joe? Yes. No insurance against that, is there? No insurance against that. How did you meet your wife? Through Esperanto. Oh, Esperanto, yes. He's a marriage broker in Acapulco, isn't he? <laughs> I know him very well. Jose Esperanto. <laughs> he also sells uh, trinkets down there. Uh... What's he doing now, Esperanto? I don't know. There's no such man I know of. Esperanto. <laughs> Esperanto is an international language. Oh, I see. Well, uh, uh, tell me about this Esperanto. You say that this is a universal language? Yes. It has taken uh, words, uh, the international words, from all the other international languages, uh, English, French, German, Italian, even Japanese words and Chinese words in it. And no matter where you went, no matter where I went, I always found people who spoke the language. Mm -hmm. Did you ever meet a Mexican named uh, Joe Esperanto down <laughs> Santa Cruz, I think he was. Did you propose to your wife in Esperanto? Oh, yes. Uh -huh. what, did you, what did you say? And did she understand it? I bet you can't. Oh, uh... she was one of my students in, a, in an Esperanto class. So I said to her, uh, uh, Mi petas esto mia et sino. Mm -hmm. Now, how come she didn't call a cop? <laughs> can you speak Esperanto? No, I can't even talk English very well. <laughs> Well, I wasn't going to go into that. I just thought... <laughs> What's the good of me sitting here and trying to insult you if you're going to do it yourself? <laughs> well, it's been interesting talking to you two, and I wish you both good luck in the quiz. Beat our other couples, and you'll get a chance at the $1,500 question. Can't tell you how much you have to win, but George is going to remind our listeners. Dr. Chudikoff and the nurse won $313, and the secret word is table. Here we go. Let's see how I can build you $20. You selected basic astronomy. Here's your first question. How much will you bet? $19 and... 1995. 1995? We know who's bearing Grant's tomb, so we haven't anything to lose, so... <laughs> <laughs> 1995? At least it's only an Oh, so what? I'll get some money back. Anyway, 1995. Okay. The word solar, S-O-L-A-R, refers to what heavenly body? To the sun. That's right. You now have $39.95. Remember, you're going for $1,500 tonight. Now, how much of your $39.99.95 are you going to try? $39.90. $39.90. All right. Okay. $39.90? That's right. $39.90. Okay. What is the name of the planet with nine satellites and an encycling series of rings? Saturn. That's right. Saturn. <laughs> You're really climbing. You have $79.85. Here's your third question. How much of this vast sum are you going to risk this time? You have $79.85. All but five cents. All right. <laughs> $79.80. Is that all right with you, Joe? Well, okay. The largest telescope in the world, 200 inches in diameter, is located on what mountain? Palomar. Palomar is right. <laughs> you now have $159.65. Oh. How much? Ask we them, have $159.65. How much? Ask Wait, them how that much they're betting. <laughs> how much are you betting? All the nickel. Ask them in Esperanto. <laughs> <laughs> They're better. One hundred and fifty-nine dollars and sixty cents. Right. All right. I'm so happy that I'm out of this whole thing. Huh? <laughs> if the sun was totally or partially obscured by the shadow of another heavenly body, the phenomenon would be called what? An eclipse. An eclipse is right. Uh, and, uh, and wait a minute. You now have three hundred nineteen dollars. And 25 cents, and that's in English. I'm sorry. Oh, <laughs> now, how much is that in Esperanto? Uh, three cent tech now to the clean. Yeah. yeah. And the same deal. <laughs> Thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Thank you. And now here's a beautiful girl I'd like to know better. 
with news about another beauty, the 1953 DeSoto. Hello, this is Wendy Barry, and right now I want you to get a pencil and mark down this date, November the 13th. That's the day the stunning new 1953 DeSoto goes on display at your DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Be sure and be at your DeSoto Plymouth dealers on Thursday, November the 13th. Groucho, we invited some prominent uh, Republicans and some Democrats to the program tonight. And uh, just before we went on the air, Mrs. Mildred Younger and Mr. Stanley Long were chosen to be on our show. And here they come, folks. I want you to meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, welcome for the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common word, something you see every day. Mrs. Mildred uh, Younger, huh? You look like you're a very happily married woman. I am. And well, I'm sorry to hear it. <laughs> and you're the Republican. I certainly am. Now, pardon me while I make a shrewd deduction. <laughs> you, old boy, evidently are the Democrat. Obviously, Mr. Marx. Now, what sort of work do you do, uh, Mr. Long? Well, I'm in public relations and advertising work. I see. In other words, you're a huckster, is that it? Well, I wouldn't exactly say that, no. No. Well, you wouldn't, but other people have. <laughs> Mrs. Hung uh, Younger, you told me that you're married, huh? That's right. You're very attractive, you know. Thank you. I'm not sure I approve of the schlemiel you're hooked to. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me something about him. For example, what are his qualifications for taking care of a, an extremely uh, interesting-looking woman? Well, he's an attorney. He was a special investigator for the Federal Bureau of Investigation. He was uh, a member of... <laughs> he was with both G2 and OSS when he was in the infantry during the Second World War. Then he came back and was city prosecutor in Pasadena for a number of years, was recalled into the Air Force where he was a lieutenant colonel with the Office of Special Investigations. He's now an attorney again. <laughs> If your husband is listening, Schlemiel is a Latvian word meaning wonderful, charming fellow. <laughs> All right, now we have the preliminaries out of the way. Let's talk politics. <laughs> Mr. Long, uh, Stanley, uh, how long have you been voting Democrat? All my life. Typical politician, I eh? Started voting at the age of two. <laughs> Mrs. Younger, or Millie, uh, uh, do you uh, object to me calling you Millie? Not at all. You seem so dignified and so sure of yourself. I was a little hesitant about uh, <laughs> calling you Millie, but uh, you can call me Millie, too, I mean, if it will <laughs> make you feel any better. Have you been voting Republican all your life? I've been voting Republican since I was 21. I see. And before that, you voted Democrat? <laughs> <laughs> Got to watch my step around here. I'm going to be absolutely neutral. <laughs> Just call me Adelaide Eisenhower. <laughs> What's your reason for being a Republican, Billy? Well, I believe that the Republican Party offers more to the people. Really? Exactly how much are you offering? Eh? <laughs> You've got us mixed up with the Democrats. <laughs> well, uh, what do you mean by that? I mean... Well, seriously, I, I believe that the Republican Party offers prosperity with peace. I believe that it offers uh, leadership. I believe that it offers a way out of a continual series of careers and international affairs which this nation can afford, neither economically or militarily. I think it offers all of those things that all of those people in the audience expect it to offer, and I, I fully intend to see to it that our party lives up to their expectations. Well, I hope they do. Now, what made you decide to become a Democrat, uh, Stanley? Well, I think probably, Groucho, from the very first uh, time I became cognizant of policies, social economic policies, uh, I became aware of the fact that the Democratic Party was actually the party of the people, the party that the people looked to when they had something to protest about, uh, the party that uh, was not the privileged party in the sense that they cared not uh, what the people did as long as they got along some way or another. And uh, I think that Mrs. Uh, Younger was quite correct when she said that the uh, you had us mixed up. The Democrats have offered a great deal and have delivered a great deal and as long as I can remember. <laughs> Well, 
Well, we're fortunate in that they're both good men. Here, at least, we have two candidates. In a certain country I won't mention, you vote for Joe or else. <laughs> it's been stimulating talking to you two, and I want to say that I admire your energy and courage to fight for something you believe in. Right now, you both have a chance to win. Run your 20 bucks into more than our other covers, and you'll get a chance at the $1,500 question. I can't tell you how much you have to win, but George is going to remind our listeners. Mrs. Gouldall and the Esperanto man lead with $319.25. Here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. You selected odd names of familiar objects. Here's your first question. How much will you bet of the $20 that you have? Fifteen, the island. I think that's sort of extravagant. Well, all right, let's be conservative. How about ten? See, the That's Republicans fine. always want to save money. Huh? <laughs> they want to get their money's worth. <laughs> all right, how much are you betting? <clears throat> Talk it over ten. now. Time's ten. a waste and ten dollars. Okay. What do you call the rimless glasses that perch on the bridge of the nose? Pince nez. Pince nez? I can't pronounce no. it. Yeah, no. I can't. I think it's <laughs> pince nez or something. It's actually, but uh, it's generally called pince nez. But that's the. It's <laughs> On your way, you have $30. Now, how much of your $30 are you going to try this time? $25. i would say $20. <laughs> you, uh, you decide. That's all right. Well, let's make it $25 this time. That's fine. All right. What do you call a strip of cloth uh, cut off to serve as a sample? A, a swatch. Swatch is right, yes. <laughs> you now have $55. This is also a swatch, you know. Huh? <laughs> Here's your third question. How much of the 55 will you bet? It's your choice, this time. Forty. Forty dollars. What do you call the jewel headpiece that resembles a crown and is worn by women in formal dress? Tiara. Tiara is right. You now have ninety-five dollars. And here's your last chance to be the other couples. How much of the ninety-five are you going to try? It's your turn. Seventy-five. Seventy-five. What do you call the little star on a typewriter key used to indicate a footnote? Asterisk. Asterisk, Asterisk is right. <laughs> and you wind up with a grand total of $170. And that means that Mrs. Gouldall and the Esperanto man with $319.25 in just one minute get the chance at the DeSoto Plymouth $1,500 question. Thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Thank you, Carl. Friends, I've just seen a preview of the new 1953 DeSoto, and I want to tell you what a beautiful new car it is. This car has got a... Well, don't worry, folks. There's nothing wrong with your receiver. We just turned off Groucho's microphone so he wouldn't give away the exciting story about the new 1953 DeSoto until the big day. You see, on November 13th, at your DeSoto Plymouth Dealer showroom, the distinguished 1953 DeSoto goes on display for the very first time. Remember the day, Thursday, November 13th. Your first chance to see the beautiful new 1953 DeSoto at your DeSoto Plymouth dealer showroom. And when you do, tell them Groucho sent you. And uh, here's Mrs. Gouldall and the Esperanto man all set for the DeSoto Plymouth $1,500 question. Groucho? All right, here we go for $1,500. I'll give you 15 seconds to decide on a single answer between you. Think carefully, and please no help from the audience. Ready? The air you breathe is composed of a number of gases. For $1,500, which of these gases is present in the largest amount? 78%, in fact. All right, kids, what's the answer you two have decided upon? Oxygen. No, I'm sorry, it's nitrogen. Nitrogen. It's 78% nitrogen, 21% oxygen, and 1% argon, whatever it is. All the others amount to less than one-tenth of 1%. So the correct answer is nitrogen, so that means the big question next week will be worth $2,000. Well, they lost the big money. How much did they win the quiz? Uh, $319.25. Well, congratulations, and thanks to both of you and to all of our contestants on the show tonight. Thank you. The 
Be sure to tune in again next Wednesday night at the same time for the Groucho Marx Show, when the big question will be worth $2,000. And don't miss Groucho's television show, also presented by the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America. And remember, all dealers who sell DeSoto also sell Plymouth. Two great cars, both products of the Chrysler Corporation. Don't forget, folks, on Thursday, November 13th, the distinguished 1953 DeSoto will go on display for the very first time at your DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Make a day to see it, and when you drive in, tell them Groucho sent you. Folks, here's a reminder from the National Safety Council. Twilight reduces visibility. Reduce your speed accordingly. You Bet Your Life, transcribed from Hollywood, is produced by John Goodell, directed by Robert Dwan and Bernie Smith, music by Jerry Fielding. This is George Fenneman signing off for the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast. Ladies and gentlemen, the secret word tonight is heart. H-E-A-R-T. Really? You bet your life. The more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers of America present Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life, the comedy quiz series produced and transcribed from Hollywood. Ladies and gentlemen, on Thursday, November 13th, your DeSoto Plymouth dealer will put on display for the first time what we honestly believe to be the most beautiful car ever built, the distinguished 1953 DeSoto. We'll have more to say about this exciting news in a few minutes. And here he is, the one, the only... You'll have to speak to my campaign manager. Oh, that's me! Well, here I am again with $2,000 for one of our couples. We have a housewife for you, Groucho. You have, eh? Yes. Uh, she was selected from our audience just before we went on the air. Oh, how and, nice. And uh, her partner is a man with an interesting occupation, Mr. Oh. Lewis Spinner. Folks, come on in and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, welcome, welcome for the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers. <laughs> Say the sacred word and divide $100. It's a common word, something you always have with you. And now then, uh, what have we here? A beautiful, bewitching creature. That's what we have. That's a real charmer. Tell me, are you married? Oh, uh, yes. I wasn't speaking to you. I was speaking to Mr. Spinner over here. <laughs> Mr. Spinner, you're one of the most beautiful little charmers I've ever seen. <laughs> Thank you. You know, you look like uh, a little like uh, Adlai Stevenson. I've been told that quite often. Mm. My customers call me the portable Stevenson. The portable Stevens? Uh, I'm kind of sewed off. Oh. Well, are you planning on any whistle stops or anything? I didn't even make up my mind yet I which see. way I am going to work. Well, that's, that's a very canny answer. <clears throat> what is your name? Angel Maria Masco Sotelo. Uh, would you mind repeating that? Angel Maria Masco Sotelo. Well, let me know when you stop at Dallas. Huh? <laughs> Angel, where are you? <clears throat> What's Masco Sotelo. Masco Sotelo. You've got mm -hmm. enough names there for a whole law firm. You know that? <laughs> well, don't you know that? Oh, yes, I do. You do. What does your husband call you? Angel. Oh, Angel, huh? <laughs> yes. Oh, oh, you play at Wrigley Field? And... <laughs> <laughs> so he calls you Angel? Oh. Well, yeah. what's good enough for your husband is certainly good enough for me. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Adlai, where are you from? I'm <clears throat> from Dürer, Hungary. No, not very. I just had dinner. <laughs> the nonsense. Where are you from? Dear, that's uh, halfway between Budapest <clears throat> and Vienna. It's a whistle stop on the Orient Express line. A whistle stop on the Orient Express line, huh? And, uh, <clears throat> Angel, what is your hometown? Well, it's... Are you sure you're married? <laughs> yes, I am. Oh. Sure. It's a beverage. It's a small town in the northern part of France and it's situated 250 kilometers from Paris. 
four hours by train. Mm -hmm. Would you mind telling us uh, how old you are, Angel? Yes, I'm 27 years old. 20 civilian years old? <laughs> <laughs> well, how old are you when you're in the service? <laughs> Now, Mr. Spinner, let's get back uh, to you for a while. Huh? You say you're from Hungary. Huh? That's right. Uh, what did you do in Hungary? I studied law. Oh, and are you practicing law now? No. Why not? Well, when I came to this country, I found that there was no urgent need for Hungarian lawyers here. <laughs> well, that's ridiculous. Suppose you were being sued by a Hungarian. <laughs> I know every time I've been sued, it was by a Hungarian. We don't sue each other, we fight it out. Oh. Do you know how they make an omelette in Hungary? Do you know that? Well, we don't call it omelette, we call it palacinta. Well, no matter what you call it, there's an old recipe, a Hungarian recipe. Oh. And where they say in Hungary, when you want to make an omelette, the directions go, it says, first you steal two eggs. <laughs> That's, that's a true recipe. Don't laugh on the point, you know, it. if you could laugh while I'm talking first. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, in, in Hungary, when you want to make an omelet, the recipe says, first you steal two eggs. I guess they heard it the first time. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're an interesting couple, and I hope you win a reasonable amount of money here tonight. Now, in just one minute, you're going to play your bet your life for a chance at the $2,000 question. Right now, here's a beautiful young lady with news about another beauty, the 1953 DeSoto. Hello, this is Wendy Barry, and right now I want you to get a pencil and mark down this date, November the 13th. You got it? Thursday, November the 13th. That's a wonderful day. That's the day the stunning new 1953 DeSoto goes on display at your DeSoto Plymouth dealers. I've sneaked in and seen this new DeSoto, and really I think it's the most beautiful car ever built. No matter how you look at this new DeSoto, inside or out, it's perfectly beautiful. Outside, it's longer, lower, and lovelier than you ever thought a car could be. And inside, well, it's as lovely as my favorite living room. They won't let me tell you any more about this beautiful new car, but you can see it for yourself. Just be sure and be at your DeSoto Plymouth dealers on Thursday, November the 13th, the day the distinguished new 1953 DeSoto goes on display for the very first time. Oh, I'm going to be on You Bet Your Life television sometime soon, along with this beautiful 1953 DeSoto. So watch for us, won't you? All right, now let's see how you work together as a team. Fido and Fenneman? I'm here. Explain <clears throat> the rules. All right, you bet as much of your $20 as you want on each of four questions. And the couple that earns the most money gets a chance at the $2,000 DeSoto Plymouth question later on in the show. Here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. Out of our list of 20 categories, you selected number five, familiar Latin expressions. Well, here's your first question. How much will you bet? 1999. 1999. Siva Penny. <laughs> uh, what is the Latin expression that means solid earth? Terra firma. Terra firma is right. Well, you're on your way. You have $39.99. Let me be going for $2,000 tonight. How much of this vast sum are you going to try this time? Bet it all. All? Save a penny. Save a penny. Save, Save a penny. penny. Okay. What is the Latin expression that means privately or secretly or in confidence? Sub rosa. Sub rosa is right. <laughs> You now have $79.97. They have that much? Yes. Well, land sakes. Here's your third question. How much will you bet? How much do we have? You have $79.97. $79.96. 79 Is that all right with you? Uh, uh, yes, I guess uh, so. Mademoiselle? We? <laughs> we, oui. oui, yeah. Well, we do. Uh, what is the Latin expression that means endless or without limit? Infinite. That's right. Ad infinitum, we call it. <laughs> You now have $159.93. And here's your last chance to beat the other couples. How much will you bet? Shoot the works. Oh. Shoot the works? Yeah. Uh, what is the Latin expression that means one out of many? It is the motto of the United States. Uh, e pluribus unum. E pluribus unum is right. <laughs> And you wind up with a grand total of $319.86. Thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers. We invited some business women to the program tonight, and just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected Miss Martha Gallagher. Her partner also from our studio audience is Mr. Alan Palmer. Folks, would you come in and meet Groucho Marx? Well, welcome. Welcome to your Bet Your Life. Say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common word, something you always have with you. Alan Palmer and Martha Gallagher, eh? Where are you from, Martha? 
I was born in Waco. Waco? Uh, and uh, may I ask how old you are, Martha? Twenty-five. Are you married? No. Now you're talking. Alan uh, Palmer. That's right. That's you. Uh, are you married? Yes. Who cares, huh? <laughs> Where are you from, Mr. Palmer? Passaic, New Jersey. Passaic, huh? I know it very well. That's just a hop, skip, and a jump from Trenton, isn't it? No, it's about 60 miles. Well, it was a hop, skip, and a jump for me. I hopped a train, skipped town, and jumped bail. <laughs> Alan, did you come to California direct from uh, Passaic? No, I was in New York for about 30 years. You stopped off in New York for 30 years? I did. What's the matter? Couldn't you find your suitcase? <laughs> Those train connections in New York can be pretty bad sometimes. You must have been on the Long Island Railroad, weren't you? What were you doing in New York? Well, I was growing up, went to school, got married, and had two children. What a novel way to spend time between two trains. <laughs> now, Martha, since you're not married, I presume you have some other visible means of support, huh? Yes. Let's see. Yeah. <laughs> what sort of work do you do? I'm a geologist. Please, no politics in this program. <laughs> What's a geologist? Well, a geologist is a sort of scientist who studies the... Uh, the mineralogy and the petrology and the structure and the paleontological evidences and the materials of the earth and <laughs> interprets them. Could you make it simple? You know, uh, you're not talking to a ten-year-old out here. <laughs> <laughs> well, we... What do you actually do? We study the earth's crust. Oh, well, I've got plenty of that. <laughs> Why do you study the earth's crust, uh, Daddy? Oh, Mama. Uh, Martha? <laughs> well, to... Find out the mineralogy and the petrology and the structural... Back to that again, eh? <laughs> Let's skip the whole thing and we'll all go back to Passaic, shall we? <laughs> now, uh, who do you work for, uh, Martha? I work for Bankline Oil Company. Oh, I see. And what do you do for them? Well, I uh, study the geology and... <laughs> this whole thing is becoming strangely familiar to me. <laughs> it all seems like a dream. <laughs> I uh, draw up a picture to tell the company where to drill a well. In other words, you make oil paintings, is that it? <laughs> what sort of work do you do, Al? Well, I'm a locksmith. Oh, you mean you went to Yale? Uh, no. A locksmith, huh? Eh? How did you happen to get into the locksmith business? Well, I, when I was a kid, I used to like to take things apart and try to put them back together again. Have you ever picked locks? Oh, yes. I time. picked locks the other day. I was at a party and they were saving cheese sandwiches and lock sandwiches. And I picked locks because I don't like cheese sandwiches. <laughs> and for those who don't know, locks is a fish that got red in the face from swimming up the Columbia River. <laughs> what kind of jobs are you called upon to perform, Al? Well, all types, emergency lockouts of homes, cars. Has anything embarrassing ever happened to you, like locking yourself out of your own house? No, but uh, I was called to uh, help a woman out of the bathroom that she locked herself in. She, she locked herself in a tub? No, in the bathroom. Oh, I see. And she kept yelling, when you get the door open, don't lock. I haven't got any clothes on. Well, very few people are dressed when they're in a bathtub. <laughs> some of them wear a hat, that's all. <laughs> well, uh, don't keep us in suspense, Al. Uh, d did you look? <laughs> No. Besides, she had a towel wrapped around her. How do you know if you didn't look, Mr. <laughs> Don't you think he's in a more interesting profession than you are, uh, Martha? <laughs> I imagine he is. <laughs> Let's get Ivy again. As a geologist, tell me, uh, what's the latest date? That's a pretty old one. <laughs> well, I agree with you, Martha, but when you're talking to a geologist, sometimes you're compelled to dig pretty deep. <laughs> now, tell me how you go about finding oil. Uh, how, do you, how do you look for oil? Well, you uh, find a place that you think it ought to be in and get the company to lease the land or buy it, and then you drill a well. After you find a likely spot, uh, what happens? 
Well, you drill the well, and then the geology department goes to work and studies the well and the findings from it and other companies' wells and goes out and studies the rocks and the structure of them and so forth, and then we draw up a picture to tell the management why the oil wasn't there. (laughs) And the next thing, the stockholders get a letter. (laughs) Well, you've both been real informative, and I wish you lots of luck in the quiz. Or now you're going to play your bet you like. Beat our other couples and you'll get a chance at the $2,000 question. Here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. You selected locations of colleges. I can't tell you how much you have to win, but George is going to remind our listeners. Our first couple won $319.86, and the secret word is heart. How much are you going to bet? You have $20. 20 Want to go for 20 Well, 1998. $19.98. $19.98. $19.98. What college is at South Bend, Indiana? Notre Dame. Notre Dame is right. Well, you're on your way. Good start. You have $39.98. Did you go to Notre Dame, Martha? No. I thought so, on account of Gallagher being the last name. <laughs> Remember, you're going for $2,000 tonight. Now, how much of this $39.98 are you going to try? $39.97. Talk it up. Thirty-nine ninety-seven. Okay. What college is at New Haven, Connecticut? Yale. Yale. He knows oh. that. That's a fine question to ask a locksmith. You now have seventy-nine dollars and ninety-five cents. And here's your third question. How much of that sum will you bet? Seventy-nine ninety-four. Okay. okay. What college is at Evanston, Illinois? It's the University of Illinois. No, it isn't. Everson. No. Evans? No, it isn't. Time's up, kid. Take a stab if you don't know. Think of some college around there. Okay. Illinois. No, I am sorry. It's Northwestern. You now have one penny. <laughs> Go bet it all. You're going to bet it all? All right, now you're going to bet a cent. What college is at Ithaca, New York? It's Cornell. Cornell is right. <laughs> And they wind up with two cents. Two cents. Huh? That's not enough. That's what you don't put it. Keep your two cents out of this. <laughs> All, right. All right. We're not going to let you leave here with two cents. We're going to give you enough money to bring this sum up to 25 bucks. So at least you'll each get 12 and a half. Now, get this right, and you'll have uh, 25 bucks. And no coaching, please. What kind of wood was the old oaken bucket? <laughs> oak. oak is right. <laughs> and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Uh, Groucho, we have a young lady from the City Hall Information Bureau and a test pilot for you now. They were chosen just before we went on the air. Miss Evelyn Hayden and Mr. Bill Bridgman, meet Groucho Marx. Welcome for the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common word, something you always have with you. Evelyn Hayden. Now, let's see, a test pilot and the girl from the Information Bureau. Huh? Oh. Is that right? Inflammation? Oh, oh, information. Oh, information. Well, which one is from the Information Bureau? I am. That said you was a quick answer. You're very well informed, uh, Evelyn. You pronounce it Evelyn or Evelyn? Any way that you say is all right with me. It won't, uh, you won't win any more money by those tactics. In that case, I'll call you Evelyn, huh? Where are you from, Ev? Gosh, we get familiar quickly up here. I'm from Colorado. Oh, it's amazing how much this girl knows. I just met her and already she knows where she's from. <laughs> Maybe I can stump her. Are you uh, married? Uh, no help in the audience, please. <laughs> you are married, huh? Uh, Mr. Bill Bridgman, eh? Uh, you're a test pilot? Yes, that's right. What is your hometown, Bill? Tumwa, Iowa. Are you uh, married? No, no. Not married, huh? Fine-looking, rugged, youthful test pilot like you not married? Uh, how come? Uh, I was married once. That's how come. Well, he's a test pilot, all right. (laughs) You test anything. (laughs) Who do you work for, Bill? I work for Douglas. Douglas who? Fairbanks? Uh, (laughs) Douglas Aircraft. It's an odd name for a man, isn't it? Douglas Aircraft. <laughs> he must have been named after that factory in Santa Monica. <laughs> what does a test pilot do on his job? Oh, it's 99% talk and about 1% action. 
You sound like a political candidate. <laughs> who, uh, who do you talk to, and uh, what about? Well, you spend quite a bit of time talking to the engineers, the aerodynamics, and the plant. Mm-hmm. Is that uh, fun? Not a bit. No, I don't think so. I guess they're pretty smart. Though, these Very engineers. smart, yes. Well, they must be smart. They stay on the ground and let you fly the plane. <laughs> No Schlemiel's A, eh? <laughs> I think I'll get my feet on the grind, uh, ground. Uh, Ev, uh, where is your information bureau? City Hall lobby. In the lobby? Well, that's the right place for it. There's certainly plenty of lobbying going on at the City Hall. <laughs> you, uh, what kind of questions do you get down at this uh, place, uh, Mrs. Hayden? Oh, uh, we get questions on almost every subject. Well, what, for example? Well... You mean if I ask you a question on any subject, you could give me an answer? Well, uh, pro- uh, probably I couldn't answer everyone, but if I couldn't, I could tell you the proper place to go. <laughs> well, I expect to go there eventually. <laughs> We're all going there. Eventually. <laughs> Let's not be too cocky about it, anybody. <laughs> I bet you've all got plenty to answer for, too. <laughs> How long have you been test piloting, uh, uh, Mrs. Hyde? I mean, Mr. Bridgman? Uh, About four years. Well, how did you get into this uh, kind of soft racket? Well, I uh, came out of the Navy and flew for the airlines for a year and decided that I'd like test flying better and uh, went to work for Douglas. Mm-hmm. What kind of planes do you test? Uh, usually research, uh, high-speed research aircraft. What's the fastest anyone has ever flown? Do you, do you happen to know? To date, it's 1,238 miles an hour. 1,238 miles an hour? A man must be off his nut to fly that fast. <laughs> What's the fastest you've gone, Bill? 1,238 miles per hour. Well, Bill, it's an honor to have you here, and I apologize, and you don't have to get married again if you don't want to. <laughs> now, let's consider this uh, 1,238 miles an hour. That's pretty fast. At that speed, how long would it take you to fly across the country? Well, I think it's been figured that uh, if you left New York at 9 a.m. and uh, traveled across the country, you would arrive at Los Angeles at 8.30 a.m. on the same day. <laughs> You know, I think his flaps are dragging. <laughs> How can you land here a half hour before you take off in New York? Do you oil your wristwatch with Zaratan? <laughs> no, no, because well, of the three-hour time dis- difference and uh, yeah. sidereal time against the sun, you can you can beat the time lag and make it a half an hour sooner. You get here a half hour before you before left? Before you here? left, that's right. I don't think I'd care for that. <laughs> I could get my face slapped in Los Angeles even before I kissed the girl in New York. <laughs> How does it feel to go that fast? Over a thousand miles an hour. Oh, I think you'll get a greater feeling of speed right here driving through traffic in Los Angeles. <laughs> you think men will be able to go faster than that? I think in the next year we'll find two or three planes going faster than that. What do you think of flying saucers? I'm not a believer myself. I, uh, I haven't seen any. I, if one lands out here at Municipal, I, uh, I'm convinced. <laughs> As I remember, Bill, you flew pretty high when you set that record. Uh, how high did you fly? It was recorded at 79,400 feet. It's about 16 miles, huh? 16 miles, that's right. Some fellows will do anything to avoid getting married again. <laughs> Well, Bill, it's been an honor talking to a courageous man like you and who make it safe for the rest of the world to fly. And I wish you the best of luck in all your future flights. Thank you. And you too, Evelyn. Thank you. All right, now you're going to play your bet your life. Beat our other couples and you'll get a chance at the $1,000 question. Can't tell you how much you have to win, but George is going to remind our listeners. Our first couple still leads with $319.86. Here we go. Let's see how high you can build your $20. You selected Wade's... Ending in uh, AC is your category. Here's your first question. How much will you bet? 19 and a half. 1950. 1950, 1975. 1975. Okay. 1975. All right. What is the word ending in AC that means a yearbook containing all sorts of facts and information? 
the... Uh... You can help him, you know, uh, Evelyn. You're his partner. Almanac. Almanac is right. And you're on your way. You have $39.75. Well, you came out of a steep dive that time, didn't you, for that? <laughs> All right, you're going for two thousand dollars tonight. Now, how much of the thirty-nine seventy-five are you going to try? Mm, about thirty-nine and a half. Thirty-nine fifty-five. Thirty-nine fifty. What is the word ending in act that means a mentally unbalanced person who is dangerous? Maniac. Maniac is right. You now have seventy-nine dollars and twenty-five cents. Now you have seventy-nine twenty-five. Is your third question? How much are you going to bet? Seventy-nine. Okay. 79. What is the word ending in act that means the signs that astrologers use? Zodiac. Zodiac is right. You now have one hundred fifty-eight dollars and twenty-five cents. This is your last chance to be the other couples. What are you going to try for? One fifty-eight twenty-five. Oh. Oh, what is the word ending in act that means a clear liquid used in wood finishing? Shellac. Shellac is right. <laughs> is. And you wind up with three hundred and sixteen dollars and fifty cents. And that means the French bride and her partner with $319.86 in just one minute get the chance of the DeSoto Plymouth $2,000 question. Awful close. And now here's a lovely lady you all know with news about the distinguished 1953 DeSoto. Hi, this is Arlene Francis, and I want to make a date with you. A date for Thursday, November 13th. That's a really important day because that's the day the beautiful new 1953 DeSoto goes on display for the very first time at your DeSoto Plymouth dealers. I have seen this 1953 DeSoto, and honestly, I think it's the most beautiful car ever built. This new 1953 DeSoto is lower, longer, lovelier, with a wonderful styling and beauty of design both inside and out. I know you'll want to be among the first to see this beautiful new 1953 DeSoto just as soon as it goes on display. Let's make that a date then, Thursday, November 13th at your DeSoto Plymouth dealers, the day the beautiful new 1953 DeSoto goes on display. Don't keep me waiting, will you? Oh, and I'm going to be on You Bet Your Life television sometime soon, along with the beautiful 1953 DeSoto. Watch for us, won't you? Here's the French bride and her partner, Groucho, the winning couple, all ready for the $2,000 DeSoto Plymouth question. Well, how are you cute, you? You go back to France if you win this money? La oh. Belle France? No, I wouldn't. Would you take another flyer at Hungary? No. If you go back, don't tell them that joke that I told about the two eggs and the omelet, huh? <laughs> I'm sorry I told it here. Here we go for $2,000. I'll give you 15 seconds to decide on a single answer between you. Think carefully and please no help from the audience. Are you ready? I'm sure everyone has read the book of Genesis in the Bible. See how well you remember it. It tells, among other things, how Cain slew his brother Abel. For $2,000, tell me the name of the land to which Cain fled after the murder. Talk it over. All right, what's the answer you two have decided upon? No answer. Well, I'm sorry, it's the land of Nod. That's the correct answer. So that means the big question next week will be worth $2,500. Well, you lost the big money, but how much did they win in the quiz? Uh, $319.86. Well, that's not too bad. Congratulations and thanks to both of you and to all of our contestants on the show tonight. Be sure to tune in again next Wednesday night at the same time for the Groucho Marx Show when the big question will be worth $2,500. And don't miss Groucho's television show, also presented by the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America. And remember, all dealers who sell DeSoto also sell Plymouth. Two great cars, both products of the Chrysler Corporation. Don't forget, folks, on Thursday, November 13th, the distinguished 1953 DeSoto will go on display for the very first time at your DeSoto Plymouth Dealers. Make a date to see it, and when you drive in... Tell him Groucho sent you. Folks, freedom is everybody's business. 
In America, it's your responsibility to preserve that freedom. And the best way you can do that is by your vote. It's important that you vote if you're going to get the kind of government you want. No matter how you vote this November 4th, be a good American. Get out and vote. You bet your life. Transcribed from Hollywood is produced by John Goodell. Directed by Robert Dwan and Bernie Smith. Music by Jerry Fielding. This is George Fenneman signing off for the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast. Ladies and gentlemen, the secret word tonight is light. L-I-G-H-T. Really? You bet your life. The more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers of America present Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life, the comedy quiz series produced and transcribed from Hollywood. Ladies and gentlemen, on Thursday, November 13th, your DeSoto Plymouth dealer will put on display for the first time what we honestly believe to be the most beautiful car ever built, the distinguished 1953 DeSoto. We'll have more to say about this exciting news in a few minutes. And here he is, the one, the only... What a strange name for a human being. Oh, that's me, <laughs> Groucho Marx. <laughs> Well, here I am again with $2,500 for one of our couples. We, uh, we asked if there were any young single men present tonight. You asked this? Yes, before the show went on oh. here. Mr. Richard James. He was the one that was chosen. His partner is a student, Miss Catherine Gerber. And here they are. Folks, come in and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome. Yeah. Welcome for the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common word, something you find around the house. Okay, let's see. Miss Catherine Gerber, eh? You're not married? No. No. You're not engaged? No. Going steady? No. You say no too much. <laughs> Has it ever occurred to you that perhaps that's your main trouble? <laughs> How old are you, Katie? Twenty-two. Twenty-two, huh? Yeah. Where are you from? Oceano, California. Um, it's near Pismo Beach. <laughs> yes, uh, are you, you're not going to shut up like a clam now, are you? <laughs> Richard James, uh, how did you happen to get two front names and no rear name? Well, my uh, mother's first name, uh, rather, my mother's name was Richard and my father's name was James. <clears throat> I better explain that. Rather, yeah. her, uh, you ought to do something about it. <laughs> Her, uh, uh... Was your father's first name Jesse? <laughs> Not quite. Henry? No. Uh, my, fa my uh, father's name, of course, was James. And my Eddie mother's... Grable? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, my mother's name was Richard, which is a French name. Was what? Uh, Richard. Richard, huh? Yes. I thought that was a vegetable. <laughs> <laughs> Let's find out something about you two. Uh, do, do you have a job, uh, Katie? Uh, yes, I go to school... At uh, Frank Wiggins Trade Tech Junior Could you talk College. just a little bit louder? Mm -hmm. I can hardly hear you. Yes, I go to school. Oh, you just said that. <laughs> at Frank Wiggins Technical Trade Junior College. Oh, I see. Well, I wouldn't mind trading at that college myself. <laughs> what kind of a college is that? Is that freshwater it's, college? It's a vocational college. Vocational? Mm -hmm. You mean you, you're, you're off all summer? Vocational. <laughs> Vocational I've been off all winter. There's no reason why you shouldn't be off all summer. So what, uh, what are you uh, majoring in? Cosmetology. Cosmetology? Uh-huh. Well, you're very smart going into that field, and I congratulate you. Now, what is it? <laughs> uh, well, uh, 
Well, it's, it, it's the study of cosmetics. Oh, I see. Well, that's pretty simple once you catch on to it, huh? The art and study. Of uh-huh. it. What sort of work do you do, uh, Dick? I'm a school teacher. Oh, is that so? Well, it's a small world. Catherine here is a student. Could you teach her anything? Well, I, uh, <laughs> I could try. Just, well, what do you teach? Well, I teach uh, science and geography and history and uh, just about everything that a sixth grade boy or girl would like to know. I know years ago, we used to have a joke in a school like we did years ago where the teacher says to the boy, he said, uh, what's the shape of the earth? And the kid says, I don't know. And the teacher is impatient and says, well, what's the shape of my cuff buttons? And the kid looks at him and says, square. He says, and the teacher says, no, I don't mean these. Not the ones I wear on weekdays, the cuff buttons I wear on Sunday. He says, oh, round. That's he says, that's right. He says, now, what's the shape of the earth? He says, square on weekdays and round on Sunday. <laughs> ah, the old jokes never die. <laughs> well, you're a nice, attractive couple. And, Dick, since you're a teacher, I'd like to remind parents that they ought to go to school and meet the men and women who teach their children. They're fine people, and they want to meet you. So go to those PTA meetings. They're very important and very valuable. All right, now it's time to play your Bet Your Life for a chance at the $2,500 question. But first, here's a beautiful gal I'd like to know better, with news about the beautiful new 1953 DeSoto. Hi, this is Arlene Francis, and I want to make a date with you for Thursday, November 13th. That's the day the beautiful new 1953 DeSoto goes on display for the very first time. I know you'll want to be among the first to see this beautiful new 1953 DeSoto Thursday, November 13th at your DeSoto Plymouth Dealers. All right, now let's see how you work together as a team. Here we are. Let's see how high you can build your $20. Out of our list of 20 categories, you selected number 14, which is Gay Paris. Here's your first question. How much will you bet? Talk up, kids. Let's bet $20. $20? Is that what you're betting? No, no, no. I no. said Well, you have to, well, you have to decide ten? now and do it fast. Let's, let's compromise. Compromise if you want to. All right. $15. $15. What is the name of the chief art gallery of Paris? The Louvre. The Louvre is right. You're on your way. You have $35. Remember, you're going for $2,500 tonight. How much of your $35 you are going to try now? I think we know. Let's bet 35. 35. On the outskirts of Paris, is that all right, Catherine? You, now, you don't have to submit... <laughs> <laughs> Catherine, you don't have to 30? submit to this, you know. You're an equal partner 30? in this thing. All right, 30, then. $30. 30. A famous river divides Paris. What is the name of it? The Seine. The Seine is right. <laughs> I went crazy there a couple of years ago. I was insane for about three hours. <laughs> You've now climbed to $65. Now, how much are you going to bet this time? Sixty dollars. The French stock exchange is called what? One answer. Exchequer of Paris? No, it's the Bourse. B O U R S E. Bourse. It's uh, very well known too. Should have known it. I didn't know. All right. Now have five dollars. How much will you bet? We might have bet it. Might as well bet the other. Okay. The most famous cathedral of Paris is one of the oldest and most interesting churches in the world. What is the name of it? Notre Dame. Notre Dame is right. <laughs> you wind up with ten dollars, and Groucho. We don't. Nobody leaves here with ten dollars. I'll give you one more question for fifteen, which will make your sum total twenty-five dollars. Are you ready? And no coaching, please. Ready? Who is buried in Grant's tomb? <laughs> General Grant is right. Thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. We ask for men with interesting occupations to volunteer from our studio audience tonight, Groucho. And Mr. Hugh S. Arnold was chosen just before we went on the air. And his partner is a housewife, Mrs. Margaret Raby. Folks, come in and meet Groucho Marx, please. Welcome to your Bet Your Life. Say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common word, something you find around the house. Let's see, you, Arnold, and Margaret Raby, eh? You're you... And uh, you're Margaret, huh? That's right. Where are you from, you? Walton, Kentucky. Oh. May I ask how old you are, you? Fifty-two. Fifty-two, eh? You're a fine-looking boy. Thank are you. you. Are, are you married? Yes. 
Well, you're even yes. finer looking boy, huh? Thank you. Raby is your name, huh? That's right. Uh, where are you from, uh, Margaret? I'm from Tarentum, Pennsylvania. Tarentum? That's an Indian name, huh? Well, uh, that isn't the way I heard it. <laughs> <laughs> the way you... Uh, How did you hear it? Well, uh, Mr. Nagley was the first settler, permanent settler in uh, Tarentum. Nagley? Nagley, that's uh -huh. right. And he built three homes. And when the second settler came along, he said, Mr. Nagley, if you have just your family here, why did you build three homes? And Mr. Nagley says, to rent them. So, that's the name of the town, Tarentum, Pennsylvania. <laughs> it's near Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. It seems like he went to an awful lot of trouble for one bum joke, didn't he? <laughs> well, that's the way I heard that it got its name. Imagine a man building three homes just to get one crack in about an Indian. <laughs> Peggy, uh, would you describe yourself just for fun? You know, I wonder how many of us could accurately describe the way we look to other people. Go well, ahead, and I'll correct you if you're wrong. I'm five foot seven, mm -hmm. a little on the heavy side. I don't think so. I think you're reasonably well stacked. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, blonde hair uh, now. <laughs> you know, the cut of the gray up a little. Hazel, you're... hazel eyes. And I think I have a sense of humor. Nice teeth. You forgot that, huh? Well, they're not all mine. <laughs> Doesn't make any difference. They're nice anyhow. Thank you. You're a fine-looking gal, Peggy. That was a very good description. I don't know who you were describing, but it was a very good description. <laughs> Myself. What, what sort of work do you do, you? I'm a tobacco auctioneer, gotcha. Hold it, hold it, do 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 hold it, what are you doing in California? Are you out here on your vacation? No, I came out here. thought possibly I could get on radio and television. Have you had any luck? None, whatever. I guess I'll have to go back to Kentucky and sell back again. Well, you, sh you should have studied medicine, you. Everybody knows in order to sell tobacco on television, you have to be a doctor. <laughs> How can you tell good tobacco from bad tobacco, you? Well, you tell it by uh, the grades. There's many uh, separate and distinct grades of tobacco. Don't you have to rip them down the middle? You know, they, they make them king size now. Uh, no. King size. Isn't that ridiculous? King size. Have you seen the shape of King Farouk? <laughs> <laughs> can you imagine a cigarette built like him? Could you give us a short sample, a short sample of your chant, uh, you? Yes, I. We'll start one at uh, <laughs> That was very good, you. Sounded just like a recent campaign promise. <laughs> well, I'd like to keep on talking to you two all night, but now you're going to play your Bet Your Life. Well, half the night. Thank now, you. before we play your Bet Your Life, I want you to pay attention to a lovely lady who has some news about the distinguished DeSoto, the new DeSoto, the 1953 DeSoto. Hello, this is Wendy Barry, and right now I want you to get a pencil and mark down this date, November the 13th. You got it? Thursday, November the 13th. That's a wonderful day. That's the day the stunning new 1953 DeSoto goes on display at your DeSoto Plymouth dealers. I've sneaked in and seen this new DeSoto, and really I think it's the most beautiful car ever built. No matter how you look at this new DeSoto, inside or out, it's perfectly beautiful. Outside, it's longer, lower, and lovelier than you ever thought a car could be. And inside, well, it's as lovely as my favorite living room. They won't let me tell you any more about this beautiful new car, but you can see it for yourself. Just be sure and be at your DeSoto Plymouth dealers on Thursday, November the 13th, the day the distinguished new 1953 DeSoto goes on display for the very first time. Oh, I'm going to be on You Bet Your Life television sometime soon, along with this beautiful 1953 DeSoto. So watch for us, won't you? <laughs> Now we're ready for the quiz. You beat our other couples, and you'll get a chance at the $2,500 question. I can't tell you how much you have to win, but George is going to remind our listeners. The girl student and the teacher won $10, and the secret word is light. 
Here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. You selected government sites. Now, you decide between you how much you want to bet. 97? 97. All right. How much? 1997. 1997. Here's your first question. You're going to bet 1997. What is the name of the New York Island used as the chief United States immigration station? Ellis Island. Ellis Island is correct. Well, you're off to a good start. You have $39.97. Remember, you're going for $2,500 tonight. How much of this $39.97 are you going to try? All of it. $39.95. All right, you ready? $39.95, you're betting. Where is the United States Military Academy? Uh, at Annapolis. Annapolis. Or Military Academy? One answer between you now. Uh, no, it's... Uh, you got West five Point. seconds. Uh, West Point. Wet pain is... West Point is right. <laughs> You now have $79.92. And how much of that are you going to bet on your third question? $79.92. No, $79.90. You're betting $79.90. All right. Is that all right with you, Margaret? Now, yes, you know, it is. you don't have to do this, you know. I mean, if you want to bet some other amount of money, uh, no, you're equal no. partners. That, that, all right? That's all right. What is the name of the big naval base in the Hawaiian Islands? Uh, yes, I'd say Pearl Harbor. Pearl Harbor oh, is right. Oh, <laughs> You now have one hundred fifty-nine dollars and eighty-two cents. All right. Now, how much are you going to bet this time? Bet it all. You're going to bet it all. Where is the United States Naval Academy located? Uh, Annapolis. Annapolis is right. <laughs> Thank you. And you wind up with a grand total of three hundred nineteen dollars and sixty-four cents. Thanks, Thank and good luck from the DeSoto much. Plymouth dealers. We have a club woman for you now, Groucho. Uh, a club woman? Uh, yes. <laughs> Mrs. Maud Sheridan. And uh, her partner is a man with an unusual background, Mr. James A. Murphy. And here they are. Folks, meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, uh, folks, for the DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common word, something you find around the house. Uh, you, Mrs. Uh, Maud Sheridan, uh, you're a club right. woman? That's club right. woman, huh? Well, you may need a club before we're through here. What is your hometown, now that we've gotten that out of the way? I was raised in Colorado Springs. Colorado Springs, eh? Well, that's a lovely town. I used to go trout fishing there. I never caught any, but I went trout fishing there. <laughs> How did you meet your husband? I presume you have one. Yes, I do. I met him in Cheyenne, Wyoming. He was a traveling salesman, and I was going out to dinner one night with a... Traveling tra salesman in yes, Cheyenne? Yes, yes. Well, how did you meet him? Well, I had another traveling salesman friend, and he introduced us. Yeah. <laughs> you did quite a business there in the shop. <laughs> did you have some kind of a particular fondness for traveling salesmen? Oh, yes. I had a tea room, and I oh, entertained I them, you see, in my I tea room. I see. Gave them tea in the afternoon? Yes. You know, it never occurred to me that people would sit in the afternoon in Cheyenne, Wyoming, drinking tea. <laughs> Mr. James Murphy, that's you, huh? Well, it's always nice to meet a Czechoslovakian. <laughs> James A. Murphy. What does the A stand for? Aloysius. <laughs> Mr. Murphy, what shall I call you? Jim or Aloysius? They call me Foghorn, Groucho. Foghorn Murphy? Are you the Foghorn Murphy who goes to all the ball games? Yes, I am. Well, pleased to meet you, Foggy, old boy. I've heard of you. I've heard of you for the last 20 years, but I never had the pleasure of meeting you. You're quite a celebrity. Where did you get the name Foghorn? When I was a young fellow, I wanted to be a baseball player, but my feet wasn't big enough for my hands, wasn't big enough for power. I got on a horse with a baseball uniform... And announced off of it. Mm -hmm. The ball game. You say you weren't big enough? Wasn't big enough what for... A, what about Bobby Shantz? Well, I was big enough, but I didn't have... My bigness wasn't in a place where I should have it, in my feet and hands. <laughs> I'll get back to you in a moment, Bobby. <laughs> like a most unusual fellow. <laughs> now, let's find out something about you, Maud. Uh, you're a club woman. What club do you... Uh... Uh, belong to? I belong to one club, the Southern California branch of the Herb Society of America. The herb, you say? Herb. Just what is an herb? An herb is a plant. You can use the leaves or the roots or the stems for cooking purposes and for fragrance and for medicinal purposes. 
Sounds fascinating. What are some of the medicinal herbs? Oh, there's uh, uh, chamomile and rosemary and melissa. Isn't that the Andrew sisters? (laughs) What are some of the herbs you recommend for certain dishes? I don't mean the kind he was referring to either. Well, every uh, dish that contains tomatoes should have basil. Basil, yeah. And then for I your... saw a basil out with a tomato the other night. <laughs> <laughs> then with your meat dishes, you should have thyme. Thyme? 9.30. <laughs> Marjoram. Marjoram. Sage. Oh, sage. And then when you make a beef stew, for instance... You put in some marjoram and a little thyme and a pinch of rosemary. (laughs) (laughs) Say, this can be fun at that, you know. It can be fun, and everyone should raise in their backyard a little garden of herbs so that they should could go out and get a pinch here and a pinch there. (laughs) This is the kind of a contestant I like. To say anything. <laughs> She's hanging herself with each statement. Fog <laughs> let's talk to you some more. Fog horse, it should be if you ride her on a horse, shouldn't it? Where are you from, Foggy? San Francisco. Born in San Francisco 62 years ago. Proud. You can go any place in the world, and the only recommendation you need is say, I was born in San Francisco. Everybody uh-huh. loves and likes him. <laughs> Could you sing us a few uh, few lines of that song, San Francisco? San Francisco, here I come. <laughs> that is not right, uh, Foggy. You're singing California, here I come. Now, San Francisco isn't all there is in California. San Francisco opened that golden gate. Don't you remember that song? Yes, I do. Da, 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 da. Well, that's. Uh, you want to try it again? <laughs> San Francisco, here I come. <laughs> Say, you must have been there during the fire, dude. Do you remember the fire at all, Fog? I remember the fire in Creek, Groucho. As if it was yesterday. They burned down all the schoolhouses and destroyed them. I only went to two grades and didn't go back. <laughs> well, what did you do after you quit school at the age of eight? At the age of 11, I sold newspapers in Barbara Coast in San Francisco. I, was, I sold potatoes and oranges. And I owned a drugstore in Pacific and Kearney. At the age of 11, you owned a drugstore? Later, later, later. Later, I owned the drugstore. Did you make any money at this work? I've made a million dollars twice in my life. I found out you don't have to go to school to make money. All you have to do is be nice and kind and sweet to people. The cheapest thing a person can sell in this world is a smile and a kind word about everybody, and it'll pay bigger dividends than anything else. Let's see it. Let's see a few lines of the San Francisco song again. (laughs) I get lonesome for that every once in a while. (laughs) How'd you make your first million, Foggy? Well, 21 banks all over the United States. Was this at night or during the day? (laughs) Banks during the Depression, the punk banks. Oh, you, you bought these banks, huh? Bought them. Well, that's logical. If you want a million dollars, just buy a few dozen banks, that's all. (laughs) You were sort of an Irish Giannini, in other words. Very proud to say he was a very dear friend of my A.P. Giannini. Turned out to be the biggest banker in the world. Came from that great city of San Francisco. (laughs) San Francisco, open your golden gate. I'd like to continue talking and singing to you two, but the time has come to play You Bet Your Life. The time has come, the walrus said, to play You Bet Your Life. You run, our 20, you run your 20 bucks and the more than our other couples, 
and you'll get a chance at the $2,500 question. I can't tell you how much you have to win, but George is going to remind our listeners. Mrs. Raby and the tobacco auctioneer lead with $319.64. All right, here we go. Let's see how I can build you $20. You selected the animal kingdom. How much are you going to bet? Eighteen. Here's your first question, $18. What are Manx, Maltese, and Persians? Cats. Cats is right. You have $38. $38. Remember, you're going for $2,500 tonight. How much of your $38 will you bet on your second 35. question? Thirty-five. All right. What are tanagers, titmouses, and thrushes? Nice. One answer between you now. What, uh, tanagers, me... titmouses, and thrushes. Birds. Birds is right. <laughs> You now have $73. Here's your third question. How much will you bet? Seventy. Seventy. I don't I don't know, can't pronounce this myself. What are Samoyeds, Samoyeds, sh- uh, and uh, sealing hams? Dogs. Dogs is right. <laughs> you climbed to $143. And is your last chance to be the other couples? How much of the 143? All of it. All, All of, of it? it? Uh, what are Katiaks, Grizzlies, and Pandas? Bears. Bears is correct. <laughs> and you wind up with $286, and that means the tobacco auctioneer and the housewife with $319.64. In just one minute, get the chance at the DeSoto Plymouth $2,500 question. Thursday, November 13th. That's a day to remember. Why? Is it my birthday? No, Groucho. Thursday, November 13th, is the day the distinguished 1953 DeSoto goes on display at your DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Well, that's important, too. You bet it is, Groucho. We think this distinguished 1953 DeSoto is the most beautiful car ever built. It's longer, lower, and wider, with superb lines and styling that are sure to make it the style leader of the year. This 1953 DeSoto is so beautiful... It makes me wish I were a garage. The distinguished 1953 DeSoto. It goes on display November 13th at your DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Don't miss it. What was that date again, Fenneman? November 13th. Speak up, boy. Don't mumble. November 13th. November 13th, eh? What happens then? That's the day the beautiful new 1953 DeSoto goes on display. You're repeating yourself. Folks, go see this beautiful new DeSoto on November 13th at your DeSoto Plymouth dealers. And when you do... Tell them Groucho sent you. Now, here's our winning couple, Groucho. The uh, tobacco auctioneer and the housewife all ready for the DeSoto Plymouth $2,500 question. For $2,500, I'll give you 15 seconds to decide on a single answer between you. Think carefully and please no help from the audience. Are you ready? The son of David and Bathsheba became a king when he was little more than 12 years old. He reigned for 40 years and became one of the truly great men of history. For $2,500, who was this king? Talk it over. What's the answer you two have decided upon? Your answer, dear. Come on. Time's King a wasting. Solomon? King Solomon? King Solomon is right. <laughs> That's right. You win $2,500. Plus, how much in the quiz, George? Let's see, uh, $319.64. That's $2,800 and... Uh, it's a lot well, of money. I yes, have no uh, idea. <laughs> well, at any rate, he went to Stanford, too. $2,819.64. All right, you, I'll cut your salary. Congratulations from the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast. You bet your life. Be sure to tune in again next Wednesday night at this same time for the Groucho Marx Show, when the big question will be worth $1,000. And don't miss Groucho's television show, also presented by the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America. And remember, all dealers who sell DeSoto also sell Plymouth. 
Two great cars, both products of the Chrysler Corporation. Don't forget, folks, on Thursday, November 13th, the distinguished 1953 DeSoto will go on display for the very first time at your DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Make a date to see it, and when you drive in, tell them Groucho sent you. Folks, here's a reminder from the National Safety Council. Drive slow in rain, sleet, or snow. You Bet Your Life, transcribed from Hollywood, is produced by John Goodell, directed by Robert Dwan and Bernie Smith. Music by Jerry Fielding. This is George Fenneman signing off for the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast. <laughs>